Dear compatriots, it is my unique honor to address you on this day. This is the third anniversary of our nation's independence, both as the president of our dear country and simply as a fellow Nigerian. On this solemn yet hopeful day, let us commend our founding fathers and mothers. Without them, there would have been no modern Nigeria. From the fading embers of colonialism, their activism, dedication, and leadership gave life to the belief in Nigeria as a sovereign and independent nation. Let us moment affirm that as Nigerians, we are all endowed with the sacred right and individual gifts that God has bestowed on us as a nation and as human beings. No one is greater or lesser than the other. Hello, welcome. It is 4.30 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria, 11.30 a.m. in New York City, 6.30 p.m. in Kampala, Uganda, and 7.30 p.m. in Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo. Wherever in the world you are joining us, welcome to another episode of 90 Minutes Africa. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. My co-host, Chido Onoma, is on assignment. As Nigeria marks her 63rd Independence Day anniversary, we are bringing three heavy hitters on Nigeria's intellectual first 11 varsity team for a conversation on why we are where we are. Moses Ochano, historian and professor of African history at Vanderbilt University. Farouk Berogi, a newspaper columnist and a professor of journalism and imagined media at Kenshaw State University and Dr. Osmond Abo, medical practitioner in Texas. They will join us and discuss everything about Nigeria. They will also discuss their new book, This Life, No Balance. Based upon our talks with leaders and other stakeholders, we are introducing a professional wage award increment to enhance the federal minimum wage without causing undue inflation. For the next six months, the average low grade worker shall receive an additional 25,000 Naira per month to ensure better grassroots development. We set up an infrastructure support fund for state to invest in critical aid state already received funds to provide relief packages against the impact of rising food and other prices. I said that bold reforms were necessary to place our nation on the path of prosperity and growth. On that occasion, I announced the end of the fuel subsidy. I am attuned to the hardship that I've come. I have a heart that fills our eyes. I wish to explain to you why we must endure this trying moment. Those who sought to perpetuate the fuel subsidy and broken foreign exchange policies are people who will build their family mansion in the middle of a swamp. I am different. I'm not a man to erect our national home on the foundation of mud. To endure our home constructed 
on safe and pleasant ground. Reform may be painful, but it is what greatness and the future require. We now carry the course of reaching a future Nigeria where the abundance and fruit of the nation are fairly shared among all, not hoarded by a select and greedy few. In Nigeria, where hunger, poverty, and hardship Welcome to the show, uh, Farouk. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> nice to have you again, uh, Rudolph. I know when this started uh, many months ago. I don't know. You were the first guest. First guest in the program. Yeah. So, yeah. It's good so to have you. Yeah, we appreciate you. Uh, Moses, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Rudolph. Uh, thanks for inviting me here again. Okay. okay. Um, good also, OC um, is uh, on the way, and he said he's uh, traveling, and we, he will join us uh, in a few minutes. So hopefully he will join us before we end. Um, thank you, guys, and happy Independence Day. We should the same. Uh, Moses, we want to make it make sure you agree. <laughs> well, uh, to the extent that uh, we can pretend that we are truly independent, I say in that spirit, I say happy Independence Day to both of you. Yes. Yes. So let's let's start with uh, the speech by the president. Um, he spoke this morning at um, at seven a.m. Nigerian time. Uh, one of our friends, Alexander Gomez, just noted that um, he sounded exhausted. Um, I don't know if you have had the chance to listen to the speech or read the text. What, what do you think? I only, saw, I, only, I only saw the clip. Oh, yeah, okay, Farouk, you can go first. Yeah, yeah. He he does sound uh, for the little that I have seen. He does sound very exhausted, uh, sleep deprived, and of course we know that Nigerian big men don't sleep, and we saw one of his aides uh, brag about how he doesn't sleep that he keeps working until three a.m. or whatever, and I thought that was. Uh, that was not a good thing to say about anyone because we need the brain needs reset we need to sleep and when you don't sleep you are vulnerable to all kinds of verbal accidents you are and that speech itself the state that he was in does not inspire confidence when i see my leader looking that dejected down and out sleep deprived it doesn't uh, this speech the occasion and the demeanor that he exhibited don't go together so we need we need him and any, any other person who leads who uh, who is in a position to inspire people to sleep uh we learned that adults need at least uh seven hours of eight seven at, at least six hours of sleep um, so yeah i agree perfectly that he looked uh, thoroughly sleep sleep deprived and didn't inspire any confidence Okay, Moses, what is your take? I know. I mean, I, I was taken by, because I hadn't listened to the speech, uh, but I, I, I just saw the snippets that you played. And I was taken by the optics of it. You know, we can all agree that the nation is plagued by multiple problems that we probably will get into later. And um, if there is a consensus in the country that that's that's true, then on the occasion of Independence Day, uh, one expects the leader to come out and exhibit some energy, um, mental energy, physical energy, so that people can be inspired. People are going through a rough time, at least average people in Nigeria are. And um, if you take out the substance, maybe we can get into the substance later. Um, you know, the speech itself, the optics of it doesn't inspire any confidence. It doesn't uh, restore the credibility that the Nigerian government has lost for decades now. Citizens' uh, trust in the government has been broken. This speech doesn't do anything to restore that. And of course, the substance itself of the speech and, uh, and just the regular familiar empty promises that uh, we've become used to 
and that are never that, that never materialize in the lives of uh, citizens. So, and of course, you know, uh, you know, he he is he, he, he looked every bit as uh, described by Farouk, you know, exhausted and uh, you know he slurred some of his words. I noticed that as well. Uh, that that doesn't inspire confidence at all. Yes. Yeah, and uh, what do you guys think about the quality of the video? Remember, this this was recorded, and and this is from his TVC. You know, I I was thinking that since I started watching Nigerian leaders thirty years ago or more, it's still the same quality, NTA quality. Why can't <laughs> why can't we get something right? You know, just audio and and video. Yeah, as a communications person, I'll, I'll have to agree with that. Uh, we we don't seem to have evolved. We take joy in being stuck in babyhood, you know, perpetual babyhood. Uh, you you see that that quality of video. It's uh, it's nineteen eighties, maybe early nineteen nineties quality. And uh, we know, you know, NTA. There's a video that went viral a couple of months ago of a newscaster, you know, being hit by some of the yeah, appliances of the broadcast industry, whatever, on, on her, and it was it was horrible. And while that touched me on an emotional level, because she was a young woman just trying to make make it and trying to work, and the, the injury she incurred might hurt her spinal cord, and we don't know what the consequence that will be for her life going forward. But for me, it spoke to the 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 stone age infrastructure that we still deploy in broadcasting and this is in spite of uh, billions that are budgeted every year you know for broadcast industry we you know like mohammed the former minister of information you know outraged the sensibilities of nigerians when he asked for i don't i don't know how many it was some outrageous amount so that he could compete with cnn and uh, you know the other international broadcast stations I mean, and we knew, I don't know how much of that money he got, but we know that nothing has changed. He has, he has remained unevolved. All the years he has existed, and that's sad. Mm. Uh, Moses, uh, do, do you want to weigh in? Well, yes, in addition to that, you, you, you wonder uh, what his handlers are doing, especially those of them in charge of uh, his media and his image. You wonder what they are up to, and you wonder why they are not taking this seriously. The Independence Day speech is amongst among the most important speech a Nigerian president will give. Yeah. And so everything has to be right. There is no margin for error, uh, both in terms of the technical production and in terms of the speech itself. Uh, so you know what? You know I don't I don't I don't I don't get why you have this uh, army of media aides, and they can't get something as simple as. Uh, uh, an Independence Day broadcast right in terms of the technical quality. Because remember, this broadcast has an international audience as well. And so it, it, this broadcast has a way of either projecting the image of Nigeria or undermining the image and credibility of the country amongst international audiences. You want to see a speech, as, uh, especially as those of us who live in the diaspora, you want to see a speech by your president that in all aspects, in the technical production aspect, in the speech writing aspect, in the delivery aspect, in the optics, you want it, that makes you proud to be a Nigerian. And we saw none of that in this uh, speech. And the technical, the, the, the Stone Age uh, technical quality, as my friend Farouk calls it, I think is a, I think is probably the most visible, uh, visibly embarrassing aspect of the speech, forgetting the quality, the, the substance, and forgetting the the way the president looked in delivering it. But that's just, there's just no excuse for that uh, in 2023. All right. I, I read the speech before watching it. And um, if you hand that speech over to someone else, um, just anybody else, it will come out better than it did um, on that uh, Tinubu's uh, voice. Uh, so the, the writing was was good, um, but I don't know about the content, which is a different thing, which we have to get to. The only thing I saw in the speech that was something new was that workers, the low level workers, will get 25000 for the next six months. 
and this is federal workers, I believe. Not um, whenever they talk about money, they want to give. They are not going to go to the street and <laughs> give money to anybody. So, so that's their own idea of solving the hardship that people are facing now. Uh, what do you think about that, uh, Farouk? Yeah, well, for me, that's uh, it, it, it's uh, it falls short of expectations. Uh, for a president who was uh, very quick to announce that subsidies were gone on inauguration day without calibrating the consequences that this will have on the lives of everyday folks in the country, this response coming months after this precipitous uh, announcement uh, fell short of expectation. One, as you rightly said, is going to affect only federal workers and it's time limited. We are talking of just six months. What happens after six months? And this is particularly arcing because this is got this, you know, since last, since May, we have seen, it, it, the only growth we've seen is in government, the personnel of government. This is the most uh, bloated government we've seen since independence. We have way more ministers now than we have ever had, you know, in the history of Nigeria. And the governors are taking a cue from that. You, you read of governors appointing 100 aides, and then the following, when there's an outrage, the following, you think that they will back down. The following week you hear, oh, another 94 have been added as aides. So government is being grown, but the people's lives are not growing. And the people, you know, although we live in the diaspora, I'm permanently in touch with folks back home. Some of the proudest, most contented, self-assured middle-class people that I've known have suddenly turned to beggars. And they are not beggars because they have the lack of pride. It's, it's an existential torment that they are going through and they need help. I've never seen this level of desperation, this level of poverty. You know, you know, in, in, so adding 25,000 to low wage work, to low end workers, not, the, not any other person. I mean, frankly, it's it's worse than a palliative because a palliative is something that that, that takes, takes care of little pain without actually addressing, you know, the pain itself. You know, it's like blowing air into a wound to give it temporary relief, but then the wound itself still is still there. This is actually worse than that because, in light of what has come, uh, what has become of uh, the lives of a lot of people, twenty five thousand doesn't do anything, and the fact that it's just for six months frankly, uh, makes me wonder what they are thinking about and why this was going to be a solution to the problems that they have created. It's unnecessary. It was They could have avoided this. But mm -hmm. I will allow Moses to talk and then we can talk because I have a lot to say about uh, the subsidy removal and the consequences it's having on the lives of people. All right, Moses. Well, it's, it's the height of uh, insensitivity, I, I feel, to what this uh, government has unleashed, the hardship that this government has unleashed through, uh, to, on Nigerians through its uh, management of the economy, through its fiscal policies, its monetary policies. Um, every decision that this government has made has made life worse for Nigerians. And to com come out with this announcement it just goes to show the extent to which uh, the government is disconnected to the everyday struggles of Nigerians. The level of disconnect, quite frankly, is frightening because this announcement. All right. So we lost uh, Moses for. Uh -oh. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, so this announcement represents for me a doubling down on some of the same uh, policies. Uh, that got us to this mess. It doesn't represent a departure from those policies. It doesn't represent the spirit of self-critique and self-examination and, and taking, taking a few steps backwards and re-examining what you've done and making amends and listening to Nigerians' uh, cries and lamentations and doing something about it. It doesn't represent humility, humility of thought, humility in governance. It represents, quite frankly, an insult on Nigerians because, you know, in the newspapers, on social media, Nigerians have been groaning and moaning 
about their everyday struggles. And what do you do about it? You come up with this uh, six month, uh, 25,000 uh, Naira increment insult. What about the fundamentals? What about addressing what brought us here to this, uh, to this situation? So for me, it's, it's, it's indifferent, it's insensitive, but it's also an insult. And if this is an indication of what's to come, then it's uh, quite frankly, we have to brace ourselves. You know, because it's 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 uh, it's frightening to think that we are still in the introduction, introductory phase of this administration, and and that the full effects of some of these policies are yet to unfold. Yeah, that is what is really, really depressing about uh, this today's speech. Good, uh, Farouk. The key thing that he talked about was the oil subsidy removal. Um, he continued to essentially double down. He pretended as if there was no problem already because we read in other newspapers that they started paying for subsidy. Yeah. And if they are not paying, there is a subsidy because if you look at the exchange rates and you look at the price of crude, there cannot be, it, there's no way, there's no subsidy. If, if they are following, if they floated it the way they told us. So what is, what is your make on this? That's, that's a sub, that was the subject of my column on Saturday. Uh, an enterprise uh, news report from the Daily Trust uh, which was based on their own investigation showed that indeed uh, the government paid billions to subsidize uh, petrol consumption and uh, so that basically is a, a backhanded acknowledgement of what some of us have been saying for years that you cannot be an oil producing country be the poverty capital of the world have no systematic public transportation and then precipitously remove first subsidies and think that it's not going to have consequences on the lives of everyday folks. And right now, Nigeria has regressed to the stone age. Most people cannot move. Farmers cannot um, transport their food products because of exorbitant extortionate transport fares, which are justified because, you know, the pump price of petrol is unaffordable. And those who manage to transport their goods have to the push back the cost, the additional cost onto the consumers. And I have heard, you know, you know, a lot of people living in Lagos, Abuja, these are otherwise crowded cities, that you see, the streets are abandoned. Everything, every, you know, life looks, it's, it's, it's like it's deserted, that Nigeria feels like it's deserted. And given that we are, we have no public transportation, you know, this this sort of this is reckless and irresponsible. And I have wondered for how long they are, this is going to continue, because frankly, you know, the English say even the warm we turn. That is to say, there is a limit to human endurance of pain, and at some point, people will have to react. And this is because you know we are talking about a situation where governments, government fat cats, are getting fatter. The government is being grown. There's not a single instance, not one, of sacrifice on the part of people who are making these policies. They are, in fact, expanding the ministries, getting more aid, their, their families, while the lives of everyday folks in Nigeria is regressing and people are, people are finding it hard to survive. The will to live is leaving a lot of people. And they think that this is going to continue and no one's going to do anything. This is the trigger, as I said in my column, typically... Uh, um, what they call brain, um, sorry, uh, bread riots are the triggers of a uh, historic momentous mass insurrections. And although Nigerians are very docile, self hypnotic people who think that everything, but I, I, the level of deprivation that I see in Nigeria, I don't know for how long people are going to cope with it. And it's this has been perpetrated by people who have been beneficiaries of all kinds of subsidies all their freaking lives. But they want to they want to suffocate the people they want to uh, crush people in the name of some idiotic washington consensus that says subsidies are bad we live in america all of us here on this in this studio live in america and we know that petrol consumption is subsidized by billions of dollars every year in countries of the west in the western countries where petrol is not subsidized there's very well developed organized systematic public transportation in Canada, you don't need to have a car because the public transportation works. 
It connects every part of the country together, wherever there are people there. So if you had a car, it's a luxury. But we know that there is a gas tourism. That is Canadian who lives in the border. They come to the United States to get cheaper gas. In Europe, if you ride a car, it's a luxury. So you deserve to pay whatever amount that it costs in Europe because they have very well developed public transportation. In Nigeria, there's no public transportation and people are suffering. I'm, I'm getting emotional, but so let me, let me pause and allow Moses to talk because yeah. this is an issue about which I really, really uh, get very agitated. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Moses. You know, Farouk has hit the right notes on this issue. Um, it boggles the mind, quite frankly, why the people in government don't see what other people see. Is there something in the water, in the in Asu Rock and in this uh, citadels of power? Is there something about getting into that space of power and becoming suddenly numb to people's suffering? Uh, one, one doesn't know. Uh, it's a mystery to me uh, why Chinubu and his government you know, have persisted on this path of subsidy removal and punishing the regular people of Nigeria without first, without first looking to uh, squeeze out any sacrifice from the ruling classes, from they themselves, without asking for anything of themselves. Secondly, uh, sometimes one wonders, can these people who make these policies, who make these decisions, and I think I want to extend something that Farouk said and uh, something that I think came out in his column. But, but I would challenge them, quite frankly, I would challenge Tinubu and his government to point to a single country, just one, not two, that has been, whose economy has recovered from implementing some of these neoliberal policies that demonize subsidy, especially subsidy that is uh, paid on a critical commodity, a commodity that is critical to national survival, to mobility, to trade, a commodity that affects everything. How many countries in the world can they point to? But I will challenge them to point to one where some of these policies have worked. They cannot because such a country does not exist. And that is a fact. So if that is the case, you know, I said earlier that these people are insensitive, they are indifferent, they are callous. You can choose, you can choose any, uh, adjective you want to describe their state of mind because it's a mystery to me but to even go beyond that it, it, it when you when you listen to this speech and you listen you, as you rightly said rudolph you listen to the president double down on some of these policies and defend these policies vigorously and, and fanatically it makes you wonder why he's stuck on this path because he's a thinking man he's a rational man you know People in this government have a fair level of education and they have the capacity for self-critique. So why are they not seeing what others, other people are seeing? That it's not working. The Naira float is a, is a disaster. The subsidy removal has been a disaster. You know, it has devastated the lives of Nigeria. It has devastated and, and whatever was left of uh, the economy, uh, you know, after Buhari's ATA systematic destruction of the economy, whatever was left, has now been vanquished by these policies. But it then makes some of us wonder why they can't see these things. And you are left with no choice but to wonder whether Nigerians who have been saying that Tinubu has a legitimacy crisis, right? Because of all the controversies surrounding his election and all the ongoing litigation surrounding the election and, and the paranoia that exists within his camp about all the problems that plague the elections, whether he feels this sense of illegitimacy to the extent of hurting his own citizens with policies that would please the international community and the West in particular, so that they would bestow on him recognition and credibility that he so desperately craves. You know, uh, when this, this line of thought was uh, first introduced, some of us just thought, well, you know, conspiracy theories, maybe, you know, Nigerians, you know, it's a free world. Anyone can, uh, uh, can, can introduce any leap of logic and introduce any. But, you know, it's beginning to sound that that's the case. That's what is going on. Because how else do you explain that after seeing the outcome of these policies from uh, May when he took over to now, 
and seeing how the poverty has deepened, how suffering has uh, deepened, how the situation has progressively gotten worse, the economy is in shambles. How else do you explain his doubling down on some of these policies, especially the subsidy removal that brought us to this mess in the first place? So one has to go back to some of that theory that this man is too, so desperate to gain recognition and credibility and to be recognized as the authentic, legitimate leader of this country, that he would do anything to please the West. You know, I could even uh, introduce another uh, thought as I, as, I, as I round up, which is the Niger debacle, the response to the coup in Niger. Why was he so desperate to go to the last option, to the last, everyone recognizes military intervention as the last option. Why was Tinubu so desperate to get to that option, to use that as a first option, as, as, a, as a, an action of first resort? Again, it's beginning to look uh, believable that people who say, well, he did that because, again, he wanted to please France and the United States, and he wanted to use that as a way to overcome his legitimacy uh, anxiety. It's beginning to look, look, look like those people may have a point. So that, that is, I will leave it there. I was, I was... I was actually one of the people to uh, suggest to, to say that and in my my column that uh, the the wild-eyed eagerness with which he talks about this subsidy remover and this uh, nonsensical neoliberal prescriptions that the World Bank I mean a lot many leaders in the past Buhari in particular you know was was never warm to these things but you know he says it with the eagerness of a child who is discovering a new world and when he was at new york stock exchange you know recently he also mentioned it we remove fuel subsidies because he knows he knows the target of uh, this rhetoric and um the financial press look at the western financial press bloomberg financial times all of them he has very favorable mentions there at Reuters, whenever they write stories about him, they will always say that, oh, he's uh, executing much needed progressive reforms. You know, so he, he cherishes the, the favorable mentions he gets in the Western press. That is more important to him than what the everyday folks back home in Nigeria think. So frankly, Moses, it's not even conspiracy theories. It's, it's something that he himself shows in every single word he utters, when he mentions these policies and the, the audiences he targets and the results, he's seen the results. He has very favorable uh, Western perception. He has a very favorable perception of his reforms in the West Western press. So, and, and he thinks that's more important because of course uh, our, our leaders, a lot of them have, uh, him included, have challenges with their self, self concept. You know, they, have, they, they think of themselves as inferior and they have this paternalistic thirst for affirmation from uh, the almighty fatherly West. And so, you know, even good Lord Jonathan once said that Nigerians were being overly critical of him when people in the West, including Obama, say he was doing a good job. He was basically implying if Obama, the father, and he called him the father of the world, sorry, the, the president of the world. He said Obama is like the president of the world. He said I was doing a good job. But back home here, people, people are criticizing him. So there's that mindset. And he runs through every single president we've had, you know. So he is not unique to uh, Bola Tinubu, but I, I think we should get to a point where we have people who are self-assured, who are self-confident, who have faith in their own humanity and can stand up and defend policies that benefit their people and not satisfy the West. All right, thank you, uh, Moses. Let, let's expand this because one of the other things uh, he mentioned was uh, the central bank. He, he said that he was cleaning the house and that the investigators are about to reveal so many things that happened there. Um, so, so on that part, they, they, you can say that they are doing something to reveal what happened. And, but again, if you talk about the subsidy, you know that the people that travel to, to India with him, we are actually the people who, who are the ones bringing this uh, crude and the people who are being paid this subsidy. Why is it that you are talking about removing subsidy, dealing with uh, cleaning it up, but you are not doing anything about the past, the stealing that happened? That is, uh, that is the thing that really gets, gets, gets one uh, worked up. Uh, because it seems like every time they want us to believe that they are taking some steps backwards, 
you know, they're actually taking a few steps. Uh, they, they want us to believe that they are taking a few steps forward. They're actually taking steps backwards because we've seen this movie before, quite frankly, with previous administrations coming in and pretending to fight corruption and pretending to want to know what happened in terms of the financial management and the management of the economy. I'm making a few examples of a few people uh, isolating a few scapegoats that they didn't like to begin with and that they would want they wanted to teach a lesson you know and then and then you know trying to milk those cases for as much as they can uh in uh, in Chinubus, nigeria mfla is that uh, person that uh, poster child you know of uh, corruption that they've uh, put up and it, it just, quite frankly just lacks credibility all the pronouncements coming out of the investigation lacks credibility uh, because why would you, why would you claim that you are, you want to know what happened in the CBN when you are unwilling to even mention this corruption in the subsidy payment regime? You are unwilling to mention it, let alone do something about it. So that shows the level of, um, you know, it just shows you not to be sincere. Number two, uh, what about? the bloatedness of your government because ultimately we, we want to give if you want to give Butinubu the benefit of the doubt with regards to the cbn probe you want you want to believe that the object of it the ultimate aim of it is to save nigeria money so that we have money to do things to execute uh, infrastructural projects so that we claw back some of the monies that have been stolen so you are if if, if in fact you give him the benefit of the doubt and you believe that he's going to actually do that it will tantamount to him recovering some money from the CBN, but also just use channeling that money to his army of uh, appointees and aides. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't do the country any good. So uh, it's uh, the razzmatazz that we've come to expect that we always see with new governments, they come in and they, 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 they go crazy with, I mean, I think also they are pandering to Nigerians. I think Nigerians are a bit naive, if I may say so, because uh, they want to see these types of action. They want to see Every government that comes in knows that uh, these types of actions, especially the media that it, uh, that these actions get, uh, tend to resonate quite well with some Nigerians. Some Nigerians, that's what they want to see. They want to see people being handcuffed, important people being handcuffed, especially somebody as big as the central bank governor uh, being helpless. And they want to see the power, the powerful, the once powerful being rendered powerless. And it goes a long way to buy the government some mileage and some People, people are willing to give the government credit for that. And the government knows it very well. But ultimately, this is going to be settled. There's going to be some compromise and uh, people will intervene. The owners of Nigeria, the elites of Nigeria will intervene in the matter. Nothing will come out of it. There might be some quid pro quo deals. Yeah, and then the MFLA will go scot-free. The central bank mess will be swept under the rug. We've seen it with previous probes. Uh, the subsidy thieves of the past have been left alone. The subsidy thieves of the Buhari regime for eight years, they basically bankrupted Nigeria because of all the subsidies that were paying to them. That's why we went to borrow all these monies. That's why we we're borrowing to pay salaries. The government was borrowing to pay interest on previously uh, secured loans, not to pay the principals on those loans, but to pay interest. We we're borrowing to pay interest. That's how bad things got. And if you are not willing to do anything about all of that theft, you know, and you are focusing only on the CBN, it makes you believe, well, you know, MFLA did the currency swap or currency recoloring policy targeting Tinubu. It just makes it look like this is payback time and this is just personal vendetta against uh, MFLA and his uh, tenure in the CBN. So uh, forgive me if I'm, uh, if I'm skeptical, like most Nigerians, on this issue. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. Farouk, let me let me ask you about this uh, currency exchange rate. When they put it out there, they were saying that the goal is to save money for for the country. Uh, people who understand these things are now saying that if you don't have foreign reserve, you shouldn't float your currency, and that's why we have the exchange rate that we have now. Uh, do Do you think um, they understood what they <laughs> what they were proposing? <laughs> is this where they want it to be? Absolutely not. You know, it's, it's obvious. And uh, But before I even talk about that, I wanted to talk about subsidy thieves mm. and some of the clips of the independent speech that you showed us. 
you know, showed clearly, you know, the demonization of the subsidy thieves, people who make money from subsidies. And it's a, it's a very well chosen strategic um, rhetorical device because these subsidy thieves are not visible. So in rhetorical study, we say they are like a floating signifier. Anyone, you, so they just leave it to the imagination of Nigerians to sort of guess who these thieves are. And since they're not real people, you know, it's anger that is directed and expended on unseen enemies. So it diverts attention away from them and onto an enormous, um, a, 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 an amorphous, almost non-existent group. So it's it's well chosen. But the, the question that Nigerians should ask, and I want us to have a conversation about this. We have subsidy thieves. We we'll talk about them all the time. Why has no administration instituted investigatory panels to look at these people? How much money have they stolen? Let them account for the money they have stolen. Bring them to justice. Why, why is that not even a conversation? But every single moment, they whip off up people into a frenzy about this so-called class of subsidy thieves. But we have never been able to, is government that import, important? Is it that powerless that you cannot actually uh, institute an investigation to these people so that the monies that they have stolen will be recovered? But you know why they're not doing that? Because the governments in power all through are complicit in the theft. And that's why historically, subsidy payments quadruple. They increase exponentially during election years. Look at it from, from Obasanjo's re-election in 2003 until now. Every election year, look at the graph. I look at the graph one, and I was like, wow. So government agents are acting in cahoots. So they cannot catch these people because who gives them the money? It's government. The same government that gives these subsidy thieves the money is the one that comes out and says they have stolen. They cannot get, they, they didn't dip their hands into the public treasury without the intervention of government. It wasn't like government money was sitting somewhere and then subsidy thieves said, hey, get us this money, let's uh, subsidize for it. No, it was like government agents gave them money. That is why they cannot investigate subsidy thieves. But they use the image of a subsidy thief, of subsidy thieves, of marketers who are benefiting um, from it, their families and their small circle, like Tinubu just did in, in something, as a rhetorical wedge to get people riled up. And then people, you know, shift their attention away from the fact that it is government agents that make that happen. So I want us, I want, I would, I want a situation where Nigerians redirect that conversation into saying, let us investigate who are these subsidy thieves. If they are thieves and they are mortgaging our future, they have maimed our present, why do we allow them to go scot-free? No one does that in real life. When someone steals and they are still there, they are harming you and they are still within your midst and you leave them untouched, unharmed, uh, unaccounted for. It doesn't happen in real life. Why is it happening in governance? You know, so I think, yeah, that, that really gets to me. And uh I was having a conversation with someone yesterday about after, who was reacting to my column, who is obviously a government uh, apologist. I was talking about, you know, we need to deal with this subsidy. And I said, okay, have you ever written a public, uh, an article, because he's prominent, asking that governments institute probes of these subsidy thieves? No, he has not. So, you know, to go back to your question, I think a lot of these things they are doing is simply to they are, they are simply just going, you know, let's, what are the prescriptions that the World Bank wants? Yeah, uh, float this, your, your, your currency. So that, so, you know, the, the, the idea is that it's going to bring in investment. When your, subs, when your currencies are low against, say, the dollar, or it's going to make people say, oh, okay, my money is going to amount to a lot when I invest there. So that encourages them. And again, that's very naive thinking. People don't invest in your country because they want to help you. It's a self-interested uh, economic activity. And we saw, I was reading an article by someone about foreign, you know, companies that exist in Nigeria. They make a lot of money and they take that money out, you know, into their own. So apart from the people they employ, that's it. The bulk of that money goes out back to their own country. So uh, if uh, the motivation for devaluing your currency, of course, I know it's a little more complicated than I'm saying it, is to attract foreign investment, as some of them say, 
it's a very naive uh, way of uh, development. No country has ever developed on the basis of foreign investment. So it's something. Um, it's uh, so while you are doing that, you are killing domestic industries. You know, a lot of industries cannot survive now because of the extortionate cost of uh, energy. Yeah. So you have local industries are dying, but you are saying you are bringing in foreign investment that will not even come because, frankly, it's very calculative, self-directed, self-interested venture. If, they, if it's going to bring them money, they'll go there. If it's not going to bring them money, they're not going to go there. It doesn't matter what you do. You know, so um, that's that's my take on that. If I, if I may just uh, chip in two, with two more points on this uh, currency floats thing. I think it is a, an asinine policy for two other reasons. One is that it is often advanced as a way to cheapen your imports, right? To cheapen, cheapen your exports rather, to make your exports more attractive. Uh, in the context of a monocultural economy where your, 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 your main export is oil and the price of oil is determined in the international commodities market, oil market, you have no control over it. That, that point is null and void. That point doesn't apply. It, 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 it just doesn't work mm -hmm. because oil is your main export. So uh, any other country, if you are another country where you have an export whose price is not determined in the international market, then maybe that would work uh, theoretically. But in the case of Nigeria, that doesn't work. Secondly, the currency float was an escapist policy. What do I mean by that? Uh, we had a situation where, for whatever reason, and, you know, you and I can guess the reasons. In Nigeria, there's often a, a sinister reason behind these things. We had multiple exchange rates. Yes. <laughs> right. And and you know, it was it was deliberate. It was intentional. It was uh, a, a rent uh, a rent seeking arrangement to allow some people, some well connected people, to obtain dollars at a cheaper rate and sell them in the black market. It was just easy money for you know some people, some well connected people. But what is the solution to that? The solution to that is to harmonize the rates, not to float the naira. If you are going to have a fixed rate, let it apply to everybody. Let it apply to Dangote. Let it apply to the businessmen uh, importing goods from uh, wherever, Hong Kong, in Inewi, or in Naba. Let it apply to the, the, the parents whose kids are going to school in Canada or in the US and who need dollar. Let it apply to everybody. That is how a serious, sincere government deals with this situation. You want to fix it, you want to let that fixed rate apply, to harmonize it, let there be one rate for everybody. But how does this government respond to that in order to escape again, similar to the subsidy situation where the government does not want to take on the so-called, this amorphous subsidy, thing, does not want to do anything about subsidy theft and, and instead unleashes, you know, and unloads the burden of, of, of that, that problem on Nigerians, similar to that, instead of harmonizing the rate and taking away the opportunity that elites use to make easy money for themselves, which is the existence of these multiple exchange rates, the government says, we're just going to float the Naira. You know, we're just going to float it. And look at the disaster that that has become. Look at the inflation that has been unleashed. Look at what has become of the Nigerian economy. So I think it's another, it's part of the pattern. It's, part, it's another example where the government, instead of doing something that will hurt the, it's it, the interest of people in government, the interest of the political elite, chooses to an option that is calculated to unleash suffering on the Nigerian people, which is basically to float the naira, you know, and make it sound smart. That's the thing. They, they've made subsidy removal to sound a bit smart. They've tried. They've made uh, the floating of the naira to sound smart, to sound consistent with some liberal, uh, you know, transcendental economic thinking. Oh, you know, you have to float your naira. The naira has to be determined. The value of the naira has to be determined by market forces. <laughs> this, 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 this nonsense that you hear all the time. But it's an, it's a way. It's an escapist solution to a real problem. It, a problem that can be easily solved. That could have been easily solved by simply harmonizing the rates and having one rate and having it apply to everyone. Instead, you know, you have the naira float, which government apologists are defending everywhere as some smart idea. Some uh, smart economic uh, prescription for the for the economy. All right, uh, thank you. We we have a lot of uh, topics to cover, but we're already in the forty nine minutes. But let me let me ask this. I, I hear people who defend the government say, like you like you said, Moses, that this is a wonderful idea. 
um, let's let's go back to briefly for one more time on the subsidy. Who is actually paying for this? Because they say that it's the guys that own the car, it's the guys that are um, that we are subsidizing this for. But now it appears as if the poor people are the ones who are paying for this removal of subsidy. They are the ones who are spending more than half of their money to transport themselves back and forth from work. How do you, can we ever get back to when the naira will be will be seven hundred naira to a dollar? Well, I don't know whom we are directing this, but, but, yeah. I, want to talk about, but I, want to, I want to talk about the the cost of uh, the subsidy removal. Mm -hmm. You know, when you said now we we know that it's the poor people who are uh, paying for this uh, subsidy removal uh, more than any other class of people. I have a friend who works at uh, who is the CEO of uh, a private health insurance company in Abuja, and he told me that more than half of his workers resigned because they could not afford to go to work from the satellite towns where they live to the downtown Abuja, the commercial center where the office is located. They asked for pay raise, but he's not able to afford the pay raise because that would just tank his company. But a lot of workers say the cost of getting from their satellite towns to downtown Abuja on a monthly basis was way higher than what they were getting on a monthly basis, or their monthly salary. So it made no sense to work and they resigned on mass. And this is just one example. It's happening all over. In Lagos, I've met, I've known people who have who just left their job because the job made no sense. It costs more to go to work than to earn for the work you have done. So all the people who have said subsidy benefited only the rich. Now I, I hope that they are they are they are seeing practical examples of people. I mean, sub, where, where, how subsidy actually benefits the, you know the poor. There are a lot of people who have stopped going to school because they cannot afford the transport fare from their hometowns to the locations of the university they go to. Uh, even within, so it has made a mess of the existing realities in Nigeria. And my problem has always been that if you can make things better for people, don't make it worse. That's what this subsidy remover has done. Buhari has been doing his own remover. He, they, they will increase the prices of uh, petrol and call it total subsidy remover. In fact, it's not. I kept a record of my columns about this and I realized that almost every regime always said they, they had removed subsidy totally and that was it. And then the next time they will rehabilitate the same argument that they use and say, oh, sorry, that was pressure remover. Now this is total. Now, now we are seeing that with Tinubu who said that was totally was gone for good. But then he 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 spent three, six point something billion because he realizes that if things were left to the vagaries of the international oil market, if the invisible hand were to be the major regulator. By now, Nigeria should be paying a thousand plus per liter. That's what that's the that's a fair price of petrol in the market right now, and it could go to two thousand. So it will get to a point where people will just be immobile. People will just sit and not do anything. And you know, we know what that. We don't know what that, what the consequence of that will be because I have learned not to invest too much hope on the capacity of Nigerians to protect their own lives and and, and protest. But we don't know where this is, and I'm sure they say, look, we can't allow this to happen. And this right there is at the core of the arguments we've been making. The point of a government is to ease the hurt that life occasionally throws at them. You know, if you cannot, we live in the United States here. This is, we're not paying the fair price of oil in the market. That's not the fair price we're paying. Even milk. Even milk, we're not paying the fair price. Because if we are to pay the so-called fair price according to market forces, we would not. That's why European oil, uh, the the gas for the price, gas price for in the European is way higher. It's like eight dollars in some places, eleven, twelve per liter. We are paying three at most four here. Why? Because they know for 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 reasons that are that grew out of Nigerian I mean, America's culture. People don't like public transportation. And then we have the airline lobby that does not want where they develop public transportation. And the rugged individualism of America want them to have, they want to have their own cars. So what is the government doing? Say, well, we realize that this is the cultural, um, this, this, this is the cultural milieu in which we live. 
if oil prices are, are high, as, as high as they are in Europe or Canada, there's going to be revolt. And we know that historically, any government that supervises very high gas always loses elections. It doesn't matter who they are, what your trajectory is. You lose elections. So that's the point of government, is to make life a little easier for people and not throw them into the elements, the fury of the elements, and say, oh, well, that's the market forces. But they themselves, their very lives are highly subsidized. These are, I call them government-subsidized fat cats. That's what they are. Every single moment of their life is subsidized. But the little uh, 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 sacrifice that they make to ensure that that extends, the, it's just a little bit of that to, to everyday folks. This is what they are protesting now. But every single aspect of road construction is reading with corruption. Every single thing that they do is, 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 is a, they pack it up. But now they say, oh, just because there's corruption in oil subsidy, we're not going to tackle that corruption. We're not going to get, we're not going to bring to justice the people who are perpetrating that corruption. We're just going to remove it outright. It's like a father saying, oh, the person I have contracted to feed my children has been has been uh, pilfering the money. So in anger, I'm going to say, okay, you thief that have, you've been pilfering resources that I give you to feed my children, I'm not going to do anything about you. I'm just going to abuse you and tell people what a horrible person you are. People don't even know you anyway. And then I'm going to stop feeding my children. Let them just starve and die. That's basically what it is. And mm. I, I think it's reckless and irresponsible. I, I, I'm going to repeat that. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Moses. Yes. You know, have you have we asked ourselves one question? Uh, when it comes to this subsidy discussion, we, 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 we the, the claim of the government is that we Nigerians collectively now own about 20% or 30%, whatever the number they be, uh, shares in the Dangote refinery yeah. that is about to start operations, right? So we bought into that refinery as a way of domesticating refining, as a way of getting out of this quagmire, this conundrum of having to import, being an oil uh, producing country that imports refined petrol. So Dangote was supposed to essentially be uh, a savior in this situation to so save us from this problem of importation and therefore subsidy payment because subsidy payment relates to importation you stop importation the subsidy automatically goes away why did i read recently that first of all number one they've been emphasizing it even the spokesperson for the Chinobu government this ajure galili person yeah said clearly and he repeated himself multiple times just to drive home the point that even when angote refinery starts producing the price the pump price of petrol will not uh, be affected will not drop it, it it boggles the mind it's inconsistent with the law of economics because now you've gotten rid of a lot of the costs associated with the importation of petrol yeah. right the, the the freight charges the demorage all of this other the middlemen, commissions, and so on. The, the refining is being done, will be done in Lagos. Why will the, that not automatically bring down the pump price of petrol? And why would the government spokesperson who is concerned or, or, or claim to be concerned about the suffering of Nigeria not be repeating that canard that, it's the, 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 that the, the, the operation of the Dangote refinery has no bearing on the pump price of fuel? That's number one. The second point is this. I read recently that the Dangote refinery is set to start operation around October, November. I don't know what the date is. But that it will be importing the crude oil that it will be refining. Now, to be honest, I don't know about you, yeah. but, that, but that to me was uh, <laughs> you know, so, such a mysterious... Uh, you know, I thought I was educated. I thought I had a little bit of an education. And there are, but there are certain things that honestly leave me stumped because... I, I, with all my, with my little education, can't understand the logic behind it. Now, why would Dangote be importing crude oil to feed its refinery when we have the crude right here? Even if you don't have the pipeline infrastructure to pipe it directly from its production area to the Dangote refinery in Lagos, why not truck? Why not use badges? Why not uh, truck, even truck them if you have to? Truck the truck the truck the crude the crude as they do here in the U.S. By the way, right? So it, it, 
And then when I, when I, I, I was so dumbfounded by this, this news that I read, at first I thought it was fake news, but it turned out to be true. So I, I put it to my Facebook followers. I actually crowd, I was crowdsourcing, as they say. And I said, you know what? I am a professor. I like to believe that I'm capable of logical thinking. But can anyone help explain the logic behind this move to me? And explain it to me slowly, like somebody who never went to school, you know, as you, as you would explain something to a four-year-old, please, you know, so that I grasp the logic behind it. And I still don't understand it. Because if you have a 20% share in the Dangote refinery or 30%, that should give you leverage to dictate certain terms to Dangote or to, not to dictate, but to actually be able to negotiate certain terms with Dangote. And I would think that it would make sense for one of those terms to be to tell Dangote, look, you know, Nigeria has this acute need uh, for petrol and Nigeria is in this embarrassing situation of being a petrol, a crude oil producing country that imports the bulk, if not all, of its uh, refined products. You know, we are counting on you to bail us out of this problem. And because we helped you, we gave you loans. The CBN, by the way, gave Dangote a lot of loans, yeah. in addition to the 20% or 30% share that we bought in that refinery. So because of all of this magnanimity that we have shown to you, we want you to, we will set aside 400 barrels of crude oil or 500 barrels, whatever it is, that will be refined to meet the domestic production for you to refine and sell to Nigerians directly. And the rest of it, whatever you do with the rest of your refined product is your business. You want to export it to Ghana, to Ivory Coast, to other countries, that's your business. But at least you owe this much to Nigerian, to Nigerians and to Nigeria that give you a platform to become what you've become, but also that invested heavily uh, in this refinery that give you the capital that, that have brought this refinery to fruition. So I, I, I don't know why nobody thought of that, or I don't know why they didn't think of that. But, you know, my, 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 my go-to explanation for these types of uh, scandalously, scandalously stupid uh, negligence is corruption. Is that certain people are in cahoots with Dangote himself and doesn't want, uh, don't want to impose that type of uh, condition on Dangote. Uh, because it will mean that then, then Dangote, when he, if he agrees to that condition, will be refining the 500 or 400,000 barrels exclusively for the Nigerian market and will have to sell it at, uh, at, a, at a rate that will, uh, that will make sense, that will be consistent with you know, Nigeria providing him with the crude, which will be much lower, the, which will bring the pump price of uh, petrol much lower than it is today. And that the marketers, the cartels, everybody who has an interest in this business of fuel importation will be affected one way or the other. So my sense is that it is this conglomerate of interest that have scuttled this commonsensical solution to this problem. So it is one angle that I want Nigerians to pay attention to going forward, because I haven't seen it gain a lot of visibility and attention in the media. Mm. All right. So we are going to, before we go to our audience, uh, let them in. Uh, there's this uh, breaking news, uh, I think it happened last night, about um, the case in, in Chicago, the article case against Tinubu. Um, so we are now going to have, um, according to the judge, the Tinubu has to, um, the university, they have to come in, uh, turn in the papers and come in for the position. Um, let's just imagine that the worst case will happen, which is that we are going to see all the documents. Um, so Moses, if, if we see all the documents and all the fears that people have been pointing as they are true, what will happen? Your, Rudolph, your guess is as good as mine. I think, um, what would, what would happen is uh, we would have had, as Nigerians, a clearer, much clearer picture of uh, the person who today is recognized as the president of our country. Whether you like, like him or not, whether you voted for him or not, uh, if you carry that passport, he's your president. And so what would happen is for us to get a full disclosure of into at least one aspect, just one aspect of this man's life, the, the part of his life that he spent in the US uh, and the part of his life in the US that he spent attending 
an educational institution. How truthful is it? Now, of course, Tinubu has a lot of other baggage, you know, in terms of his educational history, in terms of even his life history. Uh, I think another thing that it, it, re, it reopens some of those controversies, it will, especially if something is discovered in those records that don't quite, uh, that don't, doesn't quite match his claims in the documents he submitted to INEC, in the claims he's made in his uh, biographical documents. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, that, that ultimately might be Atiku's legacy, in, in my opinion, in forcing this university to release these records uh, so that this, these things become clear and so that maybe some of the controversy goes away or some of the questions are resolved in one direction or, or another. Uh, I don't quite see these documents or whatever revelations come out of these documents making their way into the Supreme Court. I think the case, uh, the election case in Nigeria goes to the Supreme Court now. I don't quite see these documents making their way into that, uh, that case. Uh, my understanding, although I have conflicting, I've talked to lawyers and they have conflicting views on this, but my understanding is that, uh, uh, you know, it will be hard to get uh, the Supreme Court to admit any new documents, but uh, that may not be totally true. So I don't know the legal consequences, the full legal consequences of uh, whatever comes out of this uh, document. But I do know that just as a Nigerian, I would, I would like to know, I would like to know the full educational history of the person who sits as president of my country. And I know many other Nigerians who are eagerly waiting for the outcome of this case to see how this case is ultimately resolved so that they can have clarity. I think as long as uh, the more, the longer this case continues, the, 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 the larger the crowd of uh, illegitimacy and, and, and doubt grow, uh, grows around Tinubu. Uh, it's not just with regards to the election, it's regards, with regards to his biography, his disputed biography, his educational, disputed educational histories. Uh, I don't think any country wants questions around this to be swirling around their leader. And so if this lawsuit, if this, the, the outcome of this lawsuit and these revelations, if Chicago State complies with this order and releases these documents, if nothing else, if these documents give us clarity, I think uh, Nigerians would, uh, would, would, would be thankful to Atiku. That's, uh, that's, I'll leave it there for now. Yes. Okay. So Farouk, worst case. Yes. Okay. Well, I think, again, I want to say that um, we owe a lot of gratitude to Atiku for the doggedness in uh, in pursuing this case but i'm not as optimistic about oh I, I i really don't think there's as much in it as people anticipate and because of the different systems we run the united states nigeria britain i see a lot of misunderstanding in this case and so people are priming themselves for information that is actually not there there are people who think that, oh, that's going to show that Tinubu did not attend Chicago State University. He did. If he didn't attend, there won't be records to talk about. Uh, there won't be dispute about what to reveal and not to reveal. And I wrote a column about uh, him definitely attending Chicago State University. And people who had uh, prepared their minds uh, to believe that he did not attend uh, were crossed. And for them, they were like, this man... At uh, um, submitted a certificate that was fake. And I said, yes, I looked at this. Uh, at the time I wrote the column, I hadn't even seen the certificate. I hadn't seen that what we call diploma here. He submitted a fake diploma. And so I can attend a university. I have the records there. But when it comes time to present my diploma, which are basically celebratory documents in the U.S., most employers will not ask you for your diploma. They'll ask for a transcript and directly from the university. Uh, if I attend in school and I fake and, and um, I'm requested to turn in my certificate in a different and I don't have it. And I say, oh, let me I think I can do the easy way out and just fake one document and submit. Does that suggest that I did not attend that university? It doesn't. And what I realized is that it takes just twenty six dollars to get a replacement diploma from Chicago State University. And it takes between six to, between eight to 10 weeks to get it. 
my sense is that Tinubu realized that they, he didn't have enough time. He had to fill out the paper. And then if you don't want to fill out the paper, you have to sign the FERPA form. That's the form that, uh, that uh, gives the right to someone other than you to get your diploma or your transcript on your behalf. And maybe it's a big man syndrome that what, what should I be doing that? So when, when I can actually go and fake the document. And so there is that, you know, if, if people hope that this is going to prove that he didn't attend Chicago State University, they're going to be disappointed because he did attend Chicago State University and graduated from it. But I think what this is, might reveal, and this is very interesting, that there have been a lot of whispers about him, his personality, who he really was, what he was before he came to the United States, or is, the, is he assuming someone, someone else's identity? Which schools did he attend? You know, and so in the, uh, if you look at the document, they say non-essential, which means that his transcript is still going to be uh, protected from being viewed. Uh, but what is going to the non-essential is going to be probably what, you know, there are questions about him assuming someone's identity. What certificate did he bring? And of course, because he didn't start at Chicago State University, he was just spent two years there. But he brought in documents from Daly College, which is called Southwest College, as basis to get admitted there. That will be in the records. So maybe that's considered non-essential because they're going to see that. So what I think is going to happen is that uh, the, the spiritedness, the desperation with which he seems to be fighting these documents from being seen, suggests to me that maybe those whispers are true after all. So we might find that the worst case scenario, we might find out that he did present documents to Southwest College, which became Daly College, that suggested that he graduated from certain secondary schools in Nigeria. And the people in those secondary schools were like, this year, 1968, you say you graduated from here? No, I did not know you. This, there was no such person as you who attended that. And that's going to give us clarity about the fact that, okay, he presented documents because he's been very silent about his pre-college education. In the INEC form, the, the new INEC form he submitted, he just attended, he just put Chicago State University. That's the only school he attended and has proof of attendance. The Registrar of the University has sworn under oath, which is a big deal in the United States. We, are, we all live in the United States here, that he did graduate from the school. But a lot of Nigerians don't understand how the system works here, and they're saying he did not graduate. No, that's not the issue. And I think Atiku himself and his lawyers, that's not what they're trying to establish. They're trying to establish what schools did he claim to have attended in Nigeria to get to this. And that's going to unravel his personality. The whispers about him assuming someone's personality may, may come to uh, light. And I saw one document that suggested that he took GCA levels and his subjects were in the sciences, you know, the hard sciences and with that name. So we're going to see before you wrote GCA levels, which secondary school did you attend? Did you claim to have attended? And so maybe that's what we're going to be seeing because that, that will fall under non-essential things in my own thinking. But well, what is essential? What, what do you think would be eliminated from? His transcript itself might be eliminated because, you know, FERPA rules, Moses knows this, every single year, in fact, now I have my FERPA uh, training to do. You have to, you have to guard against grades, uh, anything that's non-directory information. That means their grades, their whatever, those things, they are not to be exposed because if so long as you get federal grant, which most universities in the United States get federal grant, you cannot expose people's grades and anything relating to their performance. And doing that, you know, it's going to get universities into trouble. But these are direct information. What was your gender? People say he took a woman's uh, uh, identity and turned it into a man. As unlikely as that is, well, this is going to be an opportunity. What did they identify as when it came in? Was it male or female? That's non-essential. Uh, what secondary school did they say they attended when they, get, when they got there? Well, it will be a high school. That's non-essential. That, that doesn't expose anything about grades. And I think the article lawyers are more concerned about unraveling his identity. And so, I mean, I, I, it's, it's going to go to the point, if this person 
has an identity that is inconsistent with who he really is, should that not be disqualifying? Maybe that's an argument they're going to make. But for some of us, I don't think that's going to be uh, legally uh, a strong argument. But for someone like me, and I'm sure a lot of Nigerians who have had these uh, questions, you know, the, the, the mysteriousness about his personality. There's a lot that I know about him growing up in his home, but this is not information that I'm going to share publicly because, you know, I'm good, first, I'm going to be endangering the lives of people who share this information with me. And two, it's not even... Uh, it's not something you can defend with the resources of uh, evidence. So we just leave it that way. But this might provide a basis for us to know who he really who he really is. Uh, so uh, for me, as I say, once we know the secondary school, he claimed to have attended, that's it. That unravels everything. All right. Yeah. yeah especially, especially, especially since if we if we cast our minds back to when Ghani, when the late Ghani family sued him, yes, he had claimed when he ran for governor of Lagos State that he attended a particular yes. primary school and secondary school. That's right. And then you know, and then later on he removed those schools and he yes. claimed that there were mistakes made by one of his aides. Yes, that who filled the, the INEC form at that time on his behalf, and now those uh, schools don't appear in his uh, claims anymore. Yeah. And so that that takes us back to those questions. As to which which of the secondary schools, which yes. are, we know, so th th those a lot of uh, we, we just we just deserve and we need clarity yeah. on this issue. Yes. All right. So um, you guys just uh, published a book. I think today is the day publication day of your book. This life no balance. Um, the other person is uh, of course Osi. Uh, Osi is not here. He will still join us if if he gets home on time. But what is what is um, how did this come about? How did three of you come together to write write this book? Oh, my brother, so <laughs> let, 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 <laughs> it, it is it is OC and the family that got uh, that entangled me in this. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so it, it's it's OC's <laughs> idea. Yeah, they got me in kicking and screaming. <laughs> yeah, so he got me. It was his idea. He said, "Hey, we." We write public commentaries on Nigeria, and we seem to share the same. I mean, basically, we share the same opinions about a lot of things. We are kindred spirits uh, in a way. So, why don't you get together, you know, compile these our, our essays in in a book form? And so he said, at the time, he didn't he didn't quite know Moses, and he said, "Well, he, your friend, I want him to be part of it. Can you?" get him interested in details. I said, sure. So I reached out to Moses and said, hey, I have a friend here, Osman Agbo from uh, uh, Houston, who has this idea that we could bring our essays together, establish common threads, and, and publish a book. And I was like, OK. So I go back to him and say, hey, Moses is on. He said, oh, great. We have a great idea. So that's how that came about. So the 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 master instigator of the book is Osman himself, who is not here. <laughs> so, 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 how did he end up as this life no balance? Well, we're looking for. <laughs> we're looking for um, a a catchphrase, a a mantra, a, an expression that resonates with Nigerians. One that captures the the essence of the collectivity of our essays. And we bounce around a whole bunch of uh, phrases because we want, to be folk, we want to be folksy, we want to be relatable. We want to capture the spirit of Nigeria. And we saw that this life, no balance, is an expression that, um, that carries the weight, one of Nigeria's dysfunction, continuing seemingly perpetual dysfunctions, uh, the injustices that exist in the country historically and that still continue, the, the disconnect between governance and the governed, and the, a lot of the issues that our book captures. We thought that that phrase, you know, gives it meaning, gives, it, it's, it's a vehicle that transports those thoughts, you know, effortlessly. And so we had other alternatives. I don't remember, maybe most is going to remember with. We voted on this to say, well, that this this captures it. That's it. It, it hits the nail on the head. Yes. 
no, no, I, 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 Farouk is absolutely right. And, and we thought, you know, this life, no balance. And we thought as Nigerians, we can also personally relate to this uh, catchphrase as well. Because in truth, this life truly no balance on many levels, you know, on many levels, you know. So we thought this was just uh, perfect. And uh, the other thing is that this phrase, this title has a lot of interpretive possibilities. You can interpret it in multiple ways to apply to so many different situations, both personal situations and official situations, political situations, social situations, and so on and so forth. And I think the title speaks to the fundamental philosophical unfairness of life. If you think about Nigeria as a country, uh, the people who deserve to be given prominence, the people whose intellect deserve to be harnessed for the purpose of nation building, often get uh, marginalized, get abused, uh, get frustrated, and sometimes get run out of the country because you know they can no longer put up with the dysfunction. So they are run out of the country, literally. And then the people who do not deserve by virtue of their morality, their, their, you know, their, their faulty morality and ethics, but also by virtue of their incompetence and their, they, 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 they are, they are lacking of uh, requisite qualifications, are the ones who are given prominence and are patronized and are elevated to influential and consequential positions of authority and of influence. And so we think about this phrase as encapsulating that foundational moral dilemma that Nigeria tends to embrace, you know, mediocrity uh, as a policy and willfully, and also tends to be hostile to competence and education, all of the things that, you know, make a nation great. Uh, and so that unbalances the social fabric and the political system. So the fundamental lack of balance, it, it, it's skewed in the wrong direction. Nigeria is skewed in the wrong direction. And so this pidgin phrase, you know, captures that and captures a whole multitude of other meanings when it comes to our country, Nigeria. Yes. Now, uh, it reminded me of uh, Pius Adesami's uh, the they carried last, you know, his, uh, his book. But, but also, when I was listening to uh, Bolatinovo's speech uh, today, I, I was seeing a lot of um, demands on regular people, sacrifice, make sacrifice for this to happen. I'm, I didn't see anywhere he said, we are uh, me, I'm making the sacrifice, my people. So, so the, it, it brings to, the, to my mind this, this life, no balance. Where Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> to make the sacrifice, why a lot of Sacrifice by the poor and subsidies for the rich. Mm, yeah. That's yeah, no balance. You know yes, balance. No balance. So that, that was come now. That was all. <laughs> so um, we 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 continue. Let me uh, bring in our people so that we can continue the conversation. Uh, please, when I bring you in, uh, prepare your best question. Don't don't ask three questions. I, I know we have that tendency. Find the best of your questions, and then you can uh, ask our guest. Um, so, uh, welcome to the show, uh, Serial RG, um, uh, Professor Nibelis, uh, Obie. Um, let me start with you, Serial. Uh, what, what, what's your question? You have to meet yourself, please. All right, why he... Ah, oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I think I should be good now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, I thought you had control of everything. No. I, uh, it was wonderful listening to the panel. You know, I came in a little bit late, but um, I don't know if this is really a question or a comment. I'm really surprised that um, people worry about all these technicalities about you know fuel subsidy and all these things when you know the the fundamental problem is that we don't have a sincere government okay so even if you look at all the every problem you think about so when you think about like the subsidy thieves you think about what they are doing with you know dan Goethe and all those things so why do we really worry about the goodness or how things, 
why things are not working correctly if you know the government you know is is not a sincere government so why don't we first try to see tackle the problem of can we actually get a fair government look look at it if we look at all the baggage around him it doesn't matter what the court says or doesn't say there is still that problem so i'll i'll leave it at that i'm just basically trying to say how can we try to build or see that we get a good government and then we try to start you know solving all the problems you know you have to get a foundation before you start building thank you so much all right so Farouk can moses anybody can weigh in if, if you have something well um just listening to, to that there's there's uh, there's nothing to disagree with there I would, I would i would like to amplify what you said but at the same time i would like to also say um you know we are nigerians so when they say one of the stereotypes about Nigerians is that when you ask us a question, we also turn it into a question. <laughs> Instead of answering with a statement, we answer with a question. You know. So I'd like to ask uh, Cyril, actually, being a typical Nigerian, have you ever have you ever thought to yourself, you know, why successive governments, uh, even those who came in with the mantra of, uh, you know, this house of race may get scared, meaning the sincere one. The one, the man of integrity, the person of integrity, people who claim that they were coming in to rule with integrity, with sincerity, often end up being probably the most uh, mendacious, the most insincere, insincere government in the history of the country. Uh, I think there is, uh, you know, it's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it. I think there's something fundamentally broken about the country that, as people say, can turn an angel into a wretched, insincere entity. But so, so so the question that I have in, in response to your question is, uh, and I know you, are th you were thinking aloud, is what conditions, we need to say, what conditions make it possible for governments to be so insincere and to lie so effortlessly to her citizens and not pay a price for lying, for being insincere? In other words, there, it seems like in Nigeria there is no political cost or, or to be paid for disrespecting your citizens, for lying to your citizens, for trampling on the rights of your citizens. There, there are no negative political consequences. You know, you know in, in fact, it seems like political insincerity pays, it's profitable. It's a currency that political elites in Nigeria deal with. And that political sincerity, which is what you and I desire, does not pay, as we say in Nigeria, uh, does not uh, translate to political benefits. And so the fundamental conditions that have created that skewed value system is what we need to be addressing. And I don't know if we have time to do that, but it goes to maybe the structure of the country. It goes to the to the, to the very incentive structure, the political incentive yeah. structure of the country. There are there are very there are fundamental issues that produce insincere governments. And unless we don't deal with those issues, we will continue to have unfortunately insincere governments. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I want to build yeah, mm -hmm. just very briefly, I think Moses has captured everything I would have said, but I want to say to you that um, the the question is is fundamentally systemic. And I think I said it when I, when I appeared here first in your show that Nigeria was not structured to function, to work. Uh, the colonialists who put it together did not have in mind the idea or the possibility that the country could work. It was just intended um, to serve their self-interested you know, um, designs. And uh, since uh, our so-called independence, we have not had any set of people who are sufficiently inspired, invested in getting the country to work to restructure it in a way that makes it work. So as it is now it doesn't matter who you are your level of sincerity your piety yeah uh, the depth of your uh emotional investment in the country it's not going to work because the system is designed to not work so i've always it's more it's the problem i mean it's it's great something is great and there are instances that i have highlighted myself of people whose uh, personal example who, the power of their personal example the uh, 
the sophistication of their intellect has made some difference in small areas. So let's not discount the fact that um, personal discipline, intellectual depth, sincerity, honesty can make some small differences here and there. But we are talking here of collectively and the, the, the collective structure of Nigeria is uh, designed to not work. And we, until you get to the point where this is a collective realization and we have enough people who are inspired to make it work, uh, it's, it's going to take time and nothing is going to be perfect, but at least let's have a start. But we haven't gotten to the point where we are all on board in the realization that we have a system that was not designed to work in the first place. All right, thank you. Uh, let's go to Professor Nebulos, you're next. Thank you so much, Dr. Damages, for bringing me on board here. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes clearly. Oh, okay, thank you so much. You see, I, I see Nigeria as a very big, a huge crime scene where the investigators themselves are the chief culprit. That is how Nigeria is to me. And just about 10 minutes before I... Unless Nigeria enforces a policy of deterrence, Nigeria will continue to be a haven for criminals and criminality. There is no deterrent mechanism in that country at all. So crimes upon crimes are being committed. Corruption, my boggling kind of corruptions are being committed on a daily before you ruminate over the one you see on the pages of newspapers, before any action is taken on that, a huger one is committed. So you just stumbling, okay, what about the people of yesterday, an individual who stole 80 billion naira, just an individual. Up to today, nothing has been done. And many, many, many like that have been committed that they are just swept under the carpet. So, so long as those ones are not investigated and the culprit brought to book and be punished, then there is no precedent, whether today or tomorrow, that can correct anything at all. Talking of the subsidy you are talking about, sir, you talk about su subsidy. That brings me to this uh, crime scene thing, that the governments are in cahoot with those who are stealing Okay, so that one is established in as much as nobody has been brought to book for all the crimes committed. And so that's how we're going to continue. And uh, like uh, you have rightly mentioned, systemic problems. Yeah, the Nigerian problem is completely systemic. Now, talking of certificate, I do not see any reason why anybody, for instance, we will be hiding hiding anything about his certificate for god's sake it's like somebody is like me now trying to take care uh, of a public appointment and all that i say i graduated from university of lagos i had my phd in university of lagos and somebody is controverting that i, I will simply help the individual to go to the register and everywhere where he can get everything about me so what is what is there that somebody is hiding that that somebody is trying to hide something to me it means that there are some questions that should be answered. And that also speaks to what I call universality of humanity. Because even here in America, we used to have a president who is hiding you know, something about the school he graduated. He doesn't want anybody to know the grade he, he got in school and all that. We all know that. So, we, so this, this shady thing is not only in Nigeria, it's everywhere. As to whether this thing will make any difference in the Supreme Court, I understand that the Supreme Court is not a court of evidence, okay? Which means all the things that have been argued in the appellate courts, uh, you know, are those the Supreme Court we uh, we decide on eventually. Even if you bring any fresh, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, forgive me. Even if you bring any fresh evidence, I understand it may not matter uh, much you know, at the Supreme Court. But like you all have agreed, we need to know the kind of human being that is ruling us as a president, okay? We, it, because it borders on integrity, and that is the problem that Nigeria has been having since independence. But again, if this man has the magic wand to actually turn Nigeria around and, and take away hunger over from the people, and the revolutionary system, of course, I know he cannot do it because... Uh, 
you know, because if your hands are soiled with so many things, it's very difficult for you to, you can't come with clean hands, you know, things like that. So if he's able to, let's assume he's able to do that, I think many Nigerians will forgive him for whatever they see as it's seen right now. Unfortunately, I don't think that we have that in the office. Let me rest my case here. All right, thank you. Uh, any any comments or should we move to the next? Uh, I, I, I just I just to say briefly that you know Nigerians are actually this is one remarkable thing about Nigerians we are actually a politically forgiving people and you know our political demands the demands that we make of our leaders are quite modest you know have you I don't know if any of you have observed that we actually don't ask too much of our leaders. And when our leaders mess up and they face up, as we say in America, they confess and they come clean and they are transparent about the mistakes of their past, Nigerians are actually very quick in forgiving and moving past that. Nigerians want to see what you have for us now. What are you doing for us now? What are you doing about our situations now? And sometimes that can atone for past sins. But the problem in Nigeria is that our politicians come to power with question, many of them anyway, not all of them, with questionable records. And then on top of that, they misgovern us and they, they make our situations worse. So it, 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 it puts us in a bind and it makes us sometimes less forgiving, uh, especially when someone is so determined to hide an aspect of their life. Because if you are running for office, the, the basic minimum you can do is to open up your life. I don't think you have the right to privacy once you submit yourself to public office. I don't think that you should insist on, on having a private domain of your life that is inscrutable to your citizens. You should open yourself up, you know? Uh, they say in Nigeria, when, when you run for office, that's when you know about your great-grandparents and what your great-grandmother did, you know? It is the risk. It comes with, uh, with the territory. If you want power, you have to open yourself up. You have to be transparent. All right. Thank you, thank you. Very quickly, well, I don't know if you want to move. You know, I recall to you that good Lord Jonathan, you know, also fought tooth and nail to stop his record from being seen. I, I was one of those people uh, on the on the record. Uh, Freeman Times sent a Freedom of Information Act request to Investor Portacourt to send his, uh, they want details of his doctoral dissertation, who his professor was, what the title was. He refused. The university wrote and said, no, we're not going to share that information. So it's not even just Trump and um, and um, Bola Tinubu. There's something about people. Uh, Trump is like a third world leader, so he is in that category. There's yeah. something about third world leaders that makes them think that um, there's something about. And it took my intervention. I actually reached out to people at the University of Port Harcourt to help me get a record of dissertations written at the University of Port Harcourt from 1983 to a certain year, and and then to check to see if Good Lord Jonathan's uh, dissertation was there, his thesis, as they call it there. And they found it there. So he, I had to write a column. I said, although I had questioned the authenticity of his doctoral uh, degree, this is the evidence I discovered. He actually did graduate from there. This was the title of his uh, doctoral thesis. This was the name of his supervisor. And I published it as a column. And I was wondering then, what was it? What was the big deal about it? Just say, I graduated, this was my, why didn't you do it? So it's, a, it's something that has been continuing. This is not uh, the first time, of course. Tinubu's own has a little, it's a little more mysterious because of because there are questions about his identity. Who is he? Who was he before he is what he is now? Uh, you know, are the, the whispers about his identity true? I think that's where he becomes even more interesting. And then there's an international dimension to it. So I just wanted to throw that in there, that uh, even good luck, Jonathan did not respond to questions about his doctoral dissertation. Yeah, but Farouk, maybe why he didn't want people to say it could be that um, people like you, you do a search and you find out where he copied most of the, <laughs> most of the lines. So, so things like that, you know? All right, Prof, thank you so much. Let's go to Obe, Mazi Obe, Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ramages. <clears throat> Even though today you appear and sound like a uh, Bolatunu was a 63's anniversary speech, kind of exhausted, as you say. <laughs> and, uh, I, I noticed uh, something here. Um, to our guest, uh, Mr. Farouk and uh, Moses, 
Both of you attended Byron University. Kano graduated in 1997. Both of you are 50 years old. Uh, but Farouk is from Kogi State. Why? Um, I'm from Kwara State. Kwara State <laughs> sorry. And uh, why? Uh, uh, probably from Benue State. But are you guys, were you guys besties in the university days or period of university days or how that come about? But that's on the general note. But specific question now to you, uh, Farrell. I My question is coming from one of your, you know, interests, which is which is a, a political criticism, which you're one of your area of interest and specialization. Political criticism refer to political commentary or political discussion. In the typical criticism that is specific to relevant politics, indulging policy, politics, and political parties. You graduated in 1997. That is when real conversations start going mainstream regarding uh, uh, democracy. The, the uniform guys are leaving, the Agbada men are coming in, parties are taking shape, policies are being formulated. Fast forward to 25 years later. Where your expectation, you know, didn't meet now, as you see, or the traditions that you expect that we are going to travel on our way on that. What are you seeing among the young people who are graduating from uh, university now? What is their view and their criticism towards parties and politicians and policy compared to your days? That is to Farouk. To Moses, uh, in your book, in uh, one of your books, Emirates in London you pretty much narrate the story of the aristocrats of the northern uh, elite in northern uh, Nigeria from 1920 to 1960, about 40 years, how how instead of instead of them being the mouthpiece of the British Empire, they decided to leverage their, you know, and the Christianity started to establish itself within the Emirates, and that's between 40 years. Between now we are here again today. Today is Independence Day between 1960 to 2003. What do you see? Has there any change in regards to our elite of today, in particular, our the government of the Debola Tunubu, Farouk, alluded to the fact that it's enjoying the, 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 the petrol, the, the, uh, the, 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 the petrolism is getting from the media, and how it's been welcomed within the elite. So, we see that kind of trend again, our elite too. Are they leveraging the whatever they're getting from the outside world to establish themselves like the Northern elite did or just hope? Because yeah, you in response to um, uh, Rudolph's question, when he, when he, when he, when he said happy, uh, happy Independence Day, you're kind of reluctant in responding. Mm -hmm. But you later said, well, if we are to pretend that we have uh, we are truly independent, then happy Independence Day. So. I hope I'm not too off with the topic of discussion, but how, can, how do you see those people of, uh, you know, 1920 to 1960, then 1960 to 1963, to 1920, 2023? All right. Okay. Well, yeah, we're, we're best friends, uh, Mazi. <laughs> so we, we, we go uh, way back, although he studied history and I studied mass comm, we took common courses for two years, you know, almost uh, the same, number of courses and uh, so that that has continued uh, from them to now uh something else uh you need so when i was in when i was in the, when i was in the university i was a student union leader and i belong to the radical student union movements and so i have always questioned authority question taking for granted uh, orthodoxies and uh, we were there were the height of um, was we started uh, undergraduate studies when IDB was in power. The annulment of June 12 election happened while we were undergraduates, and then by the time we were graduating, a uh, uh, bachelor took over. So the brutality of the military regime and the suffocation of civil rights and and all of that, we dealt with that, you know. And of course, as students, we looked forward to a time when we would return to democracy. And I was uh, close to people like Atairu Jega, who introduced me to other civil rights activists and human rights activists and uh, traveled to the South to meet with human rights activists. And so I was inspired by all that deferment. Uh, that was the period of democratic ferment and young people were looking forward to a time when the military would see permanently to the barracks and civilians would take over. 
Um, so that was I was filled with that hope, that enthusiasm, the passion. And then, of course, after graduating, I went to journalism. And we still hoped that, uh, and when I started journalism, Abacha was still in power. And um, and when democracy it was inaugurated in 1999, I was I was I was uh, I had the privilege of uh, covering the just PDP convention where Abacha and uh, Alex Kweme, you know, fought tooth and nail to get uh, nomination. So I was there and, and saw all the big political weeks trying to get uh, the democracy started. So I had uh, hopes, but I also had my reservations because of the abiding distrust I have for the elites, which was something I acquired from my undergraduate days. And, you know, I, I, I was inspired by Marx and Marxist thought. And that something that I took away from that is also I talked about the system and, you know, Marx was always very clear about systems and people that if the system is corrupt and crooked and dysfunctional, that the morality of individuals is not sufficient to change it. We need a wholesale systemic overhaul. So I always knew that. And of course, I had my reservations about Obasanjo, uh, the prison terms that he had had and how that might inspire uh, the resentment against uh, that civilian populations. I personally wanted um, Alex Ikeme to win because he was very articulate. He was very well spoken, and I, as a young man, something I loved I, when I attended the presentations. He he blew me over by the eloquence of his speech and and all of that. Of course, he lost to Obasanjo, and um, so my my I I, I would simply stop here and say my enthusiasm uh, for the, the the democracy that had just been installed it was checkmated by my abiding skepticism of people in power of elites and how their interest is always almost always at variance with the interests of everyday folks and I was disappointed that 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 has panned out over the years so, all right thank you thank you very much Moses Yes, uh, Mazi, thank you actually for that question. You, you are the first person to actually challenge me to connect uh, my historical work, which you mentioned, MES in London, with current um, political elite behavior in Nigeria. And I, you know, that got me thinking, you know, I hadn't even thought about that dimension to my work, but, uh, but I welcome that engagement, you know. And, you know, what one thing that struck me is, um, you know, elite culture is elite culture everywhere. It's, there's a universal quality to it. There's also a trans-historical quality to elite culture. So whichever era you are speaking about, elites are always self-indulgent. They're always self-absorbed. You know, of course, they always, uh, uh, they make investments in uh, institutions of prestige and status and those types of things. And, you know, the atmospherics of status and you know, symbols of status and so on and so forth. So that hasn't changed, whether you're talking about EMEAs in the 1930s uh, of Northern Nigeria in the 1930s or political elites today or royal fathers or traditional rulers today, that has not changed. But you know, your question got me thinking because this um, Northern Nigerian EMEAs that were going to London, going to the UK uh, on sightseeing missions, you know, one remarkable thing that I noticed about them in researching the book and which I thought I, I wanted to highlight in the book, I wanted to, I don't know to, to the extent that I succeeded in doing that, is their level of self-assuredness. You know, this was a colonial situation in which, you know, obviously they were subordinate to British officials. They were, in some ways, you would expect them to kowtow to the wishes and, you know, demands and commands of the British colonial establishment. You would expect them to be docile uh, in the presence of British power or in the presence of the instruments of British political authority. You would expect a lot of um, self-effacement. You would expect them to be self-effacing in their relationship with British power. But still, uh, you know, and there was some element of that, don't get me wrong, but uh, the remarkable thing is that these emirs will travel to Britain and hold their own in the presence of British officials, in the presence of even British royalty, British members of parliament, you know, they were so self-assured that they would articulate even criticisms 
the criticisms were diplomatically expressed, of course, but they articulated criticisms of British life, of British ways of life, of British politics, of uh, and they would draw this contrast, you know, between uh, life in Britain and how and life in northern Nigeria and how they could never imagine themselves living permanently in Britain, you know, you know, and 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 this was for me very significant because in a colonial establishment you don't expect the subaltern, the subordinated populations to be that, even if they were elites, to be that self-assured, to be that self-confidence, that kind of uh, capacity to engage with a, your superior uh, from a position of, it comes from self-confidence, it comes from self-assurance, it comes from, you know, knowing your culture, knowing yourself. And I think that takes us back to what Farouk was referencing earlier. And so that when I, your question forced me to contrast that with what goes on today, which is that our political elites in northern Nigeria, in southern Nigeria, everywhere, now, when they go to UK, when they go to the United States, when they go to these Western countries, how do they behave in the presence of political, their political counterparts, the officials of these of governments in these countries? Do they carry themselves with as much dignity, with as much prestige, as much self-assurance as the emirs in those days uh, carried themselves, as I described in the book? I don't think so. I think you and I, if we are being sincere, we cannot say that the political elites today in Nigeria uh, are just as, as, as self-assured in their relationship with no. Uh, on the contrary, when they go to these places, they are always kowtowing to these people. They are always they, they lose themselves instead of finding themselves in those spaces. They lose themselves and they genuflect and they are so deferential and they, are, they turn to they turn to children. You know, I have been in spaces. I've actually been in conferences where some of these Nigerian ministers. I saw ministers. And, and I said, these people were, you know, every time a, a white person spoke, they froze. And I said, look at this person. If this were Nigeria, if they were in Nigeria, you know, they would insist that people uh, praise them and open doors for them and they will carry security. And, you know, and they, they will behave like gods. So I think that contrast, you've made me to think more critically about the contrast that exists between the elites, especially the aristocracies of those days and the aristocracies of now. Uh, I don't see the same type of self-assurance in the courage of our elites when they relate to Western institutions and Western uh, officials today that I saw uh, with those emirs and that I described in the book. So that's something I think that calls for further conversations and discussions, actually. I think you've opened my eyes to see an angle to the book that I myself, as the author, didn't quite see in terms of the connections to uh, elite culture, political elite culture today in Nigeria. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Obi. Ay, you're next. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I have two questions. One is going to go for Mr. Farouk, the other one for Moses. Um, Farouk, I, I, I read a lot of your articles and uh, social media posts. <laughs> I would say you are the true definition of uh, a barrel can be more mighty than, this, than, than an AK 47. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So I, I also know the level of your research. Uh, you don't just talk, um, especially during a lecture. I read a lot of those your articles. They, they actually expose a lot of things about uh, what was going on in Nigeria then. So um, my question to you is, what is the level of Western influence in Nigeria as it relates to our resources, terrorism and badetry? And our top presidential candidate, do you think any of them is immune from Western influence? In this case, uh, from Tinubu Atiku, Pitao B, um, Evil Concourse, T D. And 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 the other thing I would just throw is: Have you ever um, written to the presidency and get your feedback? Are you doing anything in terms of like advice, or do you do they reply to you? Have you ever tried that? Um, to Moses, it is um, your position, both you and Farouk, on the removal of oil subsidy and the NERA unification is, is completely in line with my thought on this platform. So um, it, it has become like, for me, an embarrassment the, to the nation, the way these policies were, policies and implementation were um, added. I personally feel that it's just because of lack of understanding and proper planning. Um, they just make this decision. I don't know if they try to um, show to the country like they, they, they do something. 
But if you watch it very clearly, um, they, they don't want to achieve any, there is no plan. Like basically we are, we don't have a direction correctly. And today, like what Farouk said, if you want to go by what he said, that they remove a subsidy, the pop price of oil is supposed to be around 1000 because crude oil is around um, um, 90, over $19 today. So it worries me because I personally believe that Nigeria cannot afford, um, you can't remove subsidy. Nigeria cannot afford it. We don't have the, people don't have the money. Majority of Nigeria are poor. So what it means today, even if you are any half, half a million in Nigeria, um, um, you can't survive the system. So where are we going? What, what, what do you think is the solution from here? Because to me, it's, it worries me a lot, right? Because even we, it's affecting us. If you are giving somebody other tax in Nigeria before, even 500 tax, you are ticket twice. What is he going to do with the money? It's, it worries me a lot. What is the issue? What do you think? Where do you think we should go from here? Like, can you provide a solution? All Thank right. you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ewai. Uh, before you answer, um, Moses, I want to play a video uh, that I think is connected to something you said uh, a few minutes ago. Let's watch. Of these terrorists, let's stop these bandits, let's stop these extremists, let's stop them. The world can do it. Let us be giving back our freedom. We want to live like the rest of the world. They have robbed us of our freedom of doing basic things. That was uh, our national security advisor, uh, basically. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I have written. Uh, thanks so much, EY, for your uh, very thoughtful question and for the kind things you said about me. Uh, I have written a heck of a lot of articles on this. Um, I, I call it xenophilia, which is the opposite of xenophobia. Uh, other countries struggle with xenophobia, that's uh, an irrational hatred of uh, or fear of uh, strangers. But in Nigeria, particularly our elite, they, we have uh, xenophilia, rational uh, love and reverence for that which is foreign. And uh, it's it's part of uh, what sociologists call the cultural cringe. So there's there's a sense of uh, there's an internalized sense of inferiority that our leaders have, and I, 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 there's also a, a, a paternal thirst for supervision by an almighty uh, overarching West. And, uh, you know, this, I, I came to this uh, epiphany when the, what do they call this? Um, WikiLeaks, the WikiLeaks leaks in 2011. You know, we realized that even the president, Obasanjo, would send people to low level US embassy officials revealing state secrets, you know, about like Atiku. And then Atiku himself will go and meet these low-level U.S. Uh, officials and say, no, it's not true. And they, 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 were, they were telling the truth about themselves, about the country. For instance, um, uh, what's his name? Erufai, who had said uh, Atiku had nothing to do. Uh, he, he owes zero debt to... Um, at, to Atiku for his uh, political rights, but while he was there, he was he was very truthful. He said Atiku actually gave him a first self public service job, and it's singularly he's singularly responsible for who I am now. Uh, the man you just showed, um, Nuhu Ribadu, Nuhu Ribadu said Obasanjo was the most investigated president in the history of Nigeria, and that he was clean and uh, without any blemish. But what? But the the uh, WikiLeaks. Uh, leaks that we read, he said he was the most corrupt president in history. And you know, he revealed a lot of... So there is a... And this is true of all the presidential candidates. There's not a single exception. Every single one of them um, is... Uh, wants uh, favors and uh, the best of attentions from the West. 
and they do everything within their power to court the West to get their, and, and many of them got funding as well from Western institutions. And some of maybe when the time comes, we are going to reveal these issues. And it's very embarrassing, the extent of the uh, uh, cultural cringe that these presidential candidates exhibited. And that's why, frankly, I was not emotionally invested in the election because it didn't matter who won. Every single one of them was going to remove subsidies. Every single one of them, uh, you know, just wanted to satisfy the West. That's all it is. And we, it's, it's probably a problem that is not limited to Nigeria. Uh, I think we are, there's, there's a descent into the, to, to the nidair of uh, lack of self-confidence, lack of self-assurance, you know, going back to the point Moses made earlier about the Amias being, you know, self-questioning and standing their ground. We, that that this this that level of uh, self assuredness that we we saw maybe in pre colonial times and immediate past independence is receding, and um, with this Japa culture now, there's there's a complete total lack of self awareness, self assuredness in the populace, and it reflects in the sort of sort of people who are who are leading. So uh, to go back to your point, yes, every single one of them um, wants to satisfy the West and there's no uh, sense of anyone wanting to be independent. Second question, well, I try to be as uh, free, independent of people in power as, as possible. I have never personally written to the presidency, any presidency or getting any response. Uh, when I write, well, if they read it, I want to go work with it, fine. If they don't, that's fine. Uh, so whatever I want to put, I put that in the public domain, and I do not make any effort to reach out to people personally. Uh, it's my, I have what's almost a, an abiding um, resistance to being entangled with the power structures because they corrupt, they contain, and um, they can blackmail. So that's my, that's, all right, thank you. Uh, Moses. Yes, uh, Iwa, thank you. Thanks uh, for those, uh, that question. Uh, you know, the, when it comes to prescribing solutions with a country as complex as Nigeria, it's a tough uh, ask. But I can take a stab. But I think, I think people make Nigeria's problems to be more complicated than they actually are. Sure. At some basic level, our problems are not even complicated. Uh, our problems require political will, political consensus on the part of the elite to come to the table and just agree and have a consensus on what, what needs to be done. We overcomplicate issue, we overanalyze issue, and then they assume a life of their own, and it seems like these issues are intractable. I don't believe that. You know. I, I, I believe sincerely that just changing government, that's no longer enough to bring about change. Just changing the government, the face of government, and having re these ritualistic uh, periodic elections. Uh, again, as Farouk said, that might uh, bring in some cosmetic changes. But those changes are going to be very cosmetic. I think there are some fundamental questions that we need to ask about the structure of our country that has a corrupting influence or our elites that makes it impossible to enact meaningful reforms right so these structures are a constraint on good governance in and of themselves and until we restructure in such a way as to constrain power holders people who wield power i i i'm very skeptical and i think that's that's what we need to go back to that's the solution we need to stop treating the symptoms and, and hoping that the disease will go away we need to be courageous enough to say let us go to the root of the crisis. Let us go to the root of the disease. Uh, let us come to the table and deal with these issues. Um, I think it takes a certain level of what I call political suicide on the part of our elites to do that. It takes a certain level of political self-denial. They have to look, them, look at themselves and say, look, I'm willing to sacrifice the next election. I'm looking, willing to look beyond the next political battle. I'm willing to look beyond that contract that is about <laughs> to get approved in my name. I'm willing to put all of that aside and do what is best for this country. 
Uh, and until we do that, unfortunately, we're going to keep going, going, going around in cycles. Uh, because the solutions are there. The solutions are not too complicated, you know, and we just haven't had the courage to embrace them. Uh, it is not about the elite of one region versus another. It is, there is a, if there's anything the elite of Nigeria agree on, it is the preservation of the status quo. Yeah. Believe, believe, believe me, <laughs> that's what they are all agree on, the elites from the east, from, because the status quo profits them. It profits them. And so we have to find a way to convince them that, you know what, ultimately, this status quo that seems at this moment to, to benefit you and that you, you seem to be so invested in, ultimately, it is not in your interest. It is in, in your interest to move away from this status quo, to reform it. Because I think, as Farouk always says, and I think he also said it in his, uh, this last column that he wrote, once you make life so difficult for the poor, ultimately, you are not safe. When they run out of options, they are going to come for you. So it is, that message is what we need to, if there's a, a rhetorical solution to this problem before we go to the actual solution, that is the rhetorical. We need to change it so that we send that message as directly and as clearly to the elite as possible. And in, do, in doing that, we need to first cultivate a national consensus that that's what needs to be done. One of the things I personally find to be a problem is that once people get in power, whether they are House of Rep members or senators or ministers or what have you, presidential aides, they lock themselves away from what goes on in the country. There's no pipeline, there's no channel through which they can see or hear or perceive the suffering of people mm. uh, and, 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 and the desperation of, of people. And they become blind, believe it or not, AY, to the structural defects of the country. But give them another four years. Once they get out of power, yeah. the same people will be writing uh, terms and volumes about some of these structural problems. So it's, 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 that says to me that they know what is wrong with Nigeria. Everybody knows what is wrong with Nigeria. It's not complicated. It is not rocket science. We just need to convince them that if you don't do something about it, something will have to give. Either an implosion or an explosion will happen. And it will consume us all, including you who seem to be doing so well in this status quo, you are not safe. So that is a message that we need to pass along to them and convince them so that they act in the interest of the country rather than prioritizing their immediate interest. All right. Thank you, both. Thank you AY. Uh, let's go to Dan. Dan, you're next. I want to say greetings to everybody and uh, I've been listening to you guys from the beginning, and uh, most of what you people have as opinion is all right by me. M many of them I don't agree. Because uh, speaking from the street boy point of view, I grew up in the street. I didn't have these sort of big opportunities most middle class Nigerians has to. I paid my way throughout. So when most of you guys, my, who I might call, come from the middle class of those days, your fathers take care of you, they pay for that, pay for this. Sometimes you're out of touch, in reality, to the people like us. Anyway, the book you people wrote, This Life, No Balance, I love it so much because uh, it's a reality of Nigeria. Because Nigeria is not balanced, especially if you come from my point. You know, you, you, you know what hunger is. You know everything what it is. You know what is called oppression by somebody who just maybe like for, for example, if you if you're in a situation, you have a friend who went to the university, for example, because you people are talking about elites. So sometimes for me, I don't understand who are the elites. University graduate of your friend will oppress you because he knows you didn't go to university. That to me is an elite oppression. Okay. Anyway, let me just let me keep my privacy and go to the point. Mr. Farouk, you said something that Nigeria was just put together. We are not supposed to be, according to one of your explanations. So do you think that what Namdi Khan has been fighting for, for the separation of Nigeria in some ways? And Padebayo uh, Adeban just said it yesterday also that we should go back to the 1963 constitution where the regional system 
were operating, and that was when Nigeria was good. I want you to see, shine some light on that. If you want Nigeria to divide, I never wanted it, but with where things are going, I think that's the only solution, so that we can handle our things, then come to the center to live. And to conclude, I have just one last question to ask, and I want both of you to share some light. You said that Tunubu cried out that his uh, non something shouldn't be released. He wants only the certificate to be released where they will not find out so many things about him. And to you, you think that if they release such a, uh, information to Nigeria, you think it should not be, there shouldn't be any change. It will just be something that will be blown off in the air. Okay, now you know who I am and non Nigeria will not react to it. Is that what you are saying? Because I, I, I think I have something like that. You are trying to explain that nothing will come out of it. It will just be, okay, now we know who he is, and that's it. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Then. Okay, very quickly. Well, I don't come from privilege. You and I probably share the same um, background. My father was not middle class. He was lower middle class. He was a primary school teacher. He taught Arabic in the primary school, and he struggled to pay my school fees. If I almost did not write my wife because he didn't have 350 naira to pay. So I have struggled all through life and I do not come from privilege. Uh, the fact that I'm a university professor now here does not mean that I've always had have had good. No. So let's let's get that straightened up. You and I were the same. And that's why my sympathies are always with the poor, because I know where I came from, I know my background, and I know that um, if first subsidies, for instance, had been removed when I was going to university, I probably wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be educated. Uh, I paid school fees, but the school fees were subsidized. I recall my secondary school was 40 naira per uh, term. But that was that was a struggle for a lot of people as well. But that was still subsidized. Uh, you know, so let's get that straight. And then second, I did not say that I wanted. Nigeria to separate that there was no reason for Nigeria to get together. No, what I said was, and I and I wrote a series of articles to say that we share so much in common, several parts of Nigeria share so much in common that even without British intervention, there is a possibility that Nigeria in its present form could still have existed, maybe even larger. And I have given several examples, and I, it was a three, eight part series of articles that I wrote. If you're interested, I can share the link with you uh, at some point. Yeah, do that, please. Okay. So, yes, I, I, if Nigeria works, its size, its complexity, its labyrinthine uh, 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 parts, for me, excite me. And I would, someone like me, with my identity, I thrive better in a country, you know, like Nigeria. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I don't fit in very easily into the boxes, the cultural primordial boxes that people create. So I, I want the system, I want Nigeria in its present, ah, it's almost, uh, I, I, so I do not agree with uh, Namdi Canada that Nigeria should be divided. No, I do not. I I find, my wife is from uh, Okija in Anambra. So if if uh, Nigeria separates, and I'll be taking it, I'll get a visa to go to Biafra, no. I don't want to do that to see my my people in in in, uh, in, Anam, in Anambra because they're my people, and I my first wife who was uh, uh, who unfortunately died was Yoruba. Oh, sorry, but but oh. his his view about separation of Nigeria is not that we don't get along, but is that some people are marginalized. That yes. was his point of view. Not that we don't get along, but that problem of some people think they are better than the other side. Okay, yeah, I, I, that you know. Again, if you read me, you know that I have, have made, I'm a very strong advocate for uh, justice and equity and uh, ensuring that everyone who is in Nigeria has a sense of belonging, and that's not just at the national level, also at the state level. You know, I'm a I'm a persistent advocate for that. So, if in that, yes, I agree. And if going back to 1963 Constitution, the 1963 Constitution that gives more power to the regions that the center makes Nigeria to work, of course. I'm also a critic, I'm a critic of the enormous power of the center, you know, that makes it so attractive to the point that people fight. And so, yeah, anything to weaken the power of the center and redistribute it to the constituent parts, 
I'm, I'm in on it. You know, I'm a huge supporter of that. If that's what is going to make Nigeria work, and I think it will, it's, it's worth trying. So in that, I agree. I don't know what the second question was. Uh, the second question was about Tunubu certificate. You said okay. that okay. you don't think anything will come out of it, even though he begged for them not to release it. Yeah, so I, you know, that's that's just my opinion because, well, as someone had said earlier, I don't know who that was. Was that Professor Professor Righteous? Um, no, Nebulous. Eh? Nebulous. Professor Nebulous said it, uh, or I don't know who it was, that, well, the Supreme Court does not admit fresh evidence. So in terms of the impact it's going to have on the ruling on election, you know, he, has, he already made that point. But then also in the public sphere, where it's going to let people know that, I'm just assuming that we now discover that he is not or has not originally been known as Balatinubu, that that identity belonged to someone else. Maybe that's going to be the outcome of this. So what is he going to change? Is he going to make people go out in the streets and drag him out of Asurok? Or is he just going to affirm what many people had already suspected about him? So even if the affirms it, what is what change would it would take? Well, the law says you shouldn't believe uh, uh, something that is not true, so the, that you could be disqualified if you tender a false document. Okay, well maybe maybe we have maybe the judiciary is independent enough to say, oh, this man is has been fake all along, so you cannot be president. Well, if you have faith that that will happen with the judiciary, fine. I I salute your faith in the independence of the judiciary. But I don't have that faith in the judiciary to make that kind of uh, judgment. That's um, that's my opinion. And my opinion is not fact. Let's get that straight. I'm just expressing an opinion. It's not fact. I could be completely wrong. I've expressed several opinions that have turned out to be completely wrong. So if this answer be one of one, and it's just going to be an addition to a long list of things I said that were wrong. But and you could be right. And that's and that's fine. That's how our world is supposed to be. All right, thank you. Thank you for it. Um, Moses. Uh, just to add briefly to that, I mean, I think that um, this is this is the same Supreme Court that ruled that somebody who came fourth yes. in the governorship <laughs> election in Imo State yeah. uh, was the rightful winner. He came fourth. Yeah. And he did so Supreme Court in that in that instance didn't rule that the second person or the third person should become governor, but the fourth person. This is the same Supreme Court that gave the candidacy, the ticket, the senatorial ticket uh, in one of the Yobe constituencies, Yobe state constituencies, to a person who was busy at that time running for president when the primaries took place, who by his own admission did not participate in the primaries. So I'm not as, uh, like Farouk, I'm not as uh, uh, hopeful when it comes to the Supreme Court uh, doing, as Nigerians say, the needful, <laughs> you know, in this matter. The other part of it is that, um, you know, the other angle to look at is that Tinubu might actually be, in this time that we live in, one of the, I want to use a word that uh, I prefer not to use, but uh, that's the word that, uh, is occurring to me, so I might as well use it. So, Tunibu seems to be the luckiest, uh, <coughs> excuse me, person now as we live in. Because you know why? Maybe he's lucky by design. Because as they say, maybe you make your luck. In a perverse kind of way, Tunibu's government has put Nigerians in such an existential crisis that the certificate issue is not at the forefront of their, of their of their concerns now. It's not their number one concern as we speak. It is unfortunate, it is not ideal, but it is the reality that now what most Nigerians are concerned about is how they will put food on the table, how they can move from one place to another, how they can get a job, how they can get to their job. Some of these issues, Nigerians used to take for granted. Some of this, you know, you, always, yeah, you can always get to your job, but now that Tinubu's government has unleashed such unprecedented suffering in the co in the country, to be honest, the article case, this legal thing that's going on in Chicago, seems a little seems like a little more than an elite 
level abstract obsession, right? To, for good or bad, you can call Tinubu an evil genius for creating a situation that now benefits him in the court of public opinion, where suddenly, no matter what comes out of this uh, judicial process in Chicago tomorrow or in the next few days, uh, it, it may it may go enter Nigeria. The the, the, the the revelations may enter Nigeria with a dot, uh, with an anticlimactic, disappointing reception. It may meet a, a disappointing reception because Nigerians are simply too preoccupied with their existential fears and anxieties to care about who Bola Tinubu truly is and what this says about the identities he may have he may or may not have claimed in the past and which schools he may or may not have claimed to have attended so we've arrived at a, at a situation in our country where this man i don't think maybe i give him too much credit if i said you know he set it all up or that he somehow created this situation to benefit him down the road that would be giving him too much uh, prophetic yeah. credit but i think now it's a it's a fortuitous situation now that we have where unfortunately people are no longer the people who should have cared about this issue, they no longer care to the same degree because they are watching their very existence being threatened by what the same government, the Tinubu government, has unleashed on them. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, we have less than 20, um, okay, 40 minutes. Um, so I will try to get uh, people to quickly ask their questions so that we get people who are in the studio um, to weigh in before we, we end this. Um, so, righteous man, go straight to your question. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, happy independence anniversary. It's been, it's been very dull here in Lagos, uh, unlike the previous years when we celebrate our independence anniversary. It has been very, very dull. There's no activities going on. People are just indoors, you know, like morning. So it's not been a good time. Unlike before, when we go out to celebrate, go to stadium, go to amusement park, uh, Federal Palace Hotel and the rest of it. So the story has just uh, changed. So, um, sorry, you may, they just seize light now. That's that's Nigeria. They just seize light, and um, I can't afford to buy f uh, fuel to on my generator in the compound. Uh, nobody owns generator again. You know, it's terrible. Somebody was writing in the comment section that. Uh, uh, I'm looking so that uh, they should find cola for me, that Dr. Damages should raise cola for me. <laughs> <laughs> they said I should get gala for you. <laughs> no, it's not cola, 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 cola. Okay. That my was. face was looking very fearful. <laughs> you can't live in Nigeria without having this type of my face. I'm telling you because <laughs> it's <laughs> life, life no balance here, life no balance. So, so back to the issue. Um, gentlemen, your book the title of that book is catchy it got my attention and i would like to have a copy um it's something that i need to read because my son uh, two weeks ago called me and uh, begged me that i should do everything possible even if it's to go and borrow so that he will leave nigeria is a graduate, he read insurance, but there is no work. He's just roaming around the street looking for Keke Marwa to drive. This young man came to me and said, Daddy, please, if it's to go and borrow, borrow, I want to leave Nigeria. That is this story, no balance. If one has struggled to train a child up to university level, and you see that your child going down before you cannot clothe himself, cannot eat. For him to make expenses, it has to come from your pocket. I mean, nobody will be happy. You can't be a parent, you can't be a father and be happy of it. So that's your book, I need it. 
and I will not pay in dollars because I don't have dollars. <laughs> Please make it available so that I can pay in Naira, possibly maybe 500 Naira or thereabouts. If it's anything more than that, I will not be able to afford it. So my question is this, um, uh, Mr. Farouk, you made submissions that touched my heart. You said Nigeria was structured not to work, comma, and it's not going to work, full stop. <laughs> so, um, such submission creates fears into my mind. Dr. Damages, are you taking me off? I don't understand what is going on there. No, go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear you. Um, I'm just okay. to show the book again. Okay. So, so such submission created much bigger fear in me. And then my question is this. Since it was created not to work, and you submitted that it's not going to work, so what do we do? Well, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I meant that that's, yeah, it was that's, created. That's number one. Number two. No, no, righteous man, we can go to now. We we are out of No, time. just two. Just one. Let me. It's, okay. it's very pertinent, please. Number two. Hold on, righteous man. Everybody thinks their what, question is pertinent. What is the root cause of our problem? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, because a lot of people have uh, are waiting in line to talk, I'm going to say very simply that I said it was no structure to work by the colonial people. And after it was handed over to us, we haven't made any effort to make it work. But we can make it work if we want to. So we are not doomed to failure in perpetuity. That's not what I uh, implied. It is that the structure we inherited was not meant for us. It was colonial people who are extracting resources from us and brought us together arbitrarily without any regard to anything. And they just they got whatever they wanted and left and say, okay, we gave you independence. And, but we haven't done anything to change it because we have evolved to the point now that we are, we are almost, we are more alike now than unlike. I told you earlier that my wife is from Anambra. Without colonialism, maybe the chances of that happening would have been a little too far-fetched, but it has happened. My child, my children now that I go with my Anambra woman, who is, who are they? You know, so we are evolving. We are one, and in more ways than in 1960. But what we haven't done now is the recognition that this system we inherited is not working. We need to make it work. And how can we make it work? Let's tweak it in ways that show sensitivity to our peculiarities, to who we are. You know, and, and some suggestions have come here. One of the people is the AY who said, or oh, the other man that maybe we should go back to 1960, maybe let's make the center not as strong as the constituent part, whatever it is. But we cannot continue to uh, retain a system that we inherited that wasn't working, that wasn't meant for us, and think that it's going to work. That was my point. I'm not saying that it's not going to work. It is that it will work only if we get together consciously and uh, tweak it to show uh, regard to who we are. Thank, thank you, Farouk. Uh, Moses, you want to add something? Uh, just that um, uh, some of this, uh, we have some proposals, by the way, in the book yes. about how to go about doing this restructuring and this tweaking that Farouk uh, was talking about. But, you know, uh, in terms of, you know, how beholding our elites still are to some of these colonial institutions, today is Nigeria's Independence Day. And, and that's why I so much appreciated the question that was asked earlier about the behavior of the colonial elites, our Emir, during colonialism, one would have, one would have thought that the colonial elites, the Nigerian colonial elites, would be would have been you know more deferential towards uh, the West, uh, and that the current set of elites under independence, quote and unquote independence, would be more self-assured, more confident. But the opposite is the case. So one of the things that our uh, that we need to do is to again rethink the way that our elites see themselves. We really re rethink the way they see themselves, really rethink who uh, their loyalty 
um, who they are loyal to. They are loyal right exactly. their loyalty right now lies with the outside world, yes. lies with the West. It doesn't lie with Nigerians. And that's one of the things that need to change. But that's never going to change under the status quo because the status quo is too comfortable. The status quo does not promote accountability on the part of our political elites. They are not answerable to anyone, right? Rather, they can steal money and then when questions are asked, they can run to their ethnic group right now and they'll get protection or they can run to fellow elites and get protection. Yeah. That's not how a nation is run. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Righteous Man. Thank you. Uh, Tone, you're next. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Hi. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, um, a very um, straight one, and this is to Prof. Farouk. I believe I heard you uh, when we uh, when you were commenting um, about uh, Tinubu's um, certificate issue, and you did say that um, perhaps he didn't have much time to um, pay for his um, a copy of his uh, of his degree or diploma, whatever it is, and that it was only sixty five pounds, and then hence the forgery. Now, I'm going to put a pause on that. I went to uni. I can, even if I don't have my certificate, I can tell the uni I went and if you go there in England, and they will tell you that so, so, and so person did attend. I had classmates who can attest that they know somebody called Tom. Now, going to my secondary school, I have people that are still living that can attest that I went to the same secondary school, maybe primary school, maybe one or two people may remember me. Now, my dad's classmate, my dad is passed away now, bless his soul. I can tell you who his classmates were in his secondary school in CKC in Onicha and his university here. So I find it worrying and disturbing when I hear um, educated people make this kind of statements. It's it's worrying, with all due respect to you, sir. It's deeply worrying. And this is what gives uh, people that are still supporting this, this imposter in Aso Rock the, the confidence to still stay there. All the lies, there's yeah, been man, tissues, um, and, let's... and there's been tissues and tissues of lie that's been, okay. uh, that's been spawned out. Can I respond so to your how question? Do we, how do... Okay. Okay, Tone, thank you. So the response is, well, the UK is not the United States. They're different. And then in the United States, the diploma, that certificates that you call, we call it diploma in the United States, is just a celebratory document. It's just a symbolic document. No one asks for it anywhere. They give it to you during graduation to, to display. So his transcripts show that he did graduate from that university. But the certificate you are giving, he got, he, he got lost. And there are processes to get it back. One, you pay in his school $26. It takes 10 weeks to get it back. I, I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm imagining that, oh, suddenly he realizes that in Nigeria, you have to attack your certificate. We call it diploma here, along with your uh, INEC documents. And it's not there. What do we do? Well, if you apply, it's going to take you 10 weeks. And that speaks to the carelessness of the Nigerian elite you know, that you are waiting until the very last minute. And that's why we say he looked tired and sleep deprived in his, I'm sure he didn't even practice the delivery of his speech as he's known in the West. Everything is fire brigade, last minute. So last minute, we have to turn it in. I can't get my transcript to be, because INEC doesn't want transcript. He wants your certificate. As I'm speaking to you here, I graduated from two US universities. If you ask me where my certificate is, I don't know where it is because no one has yeah. ever asked me for my certificate in the US. Anywhere I have gotten a job is my transcript. I write to my school directly and they send a transcript to wherever I'm applying. No one asks, let's see your diploma or your certificate. It's just a celebratory document. So I'm assuming that uh, he got his lost because he earned it in 1979. And now he has to turn it in and he said, oh, it's gonna take 10 weeks. Let's let's just forge one and put it and put it there. That does not indicate that he did not graduate. There have been two people who came for, forward. For, for want of time, because I want other people to contribute, yeah. because there's another question that I would have asked you, because I'm sure he did not just um, 
come out uh, come out of his mother's womb and just went went straight to CSU. He must have gone to secondary school. So now we're yet to see someone that sat in the same class with him. So that's a different conversation altogether. If you've been following this, you would know that I said the good thing about Atiku's uh, the ruling he got now is that we would know who he was before he got to CSU. But that he graduated from uh, Chicago State University is not in question, ex ex except for people who don't even understand what's going on. Because if the if the legal disputation is about whether to release his document or not to release his transcript, we know that he has a transcript to be released or not to be released, which means he graduated from there. And the registrar of the university swore under oath. If you know what that means in the U.S., you don't even have this conversation that he did graduate. If he lied, he's going to be in real big trouble. The university said he's going to be in real big trouble. So right. the question is not whether he graduated from uh, uh, Chicago State University. He did. There's no question about that. It is that they want to use this as a basis to unravel who he was. What secondary school did he attend? How did he get there? That's the question. But a lot of people don't understand that they want their prejudices and predispositions to be confirmed. If it's not confirmed, they get angry. But that's not the way the world works. But it's not a prejudice. Graduated it's very clear that this man is a fraud. It's not a pre there's no prejudice here. It's, that's no it's very, very clear from that's all evidence that this, this man is a criminal, he's a fraud. Well, all right. Turn that's a different up. conversation, my friend. The conversation okay. is Thank about where much, he graduated bro. from Kennesaw, I mean, from uh, Chicago yeah. State University. And the answer is yes, he did. Other things okay. are, are ancillary, and we can have we can talk about that. All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ton. Uh, let's go to uh, Ike. What medication do you like to have with um, us? Uh, the two, the okay. panelists. Hold on, hold on, Ike, Ike, hold on, please. I think yes. there is X, X zero. Um, he's been um, trying. No, to no, 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 no. Don't do this. I've been uh, over here for over an hour. You want to get me stuck? You know, I've been here for over an hour. I just wanted to. I just need to ask a question. Ike, Ike, try to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Rudolph. Thank you, uh, Farouk Perogi and uh, Moses uh, Ochonu. I don't know your titles, maybe professors. I uh, thank you very much for coming to the program today. I have this uh, lingering question. I'm, I'm not sure, but I want to be sure. Is it this? Is this is uh, Farouk Perogi that wrote that story? During the tick of electioneering, that was titled um, obituary. That was kind of a, a, an attack to Obi or something like that. Was it Farouk? No, no was it wasn't Farouk that wrote it. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry for the mix-up. Now I wanted to I wanted to ask you your take on a journalist like David Budeni. How would you describe such a journalist, David Budeni? What's your take on him? To tell the truth, I'm not familiar That's with his work. I'm not familiar with really? his work. Yeah. And so, I mean, if he's doing journalism, that's fine. I, I, except if you help me describe what, he's, what he does, that would be great. But I'm not familiar with his journalism. I've heard his name, but I've, wow. I've never read anything he's written. You don't really, you don't really read other journalists because he's quite, I, I think they're, they're, even, they're, they're even recommending him for, for, for an award, international award. Oh, really? Yes. That's that's wonderful. He, he's one of those journalists who did a lot of research about uh, the Tinubu saga, you know, and I think you should read about him. But I like, okay. I've read most of your works, and I think you're one of those journalists that bring us to the spotlight. But please, I want you guys to also focus on those those uh, international uh, um, companies that are doing the dirty job, dirty deals in Nigeria, because... There's a deep. They are they're deeply involved in the in, in why our, our our politicians don't want to let go. Whenever they 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 they're almost giving up, they see another opportunity. The World Bank, the IMF, these guys are involved, but there are also some multinational firms, and we would like you guys to expose them so we can continue the expose here, so that their citizens will continue the work because in their own countries, they are going far right. Please, right. I, would, I would like yeah. to have your contact too, so we can talk more. All right, okay. thank, you. thank you very much. All right. So, who, who is this for? Farouk, is it? Is it for you? Hmm? Are you? Are you taking this, or, or there's something to say? Is there a question? 
Oh, okay. It's not. I don't think it's a question. Yes, I, I, it's a question because I know you do a lot of research. I want to know. I've seen the possibility of uh, in uh, researching on these international uh, uh, multinational firms that are doing the dirty jobs in Nigeria, especially the oil spillage and all these contracts that are making that are keeping these these politicians yeah in power. I don't want to make them leave, so we can expose them more and chase them out. All right. Thank you. Is that possible? Yeah, it's it's possible. If you give me the facts and we can investigate it, I'm I'm always glad to to expose. I, I think I did a, I did it was 2011 or so about this toxic uh, fuel that I exported to Nigeria, and that you know no one could use um, in Europe. It's illegal to the and and it's still continuing sadly because uh, the sort of gas the petrol that Nigerians uh, use is that it's it's uh it's borderline illegal you know in many jurisdictions in the world and so it's not even the quality of it's not the crude that is extracted from nigeria that is refined the refined products that we that we use in nigeria is not even the it's not the quality it's not it's not the crude that is exported for nigeria so there's a lot of uh, uh that's happening and i don't think any change has occurred uh for an exposing that I recall in 2011, I got calls from senators who wanted me to uh, give them more information, and they brought it up in the Senate, but nothing has come out of it. But sometimes just knowing something, you know, democratizing knowledge of certain inequities, maybe it may have, have some functions that, that, you know, causes people to, the, self, the mass awareness of an issue, maybe forces governments to do something about it. I don't know. But um, it's not the first time it's been happening, and I'll be glad to do anything within my power to expose uh, international conspiracies to bring our people down. All right, thank you, Farouk. Uh, Iken at San Antonio, the next. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, the panel of judges. Uh, thank you, the people that came to talk to us today. Um, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, it's not easy to do research and thank you for Dr. Jacqueline Damages for all you do. Uh, for me, there are some things you say, it struck me because when you say political will, there is nothing like political will because structurally, political system in Nigeria does not have structure. For example, if you come to here in the US, if you're a Democrat, you have a fundamental belief system. If you're a Republican, you have a fundamental belief system. Yeah. So in Nigeria, there's nothing like political will. So we can put that aside. Then forget, let's throw aside the politicians. The individuals, the people of Nigeria are so corrupt that it's sad. Do you guys see the news, the people that are talking about they didn't come to work and they say they didn't come to work on time? And they could you imagine in Nigeria you cannot clock in and clock out to go to work? And people, the minister of works forcing them, oh, you didn't come to work, and they are fighting. I'm <laughs> fighting to justify why they didn't come to work on time. So for me, to that those things. Structural in Nigeria, both politicians, both people of Nigerians, we need to change completely. When we were growing up, it was different. Probably me and you, um, Farouk, me and you might be at the same age level. But when we are growing up, it's different from what we are seeing coming out of Nigeria now. But the only thing I will say in terms of Nigeria changing, I think visiting back 1960. 60 something um, level of uh, regional government. That is the only thing that will change. What we have now is nonsensical. But I want to use this opportunity to think that anybody think that what is happening in Chicago court will change the outcome of anything. That person is dreaming because what he's fighting is the dem demography. The information that was he, he's not fighting about his transcript because that one nobody will really we release that one that particular demography how he made it to chicago university is what he's fighting for he doesn't want anybody to see anything the only thing will happen that at the end of the day people see it 
then like you said, it will unravel who he is as an individual. I didn't go to secondary school in Nigeria, personally. So if, I, if I'm if i joining Nigerian politics, I will not say, oh, I went to secondary school in Nigeria. Because the biggest school I went to in Nigeria was sixth elementary six. So you cannot see a document saying, oh, he went from this in secondary school to this. But what you're going to see is, oh, he came to U.S. and do GED. GED covers all that for me to get into university. Now you can say, oh, I will get his demography. So Nigerians need to have it in their head that this thing that is happening is ego. Atiku is using ego to prove that Tinibu is a fraud. That's all he's trying to do. And it's not going to change anything. Thank you for what you guys do. Continue researching and being safe because it's not easy for you guys to do what you guys do. That is just my one sense on this. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ike from San Antonio. Let's go to one of Prestige. Okay. Good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Forok and Moses, nice to have you on this forum today. It's a pleasure having you on this forum. Um, let me begin uh, from the speech. I watched Tunumbu's speech, Nigeria 63. Uh, in my opinion, most Nigeria have not had their independence. You know, a lot of them have been in bondage. So having said that, the speech was kind of, there's some substance to what he said, but he looked tired and uninspiring. So I don't know what's going on. He looked very tired. If he asked me, that's my own opinion. So maybe he's doing too much. I don't know. He need, um, so what I'm trying to say, maybe the advisors that is handling him, they need to spend more time, you know, presenting a good advice how to solve the country problem instead of the propaganda, you know, because that's what they've been doing. Propaganda deceiving the Nigerians, you know, going from what they said, all the whole lying about the visa ban. I mean, I can go on. I have at least about 10 something that I can say right now about their propaganda. So I think they are investing a lot of time on propaganda instead of doing something, try to deceive the Nigeria. I don't think that's the way they want to govern. So having said that, um, my question that, you know, I'm going to, and I'm going to ask you today, um, I was on a different platform. There has been something going on because of the dire situation in Nigeria. Do you think that Nigeria should sell some of the assets in order to alleviate the problem we're having right now? Because I don't see anywhere we, get, we can get any forest. There's no way. I mean, the oil is depleted. You know, you can't get, you can't get any forest to help Nigeria in that respect. Maybe they should sell their assets. Would that be a good thing, you know, buying any kind of uh, national security implication? Okay, I mean, we need a dire help right now, not for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have to quickly get to Okay. We are running out of time. Okay. So the question is, uh, should Nigeria sell assets to take care of um, the problems? Hmm. Yeah. Well, let's Moses go. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'll be very quick with this. Yeah. No. Uh, what we need to get rid of is the waste in government exactly. and the excessive largesse that the political elites award to themselves. And we need to find savings in the institutions of government. And if we do all of that with sincerity of purpose, with determination, we can... Uh, and, and we need to go after people who have stolen large amounts of money as well. So if, we, if we have the determination to do all of that, we can recover enough money to build things and to bring our economy back. No, we don't need to start selling assets. That's that 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 compounds the problem. It doesn't solve it. All right. You know, there's there's a, there's there's a there's a quote from Mahatma Gandhi that incidentally I became aware of through Moses, where he says uh, there is enough for everyone's need, but there's not enough for everyone's greed. You know, apart from the rhyming need and greed, there it's a very poignant. Um, statement that captures uh, you know the, the the greed of the elite how the greed of the elite eats into the need of the everyday folks and when you have a federal government with 50 ministers and all these ministers are going to have their aides and you have governors with 100 plus aides 
I mean, that's 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 a lot of waste there. That's 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 low hanging fruit there. If you want to if you want to save money, those are very low hanging fruits there to save money from. So the problem is not the need of the people; it's the greed of the elite. And if you can modulate the greed of the elite, there's probably going to be enough to sustain everyone. All right. Thank you. Um, Pansat, Ernest. All right. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, welcome, Mr. Farouk Oregi and Moses Ochon to the show. Um, congratulations on your book. I'll try thank to uh, pick it up. Now, I have looked at a couple of your works in the past, especially when we had the an administration. And I, I used to think that you were unfair to um, Jonathan, Mr. Farouk, I'm, talk, I'm talking to you now. But then I, I saw the way you handled Buhari and I said, okay, this is a journalist doing his job. He's uh, hard on uh, Jonathan and he's hard on Buhari himself. Who's from that? that uh, you say you're from Kwara. We, when we look at North, we look at everybody. Uh, it's not geographic, basically. It's religious, it's uh, uh, cultural ways of doing things in Nigeria. Yeah, but the, that's uh, even handedness true. I don't think there's moral equivalence, for example, between Jonathan and Buhari, and then of course the, the man we have in office right now. Jonathan is a civilian, he's a Democrat, uh, and uh, other virtues. He's not the smartest bulb in the room. That's true, but that's not it's not equivalent, right? So, but I I've noticed that change though, uh, Mr. Farouk. Just when I'm relaxing and said, okay, here's one guy from your section of the country who's fair. I come to notice that you do give landings, like you're doing in this case right here with uh, Tinibu. You are here in the United States, you're educated, you've quoted things, showing that you, you know a lot of things. Somebody asked you, do you know David Hyundai? And you say you don't know David Hyundai. That, that's a red flag. But more importantly, the soft landing that you're giving, probably uh, you're not doing it knowingly, unwittingly. You're giving uh, Tinibu a soft landing on, on a, a hearing we're going to get to know tomorrow. You know that the Supreme Court of the United States, because you're comparing the two, using them almost the same Nigeria system and the United States. The Supreme Court has vast powers. It's not, it's not just discretionary, but extraordinary powers, such as rates of mandamus and uh, rates of satirari, right? I, I don't know if you're familiar with those rates. Pansa, Wait, sorry. Hold on, uh, please. Uh, we, have, we have eight minutes, and we have more than four people. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. Yeah, this, this would really cover a lot of things. I would like to hear uh, Mr. Farouk's response to this. Because the, even here in the United States, the Supreme Court could, even before the, that uh, intermediate court, appellate court, the petition, uh, the uh, tribunal, they could reach down there and, and, and take that case from there, knowing that we, you know there was a, a problem in our system whereby a president could be sworn in bef before the election was determined. So my question to you is that, Knowing that the Supreme Court could, has all kinds of powers, including these two writs that I, if you're not familiar with them, it's writ of mandamus and then writ of saturari, right? They could make INEC something on their own motion by the courts themselves. So how could you predetermine what that's going to do, knowing that our courts too in Nigeria have the same power? So right. uh, let me also say that... Uh, 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 pardon. Uh, I said I all right. A very good answer. On, I want a very good answer on that, uh, Mr. Farouk. And if you don't have a good answer on it, then don't, 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 right. don't give me a soft landing. Don't give me a soft landing. It, it demoralizes. It demoralizes. My brother. The citizen when when it's Let inevitable me... that no matter what, this thing is determined. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yes. Thank you. you Thank me? you. 
Yeah. Well, well so first of all, thanks for the thanks for the question and um for having read me, you know, all this while. But let me say this very quickly. And you know, I'm not the only person who says he has no confidence in the capacity of the Supreme Court to use the judgment and the evidence that might come from this revelation to uh do anything. Um uh my friend Moses said the same thing, and he gave examples. A Supreme Court that will make someone who came forth in an election to be the winner of the election, a Supreme Court that um, make make someone who did not run for an office, I mean, who, who did not contest the primary election to be the candidate for the election, uh, shouldn't be trusted to do anything, you know, logical or legal or whatever. And I'm not the only person who has said it, other people have said it. So why you are isolating that to me, I have no idea. But I appreciate- uh, so You were emphatic though, you, you, you were emphatic, that's why. You were very emphatic uh, to say- uh, Pansat, 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 he said, this is my opinion and my opinion can be wrong, it's not fact. So I don't know where he was emphatic. Exactly. So let me, let's move on. Uh, Pansat, thank you so much. Uh, Chim, you're next. Uh, good, uh, good day to everybody. I'll just, I'll just say good day because I don't know what time it is where each of us is. And, uh, um, Moses and, uh, Prof, uh, Farouk or Dr. Farouk, I'm not sure which one it is. It's a pleasure to be meeting both of you and, um, congratulations on your new book. I will, I'm, I'm getting lazy reading these days, but I will try as much as possible to see if I can get that book and read it. Uh, it's, it sounds something that will be very interesting and, educative um ordinarily i wouldn't have much questions because dr rudolph uh, rigs this election all the time he the time i go i go to church i know he's not happy that i go to church so i go to church <laughs> by the time i come back the speakers would have spoken i will not know the basis and foundation on where to start to ask them questions but that's okay at least i caught you when you were uh talking about um Give you your perspective, your opinion on on whether uh, the uh, the legal situation going on in the U.S. will have any implications in Nigeria. Uh, fair enough, I share your views. I share your views not because I would love th that to be my viewpoint, but I share those views because of the disappointment and my my understanding of how our our legal system works back home in Nigeria. And that is to say that um, you know ordinarily, if the situation comes out unfavorable towards the sitting president. It should be something that someone should pick up and go to court to say, you know what, bearing the information we have right now, I think this man is no longer qualified to be sitting on that seat. And then it becomes a legal issue to see how to get him out. But fair enough, I, I, I share your views. I don't have confidence in our judiciary. But I disagree when it comes to um, whether Tinubu went to Chicago and all that. I know it, it sounds conspiratory, I agree. I understand that we need we need facts, hard facts. We need to follow the follow the trails properly and not make conjectures. Totally agreed. So one thing I left with from church today was the minister. We had a guest speaker, and he was trying to talk about the values and equivalences of believing in the Bible and the Big Bang, and he used this analogy. He said that the thing is, um, if you go to court. Two lawyers, they, they all deal with the same facts. If it is uh, something that they've gotten in terms of DNA, the, the, the defending lawyer and the prosecuting lawyer are dealing with the same facts. But everybody will try and twist those facts to suit their narrative and their argument because they have a bias. You have a bias to defend your, your client. This other person has a bias to throw your client to jail. And so everybody will come from that perspective. So that's one of the reasons why I find it difficult going with the legal system. But that being said, the candidate we're talking about, the person we're talking about, in 1999, 1999, filled a form. And that form stated he went to government college, Ibadan. The form said he went to uh, a certain Richard Daly or whatever, and then subsequently dovetailed into Chicago State University. But in 2022-23, bear in mind that this matter had been tested by, you know, Chief Ghani Farami of blessed memory, decided to remove that government college 
did not mention any primary school and just soft landed from Richard Daly to Chicago. And then recent information we're having says that it's a stolen identity. So when people are saying that he didn't go to Chicago, it is that the identity that went to Chicago is not his identity. So, and that's the argument which people like Mr. De Hundei, who brought up this matter and brought it to the front burner in recent times and making, which is what Atiku is trying to ride on to see how he can unravel. So my point is, um, I do not think that the, and I'm, and I'm trying to be as fair as possible towards him. I do not think that this matter should not be in the front burner as uh, Moses alluded to initially. I think this is a serious matter. I, I listen to people. I, I know people are hungry, but I also know that people want to know if the person who is presiding over our affairs is, for a better use of word, a fraud or a stolen identity. That is one. So uh, I don't know what you have to say about that. I, it was, it's not necessarily a question because, like I said, I didn't really catch you guys when you were speaking, but this is, I just wanted to express my views on what I think this issue is all about. Thank you very much. Right, well, again, um, again, I mean, you are you are completely uh, right to hold the opinion that you hold, but I do know that um, there is a yearbook photo in 1979 of the class of 1979 that shows a clearly younger version of Tinubu, and the transcripts showed him, showed that whether if there's still an identity, it's before his graduation. And maybe you, because you didn't come in here on time. And I say the secondary, there's a possibility, which we are going to see now uh, when these documents, the non-essential documents are released, showing that a person by the name of Bola Tinubu attended a secondary school in Nigeria. Because although he did not indicate which schools he attended in Nigeria in his INEC form, the documents at Chicago State University will show what documents, what secondary school he claimed to have attended. And that's what's going to unravel the real person who graduated from there. So for me, where the question of identity theft will come in is that maybe we might see that someone stole someone's identity to get into Richard Daly or stole an identity of someone who attended Richard Daly to get into Chicago State University and graduated from it. Because the yearbook photo that I saw of him is clearly, unmistakably, a younger version of Tinubu. So it is he who actually graduated from Chicago State University. But whether he got someone's identity to get into Chicago State University is where, what, where the question is going to be. So we are hoping that when this come out, we are going to see that all right thank you uh moses you want to say something okay all right so we we are out of time but if if a guest can stay <laughs> for for the people who are in the studio at this point um we continue what do you guys think moses can you uh we have uh, two more people we can just take those two questions yeah. or three questions together and uh, okay all right so let's take it together see him Sam, we can't hear you. All right, we skip Sam. He will figure it out. Um, he's a veteran. Let's go for this. This will be Okija, now my in-law. Oh. Uh, now your uh, uh, <laughs> now your in-law. Professor Fa Professor Farouk, actually, I I came to ask this question because I mentioned Okija. That's the only reason. Only reason. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm gonna tell you, you know, like uh, the right thinking of teacher people, you know, when they have information, the way they they they, they, they process information. Yeah. So I'm gonna show it to you. Uh, um, was in 1992 when he ran for Senate on the SDP. Yeah. He said that he went to Chicago State University, Bachelor of Science in Accounting, that SDP. In 1999, he he, he proposed certificate, uh, Bachelor of Accounting. In 1999, when he ran for governor, he presented University of Chicago, University of Chicago, not Chicago State University, Bachelor of Certificate in Economics. 
Um, then in 2022, he produced Chicago State University Bachelor Certificate in Business and Admin. 1999 was a uh, Chicago State University, I mean, 1992 was a uh, accountant. Uh, 99 economics, uh, 2022 business and admin. Okay, so you went to university, you know, you've gone to a lot of university, you know, but mass from. Don't you remember, you know, like, you know, the schools you attended, attended, I mean, like, you know, the degrees you got, you know, because, you know, you say something about uh, that. I mean, actually, you know, you answered the question by being, you know, fair that uh, probably, you know, because of identity issue. But, you know, when you were asked, uh, responding to tone, you were categorically saying that, you know, you went to, the way I saw it, I, I read it, you were categorically saying that, you know, he graduated from the university. But also, I don't know, I don't, you also say that you never heard about David in, I mean, that's, a, I, I don't know how, who hasn't heard about David, who lives in the U.S., professor in the U.S., who is always in, you know, in, in the social media, he hasn't heard about David. I mean, that's, that's strange to me. What's wrong David, with you? <laughs> what's what's this obsession with David Uday? No, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, a, is it? Yeah, you, 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 you create, you, you live in your own that. echo chamber, and you imagine yeah. that everyone lives in that echo chamber. That's what's called echo chamber insularity. No, no, there are people I mean, you know that you don't know. So no. when you see that I know someone because you know that person. No, I don't have to know You haven't heard about him. You don't have to know him. You haven't heard about him. I have not heard about him, but I've never read anything he has ever written. So what's what's big? There are people who have okay, never read about, about him, or, or you haven't read, read about him. Uh, you haven't heard about him. I mean, you you guys you live in your own your own, in your own silos, in your own echo chambers, and you believe that that's the world, and yeah. that's so stupid. Yeah, that's yeah, not that's the world. Good. There's a yeah. world out there that does that exists outside of your circles. Yeah, I know there that. Are people who don't know yeah. me, who have never yeah. heard of me. In fact, yeah. a few days I've um, read about you. I've read you many times. One From, of my uh, colleagues. Toshano, I was with you at Nigerian, uh, Nigeria, Nigerian World. I read you on Nigerian World many times. We were even in the forum so together. What is Nigerian World? <laughs> you people are just, yeah, this, yeah, this is just unbelievable. There are yeah. people, my colleagues, who met in Nigeria, Nigerians who came for a conference in uh, uh, a, a country in, uh, in Singapore. And because he imagines that I'm some popular guy, he said, Do you know Farouk Piroge? He said, I've never heard that name before. He said, Really? So he came back and said, each time you always tell me Farouk, you are very popular. I say, No, I'm popular with certain people. There are some people who don't even know that I exist in Nigeria. So when he came, he met people. There were five from Nigeria, they were scholars. I mentioned the name. He said, I had never heard the name before. And he came back and said, Farouk, you are right. And I said, Nigeria is a big country, 200 plus million people. Not everyone knows me. So to imagine that because you know someone, everyone must know that person, it's just stupid. Yeah, okay, sorry, I have to say that. Yeah, and, uh, as, uh, as uh, someone who's in IT, I know how algorithm works. If, if if you view information about Nigeria, if you're on Twitter, I'll algorithm they push towards you things about Nigeria. Exactly. So I mean, that's, that, that's your algorithm. That's yeah, not my yeah. algorithm. You have heard about you have anything has you have read him. I understand that. But you say you have heard about him. You hold me. Yeah, that's you know, all. Right. I, I don't know who yeah, you, yeah, know. you are. You are the guest. I don't want to argue with you. You know, you can you can leave your own echo chamber. But you know, but you know, I'm trying to depend on future people. Or future people, you know, they you know they're smarter than they're smarter than that. That's what I'm. Um, uh, Farouk, uh, you know, Farouk, there's something you, I mean, maybe you don't, um, I hope you know this, uh, that people can have a meeting and demand additional dowry from you, uh, <laughs> based on this conversation. <laughs> to go to the substantive question he asked, mm. you know, you live in the United States, our degrees, our degrees, for instance, in my university, is degree, degree is in communication, but there's a specialization in journalism. There are those who specialize in public relations. There's organizational communication. In Chicago State University, their degree is business administration. And within business, they have specializations. So his, his business administration specialization in accounting. How is that a problem? So sometimes you just say, I have a communication degree. That's what my students say. After that time, they say, I have journalism. Or after that time, they say, I have public relations, depend on it. So because the, the umbrella degree is business administration. But then there are subspecialties within business administration. It's the same thing in communication. There are many majors that are like that. How is that a problem? I have no idea. I mean, people just want an affirmation of their preconceptions. Anything that departs from need must be made with violence, with rhetorical violence. That's not the way the world works. I think we should, we should, ha we should uh, have some, uh, I don't have any emotional investment in anything, in any of the candidates in all of your divisions and all of that. I don't have that. So if you want to put me into a box, well, that's your problem. 
but I don't belong in those boxes. All right, thank you. Let's go back to CM. CM, uh, can you can you try? Again? Okay, thank you so much. CM. All right, CM is still in uh, in purgatory. And uh, Janaba, you honest. Can you hear me? Yeah. All go right. Ahead. Thank you, uh, uh, young man, for coming on Dr. Rudolph show, and thank you, Dr. Rudolph, for having uh, having me. Um, Where is Janaba? We seem to have lost him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John, John has run away. All right. So, so, John, can you hear me? Janaba. All right. CM, CM, can you try again? Is it Nepa? <laughs> CM. All right. So, well, CM, should take off, CM should take off his headphone. I think his headphone is what is causing the CM, problem. Yeah. So, so let me let me ask my own final question so that you guys can round up. Um, so Moses and, and Farouk, I know you make you, you, are, you do commentary every time, but columns and everything. What do you think um, uh, we are looking at? I'm talking about the supporters of Bola Tinubu. Are they any different from the people that supported Jonathan or the people that supported uh, Buhari in terms of how they react to people criticizing? their hero because um a lot of people who are in the public space uh, they've complained about this idea of um being leveled you know when people forget what you wrote someone actually pointed i think it was pansat that went back to research on what you wrote about jonathan um but that was a good thing for him to do but some people forget that you were commenting on jonathan you were commenting on on um, buhari mm -hmm. suddenly they would think that you woke up now and you started attacking Tinubu because he's you now you are a person or you are supporting Tinubu because he's your person. How do you guys deal with this or see this uh, trend? Are things getting worse or are things getting better? I don't know. Oh. Go for it. Yeah, but Moses, start. Moses. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, I mean, when you are in the public uh, discursive space and um, you are airing your views, you have to be mindful of potential backlash, you have to be mindful that your opinion is yours and yours alone. And there are people who hold uh, contrary opinions. And because of the democratization of the information space through social media and other platforms, those people uh, have uh, the capacity to disagree. Uh, I, as, you know, so it comes to the territory you occasionally you might want to remind people of something you said earlier on especially when as Farouk was saying earlier they try to put you in a box some of them know exactly what they are doing it's an intentional deliberate rhetorical strategy to marginalize your viewpoints to diminish what you have to say and to muddy the waters so occasionally you have to intervene to correct those the impression that those people try uh, try to create but also, I feel like we, as commentators in the public space, uh, always expressing ourselves about what goes on in our country, we also need to be introspective. Uh, we need to hold ourselves to account as well. The capacity for self-critique, for introspection, I, I think is something that we all need to cultivate. Uh, because if you are willing to put yourself out there and to put your views out there, you should be ready for scrutiny. And in fact, you should be ready for a higher level of scrutiny than the people that we are holding to the people in government that we're always criticizing. So I think that that's, that's a burden that we carry. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't mean that we should tolerate people who come at us and accuse us of all kinds of things and try to fit us into their preconceived uh, agendas and, and the way they see the world, the way they see the, some people see the world from very, these very narrow prisons of uh, ethnicity and they try to guess your loyalties and they try to pin certain loyalties and, and and those assumptions just don't work and occasionally you let it go but sometimes when it's egregious and you know you know they're doing it with malice and with uh, intentionality you have to step in and correct them you have to remind them look i i also say the same thing about this other person and uh, i don't play your game i don't i'm not in those categories and uh, that is all you can do unfortunately yeah. Uh, of course, Nigeria has become so polarized that it's difficult for many of our compatriots to imagine that 
that one can stand in a neutral space, discursively speaking and intellectually speaking, and, and express one's views about the country. Uh, one, the, the, I think the, the going assumption is that everyone has you know, his or her loyalties, and that those loyalties dictate what one says in the public space. And so it's very hard for our people, and I don't, I don't completely blame them. I don't completely blame them because there have been so many cases of people like us, intellectuals in the public space like us, who have allowed themselves to be, you know, to be compromised and bought over and to, uh, to basically be seduced by some of these ethnic and religious and other primordial uh, uh, loyalties and solidarities. So I think that is what is conditioning people to extend that sort of scrutiny and skepticism to the rest of us. So unfortunately, we have to pay for the sins of the few, <laughs> as it were. Yeah, Baruch, I'm sure, has something to say about that. All right, Baruch. Yeah, well, you know, uh, just like, I mean, consistently, uh, it's, uh, I have said that my loyalty is to principles, not to people, not to primordial identities, because in any case, frankly, as I said earlier, I don't fit into the primordial boxes that Nigerians have constructed. And I have been consistently critical of government since I started my public commentaries in uh, 2005. Obasanjo, Good Luck Jonathan, uh, Yaradwa, and you know, all of them will always have their own army of supporters, you know, who come for you, who accuse you of all kinds of things, who try to emotionally blackmail you into towing their lines. So that's that's consistent. It's something that I've gotten a thick skin over that it doesn't worry me anymore. Uh, but I would say, though, that uh, in the last um, few years, uh, well, months since uh, I think to answer your question directly, it does seem to me that uh, Tinubu supporters are so, I think the, the man's problems, the fraud surrounding, uh, notions of fraud surrounding his identity, his politics, his policies, are so overwhelming that I don't even see any supporters anymore. Buhari had more uh, articulate supporters who are, who are able to come out and be counted even in the midst of his disaster than Tinibu has had. Uh, for me, that indicates that uh, it, it's so bad that even people who support him are not prepared to come out in the open to fight for him. Maybe, again, I live in my own filter bubble, you know, which I'm not immune to. Uh, just like the people here who think because they know someone and are familiar with someone's work, everybody else must, you know. and. We live in an algorithmic world, uh, but we can also transcend the algorithms because some things interest you. Which there's, for instance, there's a story about this MOBAD. I've seen that story everywhere. I've seen it, but I've not read a single story about MOBAD, not one, because it doesn't interest me. I have many things that I need to do with my life. There are so many competing pressures that I see MOBAD, MOBAD. Ask me a single thing about MOBAD that I know. I swear to God, I don't know anything, but I've seen the headlines. I've seen friends comment about it. So we can transcend algorithms. So I'm so I'm saying this with a self-admission that my notion that Tinubu doesn't have supporters may be wrong. Maybe that's my own, that's what I see. But uh, when I write articles that are critical of him, the way that Buhari people will come for me and fight me and insult me, uh, I haven't seen that yet. And for me, my own indication is that uh, it signposts the depth of the unpopularity of both his politics and policies that only people in government are defending him. Even the, they're doing the defense so tepid, so tentative, so cowardly that I think it's an indication to them that this is just, this is just an unmitigated disaster. But I have gotten death threats uh, from Jonathan's time, uh, Buhari's time, that was when he spiked. Unfortunately, the only death threats I got in this past election were for a candidate who didn't win the election because I say something critical about the candidate. Uh, so it's not even the person is in power that's in power right now. 
where I got death threats from uh, the supporters. So it's always people get invested in in people and emotions, uh, and it's uh, it's a consequence of uh, you know I was reading a book um, written by psychologists about you know ma mass political cultism, how people uh, you know isolate an individual, in, infuse attributes on that individual that he doesn't have, and then they surrender their thought processes, their independence to that person, and then they create communities around it and. You know, they, they get they get very fierce and they are very dangerous and threatening people and all of that. And I see that happening. I, I'm working on an article political cultism in Nigeria. They are they are political. They are cult groups, politically speaking, in Nigeria now. Uh, unfortunately for us, uh, Stilubo has so depleted his goodwill, whatever if he had any, that it would be very difficult to form political cultism around him because everyone is a uh, suffering the consequences of his economic disaster and uh, bad choice and all of that. So he see, I don't, I, I maybe so that's so far, you know, it could change, but so far I don't see, I haven't seen any Tinubu supporter uh, sending me death threats because I said uh, he's, you know, his economic policies are strangulating people because I'm sure even those people themselves are struggling to breathe as we are talking now. I don't know anyone who is not struggling to breathe in Nigeria except people in government and their supporters and uh, and all of that. So, all right, thank you, thank you, um, Moses. Final thoughts. Yeah, I'll meet yourself, Moses. Yes, I mean I think the thing with uh, Chinobu is that um, the honeymoon is over. We in the next uh, few months, could be in the next couple of years, um, we are going to see the Farouk's uh, theory tested, <laughs> you know, uh, if we can call it a theory, as to whether Tinubu's uh, supporters, uh, whether Tinubu has supporters, and if so, why those supporters are not vigorously in the public space defending him the way that Jonathan's and Buhari's uh, supporters did. Mm -hmm. uh, it is simply possible that people have, uh, you know, people have a fatigue it is, it is also possible that people are just too preoccupied with their yeah. survival, their struggle for daily survival. Um, and it is, it is also possible that the last two presidents, being Jonathan and Buhari, have convinced the Nigerians that politicians are no longer worth defending. And that, you know, even if you, if you are going to get in bed with a politician, you do so to benefit yourself. But when it comes to public discourse, you better not put yourself out there because one way or the other, those politicians will disappoint you. You know, if you invest your whatever intellectual capital you have in any politician, <laughs> especially in the, this president, uh, they, will, they will ultimately fail you and disappoint you and leave you hanging. So we, we will see all of those things uh, tested and probably clarified in the next couple of years. But my sense of it is that Tinubu is a spectacularly uh, it's a spectacularly flawed and uniquely yeah. flawed president so that the task of defending him and defending his politics and policies is just so unappealing yeah. to maybe a much wider segment of people than was previously the case with, say, mm -hmm. Jonathan or Buhari. Uh, and that even in the Southwest, another point that I think needs to be stressed, yeah. uh, even in the Southwest, because usually with Jonathan and Buhari, we had this core, reliable constituency of support that they enjoyed. With Jonathan, it was uh, ironically the Southeast that was most vocal in defending him, but also the South-South as well uh, owned him. With, with Buhari, of course, we know the Northwest and the Northeast and so on. But I think even in, uh, Buhari, uh, Tinubu's hold, political hold and sway in the Southwest, is not even, uh, it's not total. Yeah. It's not unanimous either. And uh, there is Tunubu remains a divisive figure, even in the southwest. So he doesn't have that core group of uh, supporters who are willing to stick out their neck to defend him in the way that uh, Buhari's uh, supporters and Jonathan's supporters did. So that may be another wrinkle to the story. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, please. I don't want to talk behind them. Could I ask him a question? I don't want to talk no, no, behind them. No, 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 no. Let, let no, Pansa, Pansa, we're done. Pansa, we're done. There are many people who are begging to say something. I cannot let them. We are done. They've gone over the... Privilege, 
Because you're asking, no, no, no. Because I don't want to come, no. come behind there, but I have to say it's caustic a little bit. Uh, don't worry. You send me a message. I'll send it to them. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ferruga Berugi. Thank you, Professor Moses Ochono. And for those on the comment section, I saw some of your questions. Um, the reason why I didn't bring them up is that it showed me that you've not been following our guest. So there's only asking questions that, you know, doesn't make sense. But we appreciate all of you and everybody who, who joined us. Um, thank you. And we'll take a break when we come back. We will do a review of uh, what happened today. Thank you, Farouk, and thank you, Moses. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Bear with me, guys. Um, my computer doesn't like long uh, being on for a long time. Um, so let's see. If you're a sensible thinker and you're a critical thinker, you should subject your own thoughts to the most intense critical analysis possible, knowing that. When your master love you, I found one master of you. Max, if you have one, you look one no more, no fool, and as oh, oh, laga, oh, laga, nipias go, my oh, laga, don't nipias go. I found one we look to you, be corrupt, when your master of the code, I want my water and the sun. If you want your name, I will love you. Like I don't need your sister. I want my way to China. As you wake up, I'm not gonna worry so much. On your money, got a little more. As you need, as you come, you move on with the melody. It's a new song I got. Um, why did you Why did you stop the first one? People were enjoying it, though. Um, no, no. Oh well, I'm trying to. Come on, doctor, don't do this, man. I didn't know he was playing. I didn't know he was playing here. No, not... please play it. Yeah, again. yeah, it was good though. But it doesn't matter. Do... Play this Yoruba one. Play, play now. No, 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 no. no. The first one you played, please. People were enjoying it. Give it to us this again. This one, the last one. Play this last I've got one. I got some. No, the first one. Watch first one. Got you an e The first one, Harry, calm down, man. Yeah. 
What's wrong with the you, second man? One. Chill. You cheer too. The second chill. one, please. Thank you. Ruth, I've done plenty, man. Oh, God. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, When your master love you, I found one was a rubio. Max, if you have one, you have one of the moons of the moon. Olaga, Olaga, Nipiazigo, I can hear it. Can you hear it? I can't hear it. I As you wake up, I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna worry. I'm not Good 
I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not sure what you guys are saying. I don't know, blue flavor. Now, 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 the play music. Really dance well. This one, I got drunk at now. You can behave yourself, man. What's wrong with you? I see when your master love you. Come on, will you keep quiet? Are you alone there? I found my master. Stop chatting rubbish. Can you guys hear me? Henry. Yeah, that was good. 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 Yeah, that was
nice one. Mm, thanks, sir. Nice one. I'm oh, impressed. Man. Are you sure you are, you're not one of the warriors? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, sir. Are you sure you're not one of the warriors? That's oh, thanks, sir. That's cool. <laughs> oh, so you do know it. All right. <laughs> Good, good. You see, you never can tell. You know, I was almost dismissed, dismissing uh, Pansad, but now I know he has um, <laughs> several talents. You know, so so um, in in days to come, I I, I met a musician yesterday at the Chebe uh, conference. He's uh, the son of Emawa. He performed Afrobeat, Fela, uh, Victor Waifo. Unbelievable. So I'll be playing some of the music. So for Henry, Henry, you said play uh, flavor. I can't play anybody that you that I don't have the right to play their music. So it's not just that we don't what want of magic for shake. Um, politics. That one is good. Yeah, but yeah, I just wanted to change things. So there is uh, independence there. So we wanted to change. No, 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 no. What, what are we celebrating? Come on. <laughs> right. So so um let's let's get your view on, on what just happened. Let me start with you, for Father. See, we're not here. Oh, Femi is not was not here too. Austin. I was okay, not here cool. too. Uh, okay, not Henry. Too. Okay, Henry too. But let me start with forefathers. Um, greetings, uh, everyone, and greetings. Uh, thank you for having me, um, uh, Doctor uh, Damages, and uh, all those on the pan uh, chat and the viewers. I'm sorry, I missed all the discussions, so there's no comment on my part. Um, so <laughs> they can go to the next person, then okay. I'll glean from them what they say. All right, all right. Thank you, uh, Good afternoon, everyone uh, in the panel. I I joined late. I came back from Mass and. Um, by the time I joined, it was a question and answer time. But from the questions and answers they gave, I saw that uh, virtually all we are talking about our country, they, are, they share the same opinion. Only that concerning what uh, the courts in Nigeria will make of whatever the Chicago State University releases on Tinubu's uh, records. And they said that they, because of the Nigerian um, compromise system that the courts may, may may just reject it or ignore it so but what i felt was that even if they do that it is left for the people having known the truth and if what we are suspecting is really what we come out that it's not him that went to that school or it was an identity theft and other things that nigerians should begin to ask for him to uh, resign or to leave that position and uh, which means if he goes down I think his vice too should go with him, and they probably. Um, I don't know what will happen next. A new whatever the, those uh, polit political uh, elites or those who know how these things work. Maybe the court will give you a ruling that will. Uh, maybe people will take it to court, and the court will now rule on that if he resigns and all that. Because I don't see him resigning anyway. But if he does, I don't think he's even. I don't think he's um, good or uh, is um, morally right for his vice to remain there. So, but that, that is about that. Then concerning the, uh, the when he was going back and forth with um, uh, Okija about David Hunde, yes, it's possible. Uh, some writers specialize in some areas. Maybe he hasn't taken real, uh, real uh, deep uh, um, thoughts or uh, read deep into David's um, investigative uh, uh, works and all that. You don't blame him. He may, he's a professor, he might, he's very busy. He might be interested in Nigerian affairs, which I know he is, but may not be giving that thought. So let, let's um, excuse him on that. Maybe after what we've said here, he might now take um, interest in David's work. And of course, maybe David might be watching this too, and David will also take interest in his work. And maybe someday they may all team up together since we are all fighting for a better Nigeria. They will team up together and um, go deep into working for Nigeria to make Nigeria better. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, uh, let's go to Henry. Henry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Mr. Rudolph. What I wanted to ask uh, your palan, your guest, uh, but I wasn't chance to go there. When he said he didn't know about David, if he don't, he will not say, when he say he don't know about David, uh, it's for shocking, you know, because uh, a lot of times, every, uh, they, they talk about David everywhere in, in the TV, either from a, a nice TV, whatever, Twitters everywhere. So if he say, say you don't want to talk about him, that's different. When he say when he say you don't know him, that's a big lie from Porto, from 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 anywhere. That's a big lie. But I have a problem with that when he said 
in, in doing investigation about uh, Jonathan when he was president. I have a problem when he could not even do that for Tinubu. I have a problem with that. But but Henry, how do you know he didn't do that? Didn't you hear him say that? He didn't he, say it. I didn't oh, say hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see, this is the thing, uh, you know, even myself, I don't follow everybody, everything they do. So before you come and accuse a writer, he writes a column twice a week. Twice a week. There's no way he didn't write about Tinubu. He, I'm sure no. I read some. What I'm uh, saying is this. You, you don't okay. come out and say... No. No, 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 Mr. Rudolph, don't cover for him. Ask your parliament now if they, if they know about him, wrote about Trump before. They he did, he about did. Him. He did a lot of it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Abeni. You don't he know Farouk. Look at his Facebook page, you will see Farouk. He wrote a lot, all of them. I follow yeah, but, him. But, but what I'm trying to say, all this investigation that's going on about Tunubu, it was David, true David, most every Nigerians know that it's what Tunubu about the safety or issue. But nobody know from, from this uh, Farouk. Nobody know about it. For me, I didn't know about it. He was the one who was doing it. But David was the one, everybody knew that he was fighting for this uh, 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 Tinubu issue. No, this issue has been going on, on even when Tinubu was governor. Yeah, but you what I'm saying, you don't know moment, about it. during this election Not time, who we'll bring it back again, I'm saying. Okay, get it. Get it. Everybody knows that David now is doing it. So when he says he's fighting for, he did investigation about, okay, why did he bring the certificate about Tinubu? Let's see, let's, see let's see it in social media and see that he did it. Have you seen the certificate that he investigated about Tinubu? Did you saw it? Have you seen anything about it, uh, Mr. Rudo? Did you see any? If, so, did you see any um, result? So, um, Henry, Henry, I don't want yeah. to get into this, so it won't be personal. No, you have to the get point, into the it. Point is I, have to, I have to see. Yeah, you. I think you should Google him and see what he has done. And you have to remember, David is a, an investigative journalist. Um, Farouk is a columnist. He he okay. helps with investigation, so it's a different a different plat different platform. Because I saw I saw professor, uh, professor journalist. That's why I thought it's a journalist. What, what, I, a what journalist. I said is it's a it's a columnist. It's a professor in the university. It's a professor in journalism. Yeah. He teaches. So so that's his one number one job. He writes but, columns for newspapers. Okay, but it could it could, it could investigate too and publish what so, he investigate. So, and, and Henry, you can investigate. Anybody can investigate. There's I'm no journalist. There's no certificate that they give you and say you are now. Austin, don't shake your head. I don't support things like that. We have to. We have to. We have to fight for that country. No, no, you can see, I bring it out. Can I, I, no? Henry, you Henry, see. people are doing what they can do. They're doing Rudolph, their thing. Can I make a point? But, yeah. but when you say can when you say don't know you don't know David, that's an insult. No, no, can I make a point? Look, look, look. hold, hold. Let me hear Austin, then I'll come to you. Look, I, I always say on this platform, don't use your standard to be the general standard of everybody. That's the truth. You cannot um, weigh yourself. That's write the exam, evaluate yourself, and give yourself the score like what INEC did. Professors, your job is your research. There are things that I don't, I, I don't know outside my field. And that is why you are a professor, you're a professor in your field. So if a person says he has never heard of David Hunde, I don't think that's a big problem. If, okay, like for example, I'll tell you the point. This mobile mobile issue, I never wanted to talk read about it. Even when I sit on summit, I just jump in. Why? Because he dined with the devil. That is why I don't even I don't even read it. You knew that these people are the ones uh, from the, the when I look you finish like that. But you know the start. name. But you know the name, right? He, now I know the name mobile. But he said you know Augustine, the name. Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. That's what we call contest. He was dismissive of it. That was why everybody attacked him. Okay, fine, fine. That's what I and mean. Was, and you could read the you could read an undertone oh, of the no, seat. I don't so know how to talk when others are talking. I don't know. I like. I'm a good listener. I prefer to listen more before talking. If somebody, okay, if if somebody dismisses it and say that I I don't care about reading this, you cannot push him or. No, nah, he said you don't know him. That's why I have a problem. Fine. If I okay, if, I, if if somebody talks about me about something, and I okay talk about uh, Governor Adams of New York, I say I don't know him. Not be by force. See, I must know. Not be by force. I may know that there's somebody called Adams. But everybody know, know like Rudolph. Everybody know Rudolph. Any other than Rudolph. Way. I can still say I don't know Dr. Damage. Rudolph is way more popular than uh, <laughs> David. Rudolph, Rudolph has worked with Sarah Reporter. Rudolph, no. uh, Adiola. Don't um, try to. Um, don't try to. Uh, don't try Let to me talk my own now. That one I told. Don't try to romance this. Let here. me continue what when I When he said, don't know, could I, can I have a problem? Can I, can I respond to Augustine, please? Let me respond please. to Augustine, please. Because. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, Pansa, 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 hold on. I want the yeah. people that are here to speak to say something before we now. No, no, I'm, okay? I want to respond to him. him. Yeah, when, when it wanna, comes to you, you can respond. I mean, Rudolph, you're not being fair to me. What do I do? 
<laughs> you played music. I didn't know you were a musician. I'm really impressed. Something now, please. So we need like, to talk. I want to respond this. to Augustine just for a minute. Okay, one minute. I'll make it 30 seconds. Okay. okay. Right Augustine, yes, somebody, it's not by force, right? You, you're entitled to your opinion. But, but then you are subject to criticism. You have to complete that, right? You, you could do, he, he came here and, uh, you know, he, he's he, he's upset because he, he was being criticized, right? Now, this is somebody whose life is to criticize other people. In Matthew 26, 52, Jesus draw the sword will die by the sword. So he says, put away your, 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 your sword. You, you live daily by criticizing others. Right, he comes here. I, I didn't like the way he insulted uh, okay, Jai, who, who had salient point. You, you say you don't know David Hunter in, in this climate we're in right now. It's incredible, right? It, it's it's not it's not the issue. It's not it's about credibility. You okay, don't have one, to know one minute him is gone. Brother. Okay, let, one, one, one minute thank is gone. You. I don't Answer, know. Thank you, thank you, okay. thank you. Let me just say what I wanted to say. Yeah, I'll I'll take fifteen seconds. Look. I, I have said on this show over and over again, if I have a friend who always praises me, you are living. I like constructive criticism. You tell me what is wrong, how it is wrong, and how you can make it better. So a situation where you say somebody lives on criticism, that is your... For me, I believe that criticizing me tries to make me better, especially when it's constructive. That's by the way. The only thing I wanted to talk about him was the issue of saying uh, Chicago State University, nothing comes out of it. They say that truth, truth will set you free. Even if you do not do anything at the Supreme Court, make we make we know. Let us know how it happened. If there is something about you, bring it to the fore for me. We know. See, this is how it is, and this is how it's been done. So the situation where they had it, hide the thing like bag of rice during COVID-19 doesn't make sense. Tinubu may have attended Chicago State University, but why was he hiding it all this while? If you could have brought out this thing into the open, all since people no go to look eye for the whole thing. But the way you are hiding it, like COVID-19 palliative, hiding it and the rest, that's why it's making it a big problem. Now, I keep on saying on this show that Tinubu has access to the military. He has access to the money. He has access to the power. But why is it that the lack of attention from the people to the president is still giving him hard time? He's choking. He's still choking him. To make you know that that insignificant support from your people matters. It is in this dispensation, as, as the, the guest, the, sorry, the the, the guest rightly said, it is only in this dispensation that a, a president does not have full support of his people. Jonathan has a way where some people were, some block of people were supporting him. Same with Buhari, same with during the days of Obasanjo. But this is the only time where you see that you have an ogre at the top with nothing at the bottom holding him. So it is a disgrace, ogre. It has not become an international disgrace. And that's why you see some of the judgments that are coming from outside the country. People are using it as a face of mockery. To mock Mr. President, it is a disgrace to all of us. And the last thing I I wanted to talk about here, it is this issue of uh, people coming here. Or let me not say coming here. You can have the right to say anything you want to say. But sometimes they have disgraced us in such a way. Especially the, the I'm talking of the research court judgment now that requested that renewable certificate should be put out. They have disgraced judiciary internationally. So us, I don't know whether. That kind of thing where they say you disgrace you, you know, wear pants. Now they don't do us. But anyway, that's by the way. But I think that the the when it comes to investigative journalism, they should tell us the information, you not know, dismiss anything that it will not make any sense. Give us me, we know me, you know, make sense. We know say yes, you know, make sense. Fine. But try to make it okay, it will not add anything like what uh, Ruben Abati used to say. Oh, it will not add. May we know. Let us just know. After we know, next time if we want to vote the devil. We vote the devil again, knowing that we know all the information at our disposal. So maybe you no know, use us the the play ball. All right, thank you, uh, Femi. Yeah. Um, so um, so I heard just a part of what uh, Professor Berugi that was towards the end, um, and I'll blame forefathers because I was listening to I was listening to you this morning. <laughs> on your, I think you went on uh, an hour or thereabouts rant. 
I actually sent a comment there. You probably didn't see it. But anyways, uh, but one thing I, I kind of observed um, when he had that back and forth with Okia was um, perhaps it has more to do with the maybe body language. I don't know. I'm not a body language expert. But um, so in a way, if I was to, you know, side with him, I without the body language, uh, which is subject to anybody, everybody's individual interpretations, I'll be like, it's true. Even this case of Mobile, for example, I barely knew him. And it's possible that <laughs> you don't, someone could be so popular. Just like uh, I, I see the allusion to people saying everybody knows Dr. Damages. That's not necessarily true. It's of impossible course. for everybody. I didn't want to, hold on, Femi. I didn't want right. to address that because if you want to know how, how people are doing, actually go and check their social media following. David, David probably had 800 thousand or one million people i don't even have up to hundred thousand on twitter or anything right. so, so but right. yeah, but that's that's not important thing. so it's yeah. too much of a sweeping statement and the thing is uh one thing i've tried to balance over time i've gotten better at and it's just an advice i i don't claim to know everything or anything is uh because of our emotions um there's that thing that phrase that people could throw around a lot i think is very important it's called emotional intelligence um, sometimes you have to rein in your emotions. We all have emotions, but if you allow emotions to be cloud um, your like objectivity, like try to be as objective as you can, no matter what emotions you have, if you allow your emotions to override being open-minded, it it just it be clouds every other thing. You don't even want to allow contrary opinions, or even if the person might actually even be agreeing with you. But just because there's, because one thing I, I do not like, I, I don't think I want to live in a world where everybody's in agreement. Because that's an echo chamber. Like my mom would say, what's the point of then having a discussion if everybody agrees? You know, so that's just my opinion, you know, and um, I'm not necessarily saying that you should agree with him, but it's possible he doesn't know him. When do you think, David, I didn't know David till two years ago. <laughs> that's just the truth. And all of a sudden, I've read, I've re read his uh, even pierogi. I only knew him like probably ten years ago, and this guy's been popular forever, My, probably even less than ten years ago. You know, so it's just that I, I just thought you just bring that up because I didn't know if we were going to speak to that as well. All right, thank you. Um, who is left? Okay, yeah, let's hear okay, yeah, because okay, yeah, I went through. Um... <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay. You skipped me, um, uh, your I skipped to skip me, Head of your guest to apologize to Kija. He, so he called him stupid. No, 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 no. Uh, listen, listen, I can defend myself. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I can defend myself. So, I mean, uh, sometimes, you know, I, I wish, you know, we were in the old time so that, you know, we put a call to his wife to come back to Kija so that we'll come back and explain himself. You know, I, I mean, like in this, I, um, I have a couple of apps on, you know, on, Google Play Store and uh, Apple Apple Store. So, and when I hear, when I see a Nigerian developing app, I try to, you know, find out what they're doing or path, what are what other people, you know, they have into IT. You try to find out, you know, what they are doing. You see a, who is a, a journalist, a professor of journalism, and he's focused on in articles he writes about Nigeria. And he goes to Twitter and sees something about David, saying nothing about Tinubu. He doesn't read it. He's lying. You know, of course he's lying. He's telling him he's lying. So I mean, you know, that's about him. And you know, he doesn't even. Want, I don't. I don't understand the kind of journalist. You know, he is. Uh, I will buy the book because of David. I mean, most of the But if if it were for him, I wouldn't buy it. You know, look at him. You know, like Tinubu in 1992, I presented that to him. I didn't even take. You know, he, he, he didn't even know about it, and he didn't even acknowledge what I said. Tinubu in 1992 presented a certificate, Chicago State University bachelor's certificate in accounting. The, the, you know, the department is a, is a, is a, is a accounting department, but your concentration could be in a, a business and administration. So he said accounting, just like I read engineering, my computer, I mean, my I read, my, my department was computer technology. Under computer technology, we have a computer engineering and electrical electronics. I got a degree and they gave me in electrical electronics engineering, not in computer technology. So to the went to accounting, you know, the, the, the overall department, they, he said he got a certificate in accounting. Go to Chicago State University. They don't have such degree in accounting. What they have a degree in business and administration. 
Chibibu in 1992 stated that he, he graduated accounting, presented a degree in accounting. There is no such degree. Then in 1999, he presented one, Chicago, no, University of Chicago, instead of Chicago State University. But certificate in economics, it was in 2022 that he, he got the correct department, business and administration. But this guy who's writing about Nigeria, and a journalist, I mean, journalist is a professor in journalism, he doesn't know about all these things. So what is he writing about? He has no credibility, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, today, you know, I, I read, actually this morning, I shared his article. I shared his article this morning to people. But now, you know, I mean, I wish I could just, you know, you know, uh, 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 take that back. Zero over nine. But he has no credibility. He doesn't even hear about David Yundi. I say that, I, I'm not saying that you should know about him or read about him. But all this year, you know, you see David, you know, maybe pop up David. You have not taken time to say, okay, who is this David? And you're a journalist. Come on, he's lying. You know, maybe he's jealous, you know, that, you know, nobody, you know, he, nobody takes it serious like they take, you know, people don't worship Jealous, him. Jealousy. Like, like they worship uh, uh, the David. That's the problem. You know, but just like I said, you know, I wish, you know, the old days would just give his wife a call. Let him come to the village and explain. All right, Tim, Tim, you are next. Augustine, please. Augustine, I send a message to you. Dr. <clears throat> Damage, okay, um, um, my turn now. I've been on the backstage like forever. Yeah, but, but it's not your turn still now. Dr. Damages, you seem to have people that you give some privileges. How come I, I can't even get the link to even come? Just but it's not your turn now. now. It's not your turn. When your turn comes, you speak now. Okay, okay. number right. six. Number six. I will talk to you when, when after action. Okay, so first of all, Femi, thank you very much for um, uh, that anal analogy using the um, emotional intelligence things. Yes, you see, the thing is with... And let's give let's cut some slats to the guest. Um, what I understood when he I listened to him two times when this David issue was coming up, he didn't say he doesn't know David. He said he hasn't taken time to read David's work. Now that's don't forget that's not what he said to tone. That's not what he said to tone. No, don't don't, don't I will take, here, please. Ofija, no, I take exception. Word, yeah. Forget that. Thing. Sorry, sorry, I take exception when you guys were talking. I was decorous enough and I listened to you. And Stop I, I lying here, please. Thank you. Please. You see, um, with Dr. Dr. Rudolph, I don't know. You, so these are some of the things you need to address. People should learn. We're adults. You can be angry, and which is what Femi was talking about. You shouldn't let your emotions begin to overboil, that you begin to, you know what, you don't, you know, look at things critically anymore. The man said he has head of David, but he hasn't followed. David's work. And it's a fact. For instance, this Mobad thing he brought up. I've been reading Mobad. I haven't made a single comment on Twitter about Mobad because one, I don't, I don't have context. I don't understand what's going on. And it's not also an issue of critical importance to me. I'm somebody who, on social media, I follow politics. Once it's politics, I will follow. You will see my comments. But if it is not politics, trust me, even if it is any other thing, unless there's somehow that thing links to politics, that's when you see me. Like, I love music, but you will never see me. Even the David that I follow, I follow him on, on social media. I follow him on this thing. But I just read what he drops. And the honest truth is, yes, we will give it to him. I told somebody, somebody was, you know, uh, this whole new um, Chicago case. And people were praising David. I said, yes, we will praise David. But the truth is, when it comes to what is going on right now, it is Atiku that owns, owns that space. Why? Because Atiku is the one who has brought out his money to go to court on this matter. So however the matter goes, we'll give credit to where it, it deserves. But that's beyond the point. My issue with the speakers, and when I say issues, it doesn't mean that they didn't do a good job. My issue with them is, which some of us have mentioned, and I think it's Augustin that alluded to that. Let Nigerians hear the truth. What we do with the truth is now our business. Unfortunately, I don't blame people who say they don't have confidence in our judicial system. It's, I don't blame anybody. Because when you see Uzodima run from number four to number one, and then you see Lawan, and I'm going to be mentioning names. I'm not going to be here to gloss over any matter. You see Lawan that did not take part in a senatorial election, become a senator. You see, um, you know, and we've had all those several cases. I can go on and on and on. You see what happened in Enugu State where somebody presented a forged NYSC discharge certificate and the court says it does not matter. Technicalities. When you see those things, then you, you would have no choice than to say, 
whatever happens in Chicago may have no bearing ultimately in what uh, the Supreme Court will finally declare. So I understand where people are coming with that perspective. It's, it's, uh, it, the can, only... I, can, can you take a question let me, from let me? Let me finish. Look, look, can, can you take a question from me? Okay, go ahead. Please take a question from me. Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay. Yeah, you heard me talk to the guest, right? Because you're giving him mm -hmm. call, right? So answer the question. In the United States, the Supreme Court is unpredictable, right? It has a lot of vast powers. It can use rich, first of all, rich of famous. You could look it up while, before you respond to me. Or a rich of such a rarity. It could even intervene, like, all the way back to government organizations like uh, INEC. It could go back to INEC and say, okay, look, bring me X, Y, Z. It, people come and they say, only what's right now, what's with the Supreme Court, that's it. You cannot introduce anything else. Okay, that okay, so, true. Uh, uh, sir, can I answer? Hold on. Can I answer uh, so that we don't lose context of what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, please. Let me, let me, let, let me put it in a nutshell so you could answer because it's important. I want you to answer the question I'm asking you, not something else that I didn't ask you. If the court, if a Supreme Court can issue a writ of mandamus and a writ of such a rally, right? If it wants to do the court, it's limited. It could say, okay, I'm actually going to talk to the court in, in uh, Chicago before we even give you anything here. So there is no way to say the, what they dig out from here cannot come in. Do you understand what I mean? You say that you could say, look, I'm guessing. Yes, came here. Okay, and up and, 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 up and yes. sat. Let me answer. Anything else is subject. Yeah. All right, go ahead. All right. Okay. So, thank you, sir. So, here's the point. One, I'm not holding brief for anyone. I'm speaking my own views. I was only based off my own judgment, saying based on the understanding of what I heard him. He's not saying he doesn't know David. He's simply saying he hasn't followed David's work. We can argue about that. That's a different issue altogether. Please, we can argue about that. Now, coming to, I don't know all those legal terms you've used, so I'm not going to stand here and claim I know them. But I do know, based on my ordinary understanding of how the law works, you cannot, if, the, if there is an issue, nobody just wakes up and runs straight to the Supreme Court. So there has to be a procedural process where something starts from somewhere and then move. You, the Supreme Court can't wake up on its own and say we're taking over a, an issue. I don't think it's heard anywhere. It's not going to happen in Nigeria's East instance. Now, they are not saying the Supreme Court will not administer elements of what is coming out from U.S. I didn't hear them say that. What they are saying is, based on what we know of our judicial system, based on how judgments have the past in the past, they do not see a situation where whatever happens in Chicago is going to become important and will form a basis on which you remove the sitting president in Nigeria. They are not saying the sitting president should not be removed if he's, if he's deemed necessary to be removed. They're just simply saying, with what we have as a judicial system, they don't have confidence in what is going on there. That's what they, I heard him say. All right. Thank you, Tim. Um, number six. So let me let me say this before you speak. Um, I think we brought you in. I personally brought you in twice, and your connection wasn't showing. Um, and I think somebody else brought you in from the back end. So it's not that anybody is trying to be um, um, kind of um, put you down there, you know. So and sometimes, you know, when things are heated up here, if I'm the only one, sometimes people help me. If I'm the only one uh, here, I might be paying attention to what's going on here and uh, probably forget some people in the in back end. So that, that's probably what happened. It's not like there are people that we we give special treatment. So sorry about that. All right, thank you, thank you, no problem. But I want to be in the heat of the of the action too, you know. But we are all selfish, you know. Okay, now see action movie. Yeah, see uh, this this guest that you brought. <clears throat> that's why I like this platform. You know, those guests. They are, I don't have any respect for them. I have zero respect for them. Yeah, you know, he's, about he's talking about popularity or if he knows who uh, David. It's not about how much length of time you have in the business. It's relevance. Dr. Damages is very relevant, more relevant than most of these people. 
and David too is very relevant. So that you know that aside, you know number two, we are not. You see, we, we are not a very serious people. You know, and therein lies the pro uh, You know the problem. We cannot develop as a people. We are going nowhere as a country, and that's the truth. Because Let's go. if you want to uh, intellectualize, in, intellectualize crime, that's a problem. Crime should be defined very, you know, in, in the very simplest name. <laughs> but when you cannot even define identity fraud, that's a big problem, Doctor Damage, and everyone that's here. That's a big. That's a red flag. So. If we want to, if if it is an issue of development, what development strategies that we want to use to move our country forward, then you can bring all your intellectual theories. Then we can begin to argue. But when somebody asks you a straight question, is this crime? And if you say you're an intellectual, you cannot even take a position, a very strong position against crime. State it clearly so that we all we know that regardless of what is going on in Nigeria, you are totally not in support of this. You put a you, you put a firm statement out. They will just be wishy washy, wishy washy, wishy washy, wishy washy, dancing around the dancing around the issue. So this goes to explain to me that as a people, we are not going anywhere. Look at this platform. You have rules. You 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 cannot you know uh, 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 trying to sermonize or trying to you know uh, propound theories about simple rules like don't eat when you're on the when you're on the platform. Uh, don't lie down, put on your shirt. Simple things, those are just basic. Those are, those are like, like the same law, those are points of law. Those are very common law, those are yes or no issues. You say, this is, this is the issue, this is, this is right, this is wrong. But when you begin to, you, you know, you, you begin to paint it and you begin to dance around the issue, that is the society that we have built. We are going nowhere as a people. We are going to be stuck in this juncture for as long as we all decide that we want to move forward, Move backward, move left, or look, you know, or go right. This man is a common criminal. This is an issue that has been in our courts for ages. How many weeks has this issue been in the courts in the United States, and they've and they've come to a very logical conclusion? Okay, Chicago says you know, do do look at what you're supposed to do. This is what I've, they have been preambulating. So, the fact of the matter is that we're a big joke. I, you know, I called the first judge. I called his chambers when this issue when 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 I heard he was handling this case. The, the, the secretary listened to me, and I can tell from the way she listened to me that these people, they don't know if to cry for us, you know, if to have pity on us, that we are a bunch of confused people. And I was begging her, I know, I, I know that my, 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 my plea will have no relevance in this case, but this is, the, this, is the, this is the pulse of the people. People just want to have closure, because in our courts we can't get justice. And she said, okay, she will forward this message to the judge, but it will not, it's not going to come. So when we can't even get simple, simple issues, like if there's a little child in Lagos something that was born because he's, he's stole, killed, and a lot of jungle justice goes on in Nigeria. So what about these other people? What about the people that, that still identity? Just to just to occupy the the, the, the the greatest office in our land as a people, something that won't even happen in a, in in a, in a town hall, in a community town hall meeting. So, so that's my when I listen or when I anytime I listen to all these things, I I see people just come to you know those. Oh God, I don't know how to put it, but that is my fear. We are not going anywhere. We can discuss all we want, but we aren't going anywhere. We will just be stuck here. We'll just be stuck here, just going around this, this issue for as long as we say we are tired. Maybe in the next generation, our children, maybe children, children, but for we, nothing is happening. You see young people here, when they come, because they have sympathy for Tinubu, because they have, they have sympathy for Tinubu, they will just be doing like this. They, they will dance around the issue. They, they, won't, they won't speak the truth. They come here to deceive, they deceive us. You can't deceive, you can't, no, no matter the people you, you, you uh, Tinubu pays, you know, to come and launder his image. He just goes in here for me, and he goes out there. He, he, they, they don't make any point, because I know the truth. The truth, the truth, the truth is as plain as, 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 as white and black. 
You know what I mean? So, so my conclusion is that we ain't going nowhere as a people. And it's, it's unfortunate that this is, this is the kind of society that I came from. It's very unfortunate. It's so disheartening. You know? All right. Thank you. Thank you, number six. Thank uh, you please, so much. Can I follow number six, please? Uh, Rudolph, I have to go. Let me, let, me, let me take my time now. Please, I have to go. Just a couple of minutes. Please. Uh, while I had it, let, let me ask, the, like, let, let me use much time as I make room without objection, right? No, no, uh, because I have to go. Number six, um, to... Yeah, number six, Phil laid it down. He laid it down. He was right in everything that he said. But more importantly, the things that he didn't say, things that he said uh, by intuition, right? We have a problem in the country and we know what it is. We don't have any courts. They're cobbling it together. They look at us like we're stupid because they have an army. So, they, I mean, they're just being polite. Everything they're doing, they're doing it that we're weak. There's nothing to do. Provocation upon provocation. The first day I came on this show, I said, I said to Rudolph now, Rudolph, if you want, you could dig it out. I said to you, I've been through the movie already. I've seen the movie. Right? They're going to do things where, what can you do about it? Northern Muslims are against democracy. They don't want democracy. They, their culture, their tradition is anti-democracy. That uh, 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 I'm, I'm happy you're here. Uh, uh, if you can respond to me, you, you really don't come from that demography, but you have the same religion, right? They don't want democracy, <coughs> period. They don't like technology. They don't want to go to school. 99% of the certificates, every one of them is holding out there, is bogus because they really don't and think sir, that sir, the Western sir, education... And sir, please let me land. Sir. Please let me land. No, 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 yeah. but you can't be saying yeah. certain things and you land. Where will you land? It's true, though. Uh, uh, when the pre wait, 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 wait. And sir, and sir, and sir, and sir, when the yeah. premise of an argument, this is a quote, is wrong, the conclusion is going to be wrong. You are, you are setting up a premise that is wrong, so you can't land anywhere that is right. How can you say nothing as don't want to go to school? That okay, they what don't do you mean, then? Get up and debate between you Wait, 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 wait. Okay, you don't, let me, you don't let me, debate. let me. Go and buy, I can start, buy iPhone 15. Go to the north and see if people will take it from you. Or they will say, no, we don't use it. Go ahead. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, go ahead. You just say that they don't like technology, that they don't go to school. You know, it's, it's, you know it's not right. But you just like to say things like this. I don't know what you gain from that, but go ahead. Uh, it's frozen. Okay. All right. I will hand it over to uh, Forefathers. Uh, thank you, guys, everybody. I, I was really under the weather. I didn't know I would be able to pull this off. American but, Network. Thank you for joining us. And um, I thank all those people who are supporting us uh, by Super Chats. It's really important. We're about to renew our contract with um, uh, StreamYard. And um, it, it costs a lot of money. Um, but thank you, guys. I will, um, next week, we are going to bring a special guest. Um, and then, of course, next month, I think I, I can announce this. Next month, uh, we are going to have P2B on the show. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. Dr. Rolf, please, uh, sorry yeah. to break my own uh, personal rules. Um, I asked for, I know you sent your number last time out. Um, can you send it again? Okay. All right. Thank you. I thought I had you know. Okay. Do you also I'll... use Zell? Yeah, yeah. I use Dr. Constance Ikoku. On my How about her? Um, six months. All right. It's on the private chat. Anybody who wants it. It's actually on my Facebook. My number is one of those ones that are out there. I get calls at 3 a.m. from people that, hello, I didn't know you would answer. <laughs> 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 all right see you guys thank you guys everybody thank you i appreciate all of you yeah.
Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Damages. And um, yeah, okay, let's get on with it. Um, this is um, a Sunday night um, a Bible, this thing is near, as they say, but uh, we'll try to round off on what was happening earlier on. I did enjoy the music. I don't know whether we want to do that music again. And I also need to do, yeah, and uh, we want to also do some, um, this in, um, you know, housekeeping. Um, the, the Iroko TV um, uh, subscription. Let me get the music up again. And uh, while we do this, um, we want the viewers, we have 290 something viewers to go. If you've not subscribed to these um, two channels, to go and subscribe. It's important. The numbers are coming up. I think today we need 20 out of 297. And uh, so let me get a link and uh, start the music. Um, I think they will be listening to the music. I, I do. I did enjoy the music. I must say, the Magic Fashion One Two was good. Let me see if I can find the song. Um, you know, it's, it's very rare. You see uh, those children. Hang on, hang on, four fathers. I've got an yeah. idea. Yeah. Why don't we play something from Mobad, please? I heard from... that brother. Oh no, no, they will ban. No. They will block it. They will block you it. Sure? it. You are not oh, allowed. Okay. Oh my God! YouTube will come at oh. you like. Yeah, that's like a know. serious copyright mm. infringement, by the way. Uh, mm. Just to let oh, you know, right. they, okay. they, yeah. they don't have a problem blocking, taking down the channel. Yeah, they will even they will first block the view detail yeah. into the screen. <laughs> out there now go and subscribe we need um 20 people let me let me let me stop this because they're they not gonna go and do this why is it not stopping this thing doesn't it doesn't stop at time yeah i they are not going to go and subscribe while listening to that music that music is too chilled out um uh, so <laughs> don't worry well you know the idea is to get the uh, yoruba your awosa uh, the Ibo, uh, there are these good songs out there my jack is quite good too uh, so we need people to go and subscribe let me get the link out so that they can see the link this is important um let's see if we can get 20 out there because the show originally has uh, slowed down now let's get people going on that channel to go and subscribe because it needs to get up to 1000 i think the target now is to get it to 1000 in the next one month this channel has got 72 about 77000 um this is subscribers the dr damages channel and there's the one on the Iroko post, which is a uh, Dr. Damage's channel too, has got um, 272. And we need to get it up to 1,000. And uh, because that will also allow daily programs and more and more people to be presenting shows. Because now Dr. Damage was meant for a specific purpose and uh, they need to have backup. And like, like let's say we'll go and play um, Mobad now and they go and ban this channel. Then where, where do we go? Uh, only 272 on uh, Iroko post. So we need to have it there. And uh, we need them subscribing. Let me see whether the number has changed. Two people have gone over of uh, 200. Where are these? Where are they all signing off? So you, got, you see that they are running. You, know, you see Nigerians. Uh, from 200, uh, it is something that, that is 264 watching. Maybe they are signing off to go and uh, subscribe. I don't know. Maybe that's what's going on. But if that's what's happening, we'll appreciate it. And we need to, from 272, we need to get to around 290. 
Come on, we have to we have to be able to do that. We have to come on. And the, the idea is to get it to one thousand. I think once it becomes one thousand, from the point of view of YouTube, it becomes like a proper channel that it can be monetized and everything. And then people, you know, Doctor Damage is not getting uh, paid uh, for this thing other than the donations. See what I mean? So that is where the channel becomes alive. And I think we should have made that a target from the beginning, actually. So the target is to make it 1,000 subscribers. If you want to share it out to your friends, share it out to your friends so that they can come and subscribe. Because maybe the 70 something thousand subscribers that are on um, Dr. Damages, they are not all present, obviously. We have um, 264 uh, watching. They are all not present here send it to them so that they can go and subscribe to Iroko Post TV. This is very, very important. We need to get it to 1,000 one month. I will be stopping programs and people are not going to like me, but it needs to be done. And I've seen channels, Nigerian channels, make people, 500 people move on one stream. On one stream that has about 700 people watching, they made 500 people move to go and do something. Nigerian channel, not any other channel. And I think that maybe the... I mean, Pardon? Can you share? Can you share the link again, please? Yeah, let me share it again. Share it again. Um, uh, both of us. Before you share the link, I get confused. So I know I have subscribed to that channel. So usually when I'm coming in, I come in first, mm. then I click on the posting on the um, sorry, on the uh, comment section to get into mm. the the chat room. So I want to yeah. show which exactly because the one I used to come in is not where I end up. Yeah, that stream. The, the, the one you used to come in here is StreamYard. Um, okay. but the the one that you need to go and subscribe to is YouTube. It's a YouTube okay. page. I think, I've, I think I've done that then. I think yes, you have, you are, it appears you have. Uh, Sylvester, thank you for subscribing. Uh, Sylvester uh Agbo has subscribed. Thank you for subscribing. The number is not going up fast enough, I must say. Uh, it's going up, but it's not fast enough at all. Except these uh 274 that is here, they're all fake people. They're they're not real. I don't know, man. Are, are you guys not real? I don't get it. Why are you not going to go subscribe? If only um one quarter of oh. you go and do it, this whole thing is over. For father. Yeah. That what video is, I was telling you um, yesterday. One quarter of you go and do it. This whole the video I was telling you yesterday, um, Rudolph played the video today, probably um, with uh, Nancy, um, um, NSA boss and those white people. He played it today, eh? Yeah, I played it now, not quite long. You can look for it. Okay, I'll look for it. I'll look for it. It's, two, it's 276 now. It's really slow. Okay, 278 now. It's coming. It's beginning to go up. We need to get it to um, uh, 290 now. Uh, so that, because there's a lot of stuff to discuss today. We are going to discuss things that are, you know, immaterial. And, you know, the independence is an interesting day to have <laughs> reflective conversation, I guess. And um, I noticed that a lot of people said that Tinubu looked tired. And actually, when I heard, saw him, I was like, what is going on here? Bro, it's a lot of work, man. He really <laughs> looks tired. It's a lot of work. Mm. 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 He really he looks tired. Mean, I guess it's a lot of work. Um, yeah. That is the fact. Mm. He think he low, man. Things are not going good. It's, it's, it's gonna but, be but I don't. I don't. Think I thought he went a, to rest, is, though. I don't, I don't think it's a burden of leadership that is weighing on him. If you ask me, I think it's the burden of uh, uh, what's it called? Legitimacy. The burden of proofing everything proving, those things Chief, are weighing everything. on him you know not the burden of leadership it's not the burden of leadership it's the burden yeah. of the other things that are weighing on him yeah everything this is it's too Both much but i want to ask you a question <laughs> what's wrong with this one Chioma, you better go and subscribe <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that <laughs> yes eh? yeah go ahead uh, yeah, why do you guys subscribe to the uh, to will I say to the assumption that uh, if the if the Chicago uh, University releases uh, this man's profile or details that it's not gonna it's not gonna cause the revolution we have been waiting for? Why do you think you see, it's, it's not gonna cause it? You see, that's an We're that's not, an interesting let, let, que question and let me interesting tell you, answer. Let me hold tell on, you. hold on. This people are not gonna subscribe if we start talking. It's two eighty now, it's going up, it's ten remaining. They need to keep subscribing. Like if we want to get to one thousand, we have to be disciplined here. And uh, Nigerians, go and subscribe. We know you are there, we can see you. Yeah, 
you can't hide. We see the numbers. Eh? <laughs> it is showing to over 250 are watching, and only about how many? Eight has actually moved to go and subscribe. Yeah, eight never. people. So, like um, okay, 10 have subscribed. 10 have subscribed. Yo, hold on, righteous man. Don't worry. Don't worry. We have to get our people used to um, okay. help supporting the channel. You know, the last thing we need is uh, go and play one music and they ban it and nobody can see Dr. Damages for weeks again. It does happen, you know. They do strike people off for two weeks sometimes. I am not going to see a TV program. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you. They are moving now. I think, um, just over <laughs> just 10 people 10 people have moved out of uh, 256 i can still see the numbers you guys are watching and you are not moving okay it's possible the two fifties that are watching are the ones that have already subscribed that's possible i shouldn't be so <laughs> i shouldn't be so hard on them uh, but there are people there watching that have not subscribed to iroko post tv let me post it on the screen so that you can see it um but you know sometimes here yeah, you just like i've got three devices here and they all link together so it might be showing as an individual um yeah um, that is possible mm. yeah i think that's possible if you have not subscribed subscribe if you have not go and subscribe okay let's get this done 20 no matter how many people duplicate their devices even if you have four devices it's still uh, we, st we still need more of people going to subscribe. I think it's got to 12 now. You see, it's moving. It's moving. This is one of the um, highest we moved in one sitting. It's moving. It's going to get to uh, 290 before long. Because they are there. They are just moving. Maybe they are even signing off and going to subscribe to the channel. That's good. And it needs to get to 1,000. I think um, every single time uh, there's a stream now, we have to move it move it and it becomes 1000 because it becomes um, uh, monetized and things can start moving on on that channel um let me see yeah for i think 14 have signed on now that's okay it's moving now 14 have signed on sometimes youtube takes a while to update i think it's just about four six remaining just six of you remaining to go and uh, um, this is sign on six six people come on let's get this done so that we can carry on our discussion because we are going to be discussing um a lot of areas you know where we are right now you know yesterday we were talking about it a little bit whether you know when is nigeria going to be as developed as some of these countries oh god you see all these, all these uh, pessimistic views we might be very very developed in five ten oh my god 20 years time you know yesterday yesterday late oh, night, i don't, I don't think you were here Mm -hmm. you are, you are, no, you I know are, the question. Are... I know the question. We have not started yet. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, this one is just uh, we are just still waiting. You want an answer, righteous man? Nothing will happen. Not okay. Two ninety, just two remaining. Two remaining. Then I, we are I done. I tell you, I can explain that. Nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. Are you back home? No. Okay. If you know the mood in Nigeria right now, if you know the tension in this country right now. You won't say ah, what you're saying. I think, I think it's see, done now. See, there is no, there is see, no, there righteous is no, man, righteous man, let me go. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is no, there is no Yoruba, there is no outside, there is no Igbo. No, what we have now is Nigerians, and is, we are ready to, we are ready to take it out. Righteous man, okay? that is, your that eye is, don't clear. Righteous man, that is actually the mistake. There is Yoruba, there is Hausa, there is Igbo. You don't understand. You, look, under the context of what we are facing right now in Nigeria. We are no longer interested in tribe. You see, you see, one okay. thing. Okay. What, what we are interested, listen, whether you're Yoruba, you are Igbo, you are Hausa, you are Fulani, um, you are a, a Bini person or Robo. The cost of a bag of rice in Nigeria, we all go to the same market to buy it. So it's not an issue of tribe. So, it's an so, issue of the so, economy of Nigeria is gone so look at it completely at it. gone righteous man look at it this is this this my, my here is my thought if if assuming they actually remove the subsidy today the price of petroleum mm. would have oh, oh. Uh, be around one thousand Ay, 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 leave it for now first. Leave it for now. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, righteous man, righteous man, I appreciate your passion for this, but we need we need to do housekeeping. 
Um, so that's why I want to do this. And all the people that went to subscribe to Dr. Namiji's now, I really want to congratulate you. We had um, just about 22 oh, subscribers. Uh, 22 <laughs> people going to subscribe. So now we want you to go and subscribe to Two Niger's channel. This channel is focused on security and our uh, this thing, uh, corrupt practices and technology. If you want to know about technology, philosophy, about security, this is what this channel is all about. And uh, those 20 people that went to subscribe to uh, Iroko Post TV, you can go and subscribe to uh, Two Niger's uh, channel now. Let me see the Iroko Post again. Oh, that's even, uh, I think how many now? 24 actually went to subscribe. That is one of the highest we've done. And it all goes well because every time now be making people going to sign, but it's 293, you know, it's about how many 707 away from 1000. So we still have a long way to go to get to 1000 on that channel. And then let's go and subscribe now. Let's do it. And um, I think we should carry on. My, me, for me, my channel is not um, uh, this thing. Um, I support that as right. TV. So let me answer your question, um, Iro, um uh, righteous man. Oh, um, hold hey. on, I want to ask Ewa a question. Another Ewa, one who again. are you working for? Huh? Who are you representing? Who are you working for? The Nigerian people I'm or a political for Nigeria. party? I'm for Nigeria. I'm not for anybody. I don't care. I'm for Nigeria. No, then why Nigeria. don't you promote the issue of Nigerians coming out to say no if this thing comes out to be what of, we suspected of course people that are here they are so why 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 are you using this platform to confess that nothing is going to come out of it Hold on. here is the reason here no 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 people that mm -hmm. are here they know my position on this in nigeria if you listen <laughs> oh, God, to me, this, you this man eh? um, but, but what is going on the, you would have asked a question right so that is what i was trying to explain see for nigeria for the whole nigeria to come together to revolt something we might we must have something in common we are fighting so here yeah. was my, my my calculation was if the uh, poor price of petroleum as is going up the poverty will be crazy right that will force the whole nigeria to to revolt i think the president he understood he, he now understand like this is where we're going he's scared that is why the kaivo increased the poor price again that's what i was trying to explain so now you see the tension. People are complaining that he, the work is too much on him, that the pressure is too much on him because they make very wrong calculation, removing subsidy without thinking of what will happen. So the, I expect, uh, this has been my complaint. Mm, slow down, slow down. I think people are getting cross that I'm not promoting this other channel um, quite a bit. Um, so, um, you guys, the 20 that we here, yeah, yeah, people, look at these guys already said, uh, what, what was he said? So, you guys, go and uh, subscribe now. Two people have gone to subscribe on this channel. We know you are there. We know. We have proof now you are there. So, go and subscribe. If you've done it already, go and do it again. You know what? We are going to play that song for a bit so that uh -huh. we chill out. You know, and today is going to be exciting because let I think me, I, let me I, why I call it it's not even like exciting. Let me, Hold on, let why me. Why are you playing play. music? Why are you playing music? You so calm down, a righteous what man. Is, what are you are playing eh? music. No, no, hold on, calm down. No, tell, me, tell me the reason. So, 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 with what is going on here, you are not concerned. It's music calm that down, is your problem, calm right? Down, right, man. See, this morning <laughs> I was talking about security, and I almost broke down. See, I. See, the problem of Nigeria is a bit much. Sometimes you can't keep up anymore. And you have to you have to relax. It gets you, you will lose your mind if you keep going with Nigeria with the, way, the kind of stuff that is going on. And I thought the song, the, the music was quite good. I, there was something about it. It just chilled out. You know, it could have been Yoruba. It could have been Hausa. It would still be chilled. There was a day I was in a cab in Abuja. This Hausa music was playing. I couldn't hear what he was saying. I was enjoying it. And the driver just removed it. I was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I felt I took it personal. He just removed it. And instead of playing one of that one that didn't mean anything to me at all. So it doesn't matter. Sometimes music is just music. And it doesn't forfather, matter. Forefather, mm -hmm. forefather. Forefather. The mood in this country now, we don't need music. I'm begging you. 
Don't play music for Nigerians. We don't need music now. I am telling you, you don't understand what is happening. Righteous man, righteous man. There is, there is no need for music now. If you want to play music, play sensational music that is going to, you know, promote the campaign against this uh, 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 selected elite that have destroyed this country. Somebody like Fela, Fela Music, The Magic Fashek, or Africa China, these are music, not this man that is uh, promoting drunkenness, uh, woman dissing and uh, drink and all this thing. No, 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 no. Play something see, that... I, 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 okay, okay, I hear what you mean. I hear what you mean. I, I, see, I get I where you're coming smart. from. Um, but the song, is not about what he's saying. He just chilled out. And it's about music. What's wrong with you? Are you not, are you not promoting the cultural exchange? You have to have cultural exchange, you know? It's just... So I'm afraid of you. It's like you are, you are a politician. We are telling you the mood <laughs> of the country. No, you are telling me I'm not a people. What the hell are you supporting? We ask you, who are you supporting? I'm even barely a moderator. You're calling me a politician. <laughs> okay, please, you see, you see, this, they, they, there's not a lot of movement. I think we will just keep quiet and let these people go. And they are not doing anything. Is Look, at that, just only three people went and subscribed. Anyhow, we we know you are there. there. 20 is there. Um. Um, righteous man, have you subscribed to Two Niger? And um, Chim, have you? I, I have done. I, have done has. I think I have done it before. Should mm. I be doing it every time we? No, come no, to no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two Niger. I think it, Fe, Femi was there because um, we had an exchange earlier on today. Oh, Father, where, um, what is going on? Can you share? Can you share the link? Share the link. Yeah, it's on the page. It's on the screen. The link is on the screen. Righteous man, let me say this. You, you see, we are bro mm. we are feeling the pain too. Now, the person you are giving fifty thousand naira before, you can't even give fifty k again. It's nothing. Must you continue to give somebody money? What? What? What are we gonna do? We, you want our family to die? No, no, you don't understand what you are saying. What I'm saying. It's better you teach a child how to fish than giving the person fish to eat. If you, if, if we, if if we use a platform like this to man pressure. And to speak against the ills of this elite, it gets to them, they hear it. But if we come here to project, no, it, it's not going to work, they will not feel it, it will not achieve anything. It's like you're promoting them, they say, okay, yeah, they know. You know, these people, they have read the psyche of Nigerians and they, 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 they tend to use it against us. Hello, uh, right oh, please, uh, yeah. hello, righteous mass, please, uh, forefathers, um, I just plead your indulgence. Can you make it go round? Like we always do. It's just a, okay. a opinion. Okay. Well, opinion. Yeah. 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 I, I don't have our time in. Like <laughs> can, 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 eh? can you type this to Niger thing into the chat so that I can copy it from there? Okay. Let yes, me I'm do that. Saying, now. I'm being a bit lazy, I, I admit. But if you type no, it's it, all right. it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Thank you. Uh, that's it in the private chat there. And um, yeah, I think uh, three, three minutes is that okay for everyone? Um, we, are, we don't have, uh, we are not rushing too much. Um, I think this is a bit early in the day because there's a lot to <laughs> yesterday. Uh, Jonaba, me, Jonaba, and was it Tone? We went to the end. We discovered things that we never discovered before. <laughs> Some things we, we discussed. I don't know whether we we're high or something. We were discussing so many things. was different... missing yesterday. I don't know where Chim was yesterday. Yeah, Chim was not around. And um, we talked about the um, politics of the North quite a bit. And um, some of the things that came out yesterday, I think it's, that's why you have to ask the right questions to understand the dynamics of the country. I felt like we came closer to understanding the dynamics of what is going on in the North and uh, as related to the South. And if you understand these things, that's how you know how to reach out. And um, if we know there are fears in the north, there are suspicions in the north, you have to assuage these suspicions to be able to work with them. You completely have to assuage them so that you can work with them. Now, if the south, north, if they collaborate, these leaders they are in trouble. They, are, they, are, but, they will be but, in trouble. But forefathers, but forefathers, based off what you just said, um, looking back to at least Jonathan's government, Jonathan tried to do some of these things you were talking about, like the Amal Al Majeri school thing he tried to do. He did all his best to try to woo not an interest. 
I mean, the chief, this, the the uh, national security advisor under his government was a northerner. Still, mm. people did not give him a chance at the last minute and wanted him out because they wanted a northern candidate. So my point, I hear you, I understand you, but mm. I'm just saying, is that really enough? That you See, if, 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 if you think about it this point from this point of view, I actually think Jonathan had more than enough, if you ask me, because he ruled for six years. If he had gone on to rule again, he would have been 10 years longer than any single government uh, president. And, and, see and, what apart, I mean? and apart from that, the no, but that wasn't his fault. That was a constitutional issue. He was removed because of, he was because of his recklessness. It's, it's, no, it's mm. all, all the same. And there was insecurity on top of it. So yeah. it was removed or it was voted out because of his recklessness, insecurity, is not the money and all mm. of that. Does not mean that uh, Buhari is better than him? No, but he's the one that even brought Buhari. His action is what prompted Buhari. And I, I, agree, I agree with you, uh, John. I do agree. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just picking on that particular thing that uh, Forefather said about um, reaching across the aisle uh, and then maybe that will help. Because I have a different perspective when it comes to our psyche as a people. I think for me personally, what we need, you know, and it, it sounds simplistic, I admit, we just need that one leader that is going to reduce the powers at the center, make it slightly more, less attractive, and then, and then do as much as possible to be fair to everybody in terms of doing right to everybody. For instance, let's take what the current sitting president is doing. This is a Lagos state government. This is just a brute Lagos and brought it to Abuja, that's what we're seeing. Everybody at the helm of affairs, everybody he's appointing, he's, and he is doing it blatantly. So in that instance, are you not creating a situation where when next somebody, maybe from the north, or maybe from the south, south, come say, after all, Baba Tinubu did it. He'll go and bring his, this time around, he might not even just be his, his kinsman. He might even go to his immediate, that, that immediate family and go and pull his brother and start giving them appointments and all those things. So. There is this mutual fear and suspicion Nigerians show that when that if somebody goes into office, he's going there exclusively for his kids and kin. That is one of the reasons we're having some of the challenges we have in Nigeria today. Yes, you are very right with that. Mm. I don't know. It was Buhari who started it. He now did that. For me, I'll speak for myself. I if all these three candidates I support will be. If Obi goes there and does the same thing, I'll be very mad at him. Because you should not, the fact say they do evil and it becomes normal doesn't mean you should do it as well. And what Chinobu is doing now is replicating what Buhari did and he's dividing the country more. It's worse, actually worse. It's worse than what we have. So the point here is this people go to Abuja or maybe it depends on the government house they find themselves in each of the states. And they just go and get members of their community or bring it to government house or bring it to Abuja. And that is what is extremely wrong. And now it trickles down to the people because I know there are some times I've been inside Teke in Abuja and you hear comments like, now we they rule this nation. Now we they do this. Those things are not meant to be. They are not meant to be because you claim that now we they rule this nation. Now we they do this. If you want to check it, the place is not even doing what it's supposed to do in your own local environment. If you go to some of these places, you will see that their roads are not tired. Their farmers are not giving incentives. But yet you go to here and say, now we didn't power, now we didn't power. That is why I keep on saying that. May we know they use quest for power and our standards to always think that is the generality of how life is supposed to look like or how life is supposed to be. And that is one thing that the local Nigeria show understand when he was talking about people getting angry i said one statement so your eye don't clear because when it comes to election today that division will start again now evil man the one thing i like about everything i, I look when I, I will say one thing when i was serving we had the, those who used to serve we know they have cds community development service so during the community development service they used to e elect um ex executive they wanted to elect me. I said, no, no, I'm not interested. And there was this girl, uh, it's an Hajia. I think her name was I mean, I mean, I mean I, I see Anita. No, no, Anita. I mean, I've forgotten the name. But she was a she was a treasurer. So when she was not coming for CDS, some of the time, you know how Hajia things used to be. 
So she said she can no longer continue that she's stepping down from the plane. So because of that, people, the executive, there was nobody to take up the office and they want to force that I should take it by force. Mm -hmm. I gave one condition that Hajia will provide us all the financial information. I will make sure that we make sure that every month we have financial information to be sure that we know how much is coming and how much is going out. So when that happened, there was a time where I don't know what happened. They had to call the CDS to, to the state office. And when they came, there was this woman who is a, who is a northern now, is a, a member of the NYSE. So when they started evaluating books, immediately he came to our CDS. The first thing he said, the first, the president was from Benway. The vice president was from Bauchi. The secretary was from Lagos, one of his IO. I, then you have the financial secretary, then the treasurer. It was I who was the financial. He leave all this. Then he said I was from the. From the you know? mm. He then he saw that. Yeah, yeah, your your time is run. Use uh, thirty seconds to round up. Okay. Immediately he saw that I was from the east. He now said that uh, if there are financial mismanagement, it should be me. Immediately he said that. Eh, the rest of the corpus climbed for his head. They insulted the woman so badly that. We have financial record to give you, and it is clean because of this boy. If not because of him, there will be no financial record. So I was just sitting down, and the guy from Bochi, the guy from Bainway, the guy from Lagos, all of them landed on the woman, and so she gone quiet. She no talk anything. It was from there I knew that if Nigerians want to be one, there will be one. But if they say they don't want to be one, there's nothing you can do about it. I didn't say mm. anything. They, they, they ate that woman raw, and she just kept quiet. And you know, say pin again. So we can do mm. it. They just that trust me, we just like some kind of things we know make sense. We like standards when they very low. Yeah. Thank you. Um yeah, I I, I when you look at the judges, the, the, the that judgment from the uh, petition, uh presidential petition uh, tribunal, the way the judges conducted themselves, it says a lot about our national discourse. They were completely they, they, they completely lost perspective. It's almost like they are behaving like, you know, I, I just, I got you by, you know, I can do as I like with you now. I can insult you. It doesn't matter what, what happens to the nation. They don't seem to care. And, and I think many Nigerians display that trait too. We don't seem to think about each other as their concerns and what is motivating them to do what they are doing. We really, because yesterday when we were having that discussion, to me, it's, it's a little bit of an eye opener. Because it was tied to things I already understood before. You know, things I understood that what Ahmadu Bello was talking about, all these sort of things that were going on, we forget why people behave the way they behave. If you understand them, you can reach them. And if you can reach them, you can make a difference. And I think that's where we want to be starting from. So, um, Femi, thank you for coming in. And, um, yeah, I saw your comment. And, uh, yeah, clearly, you know how they like to do now. They will tell you that those people, these people that are stealing our crude oil. Till today, oh, till today, I can't believe it in Nigeria. No big man has been arrested for stealing our crude oil. Not one. Not one jailed. And somehow, the journalists still allow this politician to come out, come to their TV channel and not query them constantly about this. They tell us that they have a list of terrorists, um, uh, people that are funding terrorists. The only person they've arrested is CBN governor. And even then, they went and charged him with firearms. So the whole thing is a shambles. Mm -hmm. this, this country, I don't understand how these leaders come with a straight face on TV and repeat these things over and over again without Do any mind. answer. Do you mind? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay. So uh, basically, you know, there's, there's there were some points I was picking when um, I listened to Tinubu's uh, speech again. Unfortunately, if this was if this speech was given to someone else, you probably enjoy listening to it, even if all of it is just for optics sake. But there's a particular part that I specifically wrote down because the reason is that again, talk is always is cheap. I a lot of time I just have this idea that Nigerian anybody people in the top echelons in part, it doesn't matter who it is, as we've been um having, as we've seen for the last couple of years or even decades, it seems I just say things for the sake of it. Now, that part that I extrapolated is, it went on to, uh, it was something about we are joined by a common test for peace and progress, blah, blah, blah. And then there were those choice words 
like uh, the fact that we're basically like trying to forge a nation based on the fair application of these noble principles. We are diverse. We all know it. But the question goes back, because it's tied to what you, what you were even talking about, security. Because I was listening to you, I was like, okay, no problem. I, and then you, you, you alluded to the fact of um, insecurity. First of all, Nigeria is too diverse. It's it's difficult to, it's a difficult country to rule based off of the foundation that we're standing on. It does, it, my opinion, even prior to the election was that even if we be get there, eh, the way Nigeria is structured, it's a bad foundation. We are living a lie. And as we can blame the West for all I care, there is a Botswana called the miracle, little, the little miracle of Africa. That country is thriving. They probably suffered the same way we suffer colonialism. Rwanda might be tiny, but at least they've rebranded. They've shown us leadership in some form, even though Kagame is beginning to act in a way, in a way or form like is is becoming like a dictator. He doesn't want to leave. But that being said, if there is no, there's a righteousness and um, kind of enjoys the nation. If there is no fairness, we are just we just continue moving in cycles, and it starts from the way the country is structured. It, it will still, no matter how we twist or turn it. Switzerland, that uh, forefathers was using as an example in uh, that is uh, again I call it Zaire money ranting. They div they divided into cantons and to the federal the cantons and they have the communes. They have. To, and each of them have their own powers. The only reason why Switzerland is so peaceful and is so like uh, developed to the point that someone doesn't even remember that it exists is because there is fairness and everybody ha controls their own resources. Texas, where I live right now, for example, and I've lived in New York. New York doesn't have the resources Texas has, but New York State, for example, they're able to, they, New, York, New York is based off of, uh, and um, Augustine, for example, any other person, even um, John, Mr. John, would allude to this. Texas is built of oil. Just ordinary University of uh, Austin. <laughs> the amount of money these guys control, they don't have to bother about the federal government. It starts from you having, a, everybody having a sense of belonging. Okay, look at recently, for example, this case of, uh, they're bringing back this Ruga thing again and trying to make, um, you see what they, uh, I forgot who he was in um, Benue, that was telling them, don't bring this thing to, you cannot force it on them. If or you allow people to take care of their own selves within their own capabilities, I don't think people would be too concerned about even the center. Because look at what happened prior to, um, to uh, even as at the early days of Nigeria, look at the way we were developing. We, as far as I'm concerned, we will keep going round and round in circles if we do not rebuild our foundation. And it's it's again, it's not enough to blame the West. It is too. I, I just feel yes, the West has contributed, but we ourselves have to do some introspection. Mm, I agree. I agree about introspection, but in terms of um, you notice, have you noticed that in the world, most nations are not actually based on confederations. And um, the ones that are not, they are actually just as functional as the ones that, that are. So it tells you that this is why whenever you see things that are present in both sides and the, the system is still functional, it tells you that there's something else that is missing in our own context. Fairness. And it, it's not only fairness, because fairness is not even in the UK where they have North and South divide. Again, you see unfairness in many nations. That's why you have to do the deductive reasoning and say, okay, what is going on here? Why is our own different? Why is our own different? And the only thing I have picked out, this is why I keep picking out security. People don't, I, I didn't get there because from random thinking. I looked at everything else. Nations are unfair. Nations are confederate and not. Nations have different diversity, but yet the only thing that they have that we don't have is our security and technology. Those are the two critical areas we don't have. So for forefathers, I hear you um, and I understand mm. what you're saying. But but the thing is this, remember that every nation has to look at its peculiarity and then say, based off these peculiarities, 
what form of coexistence, form of rule of law, are we going to apply to give a, a broad-based sense of equity to everybody? So nations like Canada, USA, where they use the federal system, these are countries that realize that, that there are certain divides we have. Therefore, we need to institute a legal procedure that gives... No, there's no legal procedure that's going to be 100% fair because we are human beings. We have our biases. So people, even a judge that is telling you that he is fair, there will be, in passing his judgment, one little bias may come in. It may be that he's a female judge listening to a, a case where a man is accused of battering a woman. And even if the man is, is guilty, but you cannot tell me that that bias of what? I'm a woman watching you batter a fellow woman will not come in. It will. So the point I'm trying to make is this. Our problem as Nigerians is this. We write the laws that we don't follow. INEC said, for instance, I will, and I'm, I don't intend to use INEC as a holistic, but let me just use as to protest my point. INEC said, we will use beavers. Anything that does not go through and come out from these beavers, we will discard it. The same INEC went back to the court to say, we don't have to use the beavers. Forgetting that what they have declared is a law that they are subject to. I'm a Christian. The word of God says that God is bound by his own word. His word is law. He is bound by, that's why he said he recognizes his word above his name. So the point of I'm making is that the law is always something that everybody must fall back. Once we say this is what we agree to do, sanctions will be applied if anybody breaks this law. The moment you excuse anybody for whatever reason from applying the sanctions when they break that law, there's going to be chaos. Like somebody said, oh. once one plus one is not equals two, there's going to be confusion. So that is where Nigeria is. It is not that UK or America has better laws or whatever. It is just simply that they submit themselves to those laws. They say to oh. themselves, if we are going to create, let's say, for instance, like we always say, we want to have a... Uh, was this our federal character policy? Beautiful. Do you know we still break the federal character policy? We still break it. Mm. The federal character is to protect our force to so that nobody dominates the other. But while we are applying our system, somebody will go and break the federal character policy. Buhari broke it. Tinubu is breaking it. So when you do those things, the, the nation can't work. It can't mm. work. Let me let me let me put let me put let me let me let me make a, a point. So what Chim just said now. That has been one of my biggest fears in Nigeria. I feel Nigeria is not the absence of laws. It's people don't follow laws. I mm. feel you can bring the best system. And the other thing is, it's just like the Biva system, right? It is a very good system if you go study how it works. But people will frustrate it. So what I'm saying here is, you can bring the system, even America and use it correctly to do an election. Nigeria are looking for a shortcut, a way to break the code. Even the laws. You got to bring laws to Nigeria, they will break it just like what you just said. We have a federal character system. It doesn't work. They will break it. So now, how do we make people more accountable? That is the question. So have, I, strong, have strong institutions where people cannot break anything, and let there be consequences if anybody breaks the system. Agreed. Yesterday, I spent a long time trying to defend the fact that some people say, "What if the law is, the law is wrong?" I said that if the law is wrong, if you think the law is wrong, it's subjective. That you be prepared for the consequences when they catch you breaking it, yeah. because you have sooner or later. Because the law maintains a kind of um, collective intelligence in a way. So by breaking it, you are breaking that collective intelligence to that presides all of us. Mm -hmm. To support you, forefathers. Mm -hmm. See, there's a bus stop. Sorry, uh, righteous man. I, I'll just make this and I'll allow you to talk. There's a bus stop near my house. That bus stop doesn't make sense. Because the way they build bus stops, they're supposed to build in such a way that they, the, the buses will go off the road and not block vehicles following them. But this bus stop does not give the bus to be able to go off. It's just on the middle of the road and at a T-junction. And it's the city council that put it. The city council put it. I'm sure that if people begin to make noise, they will remove it. But right now, nobody is making noise about it. But guess what? The, that law says that once you see the bus stop there, 
and put his hazard like you behind it must stop. You can't overtake it. You will wait for that boss and that yeah. boss finishes his activity. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that is a long, is a wrong law. It's wrong. But you are still bound to obey it because the city council has made that law. If you break it and go to court to go and claim, but you know the boss uh, was this delaying me, the city will say, What does the law say? The law says you should stop there. And then you have to stop it. So we cannot keep trying to cut ends. That's the problem with us as a nation. Like you rightly said, the moment, even if the law is, is it has a comma, but that is the law right now, you will obey that law. You can go back and start asking for that law to be reformed or changed or, you know, whatever it is. But right now, that's what the law is. And going by the can I, can I describe yeah, one thing I witnessed about law breaking? Um, or at least Nigerians rejecting law. I was traveling in Abuja, you know, I think I was on my way to the um, train station. And then there was this junction where there was a lot of traffic. There was a traffic warden in the middle there. But the people were not listening to the traffic warden. I was like, but why are you not listening to the traffic warden? You know the, what the person, that the, the, the driver that was driving me said, why should we listen to him? <laughs> that we are supposed to listen to him. He said, he said but I said, but he, he's supposed to have the authority to Make you police to you say no, 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 they don't want you to have authority because if he has authority, he's gonna abuse it. <laughs> Literally, this is live experience. It took it took somebody eh, with a convoy of military to come and break that junction up, and because he wants to get to where he's going, so he came out with the soldiers, the soldiers came out from the SUV, cleared the junction, and so that cars will start moving. And the moment he left, the law breaking carried on. Everybody just jumped into the various lanes. So this so, is real so, life experience. I will tell you this, right? So, Canada, uh, Chim, you live in Canada. Canada is one place I see how police can be professional. You oh, know, yeah. police in Canada will stop you, right? You know, in Nigeria, the moment the police start um, laughing with you, oh, how are you? You, you? you will not be cool like, ah, I don't escape. In Canada, you will tell them, oh, oh, my mother is in the hospital. They will, oh, sorry. Empathize oh, with you. About that. Baba, they go tear ticket, give you no guy won't be. That's they will what they tell do. You, they will not tell yeah. you, hey, yeah, you can go to court, okay? Mm. Take care yours, of your yours truly has been a victim of that. Chief, no, man. <laughs> when I was they in Canada, I'm like, job. Oh, yeah. these people are professional. I'm like, what the heck? You will teach me. <laughs> they will not let you go. They will give you the ticket. They, oh, go, you can go to court, okay? And give it to you yeah. nicely, in a very nice yeah. way. Polite. They are mm. very polite and nice. I was I was I was beat, I beat the traffic this thing by just a few minutes. The man stopped me. He was mm. under. It was when you know he was one under the rain. I was inside my car. He came and said, "Good evening, mm. sir. How are you?" So fine. You know why I stopped you? Uh, <laughs> I was always saying. He said, "Don't worry, it's okay. It's my job." Came back. I thought he was going to be like. You know what he told me? He says, "You know what? I love the way you've been mature. The way oh, you yeah. listen to me. Real you know, crazy. but you know what? I'm still doing my job. Thank you very much for your ticket." Here you go. You, if you want to contest it, you're free. Have a nice day. And I was that's it. And he has cut me one fifty dollars ticket. They will exactly. They will have that, price for everything. They will give it to you. And the job is done. They they are enforcing the rule of law, which is the proper thing to do. Oh, and yeah. um, yeah, um, righteous man. The question you asked about uh, whether he's going to whether the revelation, no matter how bad it is, still will remain in office. I, it, because the, there's a chance that the Supreme Court will not accept any new um, evidence. And if they don't, they could still just rule that with, with the way the previous court did. And if they do, Tinubu could be in office for four years, but not elig being eligible to run again. That is how crazy the situation could be. But we don't know. All this it is true speculation here. Because until that document comes out tomorrow or so, we don't know anything. You see what I mean? So that is, uh, that's why but, I feel that way. Four um, minutes. Uh, one minute, please. One minute, please. One minute, please. One minute, please, Rajesh. Sorry, sir. Um, people are saying that nothing will happen. And uh, interestingly, Rajesh man was asking AY whether he knows the moods of the people on ground at home. Listen, Ayo. Uh, I'm sorry, Ay. I, call, I keep calling you Ayo. I don't know what to call you Ayo. I call one of my my friends that is Ayo. Call, we call him Ay anyway. Right. Um, people are tired. 
this is not gonna slide. It's not gonna be like before that, you know, people will just come, take the piece, and it will go. And I think why a lot of people are coming down, have uh, just been civil, is they want it to reach um, its final uh, logical conclusion before you will see the other side. You know, when a man tells you, when you slap a man on, 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 the, on, on the left, he doesn't punch you back and all that. He asks you to go to court. And that's just what we're seeing. See, I know um, Nigerians, they say that we're too playful. At the same time, it could just be one thing that is, is, is significant that will, uh, that, will kick, that will cause everything to kick off. Look at NSAS, how it started. It was like, like just play, mm. and it just started. So if I were to know, because the thing, the problem I see with Tino, God knows I don't have anything against his personality. If he succeeds, our country succeeds. We don't have any other country, regardless of whatever passport, second passport all of us are carrying, or those that, car that have two passports. It's... It's going to be our country. John Abba is still going to be my brother. I will see forefathers. Maybe there's something in Nigeria. He's going to be. He's going to be my Jago. Is going to still be my brother. It's the same country we've got. So why would so I I I am amazed when I hear um uh people that support Inubu saying that obedience and all that want to wreck that Nigeria. I mean that's nonsense. They don't just understand. It's just bigotry. We, what mm. we ask, what everyone is saying is that puts. Put um, um, principles in play that will that will start, you know, that will that, that will set off um, a series of things that will cause us to um, to recover to start recovering. It's clear that all the people that are surrounding Tinubu are all deceivers. They are deceiving him. They're not telling him the truth. Um, I don't know how many of us are listening to this speech. I listened to maybe three quarters of it. I was just bored. I said, "What is this?" You could tell bigotry from it. No clue. They've got no clue. No, no ideas at all. If by any chance um, uh, Peter Obi should uh, um, get there and all that, nobody is saying that he's going to change things overnight. But at least we know from his antecedent, from what he's been saying, that this man knows exactly. He knows what to do. Before you go into a car to drive, you should know what to do. You should know where the gearbox is. You should know how it works. You should know all the um, um, uh, um, all the um, 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 uh, functionality of the car. Not that when the okay, you've been struggling. I want this car. I want this car. And then they give you the car. You just be moping like some muppets. You don't even mm. know what to do. So that's just the yeah. thing. See, we've got to. We just got to change our mindset. We just got to change our mindset. People are suffering. We, uh, people that live in diaspora are suffering as well. It's not easy. Even here in London, it's not easy. You know, that's my mm. take for now. Paul, Paul said that yesterday. Let's allow um, Jonaba to say something. Jonaba has had a very, very long two days. And <laughs> let, 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 <laughs> because he was here like how many hours yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> we, we were here to the 15th hour. So we had to just cut it short. But um, it was me that was supposed to speak before turn. I asked me to just yeah, yeah. I think let's just allow and the reason why because you can see that the uh, Jonaba is tired, he came to say something for a reason, and um, you can you can it is, let it allow him to say something. You look fresh, righteous man. You look fresh. Uh, let's righteous allow man to man is taking a righteous man that of his dad died in Nigeria. Even though he's not the Mm -hmm. um, oh, good evening once again from where I am, and it's nice to meet a uh, fellow panelist and uh, happy Sunday, happy independence and happy new, new month. Everything happened, three things in one. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have to be clear about one thing, so that when we are taking things out, uh, the people know the knowledge and the depth of our understanding. The issue is that they, even if they say tomorrow that there is any forgery or whatever they are trying to get, the, the Supreme Court is not going to accept a new case. So case closed. It can be used against him in the next election. Or morally, you can talk about it. But politically, you cannot go any further. So let us be clear about that, so that we don't, we're going to be in diaspora, we have more mm -hmm. access to mm -hmm. knowledge and information, and what, when people look, look uh, 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 turn into, uh, uh, turn 
on to this channel and then they are then we are talking out of knowledge or we invest so much emotion into it that will not be a good thing and that's not going to be healthy for that half information that is the thing yeah people can protest on the road that okay you deceive us you said but it's not a legal thing that somebody will come now saying that uh, uh gonna uh, do anything otherwise so let's be clear about that can i um, can i can i ask you a question mr john mm -hmm. um sorry sorry to interrupt um on what basis do you do you think the Supreme Court is not going to consider this? Because you said it's, it's the law. It's in the law. No, You've already no, filed a case. Is the law? Can I, can I say something to that? My my younger sister is a, is a lawyer, so we asked her this question: If you can prove, if you can prove that you have um, a very concrete evidence to add to a case which you've gone on appeal for before, the Supreme Court might accept it. Now I understand your um, I understand your sentiments about us no whipping up emotions and having people going into yeah let okay music. whatever but, but let's but but, let, but let's be very clear that in this case whatever article is bringing is not a new evidence it's based on a case that has been previously made the if it is already is, been is this is this is this yes it's the same documents that he has shown before the appeal court now he's just coming based on technicality to say I am the one because I am the one as a party to this case presenting it. That's okay. just what he's doing now. And if, of course, it still lies in the discretion of the Supreme Court to say this is going to be tenable or not. But it's yeah. not like it's, then it's making it. In any case, in any case, I take your, I'm not a lawyer, it's just based on the normal thing. In any case, we should not invest so much emotion into those things because end of the day, the level of your disappointment and all of that is the too much of hope that you give to yourself. And that is not going to build anything or you're going to make anything happen differently in the nation. What we are trying to do is that as from as for now, uh, uh, we, the people, we have the right to continue to build on the system and continue to use a, a media platform to insist. I think when uh, people like uh, Righteous Man uh, come and spend so much time, I understand he's investing so much time because it's important to him mm -hmm. and he's crying mm -hmm. on behalf of himself and other Nigerians. But it is not supposed to be invested on emotions and all of that. End of the day, your heart broken is going to, uh, the level of expectation, and once it's dropped, then where do you go from there? So let us put everything together and say, okay, I have alternative that if this go this way, this is the next thing I'm going to do. We're going to calm ourselves. We're going to reunite ourselves. Because if not, the voter will get depressed. And next election, that will not even come out at all. And if that is the case, then we are not going forward. Then it's like one step forward and 20 backward. So if we keep giving that impression, oh, it's this and that and that, and of course we don't have a final say in it. What we can do is what we are doing, putting our faces and putting our voices out there, hoping that as we cry from the bottom of our heart, that the justice will prevail somehow. The Bible say, I don't want to be religious, but the Bible say that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. He turned it to whatever direction he want for his own good. And as a, as, as a believer of as men and women of faith, after all said and done, then you said, I have done all I could. Let God let it be to the glory of God. But when we put so much emotion, and so it has to be this, has to be that, trust me, you will, you, you, when you fall, it will be hard for you to get up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want please go ahead. Um, forefathers, please try to coordinate or take actions that we bring honor and respect to every panelist that appears on your platform here, this Rudolf platform. Um, some comments that people make against some individuals are very disrespectful. 
you can make your comment without disrespecting anybody, without abusing anybody. You know, I think home etiquette is demanded here. We should honorably behave well as mature people. If you cannot share in the opinion of another person, does not mean that you will disrespect that person and call him names. That is unacceptable. Sorry, very, very. Did bad. anybody call anybody names just now? Yes, I. If you go to the comment section, look at what one guy is writing about Tony. I mean, uh, Tony, it's not good. Let me it's, see. It's, 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 it's very disheartening. What, what is either the name? You, either you block these individuals, or you you just let them know that this platform does not condone such behavior and actions. It's not good. So who, who, who is doing this so that I can check it out? Do you one, have this? They are up to three people. They are Chioma, one Kalaku, Kalakuta, or whatever, Jajo, or whatever. You know, funny, funny names. And honestly, you know that many people are reading the comments here, but they are not in the panel, okay? And what people comment here, one way or the other, affect their emotion and sentiment about the platform. So they should be cautioned. Either you block them or you caution them. You can't be bringing somebody down because you have privilege of commenting. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't worth it. I think we all are brought up from homes. Fofana. We should, we should look at mm. the way we are cultured and taught. Fofana. I can't come I to this not, platform to I didn't to see any. I didn't see any insults today, though. I must say. Um, if anything, somebody praised them um, to, to when you when when you say that somebody is a froster, what do you mean? When you say somebody is a dummy, what do you mean? But it is not today, though. I don't think it's today. I don't think I mean, today, anybody. today, today. I've been going through the comments. I'm not stupid, ah. too. I like it. Yeah, I see. I thought you were referring to maybe it's, yesterday. it's not correct now. It's not correct. Let's let's be matured. Even some of the people in the panel, panel, if you go to the comment section, you see what they are writing against. One another. It's not correct. Yeah, Me, no, I was insults, not insults, insults are, not, are not allowed. You, you we can't be I may disagree with your panel, point on the panel. I may disagree yeah. with your point, but I will not insult you. I will not go and write rubbish about mm. you. You understand? Yeah, we are all it, we are Nigerians. We just come mm. here to share ideas and opinions. You understand? That's mm. the way I take it. Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah. back to the issue on ground, eh? Um mm. you see the guests we had there was uh, there were some statements made by farouk mm. though he say he criticizes uh Tunumbu, but some statements he made seems as if he has this a little bit um um seem to liken Tunumbu, because when you are defending what you know is outrightly wrong even if you believe it's not going to work, but condemn it and say this is bad. They are not condemning it. Those who have passion for Tinimbu, somehow they hide it. They first give us a preamble like, okay, he's not a good guy, he must abort. No, it's not acceptable. See, when I refer to what is happening here, it's not as if I'm asking for the sympathy of anybody. But I am on ground here, and I know what Nigerians are passing through. Okay? So when I bring it to the platform, it's not a simple... I'm not asking for your sympathy. Mm. Mm. Sorry, Father, okay. where's Jonaba? Did you run away? I have a question for him. So... He, he so, didn't so, run away. He so just signed up. He might return. If, if the if the Chicago why are you coming with it? Extremely rude, bro. Extremely rude. Just come in the side. It's another pansar out here. They just come in. If, 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 if this revelation no, is released you guys just see me just and, and and it becomes an <laughs> indictment on a Tunumbu, the Nigerians in diaspora. Is it possible for you people to organize yourself and go to Nigerian embassies to voice out your disapproval of him, continue to be the president of Nigeria? Why we do our own down home here? Is it possible? Can you do that for us? I, I think what may happen is that let's say something, they find out something that indicates that there was a form of forgery that went on 
in the, the, the at the school clear case and that forgery disqualifies Tinubu from running to be present in the next uh, yeah. election I, I think his power right now will be gone and he may one way or the other resign this may be the first time you see a president resign in Nigeria but I don't necessarily know what the school is going to reveal what is at the scale of pure unadulterated forgery it could just be one thing that they can explain away with clerical error you see what i mean so we don't know until that kind of stuff comes out because if a president cannot run for a second term the power in the context of nigeria you gone they will just look at you like you're out of the this and change that he might be impeached or forced to resign um that's what i think is likely to happen um then let's see. the supreme court uh, uh oh, ruling I think uh, I somebody came to uh, Arise News, a son, a Nigerian son, to explain that it is not out of content that Supreme Court will not admit a fresh, uh, a fresh, uh, what do you, a fresh testimony. That if there is a fresh evidence that is credible, that what, what something in the Constitution that the Supreme Court will admit it. But if it is a weak uh, uh, evidence that has nothing to do with constitutional issues, then they will not admit it. So it is not a uh, 100% to say uh, whatever, whatever evidence Atiku brings from this Chicago uh, University that it will not be admitted, it will not matter. It will matter. The, the, the reason why I think they will block it uh, and they will have a lot of power to, if they want to try to block it anyway, they will try their best to block the Supreme Court for admitting any new evidence. One, if they admit it and use it to disqualify Tinubu, they disqualify the entire APC ticket. And I don't see that not, that brings uh, Shetima, all of them, into the fight. Everybody will come in, all the APC people will come into the fight. So you are likely to see a situation where they will try to block that from happening. But it will still wound Tinubu grievously if he comes if he turns out he was fraud because the whole judges will know he's fraud everybody will know he's, he, he got the um, cheating his way uh, to that is not govern the country after that i believe that that may result in the first resignation in the context of a nigerian policy of a president because well uh, the power will be gone uh, for, for, for that, i want to weigh in on what you just said we want if the the, the law has um Precious man said, if there's merit to articles evidence, that if it will, if it will affect the case considerably, they, they should admit the evidence. And if we want a country that is reasonable, that is going to be stable, the Supreme Court should give a fair judgment. It is in their hands, they should give a fair judgment because it will not benefit anybody except Shetima if Tinubu resigns. And, and in North Anna, and when, all APC when, when party. power should be rotating to the south, so that's their own Bokom. Tinubu does not deserve to be there. They, they, he had he had a false certificate, so he should have been thrown out by Enek in the first place. So that is the APC's problem for not doing their own homework very well. The Supreme Court should, mm. give, us, should give the people what they deserve. And, and John Abba left before before I was going to kind of respond to his own um statement john Abba, it is unfair for you to say that um they should not go to the supreme court are you a lawyer no you are not case, a lawyer so why are you saying they should not go to the supreme court the, the let them go the what is wrong with going to the supreme court, court? <laughs> we want the good thing to be done and you are saying look to 20 2027 20, you are there in america you're enjoying a good life you don't want the rule of law to be upheld in nigeria what kind of a pastor no, are you are quoting by Olumide, sorry, I think you, um, and again, uh, a caveat. I, I, I hate putting caveats because sometimes when you put caveats, it looks as if you don't Just have a firm conviction about what you want to say. But I always put this caveat based on the fact that you. I want to give somebody room. He's not here to defend himself. But my no, no, he's not here, but I know he's watching. I, and I will, but, but I will my whether he's here or not here, Olumide, I will not Olumide, Okay, but Olumide, what I was trying to say is this. And he can what come back to... later and come and respond. I know he's okay, watching. So what, what I was trying to say this is this. My understanding of what he said. He was like, do not invest your emotions into what is going to come out in Chicago eventually 
and to the extent that you begin to think that okay so it, we've been accused that many of us want a specific outcome and that outcome let me break it bare is that we don't we want to go out of the way that's the usual even when i read comments and i listen to people people just think that the whole thing is that we just want i know for me personally no what i'm asking for is let the law be procedurally followed the way it is supposed to be followed hey, let the law follow its course that's what we are asking that's so that's what i'm saying so but what he is saying is that people should not invest their emotions so that if at the end of the day no no that's fine it's emotional now shame it's emotional people have died you know can you imagine the guy giving a raise of thirty five thousand for six months Olumide, wait, please. Um, I, I wanted to say something about. I wanted, I wanted to also say something it's about that. Funny. Like, yes, Olumide, please. Can I? Can I, I? I just don't like that approach. Um, that um, people like. I, I know Jonaba is trying to like keep the peace, but I don't mm. like that approach of saying uh, of trying to check people's expressions of their emotions, especially because their emotions, as long as it's being it's done in a peaceful in a peaceful way. Is guaranteed by the law, and I so agree with you. I agree with yeah, you guys. I was just trying to explain what yeah, I think. Yeah. And, and, and please let me land with this first, don't stampede people's reactions, let people express themselves in the way that's constitutional and as they want mm -hmm. to. Secondly, for those that are saying that, oh, if um, Tinubu goes through this, then it means it's just going to be there for four years. That's a lie, it's going to be there for eight years. The reason being that he already has. A certificate that's endorsed by CSU. The next election, that's what he's going to present. So, on what ground are you going to cut him off? That he forged a certificate and he will get um, a kind indicted. of. Uh, he's not indicted by. Yeah, but by that, that will that will be done then. That's the problem. That will be no, done no, no, by no. that time. It's, it's not indicted, except you're going to indict him in the US for that. But it's not. It's, mm. it's, we know that it's not possible to indict him in Nigeria. What's the case? Why would he not be able to indict him in Nigeria if he, <laughs> um, if he present? No, hold on, hold on. Let's hold on, hold on. Let 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 me no, just say this. Yeah. Hold on, please. So, why would you not be able to indict him in Nigeria if he actually presented a false certificate? The same reason why the old proceedings of the appeal court happened the same the way it happened. That's why. That's why I do not trust. That is not the, the way. Judiciary. Oh, no, okay. I, because I, you I, say I, okay. I, it's a matter of but, trust. I don't trust the judiciary based on the precedents and the fact the the whole state capture that's happening. I um, the you know, there are certain things oh, ju oh, judiciary. Well, okay, I want you to give me the reason, not just you don't trust them. Give me what would be their reasoning for saying this stuff that is already proven to be forged is not forged. What would be their reason? For fathers. The, the reasoning will be one, like I mentioned earlier, I don't want to repeat myself too many. One, we had a certain Senate president called Ahmed Lawan, who did not contest for Senate, contested to the president of Nigeria, and in an election that was holding simultaneously at the primaries level. But he has become a senator, and the Supreme Court ruled that he should go there. That is what people are afraid of. People are saying, yeah. based on all those rulings, we don't trust this judiciary. So I, 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 I still beg to defer that a president that has been found to have forged the document will have credibility to remain in office. Clearly, I, I, I find that hard to believe. Remember, no, he won 37% of, of the vote. Like there are a lot of cases no, like that. No, not the that president, not the president, <laughs> not the president. And there, there are people that have lost um, uh, governorships just because they forged documents. Do you know that the president also has immunity? Do you know that the president also has immunity? That's why I say, this thing must go to the Supreme Court. Because the first thing is that Olumide is going to be in the Supreme Court. Because the Supreme Court is going to be in the Supreme Court. Before anybody's eye, before people like forefathers, before their eye open, there are so many of them in Nigeria. The Supreme Court will affirm Tinubu before their eye open. That that Olumide, finished. Olumide, let me quickly say something to forefathers. But do you know that the president of the country has immunity and cannot be prosecuted? Yes. So does. on what ground are you going to? No, no, no. The Supreme Court. No, when, when, no, no, when, when he wants to run, when he wants to run for uh, president, no, but he's still the president. He's still the president mm. when he wants to run. So you have some immunity. Ed, 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 Ed. It seems we do not understand the um the seriousness of what we are dealing with because. It's it's a it's a very very dangerous precedence that we want we're, we're that, laying that's here. Right. 
and we agree. It's very, very serious. I, I agree with you. I yeah, I, but, but I, I think I, Ed I is onto that. something there. I think Ed may be yeah. onto something there. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying um, that the but... only way to get him now. See, so many people can use this. Do not, do not relax and, 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 and shift the evil there to think, okay, so, in four years' time, you're going to get him. No, you won't get him. Based on the way if, that if the Supreme Court today, today, let, me, let, me, for Rob, Rob, let me support Rob, Rob, the Constitution. Hold on, hold on. You see, this this thing we are discussing today, to be honest, a lot of us we throw in emotions. What Ed is saying, we need to listen very carefully. Now, Tinubu, eight years in Lagos. Tinubu, President um, Obasajo, was against Tinubu in Lagos fighting Tinubu for that all along. Tinubu, eight years in Lagos, these issues play for eight years. Chim, you were in Lagos, a lot of people were in Lagos. It play out for eight years. It's same thing. Now, Tinubu, hey, why? Hey, why? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you hold know on. why I blame? Do you know why I blame for hold this? On. It is the Yoruba elders. I find it hold on, hold even, on. Hold even, on. even this guy, even uh, Adebajo, Adebajo, uh, Baba, let me finish Baba, my this guy in Niger, who is by this very, very leader. Do, uh, let me... Baba, this man knew that Tinubu had a bad attitude. Do you mean Pasha No, 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 no. Yeah. Baba Adebajo, the one that is one supporting Obi right now. Let me allow somebody to talk. Let uh, me, let me this man this knew, guy, man. Can... can you imagine if you end up with a beer parlor with Olumide? Let this me, guy let is going to be all over you. So for eight years, <laughs> for, for eight years, these issues will be like Tinubu had immunity as a state governor. Nigeria State Governor had immunity. As a president, not only immunity, he controls everything. He controls everything. So it's going to be more difficult. I, 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 I know the feeling of It's a people. bit of exaggeration where we say Hold government up. president no, controls everything. Not true. Not I don't know. That's, yeah, that, that's, why governor, <laughs> that's why governors are dragging our president oh, left and right yeah. from court to court and beating our presidents all over the place. They control everything. I oh, understand yeah. what people say sometimes. Eh? That's how they say, oh, Chilibu is a genius. Hold on, though. There's one point. When you, when you were just talking about that, that came to mind. When you said that they cannot prosecute him. That is true. But if governor was elected and they didn't convict that governor, they just found out that he forged the document and they disqualified him. He was not a governor. No, no, no. no, no, no. Let me say something. Let's, let me say something. He was disqualified. He wasn't convicted. No, no forefathers, forefathers. He was forefathers. Not a let, me say, let me say something. Forefathers. Yeah, but he doesn't he have to be a governor. He, I, they, I, they, he I, had been elected. Can I, can and I say he, something? He wasn't convicted. That's the point. That Because that's have, the point I, Ed was I, making. I, I, that I he wasn't indicted. But I he, yeah, go ahead. My response to that is that he was disqualified because he submitted a fake document in that electoral season. Right, yes. so you can disqualify him on that basis. But when mm. Tinubu is going to be contesting, if he does in the next four years, he's going to be using an original certificate endorsed by CSU. Now, no, are we saying there won't be uh, any original certificate? Okay. Origi no, 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 there is one. There's already one in the in the public. Please, righteous, but let me learn. There's already one in the. No, public. there's no original. Ed, 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 you're getting it wrong. Listen. Let where article speak. is going, see, where article is going is not even the certificate. It's, we want to establish, we want to establish the identity fraud. There's a clear identity fraud, but the need I, I, I think this kind of stuff is kind of so, stuff that can lead to... So, I, because, so I get see. your point. I get your mm -hmm. point, but you can only do that in this cycle. Mm -hmm. in Supreme Court gets um, But after, the, my point is that after now, all he's going to do is just... No, 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 I don't think, no, 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 I don't think you can do that. I, don't, I think what you are saying, and I'm not sure it's accurate, because sometimes okay, justice can be applied... I think sometimes that justice can be applied uh, retroactively. Just, just oh, because somebody okay, you know, let, 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 let me let me give you an example now. Just because somebody killed somebody five years ago doesn't mean uh, now you you pretend as if you didn't do the person. The, oh, the judge you will just right. you are right, but yeah. it's not. It, but that killing that person might be indicted for it, you know. But in this case, if there's no if there's no indictment for Tinubu, you can't use it against him. Because that's I what think the I, I think I agree can, with what Ed is saying. You, you can, yeah, yeah. Ed is, 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 is correct. Can, can hold on, hold on. Ed is mm. very correct. Very elected. No, I, 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 don't, I don't buy it. The reason why I don't buy it, uh, what is going to happen is that they, this is kind of stuff that could lead to constitutional crisis. 
because you have a president that has just gone it gotten into office snuck through the back door fraudulently that's You're basically right. what it is and it can right. lead to constitutional crisis this kind of stuff that can lead to a coup that can oh, lead to father, you're also right and, and you are right but you're arguing from a moral perspective it's not about moral it's not about moral it's about constitutional all. crisis this is not when, about when morality because somebody just appear. broke the law exactly so you're yeah. right we're, we're already in a constitutional crisis but, 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 but guys we, we, are, we are not, not there yet to, why, why are we saying we are there already until the, <laughs> we don't have evidence of what we are saying yet that is but, if but, the school reveals something it might just be innocent in the end we don't know so but, except but, the sorry, school guys, the only the only time tinubu will be out of this whole equation is if the judiciary asserts its independence and authority, and the judges clearly are able to interpret the documents or whatever it is presented to them, and they say this man is found guilty. Give you an example. We saw the ruling of the appeal, or sorry, of the um, tribunal, which you've mentioned, forefathers. And one of the things in that in that ruling that people have been screaming about is this: INEC presented certified E, whatever form number they call it, blood forms. And the appeal court said those things were still not enough. With the, with the overwhelming evidence, they still claimed it was not enough and they made the ruling they made, which is making people say it's a jungle ruling. So I'm, I'm, my own simple perspective to this is, if the judiciary stands firm to say, you know what, we're going to be blind. We take the evidences as is, evaluate them. And if, from what we're saying, this man is guilty of what is being charged, they rule and say, you know what, in the first instance you are not even eligible to stand based on this ruling for as long as our judiciary cannot do any of that mr tinubu is going to do four years plus four mm, and, and for this reason the supreme court if let's say something comes out that indicates fraud the supreme court will have to accept it now otherwise they know they will create a constitutional they don't crisis have to accept it. They, they dream they dream what they think they should admit remember i was going to ask this question who defines yeah, what is admissible is the same Supreme Court. I think they, 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 because of the conversation we just had just now, if it turns out that Sinubu is about to sneak in through the back door, that? they would not want to create a constitutional for father, crisis. Forefather, for father, I feel you know, in the Supreme Court, judges, clear, right? they are neutral, they will accept any hmm. evidence. I believe they will accept. But if they are not, they will throw it away. So I have an opinion. So again, it goes back to um, also, I think Chim actually also um, mentioned something I forgot to mention. I think a lot of our problems is still structural, it's foundational, and the, we don't have institutions. And when it comes to the judiciary, if, I mean, if you take stock of what has happened over time, you realize that even when it comes to uh, the independency of the, we claim to practice democracy, whereby... Uh, you have the executive and the legislature and the, and the judiciary, but even the legislative is, is already in itself influenced by even the officers. See the way they even elect their presiding officers and all of you, or, or, or what you have. Now, um, when it comes to the judiciary, are they truly independent? No. <laughs> Anything from even the appointment of judicial officers, I'm sure a couple of us here at least know of situations where um, people get appointed that are not even qualified to be judges. It's a fact. It's a well-known thing. Yeah. If you speak to people that actually are in the thick of it. That's why sometimes when you listen to uh, Dele Faro to me, for example, a couple of years ago, when he just, he gave up on, he does not even like to be called a lawyer. Because yeah. if you're not in, in deep in, the Nigerian judiciary is just as corrupt as, Nigeria is corruption PLC, period. <laughs> In addition to even the appointment of these judges, let me be nice now. Today is our bad deal. Recently, because see, we, we there's something that Ed said. Me, what me, I'm just waiting for is what we already know is already going to be reassed. Are you going to go against the person that is more or less feeding you? The Nigerian judiciary is not, not only is it so corrupt in terms of the way appointments are made. But when it comes to even the transparency of their own administration and court procedures, there is a major problem. And that's why a lot of times, there's some things that make you lie. You know when they want to lie, one of the few phrases they'll tell you is based on technicality. I am waiting. You will hear technicality again. You know we are used to this. Because if nothing else has taught us any lessons, 
I go back to again one of the cases that we all know that even till tomorrow, none of us understands how Lawan go back to the house. How I've someone been saying who it. came I've from been four, saying four, it. How did he get back? See, Jim, that, 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 that's, a, that's a very wrong thing to say. Let me no, finish. Please, no. excuse me. No, no, no. I'm not going to accept. Let me finish. Okay. It is my say. Okay. I, you have your opinion. I'm not going to disagree with you unreasonably. There's it's a common saying in Kenya. You know, okay. See, see, um, see, buddy, you're smart. There's a lot of things you say that I don't, I may not necessarily agree with. But, but let me finish. The last thing I just want to say is a common saying that comes out of Kenya. They normally say that why bother yourself going to get a lawyer when you can buy a judge? That's Nigeria. There is, see, you cannot convince me when it comes to Nigerian judiciary. I'll listen to you. But there's nothing you will say about Nigerian judiciary that you cannot convince me otherwise. Thanks. Uh, on the issue of Lawan, people over time, like, they come over here, they say stuff about it. People in Nigeria complain. What I've observed over time is that, like, we don't usually take time and, like, look into the foundation of this issue. You know, Lawan itself, Lawan himself didn't contest this case in court. This particular case was actually took to court by Lawan constituency. And this battle was fought basically on technicality and every profession every profession so what is that technicality explain it to i will us. explain to you every profession has its own rule if you are a chemist or a pharmacist if you're in the lab you have what we call sop to work with and if you are working outside those rules you'll be sent out of the lab so the what is thing, the sop more, more more superior listen to listen let me day lena come on don't go no, straight to the point. No, every day you're too much, bro. Calm down. Court. Writ of summon and originated summon. And in that particular case, I would advise, I didn't mean that I'm very close to uh, the other guy that won that primary. I mean, no. I would have said, oh, guy, don't bother yourself to go to court to challenge this case. Because in, the, in them finding that petition at the court, the alleged fraud, which is a crime. And the matter at hand is a civil matter. So by approaching the court in a wrong way, by finding a writ of summon, instead by finding a regenerative summon instead of the writ of summon, that's what actually killed the case. That's why you see the guy that the guy didn't complain at all. He just went home straight. That's why the Supreme Court didn't bother himself looking to the merits or the merits of that matter. Buddy, let me ask you a question. Yeah. So what you just said, right? I yeah. think Lawa was involved in that case up to appeal court. No, it he is was. His, his, his constituency was the one that fired. If you listen to Lawa, he was he was involved by it was involved. There, I, It was oh, not. It was not I his constituency. So, 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 my own question no, is, not true. buddy, you have well, not explained anything down now. now. Let me you never down. explain anything now. The guy never explained. Just okay. a little bit of someone. No, take Olumide out. Take him out. Take him out. Take him out. You know. No, hey, don't do go that. and look at go and look at the judgment. If leave you him, look at him. the judgment, that's what the court decided mm -hmm. on. And they alleged which, that which of the cases, the court, which of the cases are you referring to the Supreme you Court? Are alleged judgment. fraud. You should have called that. You should have called a witness. Buddy, 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 buddy I have okay, a question for okay, you. Let me which of the case are you so, referring to? Sorry, sorry, Ewa, let me just take it. I research on the judgment. No, wait. Now I have the case right in front of me because I know you. You always want to state pseudo facts. Okay. First. Case are you referring to? Is it the Supreme Court case or the Appeal Court case? The Appeal Court case and the Supreme Court case. Look at it. Okay, the Supreme Court case was yeah. Machina bringing APC yes to the court. Okay. So how how does the constituency figure into that case? You know, immediately, you know, Lawan didn't participate in primary. He went for presidential mm -hmm. election, presidential mm -hmm. primary. Mm -hmm. He lost out. Immediately, mm -hmm. he lost out. The APC national chairman was in the process mm -hmm. of trying to smuggle the guy back into the process, on mm -hmm. which the national chairman refused to submit the machinist name to INEC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at that point mm -hmm. in time, the constituency in which the former Senate president came from, they were agitated that they want Lawan instead of Machina, that there is no primary at all. That the APC well, you know, agitating agitate is not legal proceeding. Listen, so, I'm so giving you a background. You're asking for a background. What led to the constituency okay, filing the continue, case? Continue. So, at that point in time, 
the constituents approached the court. At that point in time, they were agitating to the, to the, to, 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 to the national chairman. The, my Martina suspects, at that point, that he suspected that the, the APC might not end up nominating him as the candidate of the party and he filed a case at the, at the federal, at, the, at, at an high court to challenge the APC. And in that case that he filed, if you look at it, he approached the court wrongly. But what, he mean wrongly right? for, what is wrongly? Supreme Court didn't listen. Supreme Court didn't case. decide. The Supreme Court didn't decide anything. The Supreme Court didn't decide body, the merit of the body. case. I'm asking the Supreme Court question. only body, referred them to the judgment to what happened at the at their court. If you look at that case very well, so okay, the Supreme so Court. Body, I'm confused. Yes. I'm okay. confused, and I explain to you okay. what my confession is. Okay. So you said Machi Machina approached the court wrongly. I'm wanting to understand what is okay. the wrong procedure in the approach there, of the court. Uh, yeah. So there are two things. There's what we call writ of summon and originate summon. If you are filing a case mm -hmm. in the court, if you are filing a case in the court, there are two processes, two different procedures. So mm -hmm. if you are alleging a crime, mm -hmm. that a, a fraud has been committed. Mm -hmm. That's a criminal procedure. Okay, so he was accusing them that a crime had been committed. Yes, and the okay. court expected him to call a witness. Okay, in the process, mm -hmm. in which he didn't. So, because it's, it, it's not a fault. It's not his fault. It's just his fault of his lawyer. The constituency was never a party to this case. I'm having. Listen. I have the Supreme okay. Court's verdict here. Ed is right. Ed is right. Body, I need to take you on this. I follow I'm not that. saying Ed is not right. <laughs> but the issue he's talking about is the issue of that, like, the judgment is wrong. And I'm saying the issue of originating someone that I'm talking about. Is that what he's saying? You're right about that. You know, I'm not disputing yeah, no, I'm that. Telling you. You're, you're right, you're right you, about that. You, but the, the point, you, your basis you, for you, this... No, your basis, your basis, your basis for this was that the constituency was a party. What I want to ask you... No, I'm not saying what I'm saying. As I'm telling you the background of the story. The background of the story that... The root of this case... I wasn't interested. The root of this case... Okay, fine. It's the first way that was pushing the case for now. Wait, wait, wait. That's why the APC didn't nominate... We agree. Okay, buddy. I agree that the Supreme Court gave a judgment. You understand? But what Nigerians are saying, what people, what fair-minded people are saying is that Lawan does not participate in the primary. This yes. guy won. So what what law gave Lawan the right to be so senator for that What though. law? Listen. What backing? The party has the right, the prerogative to nominate whoever they want to represent them. That's why that's why I brought Don't the you think wait, wait, wait. Don't you think that it is it it, it, be, it, it belies Logical reasoning that a party but you don't take that wait, to the law court. You don't blame the law court for that. Uh, can, can, I, can I add this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh, calm down. Hold on. Let me finish. Before this is an internal party issue. Parties have the right. That's how the court looks at this. I agree. But what I'm trying to say is that at the high court level, the party supported this guy. At the appeal court level, they supported this guy. No, the party didn't support it. Wait, wait, listen, I will read it the for you now. Have, so let, me, let me open it for you. Mm -hmm. It's here. Mark ah. I have it here. <laughs> oh, God. This, yes, Eddie, let me, let me read it for you. The Supreme Court supported the guy. No, Eddie didn't support that guy. Wait, now. As, 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 as authentic candidate of APC, the court made the declaration in the three against two speed judgment for a five members panel. Okay. The panel was there by Senator Zunwezi. The majority judgment held that the decision of the federal High court in Yobe and the court of Alibi in Abuja were perverse and must be set aside. The guy won at High court and appeal court. Okay. The majority of judgment held that decisions of the federal High court were perverse. <laughs> APC had challenged the judgment of the lower court, which affirmed um, Bashir Machina as the candidate of Yobe North Central District. Okay. It's all the Supreme Court to nullify the two previous verdicts. They didn't come in until they got to the Supreme Court. Olumide, 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 Olumide,
If I may say something, I think we I think we need to listen to some music. Let's listen to some music at this rate. Where's the Olumi Day? Say it, Olumi Day, say it correctly. Hey, hold on. Hey, hold on. Hey, hold on. That was that was beautiful. Um, <laughs> yeah, Let help was, him out. Let me help him out. Right. Before you go, you know what? Let's go look at what. Jamie has not spoken today. Jamie has not spoken today. Hello. And there's an allegation of that. Come on, come on, come on. If I may say something, there is a problem with that. Let me come in. Please. Let me come in and say that Olumide is right. Jim, you you what when when nobody else is here, you don't try to do the right thing. Jim, you are smart. Olumide is right. All of us witness this. This is what I'm talking about. But I agree with him. Right? But no, I no, agree. No, 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 no. You are just no, no. coming. You can't. I'm the nurse. You can't so, be talking. What, 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 you are Hansard, talking. hold on now. There is Hansard, an order to things. You, eh? you just came in and do it. I'll be a bully. I'm just trying to help Olumide be out because he's being Hansard, ganged up be on. Bully. Take Pastor out. But he, he, he no, I need to leave. I need to leave. I have a point I need to leave. Okay, let's say, let's say why say something, then Pastor, then you can no, say no, something. No, 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 Pastor, no. So okay. what what Olumide mm. said, Olumide is saying the court. I'm actually surprised where both they got this information. I follow up this case. Here is my theory. Here is what I think um, um, the former Senator uh, Lawa did. What Lawa did, right? When that case got to Supreme Court, I think it was a plan. He was now more like, oh, I'm not interested in the case. He arranged with his, some people to go to court. Now, when I now figure out everything, it was when uh, Zibok Kochiwo, that senator that, was, that wanted to expose them in the, on the floor of the Senate, I said, oh, this was the game. If you watch what Lawa did, Lawa stopped him from talking. He said, hey, no, it's okay. There is something. That case, trust me, what Olumide said is fat. But on this, you are wrong. I'm not with you on this. Okay, if I could quickly add my view, please. Let me say something. Chim. Yes, I think it's Chim's on. Let please. me say, let me, I, I need to leave, yeah. buddy. I only actually honestly, I have an appointment. Now, here's the thing. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has been inconsistent. If we go back to 2006, 2007, in the case of PDP and Namechi in River State, because why am I picking this? Somebody said, I think the body said the party, it is the party's right to nominate a candidate. Fine. The party, there was a primaries, and somehow Amechi was about to win that primaries, and Obasanjo stopped that primaries and insisted to Odili that he didn't want Amechi and they substituted him and brought in Omahai so and then Omaha went uh, sorry? Then Omaha went to the main election and won by this time Omeha, Omeha, not to my Omeha, Omeha. 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 I, I, I apologize for that, Omeha then he went to the Supreme, then Amechi went to the Supreme Court and won an election he did not contest him. remember what is the point you said that the party has a responsibility and the powers to put forward whichever candidate they want to put forward. So if that is right, and I'm, and they had put forward Amechi, sorry, Omehai, why did the Supreme Court rule that way? Now, coming to this particular one now, they now turned it the other way around. So in other case, listen, I know it may sound conspiratory. These are the reasons why people are saying that our judiciary cannot be trusted. Because it smacks off money changing Body. hands. It smacks off people doing politics. Smarter, 
politician. You are a political you know, neophyte. You well, don't I, make fast talk. Are you stupid? Are you a political neophyte? I said you are a political neophyte. I'm telling you that. 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 I'm yeah, please. Uh, let me let me respond to him. He wants to leave. Hold on, I respond and, and I will. I know. Let me leave. let me talk. I want to he's leave. Let me talk to him. So he can leave. Hassan, you know, know, why does right? everybody he want to leave? leave Hassan, hey, yeah. Hassan, the bully. You met me here. Hassan, yeah. 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 uh, the guy who uh, wants to leave. I want to respond to him before he leaves. Oh, I can't stop the bullies. If you don't research, if you don't research, you will believe it. Olumide, 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 uh, 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 I want to respond to him before he leaves. You know, he was talking about Celeste Domia. Remember, the case was in 2007. This guy is a crazy man. At every cycle, <laughs> we have different <laughs> electoral laws. Are you going to rule or let him go then? If you're not going to rule, we'll, we'll go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Hassan, you know, chill, chill. So we, we have to be very careful as well. We At, at, at every point in time, this election was being conducted, was, uh, that 2023 election was conducted basically on 2022 electoral act, not 2020, not 2015 or 2010 electoral act. So, where, where in the electoral act gives changes this situation? Can you mention it, please? Yeah, I will tell you. Before, before it's uh, when a political party nominates a candidate in 20, I think in 2010 electoral act. If you check, I can't really say the section precisely right now. If you check, they said when a party nominates. Every canary can challenge the qualification of that candidate once that candidate is nominated. But in 2022, electoral, the new electoral act, they modified it, they changed it. They limited it to a, to, to a member of the party, that only people that participated in the primary. That's why you see the difference between the judgment that was given by YESA in the case of the, uh, 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 what do you call it? In the case of the deputy governor, that affected the governorship or uh, candidate of the APC in that state. Because that candidate is a pre-election matter. And someone else, which is not a member of that political party, went to court to challenge the qualification of the deputy governor and affected. So they modified the electoral acts. So these politicians, they are very smart. They are covering their hacks too. So that's why those powers are derived from. So for the case of 20. Uh, of 2007 thereabouts, we are meeting one at the Supreme Court. If you check with, with, with lawyers, with attorneys that are very fast in law, the Supreme Court have departed. What did they modify it from? From what to what? Listen, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Listen to me. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> 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 for, for the judgment of then, whereby uh, the Supreme Court made that pronouncement, they modified the following year, the following election cycle, they modified the electoral act that we cannot be even declare the winner of an election except you participated in the full process of election in the primary and the electionary and the, and the election itself. So this, this uh, so, I might like one party. They change it. So so body, they, so body, so body, body. It boils down to what we're saying. No, it's not the court that is changing it. No, my, 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 it's not the court that is changing it. It's the national assembly that is changing the electoral act. But the, what, what, what is the right? I agree with you. So it has become the law, oh, and the Supreme Court is riding on it. The Supreme Court is riding on it, as they are changing it. So, but the thing about parties, one thing I know about parties is. Let me just choose this. Yeah, can you listen? In the case of Machina that you're talking about, you said the party. Yeah, you know, you know, know, know sometimes I do you enjoy a little bit of this mad, mad, this way he goes on about it. You must fight your case. 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 They APC follow their constitution. It's nobody's business. They're gonna stay. It doesn't have anything to do with the election. Nobody's business. That's what we are saying. The, the issue. You know what you're saying? You say nonsense. I'm saying Laban was saying nonsense. 
one of the primaries. You didn't uh, consent. Uh, please, please. Somebody who didn't consent. Oh, no, 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 I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start, okay, start okay, with this okay, people. Okay, people. Okay, 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 I'm going to meet everybody now. This is okay. You are a political. Only me, calm down. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try to get this. Calm down. Let's calm down. So let's get one fact straight. Somebody can be selected to Assembly Legislative Assembly 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 Somebody can be selected to um, uh, represent the party and he can decide to step down at any time during that process. And some other person can replace that party, uh, that candidate on the party's um, uh, decision, based on the party's decision. That's how it works. So, if I just I should clarify that, so you guys can go ahead and the truth is, let Pansa talk, please. I need to go. Yeah, yeah, Pansa, the Pansa, the patient, he's been patient for two. I think Pansa has his match today in Lumi Day. Actually, the problem here is, buddy, now listen to this, right? Uh, Tim, we know, first of all, for courts to be even disciplined in thought in a first world like the United States, it's pretty hard but they they do their best right so in nigeria there are two things i'm gonna say and i i want i want to tell you this because i noticed you trying to bend back backwards try to accommodate so we'll be the one nigeria and we're gonna be singing kumbaya right we're gonna be nice and all that look that's not the solution to the problem we have in nigeria you have to tell the truth right so what i'm saying to you is that Instead, decisis, that, that's the word for, um, you could look it up if you have a computer. Stair decisis, there's vertical stair decisis and there is horizontal stair decisis, right? So in the case of the Supreme Court, it's, it's vertical because that's just the apex court. In the, in the horizontal, it be a lower court, like a tribunal and all that, and then they could ov override the tribunal. But in the vertical stair decisis, the Supreme Court itself can also overrule itself. Some of these cases that they're citing, they're similar. They're not exact. It's not the same thing. We saw, now, AY, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm addressing your constituent. Every time I come here, I'm trying to tell you, I know what you guys are doing, the Muslims in Nigeria. We saw that Machina case go through. We saw Tinibu being challenged by his opponent. But they call it deal because the courts ruled properly according to the electoral acts and all the laws will have the constitution. He did not participate in that election. As a matter of fact, after he lost the second time, he came out and said, look, I give up. I'm not even going to appeal it. Yeah. But in order to get the support, his support, because he's Senate uh, president, Tinibu made a deal with him. And then the court, Supreme Court, they all cut it a deal. Now I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy telling you guys the truth. I'm telling Northern Muslims. I'm trying to tell you, leave religious. Oh, no, hold on, hold on, no, no. This is, this is not frivolous. I don't, I don't enjoy doing this, but I have to tell you. So, Pastor, what how, you how, know, how does that right? concern me? I'm, exactly. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to understand how I come in. Yeah, here's where you come in. Now, when you, when Olumide was in trouble there, okay, I wasn't here. Body and AY, they, they were singing that tune that I'm talking about. It is your role to, to help or let me they out because he made a citation. I was, right? I was not even saying I'm not here. AY was, in, was, was in, okay. in You saw AY right? change when he saw I was with Olumi Day. I was back in Olumi Day, but Olumi Day was drowning my voice. Olumi Day was drowning my voice. You were not. You were not back in Olumi Day. I'm not crazy, right? I came in because I think something he, is wrong, man. He, was, <laughs> he gave a citation. He gave the right interpretation of what's going on, right? <laughs> so why why are you doing this? Because I know you're very smart. The first day I saw you here, you're from God's own state. You have to confront these people, right? For your own good, because what they're trying to do is impossible to do. Pass they right. cannot. Pass they right. cannot. I think I occupy think our, our really judiciary, occupy she, the presidency. Myself. Occupy our yes, Congress. Olumide. Right? So, Olumide is right here. He was in trouble. They're shutting him down. He's trying to tell the truth and, and, and get out in Pansad, the right path. Pansad, Pansad, yeah. Pansad. So, okay, why do you think... Why, why, hold on, let's get, to the, let's get to the crux of the matter. So, why, why do you think Olumide was right? What was the technical point he made that was right? <laughs> well, he, he gave citations. He, he said this the case were resolved twice by the appellate division, right? And that's true. And then he, he cited the cases. 
right? And he gave the anecdotes back at the background, okay? So let me say one thing, then I'm gone. So you guys could have your fun. And this one I'm going to tell you, forefathers, I, I, I tuned in to say to you, there's one thing I've never told you since you've been making the case about security. Why am I oh. against it? Let me just be honest with you. Oh. Giving Nigeria, making Nigeria powerful militarily is just like giving arms to ISIS and Boko Haram. <laughs> okay? So mm. if you make them that powerful, right now, our students cannot protest. As you noticed in the uh, uh, NSARS, right? If you give them tactical weapons and all those kind of things, they're going to even you, take you over are, Ghana. You are, you, you are off they, the issue now. You hold on. You, no, on no, I'm, I'm saying this and I'm gone. Okay? You because, are confusing everybody, Pastor. No, no, no. Hold on, Not hold on. only people here. You are confusing I, I'm people. not. I'm done with <laughs> it. How, 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 how is he bullying anybody how, now? Eh? How, 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 how? You are attacking body today and you are attacking me. I was supporting your Lumi Day. You were not. Oh man, that, that kind of support Come on, man. Is, is milk Come on, Passat. It's you, a milk tote support. Man. I know, I Stop know what you're doing. Stop deceiving the people. Look, Stop deceiving the people. Uh, AY, you have a footprint, uh, right? Jagu is Every, here. Ed is look, here. You, you have a righteous <laughs> man is here. What are you, uh, you talking know, about? Uh, Papa, has, he interrupted me. Let me land. I okay. wanna, I'm addressing you. Remove. Uh, get, if there's pass, time, I'll address you. Okay, AY, uh, uh, let him let him land. I think he was coming um say something about security. And I'll be gone, right? So what I'm saying to you, but. Before I actually go to you again, let me just say to him because you already said some things already. You have a footprint. You everybody knows you, right? Anybody, unless something comes in the front about Peter Ruby, if you don't support Peter Ruby, you're an evil person. That's it. Everybody knows who you are. That's Every sad. debate that we're making here, all our youth, they, they're watching you. You're a young man, you're privileged, you're here, but you keep taking the wrong position. And then you think I'm, here. My I'm position, not here to debate with I'm you. I'm taking you, the Nigeria position. I'm not going to follow your. your what Don't you follow think. me. Don't follow me. But then, uh, often, Peter let me tell is, you. Is, is clearly my choice out of all the candidates. But I'm not. I don't follow people blindly. I support. Well, that people. is a milk toast. I'm support. not gonna. I'm not gonna support Period. people blindly. I'm saying if it stop be something stop comes, information. Stop yeah. saying things that are okay. not correct. Please listen to this. If something I'm not gonna comes, listen to your rubbish. If something comes in the, mm. in the future, fine. But it, you as don't come here to bully people every time. Okay. You think people? You don't have monopoly of violence. Okay, stop time. bullying okay. people. Let, let, you are let a bully. Let me address you. Uh, what I was saying. You I'm are a bully. Right? Uh, forefather. <laughs> I want Stop you. Being bully. Maybe Every you tell time me to you come do back. this to everyone, I'm not going to gonna let you. Hey, why? Hey, why? How is Pansa getting on your skin like this? Let it be. Mute him, mute him, no, Forefather, I want to tell him today he's not the only one that can bully people. He bully people every time. Uh, how? <laughs> how? I'm Visitors will come here. For uh, Rudolph, we invite people here. You will bully them. You bully how? everybody. How? I'm not bullying anybody. Of These course, are smart that people that come do. and we debate. And I, I put on my questions. I'm not bullying anybody. You do. Take it out you of your do. mind. I'm asking them a tough question. You That's true. You did the same thing okay, today. Please. Every time you do that. I did not. You are bullying him. You are trying to harass him now. Leave him oh, no. He uh, go, go collect today now. Nah, nah, only in the <laughs> Okay, but <laughs> also, so let me give me a time to come back. Right, I want to okay. debate you on the security issue. Hey, wife, the line of my okay. of let me line... let me give you one minute. Pass at one minute. Speak and thank you, thank you. The line of the debate I want to have with only you. Only one minute, too. Oh, only one minute. Uh, Dobbs, hey, one I minute. beg now. I beg. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what I'm saying is, uh, forefathers, <laughs> I believe that making Nigeria, unless we have a new Nigeria, and 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 then the, our youth come up, the entire country galvanized. If we give these people right now uh, a, a powerful military in, in the name of security, they're going to use it not only to conquer the South, they're going to conquer Ghana. It depends on how much power you give. The more, the more power you give them, they're going to take over African states. It's an Islamic government. That's what we have. Wow. It's, a radical, it's a radical Islamic yes, government, please. right? It's like ISIS, it's like Boko Haram. There's absolutely no difference. You go and you ask, go and ask a Muslim community in Zaria. They, 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 they have a Shia in, in Zaria who is you a nemesis. They are you are completely people. out of point. We are discussing we, we, constitutional no, no, and electoral I, I, I'm uh, setting up a debate with uh, two Niger. You, I'm going to come back to debate. You are going to leave. Confused. You want me to leave, right? No. So I'm going to yeah. leave. Yeah, bye. If have, you accept have a good, the debate, have a good uh, evening, forefather, right? Move you on. accept the debate yeah. two hours from now. I'll come back. Bye-bye.
whenever you guys are ready, when, when you're done with your crew, I come back I and say you say bully. Hey, why? Hey, why? Come on. Come on. You're, you're, you're turning to one now. I think this, this Pazat is rubbing off for you now. Pazat, oh, yeah, not... you can go. Bye bye. Let's, let's have a We don't need you. There. Pazat is rubbing off for you now. Uh, you, you know, this, 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 this is our platform. I will tell Rudolph to buy you for coming mm. to this platform. You can have Masa, it. Um, Masa, you know, you know, this one righteous man has been quiet for a while. Masa, Trump, see my brother, it's not, it's not, it's coming. Righteous man has been quiet no sitting down there. Masa, 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 and it's not in the same position as it is now. Oh, yeah. it's, I think it's... Oh, yeah, it's what, like yesterday one. Yeah. Yeah, that's, the, yeah, that's probably yesterday one, yeah. Uh, on, uh, the yeah then, uh, on the TV, though, that's not on the... On the uh, most serious, though, TV. Passat is my man. He just that sometimes we, we got to dig it, man. It's my man. No, <laughs> no look, on a serious note, AY, right? You have to come over to the new Nigeria. You hold your opinion, but you cannot... Be against this youth. They want to. Uh, you are sitting here. Yeah? You, you are sitting here, Passat. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 are you? You accept the challenger? Uh... Okay. Buddy, buddy, I have a question. Okay. On the most serious, well, Lumi has been company. very quiet for a while. Um, yeah, 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 I can see. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, policy. This new address. The address is made to Nigerians today, October first, about increasing, giving them an increment. Um, about thirty-five thousand naira to their minimum wage for the next six, just for six months. What do you think about it? I, I need the moderator. So no, no, I just want um... to bring up personal view. I just want to know. <laughs> you still have a consular issue hanging on your neck. Oh, you don't want to no, no, I love how you allow this. Uh, what, what, what do you think? What, what, what is your own view? You, you, you want to know what your view of it is? Oh, you just allowed it to be just. 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 You just question. I think what Tinibu is doing maybe trying to buy time for the refineries to come on stream. I may just maybe six months. Yes, because they, they expect some of them to come on stream by December. Maybe this uh, this month actually for. Uh, well, well, those are federal workers. What is going to happen to the rest of the population? Uh, you said it there. Oh, um, and not <laughs> much. Oh. This, this, that guy doesn't have plan for everybody. Oh, um, he doesn't. He's, he's just a period. He doesn't have plan for those people. Sad, but it doesn't. Hey, Pansat. Thank you for coming in, Pansat. Pansat, hello. See you. See you. I'm I'm becoming more and more impressed with Pansat every day. I don't know why. It's not like his documents are sound, but I'm just becoming more and more impressed with him. I don't know why. Pansat, I like the way you tickle the guitar, my brother. I like that. Okay, I'll more for you guys later. Yeah, man. I'll see you guys later. I'll be listening in. Uh, okay, Pastor. Okay. If you get out of the no problem, I'm going to come back in. Righteous <laughs> <laughs> man. Yes, that righteous man. The righteous man is born in a lot of data. Yeah, Jago has not spoken. <laughs> no, I think Jago, when he wants to speak, he's taking, uh, he no, taking no. his time. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, this is, he, whenever he wants to speak, you are, you are free to interject, uh, Jago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Righteous man is born in data in Nigeria, you know. Are, are we still donating uh, data to him? Because this <laughs> one, uh, you know, so you know, the people were supposed to be sending data to Nigeria, and it's been Righteous very quiet. Man. Mm. Righteous man, Righteous man, he's sleeping already. I guess I didn't he's not sleeping. No, he's not sleeping. No, Righteous man is not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't sleep on life. On life. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead, righteous man. The network is out. He's yeah. moved. He's, 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 uh, the network is gone. Uh, I think I think Pansat, one one of the skills I think he has is he has uh -huh. the ability to just come in, interject, yeah. and challenge people. Yep. Even when he's not making any point, he will still manage to stress the argument yep. for 30 minutes. Yep. It's, it's a skill. I don't know how he does that. If you allow I'm him impressed to ask questions, he's, he's going to go for 10 minutes. 
Mm. It's impressive the way he does it. No matter who, he will come at you. <laughs> and Peter will be, I feel sorry for Peter will be. <laughs> Peter will be comes to that. We have to watch out for him. Are we um? Are we going to have a special? Uh, are you are you going to have a section tomorrow on your channel when this thing comes out tomorrow evening? I think I probably will. I think I probably will if the news comes out, especially if it is um, very, very um, uh, this indecisive about you know the outcomes. <clears throat> let's say, let's say there is kind of forgery going on. Yes, definitely. But if there is, if it turns out that it's just the one, the like judge is already be, out. We don't know. Yeah, the judgment to release is out, isn't it? But yeah, the no. judgment is out. So, so. <laughs> no, no, but and in terms of releasing the this thing, we've not seen of, it yet. The merit of the matter, whether it's there's forgery or not. Mm. The court uh, yeah. You don't know now. Tinubu could just pick up the phone, call Washington, <laughs> and they say, stop it, stop it, stop it! And the court is <laughs> but, 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 the, but the issue before the court Four was father. not about he said, The issue before yeah. the court was not of, was not of forgery. Right. It was to say, release the document. I just man, go ahead. Anytime, go ahead. I feel righteous man, you go know, ahead. Uh, what are his attempt is like? Let, let's you know, allow like righteous man. man speak. I think he has a question. Uh, forefather, you are the one to donate the next uh, data. <laughs> uh, I don't have any problem. You know, I've been donating data to Nigeria forever. Every 10 or 12 you know, days, they are to finishing Niger the Niger data. To Nigerians, it's not to me. I mean me. My oh, to you. How many, yes. how, how, many, how many GB do you normally use? Is it based on monthly or? I use monthly, I use uh, 55. Oh, that's nothing now. Righteous man, I thought you wanted to ask me. That's question. nothing. You'll be surprised about the data we chew up in Nigeria. We are chewing up uh, 125 GB in less than 12 days. In Nigeria, they, 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 some people are chewing no, data and it costs mean, money. No, 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 no. See, I, I subscribe for 55 for a month, mm. but it lasts only two days. Oh, okay, okay, no so, problem. So, so in a month, I may be using almost uh, six hundred to one thousand. Yeah, I we really appreciate that. You know, you are really making a lot of sacrifices to be here. You know, you are a family man. You don't have to be here, really. That's just my, I thought you wanted mm. to ask me a question. So, when are you when are you sending the next data? Um, I think I don't have the means to send it yet. I think I have to go through Doctor Damages to you. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I will go to Dr. Namaji, then he will wire it to you accordingly. Um, so, Actually, yeah, it's, it's at least one can do that. The question really. I want to ask uh, AY. AY, do you have any personal thing with uh, Obi? That is so funny. So, I think the problem most of you guys are facing is see, is the moment people don't tow your line 100 percent you think no listen to me in mm. all the candidate peter b is my best i i never i never hide that but i'm not a blind follower i'm not an obedient i'm from nigeria the day i hammer on tinubu people with oh he doesn't like Yoruba. i don't care you can say what you want to say in 2015 I supported Buhari. When Buhari started messing up, I, I went hard on him so badly. People were asking me, oh, it's because I'm not from the North. I said, listen, if you were there when I was supporting this, my, you know, my friends, my friends, some of them are watching this program. Me, I'm from Nigeria. I don't care who is coming. If it okay, okay, tomorrow, okay. You know why I asked you that question? I've never had you spoken evil uh, against Ubi. You Let understand? Me Let me finish. Hold Let on, me finish. hold on. Why I asked you that question is that uh, Mr. Passat, okay, um, he made he made a statement. He was accusing you of being against Ubi, you know. And I want to hear from you. I don't I don't hold anything against anybody until I hear directly from you. Bro. That is why I asked you. Do you have any personal thing against Ubi? Rat Ratios, ma. Let me be clear to you. Are from Edo State. In Edo State, we don't we are not loyal to anybody. If you ask Ed, ask, go talk to people from there. The support you see Edo people gave to Peter Obi is because they believe he can get the job done. Did you give him the same support? Forget about what Edo people, you in particular, see, did you give see, him that support? See, I gave him support, but I was listen, let me tell you. 
People, oh my know, God! Let me hold on. Did hold you on, give him on, the support? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm again. I'm not. What's in what sense? You are not on grant. You can't vote. I can't vote. I, I secondly, listen to me. Listen to me. People. No, I know. You, I know you cannot vote, but you can. You can hold influence on, people that are going on, to vote in Nigeria. On, hold on, hold on. You can't force me. If I tell you. I'm not scared of anybody. If I don't want to support Peter Obi, I'll tell you I, I'm not supporting Peter Obi. No, 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 no nobody, nobody is forcing you. I have reservation about Peter Obi because Peter Obi, even the job he do he did in Anambra I was not hundred percent convinced. But I still believe Peter Obi was the best candidate out of all of them. So did you support him? Support how to go and vote? Did you influence people back home here to vote for Peter Obi? Influence who? How? But you say you're from a do state. Are you telling me that every member of your family lives abroad? OB, but what, what I'm telling you is what you are expecting me to do, I'm not a blind follower. I'm from Nigeria. If it will be the president today, I will say the same thing. I'll be attacked. No, no, no. You've not answered my question. You've not answered me. Like in the I US. In, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. In the US, I, in the, I this thing, can, can, can you allow me to say something? Let me say something. I am not in the America. I'm not in the US. But I have my candidate for every election in American pre uh, presidential election. You understand? I do also tell my friends and my clients, like my clients, most clients I have are from a do state, Bini people. Most people I build houses for in Nigeria, they are Bini people. I'm telling you, I have few Igbo clients. So I always, when I discuss with them, they are very friendly with me. E each time I discuss with them, I always tell them why I prefer Republicans to Democrats. Okay? Irrespective of the candidates of the Democrats, I will tell them why I prefer uh, Republicans because they stop slavery. The, the Democrats wanted slavery to continue because they were enjoying it and making oh. their billion. Okay, that, that is my point. So to for you, AY, did you support Obi? Did you influence anybody in Nigeria to vote for Obi? I told you, hold on. I told you I supported Obi. However, I don't have I was not having full confidence in all the top candidates, including Peter Obi. I have accept that answer now. What what answer do you want from me? I have my reservation. If Peter Obi call me, I'm going to ask him those questions. I have my reservation. Peter, Peter Obi, I said, Governor, I was not convinced with this level of his work in Anambra. Were you I, in Anambra State? Come on, man. During the time he was. Anambra. I know what is going on. I have I have friends in Anambra, not one, not two. And what what was what was the result? What what did they tell you? What was the information it, they passed to yeah, you? Yeah, it, it was an average governor. It was an average governor. He performed like an average governor in Nigeria. So there was just man, if you ask me, if you ask me too, we should start deceiving you ourselves. Know, the, the problem with the problem with this election is that you want me, you want APC people to follow your campaign. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, why, 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 why? You are getting it wrong. I never want you to follow Obi. I asked you a question. You said. You supported Obi. I said, okay, man. that Rattos support. Man. What was the yeah? Rattos man, if you ask me to pick today, you said pick between Peter Obi and Dave Omahi. I will pick Dave Omahi. I will pick Dave Omahi. I'm not even gonna like pretend to you here. You people, I, you, I cannot support what you supported. I believe Peter Obi was the best candidate in the, in the election, but I have my own opinion. I'm not gonna follow you, bro. Even if you are my father. Hold on, know, hold, hold on, hold on. Can you tell me the indices why you are you are going to vote for Omahi instead of uh, Obi? Based on performance of Dave Omahi in a boy. What did he perform? Can you mention the things he performed? Hey, why? Don't don't answer just question. You know, his as his mind made up already. You see that kind of see the line of pressure. This is why you want to debate. Do you, do you think that if APC are the are the sensible candidates and they they campaign yeah. based on issues? And, and and what object what they have to do for the people do you think that um it, it could have won straight away like that who the reason why we want to be there is because he won he won free and fair you understand but if campaign was done based on issues if apc had a very good candidate you understand a, a credible candidate yeah. and it's a campaign based on issues, listen listen listen, listen listen in the history in the history of the modern nigerian politics they were listening in the history of the modern Nigerian politics, 
There is no politician today alive don't that have been, okay, that, 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 listen, don't listen, 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 you, you, uh, don't put in me, let, let me explain myself, excuse me, excuse me, can you, can you listen to me, can you listen to me, this is my time to talk, so give me my time to talk, let me talk, let me talk, it's my time, there is no, there is no governor in the, from 1999 to date, no Nigerian governor, ex-governor that have a clean record that did not steal the state fund that did not embezzle that did not earn gratuity or pension okay that's it mention that person if, if not to be yeah. uh, he left surplus now if i'm not mistaken he left the surplus. No, mention, mention. what do you mean hold on hold on hold on um Onumide. if somebody huh? does something good don't just say oh what else are not nobody, nobody can break the record of good. Good. I said you know? it's good. not not for this time nobody can break the record of Yara, Yara Dua was collecting pension. Obi never collected any pension to today. Collecting pension is not a crime, guys. Okay. It's, it's not a crime, but he was contented with what God has given to him. So he didn't want to cut the profit This is what Peter Obi has a lot of good stuff. I don't want to go there. Let's not go there. You know, Peter Obi was not collecting pension. That is a big one. It is a good thing. Is there every state governor that was collecting pension? Let's let keep the sentiment and face the issue. You said what? Is there every state governor that was that was collecting that was collecting pension? There is no governor in Nigeria that does not collect pension. Yeah, Mention you are, that person. You are, you, are, you are a liar for that. Show us the record. Show us the record. Please don't call me a liar. I have not called you a liar. Please. Show us the okay. Record. The, the, the be be very careful of your words. Be very careful of your words. You can present your word without call, without making a name, okay? Look at the issues here. Dave Umayi is talking about. Dave Umayi built an airport. He built a university completed. He built standard hospital completed. That's right. Come on, let's 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 build. Do you do you know how much? Do you now know how much? Do you know how much? Excuse me. Do you know how much that uh, a boy state is indebted? But there was a, there was a development. Is what kind of there? development are you? you know, what you know, kind of development are you talking about? The the high the, the highest illiteracy in the southeast mm. is from a point state. Mr. Rachel, highest Mr. Le, highest Mr. percentage Mr. of illiteracy. Mr. You are demonstrating the same thing here. You don't know how to finance infrastructure. You don't even finance infrastructure with your cash. You borrow money Which? to finance infrastructure. But at what cost, buddy? What story that? What okay, what those infrastructures? What are they needing? The airport. How many people travel to a boy state? What what does that airport generate? What what income? What income does that airport in a boy generate to a boy a boy a, a boy indigenous? How does it increase their their their, their entirely generated revenue? It's a matter of source. When Jolly my army was building here for the Taraba, people say, "Hold on, hold on." The way look at the traffic in Taraba today. Due to insecurity, that people are using Taraba airport. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, buddy, hold on, buddy, buddy, calm down, buddy, calm down. Why did you say you don't fund infrastructure with your own money? Why, why did you say, did you say that? Because you, I think you could use either way, loan or your own money. Yes, yes. The, the reason is this: when you when you have a when you have a big project like airport, Capital and when project. they give you the bill for it, they might say it's going to cost you like let's say thirty billion. Yeah. You don't have a capital sitting down in place for you to execute such. What you do in that kind of project financing is that is that you approach the capital market, or you approach a bank, a consortium, and tax that on your all revenue. Or the sorry to accrue over years. Or the sorry to stop. Not only in Nigeria, mm. even in America, even broad. in Canada, even in UK. No, because you, you know, I'm no, speaking from the standpoint of money. I did the element of money. So hold on, uh, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah, no, so are you faulting? Yeah. Hold on, are you faulting a bit to be for? Funding project with capital uh, that's money which that he project? has. No, project? nobody's faulting. It's no, righteous man that was. Then, then why? Then why? Then why, why was the point raised? My answer to that question. My answer to that question. That, that, is that, that is why. That is why mm. I'm upset with Nigeria. You understand? It was between two men, Peter Obi and Tinobu. You understand? It was who was the better candidate of the two, based on the issues. 
I would have voted for Peter Obi, you understand? But if they have brought in a credible candidate, a credible that option, would have, we would have made it issue based. So I would have been able to challenge Obi in an umbra, this is what you did, this is what you did. Why did you leave 20 billion without doing this for these people? Without yes. doing that, without doing this. That, that I would have asked that question, you understand? Yeah. But who was the better of the two that we had? You understand? I would have gone with Obi mm. if we made it issue based. But when you now tell me that he's the only candidate who can solve the problem in Nigeria, I mean, forget that Bokom. Mm. No, I don't, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't think they said that. I don't think anybody said that. I never said, that. you see how you guys misinterpret somebody. I never said Obi. Listen, I never said Obi will solve the, the whole problem in Nigeria. I never said so. I said his record, when you come to Human in the, uh, Development Index, he had the best in the whole Nigeria. He got international award for it. There was or no was other ISIS. governor that had that award. Or what's ISIS? Or what data? That's, that's human. If that's hold on, hold on, hold on. That is based when they say HGI is based on certain data. You know that. Yeah. So the and if he's right. able to win it no, no, uh, internationally, so, so, on data of people in Anambra, don't just quote anything. Yes, of course, not by not on the nation. Is the is where he governs. What the human data? Hold on, sorry, sorry. Let me go to let me address this because we have to be fair here. We have to be fair. Hold on. We have to be fair here. You don't no, expect no, no. him to get HGI for Zamfara. Um, no, sorry, Ed, 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 we're going to come to you. That's, so, that's not what we are saying. This guy, you know what Righteous One is saying? He's trying to take a national comparative analysis. He's not talking about an opera anymore. Yeah, but is that not what you are saying they, they are doing for no, Chinese too? No, he's, compa he's comparing, he's compa he made AY to compare Omaki with Obi. And I'm telling you that like, we are talking about infrastructure at this point in time. At the point in time, somebody has a capita. He kept so he kept it somewhere. And somebody has a capita. He's investing with it. Do you know the danger of having the money today and not investing it and keeping it in future? You know the depreciation that, that, that could come into it. Yeah. You know the you know the, mm. you, you, you know the consequence of infrastructure delayed. Mm -hmm. On human index that you are trying to advocate for, I, I think I, I there's argument there. The today, and you don't there, there today, is argument and there, but, but hold on, hold on. You can't just build stuff for the sake of it without just because you have the money in your pocket. If he decides that okay, some other person may find the money useful to use, then he can pass it on. It's not. It's, it's not like he's stealing you know, it. You know, no, we're not saying political leader is. Oh, 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 please, please, uh, please, my brother. You, you can hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what I would have done with that kind of money? Do you know? What I would have done with that kind of money? Do you know? What I would have done with that kind of money? Do you know? What I would have done with that kind of money? Do you know? What I would have done with that kind of money? Do you know? What I would have done with that kind of money? Do you know? What I would have done with that kind of money? Who is that? If you compare it with other candidates, he might not fear. But that doesn't mean we should celebrate the drink, drop the money. Righteous man, righteous man. Mm. See, uh, what uh, what people are saying here? Peter B said. This, uh, this, 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 my brother that said what? I was lying. What's his, what's what's his name? I know I, I took that back. When, hey, what's your name? Righteous man, don't dwell on that. No, what's, your what's, your what's, your what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Body, body. Righteous man, righteous man. Please, what's your name? What is your name? Body. Body, 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 eh? That's my body, 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 yes. body, body. Okay, body. Mr. Body, respectfully, I address you, and please, I know you are a matured man. I'm ready to don't, go. I don't listen, listen, I listen to me. Listen to me. When we are discussing issues, yeah. you should minimize. You should know the type of language you use. We are not kids. I, I don't think they are older than me. I already apologize. Okay. Okay. I let, 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 say, righteous man, leave that. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. Um. Let's allow. Let's allow. Um. Others to come in because no, well, the others have not come in. Ed, Ed has even left. Hold on. Ay. Ay. Hold on. Hold on. Let others come in. Yes. All these people. I'm going to send you people backstage if you don't allow other people talk. What is uh Mike Hoggers? Yeah. Go ahead. Can we change the subject, please? I think we just yeah, I want to change the subject to something more. But before you change the uh, subject, I've been told that uh Russia's man identified the drug dealer amongst us. Russia's man, you confirmed that. Um, uh, is, <laughs> I noticed again, um, I don't know if it's okay for me to point your attention again to I think it's again, it's my opinion. 
it would be best to use uh, the method Time of in. yeah. Because for example, I'm not even talking on my behalf now. I mean, you took, you took my questions. I was asking, I was asking Russia's man a question. Let him answer now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll let him. I just you know, what, what's, what's the question, please? Jago is right there. He, I don't think he has said a, like one word. I know, I know, we know. We are going yeah, to I think we should go back all the way around. Like, so please, what, 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 bro, bro, John, 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 what, 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 what was your question? Your question, please, your question. Jago is a gentleman. Jago, go ahead. No, 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 if you want to be fair, your question. When Jago wants to be wrong, Jago can be wrong. Jago was putting fire yesterday. Jago was pretty fire. I saw him yesterday. Yeah, when Jago wants to be rough. Yes, John, 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 please, what was your question? John, what was your question? John, what was your question? We are gentlemen. We have to let the gentlemen say something. John, what was your question, please? Can you hear me? What was your question? They said you identified a drug dealer. Is it true? Me? Yeah. So Who is the person? Who says so? <laughs> it's the comment section. Don't mind them. Those, those are people. Um, so, Ed, Ed, um, um, I think I, I want to change the topic to proper Sunday lessons. You know, we either go religious or historical I or love. scientific. Or we, we do we want to talk about um, where we are in 60 years? Because we were talking about it yesterday um, when we talked about um, Chongqing uh, in China, the advancement. Or we talk about whether um, uh, do, do you have to be Muslim, Christian, or um, uh, Jewish, or or religious to even go to heaven? Do you have to do be that? Ah. And, uh, you don't start another uh, war for father. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to. You know, all these people that say we have to be certain things to go to heaven. That could be an interesting discussion. But uh, but uh, poor father, before you change the subject, yes. I, I will, I, I've been here for about an, an hour and a half or so, maybe, and, and I was listening before, and I've heard, actually from the beginning, I've been listening to the two gentlemen who were speaking. And a lot of times when you invite guests on, I, I don't actually come onto the platform. I just listen from the outside and check out what's, what's been said and how the communication goes. Um, but I must say, man, the level of entertainment for real, Nigerians, we're the best in the world. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's unbelievable. I, I just decided, I just started just laughing because it's just oh, to I need to today. He allowed back yeah. <laughs> with, I just let the best go, in man. the world, man. I mean, even Pansat, mate, it was impressive today for me. I yeah. really enjoyed um, his his uh, assertions and his off key manner and his guitar playing. <laughs> it, it, it's all been fantastic. Um, so yeah. I, I just wanted to say that before you change the subject. Yeah. yeah. Let me leave it there. <laughs> I, I I was enjoying it myself. That's why I didn't. I couldn't interject. You know, mm. the Udumi day was all over every case. Every man, just run run every run day run is a firecracker, man. I was ready for Passat. <laughs> Are you <laughs> ready for Passat? The problem is Nigeria is missing out from good governance. You know, mm -hmm. Nigeria is really missing out. The, the country is a but Nigeria is missing out on you. You best go home and give them firecracker in the air. Go back home, ah, mm -hmm. they will finish me. Uh, oh, father, maybe, maybe, yes. I, 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 maybe I will follow what Femi said. Like, maybe we should start taking a turn, like what Femi suggested. Like, mm, I, I guess when we go in the religious route or uh, the that's development that's route, that's another contentious um, or we go, or we go through uh, development route, then where the we talk about or we, we explore the world and see the area. Um, that are most developed and see where we fit into this and what we could do to catch on the, the fastest route. Um, I think uh, because there's a lot more technology available now, we can't necessarily use the timeline that other people use. Maybe we could get there faster because we have access to technology and shipping, yeah. internet and all the rest. Do so you, we could look into do that. You, do you mm. not think that we keep banging on about uh, our refineries, refineries, Yesterday, I was reading something. In fact, I, I think I'll just try and share the link to the private chat. Maybe everybody will look. And uh, apparently, Toyota is developing um, a hydro car, and they are very, very serious about it. And yet, we are still talking about um, fuel. 
and mm. and we know he hydro has, car with, with water hybrid, hybrid yeah, or water. electric car what no water hydro is water you know hydro really yeah hydro yeah, or hydro yeah. i would read it sure. and <laughs> well, hydro car is that have you got it? let me check with toyota <laughs> yeah, well, we're pushing that. for electrics we're yeah. pushing for electrics what, what, what as well in the uk in hydrogen aggressively yeah. pushing for Let's electric water. But yeah. all the all the fuel engine are being phased out and all the the mail oh you mean hydrogen uh, cars okay Hydrogen, yeah, yeah, that's it's, what it's hydrogen, mm. not, not hydrogen. Yeah, yeah, the the exhaust is water that comes out. Um, but no. hydrogen goes in, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I don't know whether that is going to fly because people are afraid of hydrogen. Seeing the, the Hindenburg, uh, this a crash where the whole balloon just came down on fire, so nobody wants yeah, to but, go near hydrogen. But that, is air, but that is the air we're talking about cars this time, it's mm. cool. Yeah, it, it, it should work, but there's a lot of option for battery now. There's so many things that are going on in battery research that they feel like they because hydrogen you still have to fill it up, you have to go to station, use gas. Yeah. But, but, um, this in a battery you can just swap the battery and battery you can charge it too. So, I, I don't know, I guess people can decide why they are they turning towards that is because it's readily available, it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. what? It's cheaper exactly. and readily available. That's hydrogen and, and, and sunless. So that's why they are telling mm -hmm. Which one is hydrogen? Are you talking about hydro? Yeah, hydrogen gas. Yeah, it's, okay, it's, a, photo, it's, a, it's a catalytic process of separating hydrogen out of uh, water. So you, know, mm. it's you a, have to create it's, hydrogen. It's been for a while. So. Mm. But it's interesting that it hasn't taken off all this while because it's been around for a very long time. They even using them on air, air vehicles like drones and stuff like that. Maybe because the fuel itself is not something you can use on a large scale where you just have them in every kind of station. It's not like um, um, uh, this is what they call it um, electricity. It's, just a work in progress. It. it's still a work in mm. progress. It's like, or you know, at the point where we are talking about solar, we got like, say, oh, we mm. want to run our plane on solar. We want to mm. run our car on solar. So, you know, it's, it's just a matter of time. We get it. Check the, check the private. You track. know, the value yeah. that you're talking about, the most yeah. least before please, please you billion. guys should remember to fix your electricity first before we talk about so the, yeah, exactly it's, it's, one of the one of the biggest um, um what, I, what, I, what I have information here about the hydrogen car it says as of 2021 there are two hydrogen cars publicly available in select markets the toyota mirai and the hyundai nixo the hyundai yeah, one of them. All, all of from 2016 to 2021 Hydrogen yeah. combustion cars are not commercially available. Yeah. What is the main problem with hydrogen cars? Unfortunately, the hydrogen fuel cell offers few advantages over battery, with several deal-breaking disadvantages. The problem that show no sign of really becoming being overcome include cost, lack of infrastructure, and relative inefficiencies in delivering hydrogen to customers. So it's not hey, hey, that see that that is the last point I wanted to add because so, if you want to deliver um hydrogen to customers, you have to create a whole load of infrastructure. But electricity, almost every home has it, and the system is already built into our systems. So I think that's why using battery is gonna win out. Uh there's solar, there's all kinds of sources of electricity out there. So it's just to get a more efficient battery. At the matter of fact, the batteries are quite efficient. They can some of them can even go further than um, this in petrol. Uh, this yeah. can go. So I think that is going to win out uh, this in over time. And I think that is what is pushing um, hydrogen uh, further back because you have to have a whole set of um, ecosystem for it again. And like you have um, the gas stations and the likes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so, but in Nigeria so far, what I've noticed is that um, I, for one, wants to move to solar. And uh, but I don't see a lot of wind, um, wind turbine in Nigeria in Africa. Yeah, in yeah, terms of, they see, one, they I must say, one, you know, a lot of these things, a lot of these new technologies that they're coming out with, as interesting as they are, they're not sustainable. None of them are sustainable as gas and crude. None of them. For they're now, all why? Going, for they're all going right because I tell you why. The, the the you see a lot of what's coming out of Africa, uh, uh, um, Congo particularly. Uh, with the cobalt that is used to to uh, gain battery power, yeah. this this battery power still needs electricity, and electricity today today comes from fossil fuels. So you know we have to under you know these wind turbines. Do you know how much a wind turbine costs? Do you know how how uh, um, sustainable it is? How expensive it is? I mean, the, all these things they they're not sustainable. 
but from people, what I got, we, we, uh, from what, what I got, it uh, is, we, uh, sorry, yeah, what ahead. it is, is we we like to hear of something that sounds sustainable. Awesome. But when you enter into it and you you understand what's going on, you find out that actual in actual fact it goes right back to um, fossil fuels again. Um, so as mm. much as it seems sustainable, they're not sustainable. Uh, None of them. You, you know the, you know these um um. Uh, these windmills that you, you just uh, mentioned about, yeah. have you, you know, uh, in Germany and the Netherlands, they're very big on it. Mm. Yes, there may be. It's but then what, 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 what percentage does, does it contribute it, to their national grid? Reading percentage? the text. Let me, let me you read the text. It's still, it's still something. It's, it's no, an alternative. What, what percentage? That, that's what I don't know. You know, because don't know. the only way, the, 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 there are two places where comparative advantage, which is hydro and gas. So yeah, we, we have that we have that in abundance. Yes, we leverage on that. We we must for make future, use of it. We can't just be looking at what other people are doing alone unless we really do look just, into it. it it's fanciful. It's fanciful and nice and gleaming and clean. Those and all these involved people would want to talk about how the environment is this and that. But once you understand the expense that's going on yeah. to put these things in place in the first place and how long they actually last, wind turbines, they, they last about 10 for 15 years. And what they cost to put one up is in the billions. It's not in all these things. Um, that I'm, I must say, I'm not sure it's up to the billions um, because the components involved in wind turbines are basically steel, carbon fiber. Um, I, I, can I ask you, uh, forefather, have you yeah. ever seen a wind turbine have you seen one yeah <laughs> if you're okay. in the UK, you have to have seen it though no no I, where, where i saw mine was in spain and they are they are so massive oh, yeah. massive things and the the, the wind it, to get the, the the turbines going round is it's a lot of wind power that they use and then they they have a life they have a lifespan where they're no longer functional they don't mm. go on forever and ever like a, it's not you uh, um uh, i think it was tone that said windmill windmill is completely different from a wind turbine a windmill oh, yeah. can go on for as long as oh, you want it's, mass it's bigger than uh oil. Yeah. it's massive it's massive it, these, these things yeah. are I, I personally i'm not sure why wind i don't see any component in wind turbines that prevents them from yeah. working well, wind, wind, wind turbine work on the you. same principle yeah. with, 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 with the hydro Buddy, I have a question for you. I think yeah. you can enlighten us. So I don't the, see anything. Sorry, opinion. sorry, for father. The um contract President Bowari government gave to nah, Simon. Come on, man. You're taking electricity. us out again. No, it's hey, still why? electricity. You see, that's what I'm, I remember. Oh, what, what, what yeah, Simon contract. What's going on with that contract? What what it's still working progress? They, they're still in the country, they're still installing transmitter all around. Uh, transformers all around. So they're when still, are they thinking where? When are they thinking? Where are they? There's are nothing they, like that going on. Nothing like that going on. You can check. I think. It, I think it's happening. I, I, I check. I check that it, out. It's still, it's still going on. Um, I, 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 I did. I did check it I, out. Um, it's still going on. You were in the country. Yeah. You know, I, I, they are things, the even country. even Lagos that you're talking about. They install most about two big transformers. Okay. Somebody say uh, Olu Olu said they are working on it. Hopefully, it's going to help. Hopefully, so, it's going to help. You know, it's still working. You know, you know, the, you know, the, issue is you know the issue most time is this. All those stuff, they are not kind of stuff that you go to chef and pick up. I know. I it's know. a long-term thing that you have to enter a contract with a cement. They manufacture. They come around the inch store. So, and it's because of the COVID of the thing. The plan change. I think they're supposed to deliver everything by 20... 2026 or thereabouts so they have to change the the deadline all over again so that's all i know but it, it they were supposed to, you see you see what you see and this in uh, body you are really really slick there what you did there that is diabolical um like, <laughs> yeah because the two end the data that you gave the two ends seems to be conforming to what you say is trying to give people the impression that something is happening and mm -hmm. it's all right. That's what my point. So when they were supposed to deliver it was 2025, which means that if if it wasn't if it was I said the plan changed because of COVID. I said I don't Hold know what's going on again. Hold on, now. that's I'm my not point. For the government. Hold on, I know. Oh, my uh, let me make my point. Here. <laughs> are you read it now? I just read it once that I remember. What are you telling me? So <laughs> it was supposed to be 2025. You told me it was 2026. No, that's then what when what what they postponed it to yeah. was. 2030 
I said, and, hey, I said, I don't even know. And, and my, yeah, but you say you don't even know. That's one that I find strange. That you, how can you know 2026 and you don't know the, the when no, they pushed it? No, I said it's changed. I don't know where it was. Okay, it's all right. I will let I will let I will leave that. Um, so the point is that that was very frustrating for me because don't prosecute me for that for father. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Sorry. Um, see, the the thing is, um, at least you were sharing information. To be fair, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so the point is that um, I was frustrated by it mm. when I saw it because this is the kind of stuff I it gives me trust issues where our government say they want to do one thing, they just keep postponing, they never do anything, and it it just confirms. I, I don't like my suspicions will be confirmed. It just confirms my argument that these people are just coasting us along. They are not looking to govern us. They are not looking to fix anything. Now we are going to be looking to 2030 again. 2030, who says that something else is not going to happen? No, I just hope by that time, all the mobile power plants and all the plants that the states are building actually kick in and start generating power for them. Because, But if that is national grid, how are you supposed to transport the electricity? No. You know, that's what we've been no. advocating over time that like the state should come on board since they, they since they signed that deregulation law for state to like have their facility in place, generate power. I think they are like doing that. that. I think Abuja is building its own now. Um three hundred the federal government of the thing. Will it, but it, who is gonna fund the gas company? Who will it, fund the state's power project though? You know the state have to source for funding. It's you very know, cheap, they, actually. They, they, it's not that expensive to to, so, you know, to get power. I don't know why states are always struggling with these things. It is doing something along that they sign they sign an agreement of full mm. which I saw online. So so that this because, this is because, let, because let's go back sign, to the topic uh, that we were discussing before we get drowned into Nigeria. You have to sign power purchase agreement. Uh, uh, this uh, thing. What do you call it? Uh, they call it purchase agreement, something like that. You have to guarantee. That yeah, yeah. Produce, uh, you go mm. to buy it. Yeah, purchase order, isn't it? Or oh, this is a purchase, uh, you know, uh, kind of it, uh, power purchase agreement, something like that. Because yeah, the state have to guarantee that. Oh, we're gonna produce. Are you ready to buy? So, yes, you, you have to, you have to be, um, you have to give them a reassurance, legally binding, legally reassurance binding. that you're gonna buy it. You're gonna so. buy it. So, um, yeah, this is the um, German energy, um, uh, this is the kind of uh, energy mix. chart, isn't it? Yeah, energy mix, yeah, key term. So, this is renewable, which is quite significant for the for the four percent and look at the wind one offshore wind and onshore wind so all together is about 20 percent of german energy supply solar 60 something percent that is a lot i uh, know 10 percent is that that means 10 percent so of uh, uh, this in the energy production uh, in germany so it means solar is kicking in the renewables are kicking all these are renewables really all these ones are renewables so if you put all of them together that's what they amount to so they are they are kicking in and their prices are coming down and it's just going to get better and better and I, I don't see any reason why the only reason why i don't like it for nigeria because it involves a lot of technology some of all this stuff they are doing it involves a lot of technology and we don't necessarily have the relevant uh, skill sets to start mass manufacturing all this is yet so our priority is generating electricity so yeah. whichever way we can find generate it we should do it from coal from gas from anything so we have to whatever we can get because we need that electricity to be able to industrialize yeah yeah the so um, give me nuclear power plant who cares and whatever they can do build man, it like anywhere it just ahead. do anything I, yeah. I think this, when i say technological revolution we need like 100 percent of everybody needs to start learning technology if you are going to screw school you have to learn technology because it's the language of the future forget it and because we are behind we need to move headlong into it and this is the thing that it doesn't cost anybody anything to do even i don't know why they don't do it it doesn't so, cost him anything. So, so, so that is the other thing. Look at Hope Uzodima, for example. He said mm. he wants to send 4,000 people outside the country. <laughs> if Hope Uzodima has said, I'm going to build an ICT school or whatever he's going to call it, in such mm. a way that he will train the youth in technology, even if they have to work remotely, like build a village, ICT mm. village, I would have supported him. Now you are talking about you want to export people to... To, to, to Europe and Canada, so they will be dancing. They want to go to Europe. Come on, man. <laughs> what does that say about him? What does that say about him? You know, that's it's a that's there is a breaking news. I don't know whether it's true. There is a breaking news. Um, okay. I don't know how true it is. Yeah. What happened? Uh, that uh, Mr. President has uh, approved 35,000 naira increments. 
No, twenty five. Just for six months. No, that, 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 that was part of the speech in the morning. It's twenty five thousand mm -hmm. added to their for six months. Thirty five. Twenty five thousand era across board. For, for federal workers. It's palliative now, palliative increment. Yeah, for six months. So. Uh, I mean, there's actually an update that after the meeting with the labor unions, that it's not, there's no cap on it. There's no six months cap anymore. Oh, no, six months is the day. The only thing that happens that like in the speech, maybe the lower cadres. That's what no, no. The, the, That's what I'm telling you. But there's now they, they, they remove the cap from the lower cadres. Yeah, the, no, no, no. Yeah, so and then what, he, he said that He's not. <coughs> he's, removed, he's removed that cap for six months. Pending, there's going to be discussions. Oh, pending the determination yeah, of the minimum wage. So, so he's removed oh, that okay. six months. Yeah. Okay, pending the determination well, of the minimum wage. But the strike still going. Is, is the strike still going? No, to they suspended the strike. They have. They have to make so the agreement. So the in, in, in so they come back tomorrow. Yeah. To, oh, they did suspend it yet? Yeah, they're they going to be having no, their meeting. They have to make with their whole gas. They're going to have to. Yes, that's how we discuss with them. But but the increment is not guaranteed. You can take it away anytime. No, right mm. now, yeah. if you go, the update is that they've agreed yeah. that there's I'm no... Just, I'm just seeing it on TV now. I'm just yeah, right, watching right, it on TV. Right. 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 There's no six months limit after they're meeting this evening. Yeah. So they're still going to continue mm. discussing. That's the update. They were able to fix the minimum wage. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. But but, 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 but so is the minimum wage that they are uh, they are looking to go on strike for? No, more than that. You know, there are a lot of issues they mentioned. A lot the, of issues. Okay, can you can you enlighten us? Uh, bullet point it, please, so that people understand what they are actually demanding. You know, the labor talks about the uh, the the issue of the minimum wage, which is called as a result of the removal of subsidized inflation, and uh, the issue of the refinery, and uh, the issue of the CNG. Those are the issues that they they discuss about. Okay, so they want the refineries to come online. Oh, definitely, definitely. Mm. Maybe they should be focusing more on that and uh, than the minimum no. wage talk. Uh, you, you know, but, but, people but, but, have to but, 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 but you people have to die before the refinery start working. Because the refinery one is going to ensure that um, spending is going to mean anything. Because all the salary you are paying, but, if the refinery is not working, it's but, just but wasted. don't you think that the money we spent on the publishing of these refineries would have used it to put new ones up? Maybe true. Two. Um, uh, yeah. if you, I'm if not you, sure too. Right? Is that going to spend 17 billion? I don't. They spend about no, three or four no, billion. No, no. billion. We are serious. It may not be the size of that Cote spoon. I think it's the largest in Africa. Or hey, the largest. Yes. They are collocating another information I heard. They are collocating a new one inside the Portaco refinery. Oh, see, I'm not surprised. With is that what they are doing right now, or they are looking that's to what do that? that? Yeah, that's what they are. That, yeah. They are, that's they are, what they are doing now. That's what they are doing with the public courts. So, and the deadline. I'm not surprised. Public. I'm not the, surprised. The deadline is, what is it? When is the deadline? Uh, the the that of uh, public courts will come up through by at least fifty percent by by December. Mm, that's what they said. Mm. Yeah, and Dangote right. should be on this month. From what they said, that it's going to start receiving call oil. Dangote will be hot this month, but it's not going to produce. But, uh, but, but uh, let me access. ask this question: Is Dangote is Dangote not a businessman? Yes, of yes. course, of course. Okay, is he not going to make profit out of his of investment? Yeah. So why yes, are we not believing that the refinery is going to make uh, make? Uh, yeah, the issue is the landing cost, the insurance, shipping, transport. So those those stuff will be half. Yeah, that might you be know, uh, Yeah, so that that's the but, area we are looking but at. But when they interview the group managing director, he said that they are going to sell based on what is obtainable from. Uh, yeah, selling based on the market does not mean transport costs. The, if, you are, if the price of a commodity is a nine, is ninety dollar, if you, you know you are, you are not you are not you are not you are not body body. You are one of those other people that sometimes drive me crazy. You know, like <laughs> I will sometimes make me want to kill lawyers and all that because they always try to confuse ordinary people that don't understand the topic. All you could just tell him was that the cost to import was not going to be removed, yeah. and uh, Nigeria owns twenty percent in there. So okay, yeah, you, yeah. Uh -huh. that's a big. It's really simple. That you just started okay. compounding with big, big language and all that Sorry. stuff. <laughs> okay, he's not uh, a, a lawyer. I know. No, he's not. not a lawyer. He's just a, a, like he's like one of them. He, they use professional language a lot. Because if yeah. he's a lawyer, it's part of the problem of Nigeria. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what day, what day is more than a lawyer? Nigeria is more than a lawyer. The gas can provide more than 50% of our electricity. If Germany can be oh, generating... Oh, you, you made Dangote. 
No, no, I'm saying electricity. That would be generating mm. electricity as well. Be generating I'm power. quite surprised. CNG is quite effective, you know, because recently yeah. when I was in Nigeria, they I was spending about 60,000 a week just to power some generator. Oh, and when they combined it to uh, CNG, the price completely plummeted. Yeah. I, I, I was surprised. And it appears the generator is working better, which is weird. And it's um, a great job, you know. If they encourage uh, this company, yeah, but, but to converting it to can, converting it now is one hundred and twenty-five thousand. Yeah, I think yeah. By the time you buy the cylinder and everything is in the yard, it's going to come down with time because there's more push on it because you know. Mm. Um, so, you know, oh, you you will save the money within three months because you know I, I, petrol is so expensive now. You save the money when you go yeah, to CNG definitely. within three months. Mm, that, that was what I, I observed anyway. So, so in terms most, of uh, most, homes, most homes in Lagos are no longer using generator. Most homes. Really? What are they using? What are yeah, they using? Yeah, yeah. If no, if Nepa sees this light, you just sleep like that. <laughs> I thought God. you were going to say solar. <laughs> I, th I thought that's why you wanted to oh, bring it like you. Solar is not a renewable source. No, no, they can no. turn into solar. No, I mean, but, 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 but verify. You have, you have people in Nigeria. Verify from them. No, no my, my past is just like now. Nobody. It's just few people. My brother mm. uses solar in Lagos. People. He uses solar in Lagos. People mm. use solar in Lagos. But you can use uh, uh, solar to power your uh, AC. Yeah, some of the stuff. Yeah, the big items. Are, uh, yeah, yeah. Can. Uh, we have some AC that runs on solar. Right? I think we, we, we need... Um, no, those ones doesn't last. That AC we, that we, runs on we, solar we, doesn't last. Okay. We, do, we don't manufacture solar. So that's another problem. No, we don't manufacture solar. We have, we have, we have no solar in Nigeria. We have solar in Nigeria from China. China. That is doing it. Uh -huh. You know, most, most solar in Nigeria are from China. We have a company oh, yeah. in Maduguri right now. That is there. Oh, yeah. In Maduguri? Yeah. Okay. That manufactures solar panels. Panels. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do, do you have your name? Is that a Chinese company or uh, yeah. a Nigerian company? Oh, it's a Chinese company. Man. There you go. I think they said there is one in Sokoto as well. And you know, they, you know, they partner with, with, with Bono State government on the issue of uh, uh, the, the electrification of their, their new uh, school infrastructures. Mm. So mm. they started. But, you, but is it is it's interesting? Why are they locating all this? Uh, no, is it because they have more sun? Is that the idea? Uh, they, you know they have more sun. You, cheaper, cheaper. And, and, yeah. Why the know, land? One of the problem of uh, Chinese uh, solar panels, it doesn't last long. That was one of. There's a building <laughs> I finished uh, two years ago, and they did the installation of this uh, Chinese panel. That's, that's it didn't last up to. That's you know up to eight you know, months. We, we, it's we not about problem. hydrogen gas. Like, sorry, sorry, know. sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. I think uh, uh, Rajas Ma is reporting something that, um, you know, as stakeholders now in Nigeria, you oh, know, okay. I, I have to watch out. <laughs> what are you saying that solar right panels? Solar one. panels normally have been to last 10 years or so. Are you telling me yeah, solar panels are taking that in Nigeria? A building, there's, a, there's this building I completed. My client lives in Germany. I completed it about two years ago. So he, he did the installation of this uh, uh, solar panel. And I think it was a Chinese own. Though my friend advised him to buy India or Korea own, but he went for the Chinese own. After eight months, the whole thing almost it just packed up. Thank okay, God that but, but we know why it packed bomb. up, though. Is it the solar panels, the inverter, the so, or something? The so, no, no, no. The solar panel. Um, the solar panels pack up. I've yeah, it's like developing it. moisture. The, the issue is that uh, the moisture the inside. Is the, is the yes. of the That's interesting. The coating of the surface, and secondly, the connection, the way they do connection in Nigeria, they don't usually hurt it. They don't usually yes. hurt it. So no, whenever no, there they is, are, they whenever there is a thunder storm, there's a strike. So it's usually no, crap. but you can you can't build you can't build without acting. They don't. Uh, I've, I've seen I've seen cases. Uh, like uh, and uh, you know what I've seen that it too. Dangerous. I I saw it happen. How many? Uh, how can an engineer build? How can an engineer build a house without acting? I mean, you'll be you surprised what some Nigerian engineers are up to. They had to go and pull oh, the wires oh, out oh. from the ground and had it replaced in this in, in Nigeria. It's it's awful. So and it destroyed a lot of electronics. Yes. What the uh, engineer did. That is that's suicidal now. You you don't try it. Dangerous. So he kept like, blowing this uh, up. Nobody knew that. And nobody knew that that was the reason why it was happening. It was yeah. some other person that was coming to fix electrical stuff said, you know, ah, you this know stuff is not supposed to be like this. So. You know, in the, the construction industry, like industry now, mm. in the construction industry now, we try to advance. 
and we no longer use chambers to channel waste. We mm. don't use chambers again. That's old method. We use mm. nine point. We use nine point nine uh, charisma pipe now. Okay. So anything, even if you so, throw a head of a new bomb baby there, it will go. flush without creating mm. chambers. I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's okay. what we're that's what we're using now. Okay, I think we have to look. I guess I, 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 nobody well, has told me well, that Nigeria's well, solar panels are failing. Like it's you know we, we can't really as in you know nothing's absolute in engineering. Worry about situation. Worry mm -hmm. about something blocked. It. How, so, how, do you, how do you remedy that? Since we don't have a chamber, that means you have to break the open. No, 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 no. The size of the pipe is called nine point nine. Okay. That nine point nine is as big as just look at this circumference. Okay. Yeah, very big. So the, the, the design is that this, you have only one chamber. That chamber is the one that flow from up down to the bottom of the house that they connected to the soccer way. And you know, in Nigeria now, we're no longer doing the old soccer way. We do yeah. what is called digestive soccer way. Mm -hmm. You know, it lasts for hundred years. You can't really? evacuate it. Yeah, it dissolves oh. and turn to dust. So all those mm, things- That's there. interesting. Yes, you, know, you, you, you don't work on those. Uh, oh, is he, is he That's a new word. I've never heard of that. Not just man. What you did know, you call it? What what kind of soccer way did I did you call that? Digestive uh, soccer just, way. Hundred years. Yes. So, yeah, but does this thing the whole yeah. place up? Do you? <laughs> no, no, no. See, the moment you you construct it, okay, you can use it to generate gas yeah, and supply gas. Is he underground yeah, still? Yeah, it's underground. Yeah, it's underground. Okay, that's interesting. You dig, about, mm. you dig about 10 feet or 7 feet, depending on the size of the house. Okay? Then after it, you cover it. It goes, it undertakes some processes, you know, channels. But after mm. it, after you put the chemical, there is a required chemical, the, the percentage of chemical you need to bury along. So by the time you start using the, the soccer away, for 100 years, you will not open it because it is free of odor. Rats and all these rodents cannot inhabit it. Uh, all these cockroaches. That's it's not free of odor. So, so where did this technology come from? Where did this technology come from? It was developed in Ghana. It was uh, developed in Ghana. So mm. they started, you know, using it. And then they started exporting it down to Ivory Coast, from Ivory Coast to the Republic before it got to Nigeria. Oh, you just put the chemical once, like once? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seal it up. At least I have done in Lekki. I have done in... So, um, so I... Can we call it again? I, digestive I soccer way. Digestive okay. soccer way. Yeah. Or is this I just man, are... sorry. Are you are you a civil engineer, a beauty engineer, or an architect? Which one are you? What's your special? I've told, I've told you what I do. Is a contractor. Okay. okay. It's called biodigester septic. Bio yeah, yeah. yeah. Who told yeah, you yeah, that I'm a contractor? <laughs> <laughs> you are the one that you are the one talking to. I'm not even contracted to find out. You know what? You reach out to righteous man. I beg. I'm okay. just saying, you righteous man. Booty. Don't come after me. Booty. Did I tell you I'm a contractor? Let's uh, <laughs> see. So God. I need to protest. Okay. I need to protest for father. Jagun, Ed, and Femi. We need to give them space to speak. Honestly, you know. <laughs> well, oh yeah, that's true. Actually, that's Femi true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know. Um. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they yeah. will not. Yeah, um, Ed Femi. will not interject to save his life. Ah, bros, I, I tell you this, eh? Ay, for this uh, level, we did fifteen hours yesterday. Oh, we we need uh, to conserve our energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fifteen <laughs> hours, man. And then we so went to. I uh, look, righteous man. Let's let uh, Ed come in and uh, Femi come in, please. Uh, we oh, can we carry can, on. Let 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 Femi come in. Ed Ed has been busy, you know. It's really okay. <laughs> it's preparing for tomorrow. So where where do we go with our um, energy supply or technological innovation? What would you advocate in terms of to short circuit some of all these problems you keep having? You can come with electricity because electricity is one of the biggest problems we have in terms of technology, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, one of our uh, probably in the top three, maybe mm. in relation to security. You definitely mm. have to put power. 
because yeah. it doesn't matter what other thing, whether if you like, we should build all the roads and railways and power yeah. is is a crit is of critical. In fact, it's a security issue. Yeah. <laughs> let's, just, let's just be that mm. way. Now, um, of course, you know where I align most times, so it's not perhaps it's not going to come as a surprise to you if I go the technology route. Um, if there's anything that gives me joy about Nigeria is actually Nigerians. So let me just oh. emphasize it. It's not Nigeria per se, but Nigerians who again continue to hoist Nigeria's flag single-handedly. Nigerians mm. are they're just suffering no support from anywhere. It's just, it's just that Nigerianness, that's I can do spirit like ah, we go die. Oh, <laughs> now, so I just want to be clear there. Now, I I did tell you, and eventually I'm I'm still I mean I'm still writing my scripts on my YouTube channel because I it's I just I want to just spawn out things that have to do with a lot of things that are actually going on under the radar in mm. Nigeria when it comes mm. to technology. We think we, we there's things that are going on, but oh anyway, now um so I want to dispute uh two things. Please, real quick, I'll try to be as short as I can. And I'll veer off a bit before I come back here. Now, um, I just want to correct something. And I'm not one to try to name names. So I'm not going to name names. Um, I took Social History of America intentionally when I was doing cl taking my cl classes in when I was in New York. And I can tell you okay, unequivocally that it is not actually true that Republic, the Republican Party of today is not the Republican Party of yesteryears. Yes. Let me just correct impressions now. Yeah, that's true. I forgot. I forgot to correct uh, that. That's true. That's I just, right. I'm not going to go into much of the, the details. The cross aisles. Exactly. Those, those, those exactly. sneaky. Those sneaky and there's Democrats. a lot of things that happened before, even prior to Essen Hours time, that made things change. So, even with Robert Kennedy, a lot of people refer to Robert Kennedy. What people don't realize, and I didn't realize this until couple of years ago, several years ago back, that even uh, the Kennedy family, their their background, even after the proclamation, they're still held slaves, but that's a topic for another day. So I just want to be careful. Be careful about what we think happened and the reality of what happened. There's a reason why yeah. Blacks vote uh, tend more towards Democrats. So I just thought to make that known so that we very, very correct. I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to point that out. I forgot. Now, Anyway, so I just deviated. I just, I just deviated. I didn't have a choice. The other thing I'm going now I'm going to speak to technology again. I'm going to keep you as brief as I can. Um, there's another uh, thing I want to debunk. I grew. I've said this often. I was born in Kaduna, and I lived there for a good chunk of my life there. So the Nord. I'll tell you this for free. Northerners are some of the smartest people. <laughs> I went to school with them, and I saw, in fact, some of the most celebrated people I know are Northerners. When it comes God bless to, you, Femi. I am, I'm not, this one, has, this is not sentiment. It's what I yeah. experienced. Yep. Yeah. I, I just, and then when right. it comes to technology, mm -hmm. this notion that, um, because again, I think we should be careful with our sentiments. I have sentiments too. Okay. <laughs> this notion that Northerners and technology it's a lie, you. Mm. Big lie. Mm. In fact, in Kaduna, there's a there's a hub. Maybe when my channel comes in, a lot of people will be shocked. Mm. There's a a, big, a major hub called the Colab Hub in Southern Kaduna, where we mo I'm, I mostly grew up. Kawo, uh, Mado Belu, uh, and uh, Mando, and so on and so forth. They, they, they're doing something. In fact, when you, then they, they have another major up in Josh. Keep in mind, I'm not mentioning Abuja. They have oh. another major up in Josh. Uh, Josh, sorry. In Borno, irrespective of uh, what's been going on for the past two, three decades, mm -hmm. major technological ops that they have there as well. well now, same thing in Kano. Same thing in Kano, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Same thing in Kano. All this truck, this big truck I've been manufactured in Kano. Yeah. There's some I do not know, and I wouldn't claim knowledge to. So the, the reason why I keep bringing these things up is that these things are happening in spite of ourselves. So again, it's 
um, just for my own sentiment, I would not like to hear things I know that are not true being said yep. and not say anything. Now, um, the reason, again, why I keep apping on technologies, um, as of today, uh, there's 61 female startups in Nigeria that I would enjoin people to look out for. Uh, 61 females. In total, I think as of tonight that I'm speaking to you, there's nothing less than close to 500 plus ops, startups. including startups, including the one uh, owned by Boston Chijani. That's why I am hoping, I may not be a fan of Tinubu, but I'm hoping that guy doesn't disappoint people like us. Mm. Yeah, I heard much about Boston Tijani. That guy is... If Nigeria doesn't, or if he's able to navigate the, because there's too much politics in Nigeria for crying out loud. So I hope he will be able to like, so, so because if there's one thing I feel would, would take Nigeria out of the doldrums, it's ICT. Nigerians are doing amazing things. And if power, can, oh, Nigerians don't need too much to survive. Everywhere. Even the government, even the palliative, and this is where I'm going to land. Even this palliative, and um, body, you can dispute this as well. Because I uh, no, no, no. <laughs> even that palliative, you see, one of the reasons why I had a major problem with this palliative thing. Look at what is happening now. What are, what has happened to that palliative thing? It is better that same money if they had put it to you know do certain things. Yeah. Isn't exactly it what than, I agree, honestly. Exactly agree. what I said. You know, you know one you know one thing about, about us is that we like token. Forefather was asking today, you know, righteous man came with, with the breaking news that like 25,000 per month for the next six months and they're about. You know what? Labor are happy. They've gotten their own token. Nobody's thinking about development. If you say, if you go to them and say, oh, this is not necessary. Let's all, let's, let's just, let's be hungry for a while and, and think about development. People will say, oh, do you want us to die before we start having those stuff? So that's our pain. That's our challenges. So how do we navigate it? So that's we we, we need a, a a leader that can like communicate and give us the idea of oh, this thing we deliver it in six months. I remember the point in time during Gwari's regime, they promised to close Abuja Terminal Dan, Abuja Runway Dan, for I think for one month or the other. I'm not sure if I'm going to collect. Yeah. yeah. The whole nation was at the edge. The old politicians in Abuja were shouting. And they mm. deliver that wrong way within one month. That means we are determined that we're going to put our refineries in place. We're going to put power in place. We can do it. But mm. one thing I've noticed that our people are not serious. I work in Nigerian system. I know our attitude to work is not good. Mm. Nothing to write home about. For father, if you yep, go ahead. ahead. If you ever work in Nigeria, you understand what Buddy just said now. The attitude to work is so bad. To be honest, I completely changed mm. my I work in the north, work. I work in the south. I completely changed I'm, my attitude I'm to, to work, work when I moved to Canada. <laughs> then they and, treat the job, they, they don't treat the job well. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah they don't they don't want to work. People who just want money, they just play they People don't want to do anything. I, I've noticed that in Nigeria. Oh, Everybody seems right. to be on, oh, on looking for a way to escape somewhere. To change. And, and to buttress on what Femi just said, right? I've, I've been saying this here. Sometimes we actually underrate people in the North. The North, some of the smartest people I've seen, my friends, they mm. are from the North in Nigeria. The, but that does not um, defeat the fact that the South are more educated in terms of percentage. The population, yeah. The population, but in the north, they have a lot of smart people. People don't even know. That's why when I hear people making generalized statement, I'm like, yo, chill. Hold I don't even know. understand that why people just do that. Because people even when I went the, to Zaria, even, like, even like, people that are selling <laughs> uh, sugar cane, I, I've seen somebody selling sugar cane, and in one hand, is carrying his uh, mobile phone. And he, yeah. they don't, he, he, I don't know why they assume that people oh, oh, there don't have that to is why I said you need to you need to speak to everyone, you need to listen to people mm. to understand what is people have come here every time they make stop, let's stop making all these statements. We have a lot. Mm. What for me, another thing for me said I love 
He loved Nigeria. He believed in it. Sometimes I will see that, bro, no office. Which company you won't go for this America, for example, you will not meet Nigeria. And so if you don't meet Nigeria, there is a problem. I'm telling you the fact. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have I have gone into meetings that um, what did this person they do here? Nigeria everywhere. Like, bro, forget it. Yeah, it, it's but, almost like uh, uh, that country in terms of you know you know the time I use I said, uh, every every rock you turn over in Nigeria will show up uh, around yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. They are, they're everywhere. And uh, but I think yeah, we are there, you know, but yeah. it hasn't done anything for us as a people. You know, and, the uh, oh sorry. The, yeah, yeah. The, I think my concern is that yesterday by the time we finished discussing, we were very, very a kind of I don't know. We are not like downbeat, but the um, uh, the kind of uh, outcome from the discussion is indicating that we are really in a bad spot here. Mm. And Nigeria has not built anything. We've not really built much. Yeah, you see Lagos Island shiny and all that, but nothing as sophisticated as what other people are doing out there. And our leaders are not necessarily challenging us to do anything. They don't. Look at its speech today. There's no message really. It's like, oh, we are diverse people. Some people say we are going to break up. And that is it. That is the whole message for the country. <laughs> you have to have an energizing message that says that brings people together and want to work together. How does yeah. that bring the north, south, east, west together? It doesn't bring them together. You're just That's giving them platitude. Problem. Yep. You see, what, what's fascinating to me about, especially in terms of energy at the moment, for all that we need, we have in energy terms. Um, I wonder what people think about the pipeline um, that's going uh, to Algeria, Morocco, and going to enter into Europe and taking away all of our gas at the moment. I, I, I'm, whilst we don't we don't even own that pipeline, it's the it's the ownership of Chevron in America. Um, the, the gas will be entering into Europe as a whole, which will be giving them even more of a flexibility with their uh, geopolitics in yeah. Europe and, and further afield. I, I just wonder what people think about the fact that we, at this moment, are not using our gas. Because gas really is the most affordable and the, the, the what would push us. Right Over the next 10 years, we, we could solve our problem with the gas that we have. Um, and I just wonder what people think about that. You know, like what I, oh, sorry, like what I, forefather, like what I said in the past, like, you know, we were talking about the infrastructure. The infrastructure delayed is like you postponing the evil days. Yep. When all these companies were coming, our government never make an incentive to them for them to venture into gas. We can defer our profit and repeat the future. Allow this company to invest in gas. We have almost about like close to like six to bay, six thermal plant stations that were built over other passenger. That was supposed to be powered by gas, mm. or Shotoko, or Lukula, stuff like that. Mm. None of them have gas pipeline passed to them. It's pathetic. In the recent history, I think I've mentioned it to Hold on, the, none of them is functional, or what? What are you saying? They have to transport gas to them with a the truck. Okay, I see. That's, that's the issue. Instead of us to have an instrumentalized pipe mm. taking gas to those stations, that's the cheapest. That's the easiest. Mm. You know, I told you, like, the one that Jago was talking about that we have right now is the KKK. The one that is coming mm. from Niger Delta, from Kogi yeah. to Abuja area and the likes. That's why, that's you know, Olumide mentioned one power station being built in Abuja. So that, that will help. And these guys will help us in our industry as well, around Kaduna, Kano. I think that's the, f I think in the recent history, that's the first intervention of how do we use our gas locally on industrial base. Mm -hmm. So yeah. our government has to like look into that, seek investment in that direction. I think that's that's what the idea of Tinubu yeah. having. I, I, I think part of, the, part of the problem with gas, I, I think for energy generation, I think they should have done it a long time. You are correct. The, the, the issue with gas is that they, I think they see it as a kind of dirty fuel from the point of view of- No, um, it's a clean because, fuel. No, it's no, a I, clean yes, it, fuel but that, that's my point. It is, it is. Uh, but the problem is, like, pet, for cars, because most of the petrochemical that we 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 you we get is not necessary to for energy generation. You see, so they look at it from the point of view that oh, for a car, 
petrol is what you should be focusing on for industry diesel so they don't care too much about gas as much they are flaring gas they've been flaring gas for decades in Nigeria. They, they they are not decades. tapping into you, you it you know the issue is this we are yeah. even more of gas station than crude but yeah. our petrol than that's not right and which we is another gas. crazy why, why how is it that we have so much gas you know even and they didn't decide to just build so many gas power plants and even those just places, they, even those places they, pipes find, they, find, they find oil in the north much mm. of it are gas so yeah, it's, uh, crazy. Nigeria, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy what our Nigerian government, the, the kind of um incompetence. Look uh, which, yeah, this is beyond incompetence, uh, we all know that. It's um, exactly oh chimps back. So, 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 uh, uh, oh, sir, before that. Pansat, is that Pansat or oh, yes, yes, Pansat, before, before he says this, yes. I, I just wonder what happens to the gas master plan of March of, of 2010. That's oh, Jonathan. I remember <laughs> uh the Griffiths. Yeah. Yeah, the Greenfield. The Greenfield. It's all front. Welcome back, Tim. You know, you remember. You see, see my problem with with them. They will tell you. They'll you, give you, you hope. Know another issue that led us. But it doesn't amount to anything. We are going to pay something like twenty six billion to to a particular company. I don't know if you remember. You know, most workers, most staff on NMPC were in machine fraud. Even Ministry of Ministry of Petroleum. They are still on the case. In the, their, their, their arbitration is still on the UK. Hmm. So what about the AKK pipeline? It's still ongoing. They're still working on it. They're they still working on it. it. Yeah, they're taking it. Yes. All right. I wanted to say something. Uh, I posted a video on the private chat for you, um, to Niger, because about ten or twelve years ago, I I I saw a program where Germans came to the Sahara Desert to, and they had the schematics. They had everything ready to go to tap energy from Sahara Desert and uh, to Europe and sell it in Europe. And they were going to give a few countries uh, around the Sahara Desert uh, some energy. You know, in like in 15 minutes, the Sahara Desert produces en enough energy to uh, power the entire Africa, right? So, but anyway, I came across that, I think it's the same video. It's about five minutes long. It's from Dutchville uh, Channel. If you yeah. could play now, because that's what we have to do. Uh, this channel is too hot. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I don't what want do to mean? flag Dr. Damages. Uh, they are too hot. If I was able to crop the video, maybe it would have worked. But if I play okay. them as it is right now, they are going to flag it. And uh, Okay, but <clears throat> so you know, when, yes. because that's the kind of stuff we should be talking about, right? That Sahara Desert has our energy. I mean, in terms that, of what? Sorry, sorry, Pansat. What? What? Yes, what where is the energy coming from? Sorry, it's coming from the sun, from Sahara okay, Desert. Okay, the it's, solar it's, energy. Okay, okay. Right. So they came there to steal it. I mean, they had it all done. The schematics. All Africans have to do just to take that stuff and do because they were eventually stopped politically. That's the only thing that stopped it. But that that's over ten years ago, a decade ago. If Europe had the Sahara Desert. They wouldn't need anything else. They wouldn't need solar. They wouldn't need wind. They wouldn't need fuel, fossil fuel. Problem is that they cannot politically take it now. So some countries around there were able to successfully stop them. But that that um, uh, German company, they had it done. All we have to do is to take, since they were going to steal it from us, we should just take that schematics and implement it. That's all we have to do. And every African country will have power. I'm talking about it's ready to go. So I think we, we, there are a thousand ways. That's the problem with our countries. There are a thousand ways we could become prosperous. The problem is our leaders are standing us down. And if you try to force uh, yourself to make it happen, they will, because of the system that has been put in place, it will try to frustrate your business. And this is the problem with the environment that we operate in. And we have to shift it. I think... There is an element of it happening sometimes in Nigeria, like during the time of uh, Basenjo and maybe Jonathan. You you saw a bit of innovation, and Nigerians started coming back home uh, to Nigeria to start investing. But Obasanjo insecurity tried. got out of control. And pardon? Obasanjo tried. I yeah, he, he, he did try. People were coming. People were beginning to come back to Nigeria, uh, but insecurity but, started. But, 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 through the roof. Yeah, go ahead. But for, 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 but you know that uh, I mean, in my own view. Yes, these things are not rocket science like uh, Pansat has just presented. Personally, I think our problem is 
we have a um what's it called what's this what's that small generator in nigeria what's that small generator there's a thing that is my neighbor, that is, I pass my my neighbor <laughs> mindset we have a, a that, I pass that my is the classic mindset. mindset of nigeria that yes it. not just nigeria well okay nigerians in this instance so wh why do i bring that up it looks, looks to me that we always want to have one very prominent person standing out in the crowd of a community to whom everybody goes to. It's very prominent in the north, but now, right now in some parts of the east where it wasn't the norm, we're sitting to see elders who are offended when they see that a pansat, this pansat of um, Nkechi's dot son has suddenly become very successful. So that mindset doesn't let our leaders realize that they owe it to their people to develop in the environment so that we have more people pulled out of poverty, pulled out of economic uh, want, and there is general prosperity for everyone. People still want to be Christmas, they gather in their house and they're the ones feeding everybody. I don't understand how people feel happy about those kinds of things because to be honest with you, I don't like it when my cousins come to beg me for money. I would exactly. rather give you money, go and do your business, succeed. Sometimes people come to ask me, bros, give me this. And I say, how much is that thing you're asking me for the term? It's okay, I can't give you. How other way can you succeed? It's okay, I can go and do this business. How much is the business? Then I give you half or a quarter of the money. And not because yeah. I can't give you everything. For instance. Sometimes it's for you to go and think out of the box how to make the yeah. rest and succeed. You, you saw see, how... You saw how this is Isaiah, Isaiah all the time. Who let, is, let, let me who share this. Uh, this is concerned thing. about security, about energy. I give him a, a, a video to play. He blocks it, right? Hold on, I'm not blocking it. This guy, I'm not blocking it. I don't want to. I don't want you to come and. I don't want you to come and implode the Doctor Damage's channel with the video. With the with the video from this thing. So this is the project he's talking about. It's a desert tech project. Let me just uh, flag it on the, that's it there just to be sure Panzer, i hope you are seeing oh, it did i take that the videos Chama, this is so uh, yeah yeah dw so and um so it, they are talking about infrastructure to they want to build in the desert see Somebody africa has more than right, abundance of sunlight due to contract contract issue contractual issue mm. that they couldn't agree so and this technology is not even that advanced. It's basically mirrors. Like if you are made, because there are two types of solar for, uh, energy, isn't it? There, there is a vot uh, photovoltaic one, and I think the other one that has to do with thermal, uh, this thing. That thermal one is basically mirror. You know, create a mirror and point it in a, at a focal point, hit um, some kind of um, uh, liquid or gas, and use it to drive a turbine. And you have um, uh, this in uh, electricity. So it's not that advanced. I, this is I why uh, I want you to. Uh, the issue here is this technology, right? But maybe yeah. you could get permission. I want. I wanted this thing to be played because it's very, very important. The reason being that they yeah, thought yeah. Why they can not? steal it. They've already made the schematic, so the technology is there. And this is over that's, ten that's years that, ago. That. Right? Will you right? be there ten when YouTube? Will you be? Are you going to be there when YouTube no, sends us? I'm saying try to get permission to play. Don't do it illegally. Get permission to okay, play, good. but it's important in the sense that everyone can go watch it privately. You oh, they go watch exactly. it privately. We, want, we, want, we want our. We want people in Nigeria who are in the office. This administration mm. that we have now, or other Africans, Ghana, they should know that this technology exists. All they need to do is to work together. And tap that, uh, that's a big resource. But now, let me address something you were talking about behind my back, which was um, that they're not, they're this uh, nirvana of uh, uh, technology. Now, when we say the people have to embrace technology, it doesn't mean that you, you went and installed satellite in your, or you have a good phone. Okay, like uh, Rudolph was telling me to bring iPhone. Uh, Look, you have to educate uh, te uh, uh, technology. You can only attain it by education or by training. Even if you don't want to go to college, you have to go to some kind of technical school. You have to you have to have that in mind that you have to educate a lot of people in that area, right? You have to embrace other Nigerians. 
you cannot be an island. You can't isolate, for example, the southeast. You build trains in your area, or you, like you say, oh, the north is doing good now. Oh, look at uh, you were naming some cities that have some hub, right? That's not technology. It doesn't have barriers. It, it, it's scaled. It's scaled. Even for the entrepreneurs who are going to deploy it, you need the entire country. That's why Nigeria is uh, uh, the giant of Africa. Is the population of Nigeria. They have to, everybody has to be educated to a certain degree, but you also have to train people in professional, like China did. You, you, you always hear talking about how well China did. Do you know how many people China sent over here in the United States in the 70s and 80s? Engineering. Hundreds and hundreds every year. Uh, you, go to, uh, you go to the campus and they're in, in the tech department. They're in the chemistry, yes. physics. So, it, right. it, 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 but that was deliberate, yeah, and he did it so that they can tap into them uh, later. But right, let me we send on. them to come and settle here. Right. So uh, we and they, yeah, that's right. But you, well, who's gonna go back to Nigeria for you, right? But again, they, it they, those people they, they put something together to attract people to come back, and they they're secure, <laughs> right? You have to have security. But, now, but again, why don't we? Yeah. Let, let's even, say the, land. Let, let's even say the security is there. Right. Um, I'm not sure how many of us followed the um, Jonathan Goodluck um, uh, uh, power uh, plan when we had, uh, is it Professor, is it Dr. Barton Naji as the Minister of Communications? Sorry, Minister of Power. Oh. Uh, yeah, yes. Barton Naji followed. All right. Yeah. So you know that guy resigned the job and left. Yeah, they you remember? Him out. All right. So no, they was, have nobody ever found out why that guy he, left he, that. He job. had dry interest. He was he know why he resigned. That is wrong. You know why he he that, that is wrong. He didn't have any interest. Hold on. I know where you're okay. going to. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. So and I'm and I see, you know, there are times when I, I want to respect this, you know, like forefathers said, we want this, we don't want anybody to come and complain about this uh platform and pull it down. But let, let's put things in context. Dr. Barton Naji was already in that industry. Mm -hmm. as a private person running his own company in Aloji in Aba in Abia State before that was the basis on which Jonathan went and pulled him first as an special assistant to advise him and then made him minister so he had no interest as we were saying so he had clearly done what you are supposed to do when you have a company handed it over to other people to run and left to go and become a minister now he was bringing Manitoba Energy from Canada and some other institutions to come and run the transmission. Transmission. Yes. Mm -hmm. To come and they run that. We don't have the capacity to do. But we had some politicians, some of them that they had just given license in this current dispensation to come and set up a refinery who did not have the competence to go into energy and were asking for license. And, and he refused. For you. <laughs> he refused. And, and then they went to the presidency. And the president called him and said, okay, cut this guy some deal. And he told the man clearly, how am I cutting people deal in an industry where we do, where, first of all, we are, we are lagging behind. We don't have internal, local competencies. We need to bring this, people need to go and learn first. I can't give a dango to, for instance, a license in power. He has no capacity. He hasn't. So those were the people who went behind and sabotaged him. And then what they realized when he wasn't playing ball, they said he had interest. And the man said, you know what, guys, I'm beyond this. I already had this, my company running before I was made minister. So take Chief. your ministerial appointment. Chief. And he went Chief. back to Chief. the job. Uh, Chief, two two quick questions. For you, yes. you know, that was the exactly same thing that happened to Ugozi Uyola when she was minister of finance the first time. They pushed her out. So President um, Obasanjo now changed her ministry that was why she resigned. So they push her out of that. That, that is not even correct in that instance. That is one of the areas where I point. Obasanjo is my man. He's one leader I love. And you guys know I always mention his name. But mm -hmm. Obasanjo was culpable. They were planning for um, 2003 elections. Or was it 2007 elections? 2007 elections, yeah. And they needed her to do budgets from where PDP would pick up money from. And the woman refused. So that is why they went and told her nanny, and then they came yep. up. And the next thing, you know, what the man did was he, he yeah. knew she was doing a good job. He respected can you, her. Can you tell he us the status? He changed her portfolio. Yeah. Uh, yes. You painted you painted Bartina has been a successful engineer in area of power generation. What's the status mm -hmm. of Jotama today? Jotama is doing well in Aba. Are you there? 
Jotama is not doing well. <laughs> Go and check. Is is they are, they are just coming back to business. Right now, well, you guys, I don't know. I don't want to argue, yeah, I don't okay. argue that, but, yeah, but it doesn't take away that at the time when no, no, he has the expertise, I yeah. respect him for that. Yeah, he has the nobody, no, he let has the expertise. Nobody, I like the sound. Oh, let me let me oh, just, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be coming in now. Oh, I'm, I'm, he will spoil I'm, the whole I'm gonna be, now. I'm gonna be done because I can't get my, I can't get my videos to be played, okay. I can't land. But what, I, what I'm going to say, then I'm going to leave it again and then come back again, right? To okay. give you guys a chance to, your youngsters, you, I know you want to talk about sexy stuff. But let me tell you something. Nobody in the Southeast is supposed to be doing any good, okay, in business. We're yes. under attack. Maybe you guys don't know. Some of you from other parts of the country. Maybe what, you don't what, know. What, what about, what None about of them. Pass out. Uh, what about that is part is of what Nigeria's what problem. problem. Now, I'm telling you this. That is not attack from the federal government. Pardon? Uh, what what about this guy? Innocent. He's got a big contract yeah. on the federal government. And, uh, hold on, let me tell you. Innocent is supposed to be a giant in Africa because yeah. he's manufacturing automobiles, right? Yeah. He's not, uh, not only are the Igbos actually not patronizing him, probably because his price is too high, but the thing is that Nigeria pretends the federal that government is not yeah, yeah, a little bit. But listen, 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 but, but before no, now they, they were not recognizing him. Chill, let me chill, let me chill. let me let me land even, and then even, let me land before the peak of the land before we go to tangent. You know, uh, of, buddy, of, I, 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 I left you before to okay. make me stop, but it doesn't mean that I cannot stop you. I can stop you. I, I want to do it with courtesy. Let me land. Okay. okay. Uh they count all this time for me. I'm gonna take about three or four minutes and I'm done. All right. What I'm saying is that let's not pretend. Southeast is under attack, especially from the Yoruba, actually. It's not this time. Oh, my thing. God. The, the, the okay. Yoruba, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hassan, you, you need to stop. You need to stop. Ben, I leave it, leave it. Ben, I'm too busy. He's just going at people right now. Let me land now. Let me land. I said, you are just coming here. You just say stuff. That's not true. Right? You poke holes in it. Oh, my God. If I say something that's not true, I leave myself open. You just poke holes in it. If I say something that's not true, I leave myself open. You just poke holes on whatever I said. Okay. Yeah, but you just Even generalize the, a look, people just now. For, forefathers, not only I, your voice really irritates me. To be honest with you, okay, you just me. I don't care. You just let generalize some people just now pass out. It's not. You just say true. Yoruba people are attacking Igbo people. What Yoruba are here. Oh, they will attack. I people. know now. Then if you want to right. say it, oh, come right? on, man. Yorubas are here. Jagon is here, and others. Oh, Femi God. is here, right? And others. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying to you, mm. we, because you know what. The, the Yorubas doesn't belong to only to the Yorubas. The Yorubas belong to me too. Right? The house house belong to me. So the point is that Yoruba. I am wow. now he pointing out now. what is the problem in the country. I'm going to tell you. Somebody like Innocent barely survived the court action that was going to take, take him down. Okay? He actually won the case. He's supposed to get money from them. But still, it doesn't matter. He's under attack. They tried to actually put him in jail. Right? Mm. From a 19... 19 something deposition or something, right? And they, they would conspire. And is the Yorubas that are doing it to the Igbos? They're competing with them for, for what I don't know what. They don't want Igbos to even have a train, they don't want them to have a seaport, they don't want to have anything. No, no, no. So that, that's just no, that's the truth now. now they're being manipulated. That sound let, right let me land now. Poke holes when I'm done. I say two minutes. I mean, it's by observation. Everything I'm saying is by observation. Google it. In the last administration with uh, Buhari, they said, oh, the, the Jonathan administration had a lot of evils. But if you look at uh, uh, Jonathan's administration, there is nothing out of the ordinary. The, Jonathan picked even his INEC chairman naively is from the north, right? You look at the ministers, it's even the, the, the divided. They voted for Buhari based on the fact that he had some evils in his cabinet. Not that they're overwhelming, it's just that they had some. So we'll go from frying pan to fire. So now what I'm saying to you is that unless you address these issues, how are you going to fix it? I just said to AY that people in the North should go to school, embrace technology. If we go and we spent 400 billion naira to run an election that requires beavers, that's technology. We don't want hand coalition right you have don't turn it off don't turn it off and say you're embracing technology you're not embracing technology you're being stupid 
That's why we spend up four hundred billion dollars so that the elections, the, the the laws are passed. You have to embrace that technology. Now, can anybody sabotage the technology? I, you know, one of the things that makes me sometimes I just shake my head is that the takia you're doing is so childish and so stupid. Anybody could do it. Anybody could do those things you're doing to your fellow countrymen. They're just not doing it because it's like unbelievable. Now, this very thing now that came back to Nigeria was after Jonathan. Pre -Jo uh, before Jonathan, we thought we moved on. You're never going to have a Buhari come, in, come back into office. A despot, a coup plotter, right? That not only didn't go to school, he doesn't know anything about economics or anything. But you've already mean, and you said you love technology, you, 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 you go to school. How? How are you going to like, you go to Kano, you, you mentioned a Kano. The, the, the guy you have as a governor is taking money, watts of $100 bills, and putting his babari guy, and people are videotaping, the contractors, and, and they show it to everybody. But you, you're going to go arresting everybody else without arresting him. And you, you make him the APC chairman. But you go and uh, you, you pick up uh, a Mayfeli. That's, kid that's terrorism. That's kidnapping. That's what you're doing. Everybody can see, but we can't do anything because you've got you've got the army, you got everything. That's why no oh. everybody just ignoring you. Oh. They oh. scared. I said, I said let, me let, let me land. Let me land, please. Let me land. I, I thought you said a few minutes now. You've yeah, had a few minutes already. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me you got a few minutes. You can't go forever. I, I didn't Thank land. you, Pansa. Thank I, you. I you managed to attack the Yorubas in the It's now everywhere. You are attacking everybody, Pansa. Confidence. Confidence. You see, when there's a direct attack that affects people, they have a reason to react. Yes. Uh, mm. I think it's very unfair when you just generalize. Um, I was glad, even though I wasn't on the panel, at the time when someone i don't know who exactly it mentioned the fact that i think one of the uh, the invited guests i think mentioned mm -hmm. even in the west um it would and body even though i don't agree with body a lot body i i i think i've listened to him enough to the point <laughs> where he would agree with me that he, even he has mentioned it maybe softly not everybody i Likes Tinubu in the southwest, Definitely. yes or no? And I, and I agree with yeah, you, Femi. Yeah. I agree with you. That's what the value of us. We got to be. I'm saying we, sir. Seventy percent of I dare say, Femi. Seventy percent of Yoruba people do not. Uh, uh, back yeah, yeah, and I would think it's that that high. We got to be very it, it careful right. when we make. I, I said it. I said it. I said, matter of fact, no, I said, said you. Femi, you know, you're not being fair because here is when stop we, we talk to people. No, no, I mean, no. Let me respond. Let me respond to Femi first. Let me respond. Pansa, before you respond to Femi, see, um, Pansa is my uncle, so I'm going to use a local nuance, Igbo nuance, to address him. Since I know he's from, he's an Oweri man, so I'm going to call him Nda Pansa. So under Pansat, you're going to try and withdraw that statement. I'm not I don't think it's man. actually. I, I'm not. A, I'm not an old man, and I'm not going to withdraw it because I didn't say anything. Okay, so listen, I, I, I don't listen, think it's fair to say that. Yeah, I don't think no, it's no, fair. listen. Hear what I'm saying. The issue I'm talking mentioned. to you. Let, let me say, if you think okay. this is an evil man talking, then you're going to be feel insulted. I'm talking to you as an African. Okay, I'm a no, pan Africanist. You, you talk here Please as hold as on. TV me, TV let, me, let, me, tell me, let me say to you, right? Stop the, TV the, way, the way somebody talks normally, right? I, for instance, yesterday I said, Dele Farah to me is the best Africa has to produce as a courageous. The be, if we have a president like uh, him, this is going to, because he is, right? Is he, is he Igbo man? No, he's uh, from the Yoruba. But he, that is a guy that's an up, 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 upstanding citizen. Right, so now when we normally do this generalization, we don't it's mean you that, that doing it. you are the one that just generalized. That doing hold, it. On. hold on, hold on, confusing Please. yourself. It's, man. A, it's a matter no, of speech, right? You know, Pansas, you know, Pansas, I can't learn. When none of your governor, you, you when none you of your governor, both in the east and the south, 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 they never covered using no song car. A king in Uganda have been buying no song car using it as his official bike. Let me let me try it. 
I'm talking to Femi for now. Hold on. So Femi, what, what I'm saying, I, I I I like Femi Even, a lot. Because... You know something that you are mentioning concerning the I think the what's name of this bank? Is it or or GTB bank? That's a business. Saying. Yeah, hold on, please, yeah. uh, buddy, please, please. Poke holes in what I said. Don't say something that silly, right? No, that's what you mm. said. Let, can I, you can, can you I, talk, all your talking point I will you you are are no, no, can, I, can I land with Femi then I, I, will, I will address your issue I'll be gone in a minute here what I'm saying is that Femi knows that every time I see him in a platform because he's also a freestanding citizen who's calling things based on true or false right or wrong at least I've said it seven or eight times in front of you that Femi yes you're a standing uh, citizen judging things by true or false body is not one of those a y is not no, a y well. is not no, one of those right so now what i'm trying to say is people. that normally when we talk when if if you, you if you're gonna prevent me from speaking this truth to the yorubas who are very my myopic right just because <laughs> A dozen or so of another insult, uh, another you, insult, right? If a dozen of you are on the right path, we have no. to bring everybody in or on the most serious we draw your support and go do whatever you want because our we problem. Let me let me let me we got a three stool, okay? You got the Igbos, yeah. Yorubas, Hausas, right? And then the minorities, right? So what they're doing, the Yorubas are conspiring with the Hausas, mainly Fulanese. To suppress the Igbos. If what you don't know that, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't want to, if you don't hear that, I, I don't yeah. want to talk about that. Because recall? that what was, what they, what you need to ignore Pasa. So what you're you saying is that you, 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 you you're, so you're doing it, but you're doing it because somebody did that in the past. That's what okay, you're saying. So so can we move forward? No, no, I don't want to stupid will be? Did you hear what he said, Tim and Femi? Did you hear? Oh, hey, remove password. Very good. Get him out. <laughs> you know, come on. He said, we're, we're, doing, doing, it, we're doing, doing it because the same issue. You know, what is happening with GT. That's he's what he was. He's having with First Bank. Are they killing? Is your Obama killing a Yoruba man? What are you talking about? I don't think it will help us. I don't know who is uh, currently the um, administrator right here now, but I don't think it will help us because. In this particular uh, dispensation under this election, Pa Ayuade Banjo has stood out consistently to talk about Pitobi. So, to that degree, I'm not sure it would be fair to say Yoruba people. And the leader um, from East is calling some people from another region, Raskas. Nobody Who? said anything. Afeni Ferry, like Afeni Ferry, yes, and yeah. many others. So, I don't think, uh, Pansat, in this one thing, I don't think I agree with you. See, can, I, can I just say something? There are, yeah, I've I, said it before. Oji Zokalu is my senator. He's my senator. He's from my state, from my mm -hmm. local government. Our villages are not too far away from each other. But if 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 Oji Zokalu is on the ballot in any political party, and you have uh, Dr. Akinwumi of the AFD on the ballot, there's no way I'm going to vote for an Oji Zokalu. Bam. Bam. I'm going to vote for the doctor. I'll, I'll vote for, I, I will never vote for Joseph Carlo. But sir, this is not about that. Please keep, keep, don't don't help me again. Don't support me again. Okay. From today, <laughs> when I'm on the panel, you do your own thing and I do my own thing. Okay. Jeez, I, I, that. That. I am your brother. You I, cannot I, deny I, me. It's not about Peter Obi. <laughs> Body just said, this is the so, discussion I want to have. He so, said, the, the uh, Ibos did it in the 60s, right? Therefore, what do you expect that they're gonna do it now in two thousand and? You know, you call you complain. You're not I'm going to fear. I'm going to fear your for you. That's what I'm saying. Go ahead. Okay. So what did what did the Ebos do in the sixties? Now you got to be quick here, Tono. You can't do that laboring. You got to be quick. Question, no, and be quick to because over. someone's gonna take over. Oh yeah. Tono, go ahead. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Is it fair the statement you just made and all that? Surely all you Yoruba people are not bad. There's some that. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Yoruba yeah. people. In fact, my best buddy is a Yoruba man. Right. I I refer to him as as my brother from another mother. I don't, exactly. I don't think this is fair though. No, no, but I didn't say what you, you think I said, right? I didn't say all Yorubas are bad, right? I I just okay. gave you that my best person, <laughs> Dele Farah to me. I mentioned the same thing yesterday. Those are not Yorubas. Okay, it's like a Yorubas 
they say uh Awolowo. Awolowo to me is not a Yoruba. Awolowo is one of our fathers. A, 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 you know, it's modern. So who are the Yorubas then? Who are the Yorubas in your eyes? Well, they are Jagu. <laughs> <laughs> Jago is right here, but, but listen, Jago, you heard what Buddy said, right? That is the key. Every, the everybody, reason, everybody the reason, heard what you what said. It, what they're you doing know, to the Ebos is you know, you, want you, 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 you draw comparison that doesn't make sense, piece, right? You said, you, know, you said, uh, did something you in said, the 60s, can so I'm not talking to you, you, you are now visiting the Ebos. What you talking have to do with that? They have nothing whatsoever to do with that. Whatever anybody did in the 60s, Every if, can if I, I make a contribution now have nothing to do with that. So what you're saying can is I make a contribution? A what are you what, saying? What are you saying? You what are you saying? <laughs> no, just man, please go ahead. Yeah, I think what uh Pasak was uh, uh what he's trying to sell to us, which Poison. I actually uh, I Poison. but but I wouldn't want to say torn. You say what it's cool. Go for it, go for it, righteous man. Where, go how on, can you on. support Pansat? In, no, go on, in... go on, go on. No, we're listening. No, I said he has he, he made a point, and that point he made, he misdirected it. Okay, it's, it's not Yoruba per se, it is a Nigerian conspiracy against the Southeast through economic policies. For example, the the the, the percentage of Nigerian importers are mostly from the east like the southwest we say that Igbos are into buying and selling but can you explain to me why there is no functioning international airport in the southeast and it's because of the Yorubas now if that makes sense no, i mean no, no, no. All, all, all what you're saying is complete bullshit <laughs> and you you see when, when wait, wait wait i'm not going to listen to more diatribe rubbish yeah. you see when when Pansat is speaking, really, we should just allow him to speak and land, and then just move on because everything he says can be clearly ignored. To be frank, it's just rubbish. It's just fucking rubbish. Yeah, it's you know what I mean? Like fucking asshole. Yeah, man. I, I, have to, I, have to I, say I agree. Right you know, right. asshole. <laughs> oh, easy, <laughs> man. Easy with this. Let's, 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 let's pick up your let's guitar, you know. bro. Let's hear some tunes. I think that's what you're good for around here. <laughs> Righteous man, there's no point in following anymore because I'll beat you up. If you're going to speak that Igbo, you're about nonsense. Oh, Jagon, calm down now, please. You are, I'm, I think you're going I'm to calm, be far. I'm calm. I'm listening. I, I, as we know Pansat, we should just let him speak and try and if you if ah. he can close, then let so, him close. So what, but you can't you can't so support Jago, that kind Jago, of talk. What I was saying, eh, what I was saying, I said he he is wrong to to narrow it to the Eurobas. It's not about Eurobas. Is a conspiracy of the Nigerian state, which consists not only the Yorubas but other tribes, because huh? after because oh, wow. of the Biafran War, if, because of the Biafran War, the Igbos have not been integrated into the mainstream of Nigerian affairs. That's why they choose the weak what? Igbos and give them position in the federal level and think it's a compensation, just like uh, 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 this man or Joseph Kano and Rocha Sukorocha. I don't think that if they come for any uh, presidential election, that any right-thinking Igbo man or woman will vote for them because they don't represent our interests, but they represent the interests of those who picked them up. So, uh, Pasat was wrong to say Yorubas. No, I don't agree, but it's a conspiracy of the Nigerian state to make sure that their economic policies does not favor the Southeast. Can you tell me why? Can you tell me why? Hey, hold on, hold on. Can you tell me why? There is a railway from uh, from Sokoto to Niger, and then to Port Harcourt, but they bypass the southeast five states. There is no railway there. Can you explain to me why it should be so? Where because there is railway in the southeast. It goes through Enugu. I know that railway track, and it's oh, being okay. fixed right where? now. For, for us, for us, I know where to Enugu. Uh, righteous man is saying. Righteous man is not saying there is no railway in the southeast. Huh? What we know is that there was a <laughs> new. Uh, new gauge hold on guys let's let's be honest see i'm not here to play ethnic tribal <laughs> politics but okay. i'm here to be able to call call out government policies that are wrong okay. the, of the, yeah. the current government of the, sorry the last government of general Muhammadu Buhari okay. decided to create 
or design a new rail system, passenger rail system, for instance, from Lagos to Ibado. There is a rail system that runs from Lagos to Abelkuta to Ibado and to the north. But they created another one. And that one, they expanded it. There's an Abuja one that goes to Kaduna. The question people are asking is, why were you doing all of that and you didn't consider the Southeast also? That was the question all through the four years or eight years of Buhari, people were asking. Now, to this whole thing about the South is being marginalized. It's a known fact. I'm not speaking because I'm evil. I have asked this question. If you decongest a papa, decongest Tinkan Island, you are helping Lagos. You are helping Lagos because he Lagos will become healthier. Lagos will become less congested and become a far beautiful city. But why is it Why is it that because um, uh, the Lagos is developed, is the southeast that is being marginalized? Maybe it's the south-south, if you are talking about the seaport. No, no, no. South, why is it the south-east? South, south, no, south-south is also screaming. But it just happens because to be... Because there's an element of... There's an element of... There's an element of... Because there's an element of... The development of the south-south that is being marginalized that is being owned, owned by the Igbos. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure... You guys oh, should be saying that because in reality, yeah, you are I know, inland. I know it's not my turn yet, but I have to stop this because this I didn't finish my talk. But go ahead, local. You you will cause problem. You understand? When sometimes you you people make indirect statements, you just take his phone. You don't know how damaging those kind of words is going deep into people and just irritate them. You understand? Um, I will not even go what what to talk about what person said. But part part I know if say a matter is a blade, it can cut through anything, whatever. So. Like Jago said, ignore him. When he's done, don't argue with him. Let him win his argument and let him go. You understand? That's for Pasa to... Can I take my... Can I take my... problem is... You, no, hold on. Pass can I take my marginalization yes. back? If no, you feel marginalized, you raise the issue, right? Um, right I'm right talking man. about my own marginalization. Right Maybe man. you're being marginalized. Like Why don't you talk about your own marginalization? Against uh, the Igbos. And that like, statement is be. also wrong, right? Well, because if you are saying Nigerian you state, hold on, that means hold on. you are accusing every tribe in Nigeria mm -hmm. apart from Igbo. That is what Rajas Man has said. So that, I'm talking about Rajas Man now. I'm just I'm very to Rajas Man. Mm. You understand? They are saying that is also wrong. Don't ever say that. You understand? Because you don't know how you are offending other persons. Because other persons. No, Passat, 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 yeah, Passat I'm said. I'm saying it to Passat offend you. Passat said the 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 Europe past are no, the no, problem no. of the Igbos. I said no. It's not correct. Hold on. Listen, if you listen to what I just said, I said I don't want to go into what Pansa said, but Pansa Martinar is a blade. If you listen to what I'm saying, <laughs> it, it was the cut through anything, pierce your ear, and know you. He came here. He came here. Just, with me. just he leave Pansa to know. Let okay. him speak. Okay, but look, and local, yeah. local people. Hold on. You want that? This is what to you because this, I don't look, know you to be that kind maybe of person. Maybe this is not a panel to discuss this, right? I it's a serious kind of discussion. Right? Like I said when you said the Nigerian state, you are local. Letting everybody. We heard you. You, you said that. You're gonna say that ten times. I heard you. Uh, hold on, what man. I'm saying so is that, 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 that that's why that was the reason most but, of the but local, local, the Nigerian state, the Nigerian state, the concept of the Nigerian state is not narrowing it down to specific ethnicities. The Nigerian exactly. state, hold on, I'm not saying anybody, I say you are indicting every other tribe apart from... And that's what I'm saying, and I'm disagreeing with you, sir. The Nigerian state saying, includes, you, you don't includes all that. Jews of Kano, it includes... Yeah. Yes. It, it, no, it includes, it's um, it's what it's is his name? No, no, no. no. Please, this is, ignore this is local P, right? He said his mouth sounds like a razor blade. Just ignore right? him. Let him finish. The and get hell out of here. The South Let him just talk so and talk. When it's if done, you take it as an order, the South is, is an order body. The Nigerian state is an order body. So, can we have anybody that's not from South is called the Nigerian um, local. Uh, the Nigerian let's state. have order. Anybody right? that is from the South, South is, is everybody from South is. Even, okay. if, it, even if you think he's been, um, he's been a puppet. By other tribes, maybe like you, or you, or you call it called that is not no, 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 it's the southeast, southeast standard. You understand, even if you hate him, whatever, it doesn't change his tribe, it's the south right. standard. So, if you okay. say the real state against that's your that's your you opinion, the okay. state against to your your opinion. So like I said, but please, you don't stop being generalize. disruptive here because every night <laughs> you're here, I, mean, I, just that, 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 that's you I know you before, almost almost every night I you're here, Master, I decrease the Ebos, if I answer right? you. Me, every night, you, you, <laughs> you and forefathers, every night you're here insulting the people, right? So, so um, here I've come to talk to you, please, yeah. right? Like and I you said, don't want to talk look, about it now, Nigeria right? Has a we problem. have my back, you're going to okay. talk about it. 
Every night it. you're here talking about Igbo. Every night, <laughs> right? <laughs> Unfailingly. Oh, but that you make crazy. So, <laughs> today, today I'm here to talk <laughs> about, and I'm saying exactly. respectfully, I'm saying this. So, like I'm saying, uh, please making the country yeah. to be Every fair, right? Good. If you make the country right? fair, every tribe is bad. The problem we are having me, is could we I, have could really, I, could really I, people. Please, let me let me learn. Local, let me learn. Who are Passat, passat, passat is a bigger problem than Nigeria. We cannot leave. We cannot leave our time. Why every night we cannot leave our time, leave our business and forefathers to come here and discuss it because every night you hear talking about Igbo. Oh, Igbo me? Yes, you, local P, forefathers and others, right? Every night you hear sorting the Igbos. Here I am just to make a little Thank you. I God bless you. I agree. You will let me talk. No, okay, right. thank you now. So, okay, thank I you. could you dig win. out the tapes you every win night. Win now. The boots, right? You win, you win, you and, win. And, you and win. this local P... Look, okay, I agree. Anything you say is correct. I agree. Look, Please, you I'm, win. I'm trying to avoid uh, uh, attacking you because obviously there's no need for okay. that. So, so let, let, man, let me talk. talk. You get uh, let me talk. I'm not going to attack you. Let me talk. Papa, remove Passat. Remove it. Please, look. We can continue. I'm better removed than not. Every day. You don't allow me to talk. If you're not going to let me talk. The point that you always raise, right? That we should use Passat, let local people speak. It's time for local people. The point that you always raise, that we use it called the... We should use the platform for solution. Yes, yeah. you understand. I hundred percent agree, because if we come here and talk, 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 we have some. I don't. If I mention somebody in there, it goes continue, it continue to talk. So now I'm sure they make it not talk. So, so I've come, I've come here and I've <laughs> called him a parasite with the uh, 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 forefather. So right? you understand. So they come over here. They do please, over, eh? always. Not the say things to offend other platform. persons. See, because okay. some gone, people, when they come to tribe, right? The yeah, tribe. Yeah. They take it. They take right? it um, to heart. Anyway, I'm gonna leave because yeah. because well, even if they're all part, even they say maybe they're not. Bye, bye, Take care. Have a good night. Hey, why? So, <laughs> why don't you go to your go to your own people's okay. platform? Ah, shit, man. Man. Who are my people? Who are my people? So, like I was saying. I don't know. Ah, maybe yeah, John, yeah, I, don't right. I don't know where the hell you're from. Man. But like I said, Pastor, every see, night you're here you insulting Pastor, people. In the name of God, please. And Pastor, it's not I'm fair. See, I'm in the name of God, I feel that you treat I'm the Igbo's fair. I remove Passat. Right? Passat time said, was Jesus. Treat the Igbo's fair. If you're not going to do it, bye. You could you go ahead and do your thing. But there'll be a reckoning. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not just saying it. That there won't be any consequences if you don't listen. I'm trying to tell Prince you. Prince Prince put it out. Stop. Prince it. Do, Prince do you think Nigeria would be better in your mind without the Yoruba people inside? Maybe to be left to you guys, yeah, Igbos and the rest of Nigeria. Would be a much better place. Just go on your own. I will go on my own. That, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Well, well, I don't, I don't understand. No, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure all the answer. I'm, I'm really putting a question to you. Yeah, would it, I'm in your really, eyes, yeah, would it truly? Because I, I, you know, people have different and varied opinions. Nigeria is what it is, and we have all been beaten. We are all in some level of pain for that country. So I understand your emotions to a degree. Uh, your insults and the, the way you take things uh, is quite uh, uh, abysmal, uh, as far as my my uh, reckoning is concerned. Me, so, you no, no, I'm just well, I, honestly, I'm just trying to frame a question, so maybe a, a decent conversation can can persist, because the way you the way you communicate, it, it, it it's it's full of stingy nails and 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 no, but and you, you, and, you and there's very little fact. Look, there's a very little factual basis. You could demonstrate that by reprimanding local P as his No, no, no. I'm speaking to you, you not local P. You wanna you wanna talk to me. Right? Yeah, yeah. You, I'm speaking you to you to now. Here, out of order, right? I but I, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not a now. Two of them every night they're here insulting. You see, you're taking away. I'm asking you a question and God knows where you are. Where are you going to? Wait, wait. I'm, 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 I'm trying to um, put a question to you. So maybe you can remain on the panel, and we can have some kind of a decent uh, commune here amongst ourselves. It is in your mind, Nigeria, the way it is, the, 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 the way that we've all been affected by Nigeria, no matter what uh, tribe or what peoples, we've all somehow been affected to the negative by Nigeria. In your mind, would it be better 
that some people are cast out of that nation in order for you to have the Nigeria you want? Well, let me answer you this way. I'm going to modify the question because you didn't put a problem. Answer. Just answer me and I'm all these perambulations. Let me, let, me, let me answer you. The problem of Nigeria are the Eurobars. Well done. This is what I need to get out of you. And I feel that that was where you were. So no, no. within that, your opinion... See, see, that kind of uh, discussion is not getting us anywhere. It won't get us anywhere. It's a dead end conversation. Pansad, you have to stop. I'm going to stop it. Yeah, I have to stop it. I have to stop it. I have to stop it. And um, one, of the, one of the things I want to add is that sometimes when people say that the Southeast is marginalized and they start talking about seaports and other things, they forget that that actually is on the side of the south south and if you look at where the south south it is it's not it's hard to develop it faster than any other part that's closer to the sea no wait, wait, anyway wait, you wait, can't wait, 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 don't let him no no let, let me hold on now let me let me just let me just finish we have this let, let, let me let me finish what i was saying it hasn't, it hasn't begun who will you pay, who will you pay more something that you have right mm. and they shut it down and something that something that was working before, working efficiently before, and it shot three, uh, two, sorry, two of them down, not working anymore. And a seaport that was about to be commissioned, not yet tested or used, about to be commissioned, had, has never been commissioned. Who do you think it hurts more? You understand? Yeah, I know there's mm. supposed to be um, um, seaport in the southeast, you understand, which have never been commissioned since 1985, if I remember really, as against. Two seaports that were working full time before and they shut it down. Who did yeah, you say? You understand? So, what people talk about start to subsidize it, please, let's stop this thing because if we personalize everything, then everything, make everybody scatter, maybe we'll go their own way. But most of us don't want it. You understand? So, we when, are when, 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 the, 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 the point I'm making so, that whenever they say that, they have to also recognize that they are actually a kind of, a kind of, um, setting aside other people's uh, this in other people that are actually being marginalized right next to them because you, you can say you can also say the Benue people you can say the Benue people and the people around that area should have everybody all the infrastructure that they want everybody will say they want the infrastructure what is the difference is it because yeah let's be mm -hmm. let's be honest uh, we're having a conversation um and i hear everybody mm -hmm. i am not a support fansat please i'm not a support of the rhetorics i'm not but I understand the sentiment. I understand where the emotions is coming from. And I'm not, I'm not trying to balance any issue. Mm. This is me the way I think. Now, when we talk about seaports, I local said who was asking a, a rhetorical question that the seaports, two seaports or three seaports that were in the south south working functional and were shut down, and the one that was planned and never executed, that who does it hurt more? It hurts whoever is into the business where a seaport is needed. It has nothing to do with the location. Right now, the seaport in the Southwest, which is the mainstay seaport of Nigeria, is predominantly used by the people from the Southeast origin. Fact, fact. So the point, because let me tell you where my, for me, this conversation But started. you know, you know before you go there. Let him finish, let, let him finish. Let him finish, let him finish. Let him finish, now. Let him finish. Let him finish. Now. Let him finish. 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 Loco, this is not, that you were talking, I let you speak. So, mm. here's the point. Somebody was arguing that why are people in the Southeast coming to live in the Southwest? I've been in the forum where someone asked that question. And I said, very valid question. And These I things have been person, asked and answered. Yes, so I, and I said to the person, I said to the person, a lot of those people who are moving to the southwest to live don't want to move to the southwest. Imagine you are a big importer, or that's your business, and you used to come through Port Harcourt or worry that was more proximious to you, is being shut down. You have no choice now than to move your business headquarters to Lagos. So that it is easier and closer to where Jim, that is. Yeah, we, we, we understand all this, Jim. We already understand all this, man. Let him finish now. Conversation. Let him finish. But try to make it. Try to make it a bit short. I'm about to round up now. If you interject like this, I can't finish. Look, let him finish. Let him finish. So when those people who are into that business decide to move closer for the for proximity's sake. 
to where their businesses are. Well, number, and, and remember, commensurate infrastructure are not being set up in Lagos State. In fairness to Lagos State, Lagos State is bearing a huge burden. And there isn't enough infrastructure to take the volume of people who move to Lagos, set up their businesses. It's not as if we're expanding the roads in Lagos and creating more infrastructure. That you, All of us know Lagos is suffering. Lagos is bearing an unfair burden because the federal government is not doing what it needs to do. Liberalize these things, open worry, open calabar, even don't even open on each other. Open other ones. Let people go to other people and have choices. When you set up only Lagos, you make you set Lagos for failure. And that is where my, for me personally, that is where my own point is. I don't want to go into this whole Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa conversation. I am saying the policy of government is not helping Lagos State develop in a healthy manner. That's my We point. understand this very well. I, and the thing is, if I may, if I may, if I may, the thing is, the time that we discussed this thing, myself, AY, and the person who actually put it forward was righteous man speaking about his own speaking about his own experience as a as a businessman moving from the southeast and having to relocate to lagos and we all supported him not not just in in, in his narrative but in the facts that you've just laid out uh, uh uh jim all these facts are clear to us as nigerians the problem is that if somebody like pansat comes on board and blames Nigeria's policies on one peoples or a peoples. It's not sufficient. You see where I am as a Yoruba person. Me, I know, I know the ills of being Yoruba. And if you're Igbo, you should really know the ills of being Igbo. And you, we should be able to speak to ourselves. We don't really, even though we should be able to speak to each other, no doubt. But we can't speak to each other in the way Pansa is doing it. Because that's just going backwards. It's not, it's not progressive at all. It doesn't encourage anybody. Well, in fact, it encourages people just to, to be more desperate and more hateful. And, and that is what we're trying to get. Everyone can hate. It's so easy. You know, if, if Pansa is in, my, is in my before, the slap I will give him, he won't recover from. You oh understand? Oh, my God. So, Let, no, come on, man. Let's not be threatening people with no, violence. No, it's not a threat. It's not a threat. He's an I'm, man, I'm, too, now. So I, I'm afraid it's not. I'm not threatening him. I don't want to be violent to anybody. I'm saying that... The, the what the, what it wells up in somebody is not nice so oh. th this kind of if i'm speaking to pansat directly i can't start cussing him that is evil that's disrespectful i won't disrespect him in that way i can't I, start I doing that I and, and if that i was to do that if i was to I do Yoruba, that i have your in my family so i, I actually that's the same with me I mean for for real for real there's not there's not I one there's not that. one peoples that i don't have in my family I have Fulanis, oh. I have Hausa, I have Igbo, I have Bini. I have them all. And and, and they they're ordinary human Okay. Um the okay. device has packed up. Okay. Um, let, me, let me if you don't mind, let me take something from what Jagun and even Chim mentioned. I think I, I wanted to condense with one point um uh, um Chim made about the South is being the only ones that that they are the ones that need the South. The I didn't say so. I didn't say so. I didn't so he said something so. about they use it most. That it hurts you most yeah, because exactly. you are the one that will use it most. Awesome. You forget that all the oil that comes from the South South there tends to use all that shipment comes from the South South. Uh, but this area that, that, that is a corporate mm. Nigerian business. I'm talking about individual business people using it. Okay, I I understand you too. And even then, uh, when we are in uh, PH. Uh, we know that a lot of people that are not necessarily Igbo people use the seaport. So I agree. The, the Igbo people use it more. Generally, the people from the South East use it more because they do a lot of trading. But that it still doesn't negate the point where you, like, whenever you are talking about underdevelopment, you just completely exclude the people that are in that region and you just make it look like it's only you. And let me make this point. Um, the, the, that, 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 some people that say, the ones that are saying those, not the Southeasterners that say this in general. And one other thing, the Southwesterners, you have to ad, uh, ac I accept that the Southwesterners have some advantage because they have access to this ocean. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are there's a, a, a continuity of landmass all the way to uh, this Ilori, they have that geographical advantage that has been bestowed upon them. Is no nobody did it to them, and then the south south and the southeast is on their own side. 
they have their own uh, this in arrangement there what you want to do is strategically think about how you can organize your own areas so it benefits both sides because one of the arguments i always have with that about that area is that we both of us the south south the south east uh, that are in that area what you tend to have is the one side points finger at the other side, the other side points finger at the other side, the southwest, then they will point finger at the south, uh, southwest. The letter on Pansa will come and point finger at the north. It's like, why is everybody pointing finger at each other? In the end, everybody's in different positions, and you have to make the best out of the position you are in. The bend where people could be complaining too. People in the north can complain too. Both others. Why do we always have to act as if we deserve everything best than other people? Hey, for father. For fathers, let me for let are you, anyway, please, uh, please, I beg, Biko. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, I was trying to make a point, and again, sometimes, um, when you hear certain narratives, and you have um, some facts, you want to voice out your own facts, especially the real life experiences. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers there was a time there was a national freight. That was just because uh, we didn't just have Nigerian Airways and Nigerian um, uh, Railways. We had National Freight. That was ever before national the shipping line. Yeah, National Shipping Line. In fact, I'm starting from National Freight. That was ever before there was, we ever knew there was ever going to be a Dangote trucks and all that. My father was a chief claims officer. They had a major hub in Kaduna. Now, when it folded up, because you know, this is Nigeria unveiling itself when he folded up it was about the same time nigeria Airways was packing up too he transferred to nigeria national shipping line we had 20 something ships this was in um the especially a papa and whatever at that time the worry pots i don't even know the, the state right now we had one and calaba there was even another one now when it by the time he transferred to just before he transferred to calaba the calaba ports it was already becoming even NSSL, NSSL was they were already se selling off the ships. It was becoming moribund. They were becoming insolvent. Mm. Now, the reason why I bring these things up was at, as far back as that time, and I'll put dates to this. This was like late 80s, early 90s. Now, he it was as if he foresaw this thing, and that's why sometimes for father do not blame people when they get frustrated to the point where they leave Nigeria. Now, at the time, he told us something. We, we were so small, we didn't understand some of these things. He mentioned he was so annoyed to the point where he predicted that Kalaba and One would get to a point where they would be non functional. That's eventually what happened. Now, keep in mind, there's been this ongoing discussion for who knows how long now, more than the number of years we've been hearing about them, about the dredging. Of the Niger River all the way up to is it or where you where Boni, at some point you will hear we don't even know where the bonnies are going to. They'll tell you they're doing some uh, survey. Some you will you know these stories now. I don't think all of us have forgotten yep. so soon. So there were monies that were allocated. We don't know what happened to these monies. We don't know where oh, they started. Sure. And so as much as and I'm one of those that daily, daily speak about fairness. So when people make sweeping statements about saying things like, especially when I understand where the passion you're going to, and that's why you, I keep insisting that we're, each na we're individual nations before we're a country. I am Yoruba, undeniably, before my, I'm Nigerian. It's impossible for you to see a, an, a Jewish man. Not, in fact, before they tell you that they are from Israel, they, talk, they speak more about their being Jewish more about being the country being Israel. So it's important for you not to kowtow to where you come from, first of all, but not to the point of now making sweeping statements, especially in the light of the fact that there are people who actually know there's a degree of unfairness. And everybody, let's not get it twisted. Everybody has a lot, most people have a problem with the way Nigeria is. And that's why I warned my cousin when we had a conversation, especially again towards his election. Mm -hmm. He said some things. And I told him, <laughs> you know, right now it's okay because it's your it's your Tinubu or whatever. I said, the more see, I said, keep in mind when the tables are turned, do not complain. Because I've seen some of my uncles I disagree with in the past, even during the past <coughs> time, 
who did some things that were good in the beginning, but now missed it. <laughs> I saw when they would look away when he did saying things. And I used to tell mm -hmm. even my mom, she's late now, may I saw this in peace. I saw my uncles. I used to tell them then that the moment another person gets there and you start complaining, me, I'll just start laughing because you decide to look away. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's again, like I said. I, again, let me just round up now. I have a very close friend. He's about, he lives about 15 minutes from me. In Kechuku. <laughs> we make fun of ourselves. He called me a person. Yeah, I call him um, Ujuku. Now, there are times he wants to do things. Doesn't it surprise you as a matter of fact that when we are abroad, especially, some of us, we don't even see all these Igbo, Yoruba. See, it's amazing how this exactly. is light when we're in Nigeria. I keep that in my <coughs> Bearing in mind that Pansa is in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but my point, if I if I may, is I wasn't talking from a, the concept. I'm talking about how to enhance our development as a nation. I think it's self-defeating what we are doing to ourselves. Of course. If we have potential for 12 seaports, for goodness sake, let's have those 12 seaports functional. It will help bring development to those places. If we have a seaport in Benue, in Makodi or whatever, whichever place is closer to Benue State that needs a seaport, and things are getting there easier, and we're not damaging our roads, who is benefiting? We. If we decongest Lagos, because Lagos, Lagos is, Lagos is an, over, an extremely overstretched state and city in Nigeria. The potentials of Lagos is being subsumed because of the overbearing nature of the population we have in that place. And my point is this. Let's liberalize what we need to liberalize so that every part of Nigeria will develop. If it pays us to do this, I'm not saying this from a perspective of ethnic coloration. Far from it. But do you think that the problem of Lagos is not just infrastructure in terms of because you know there was a time I, when you said you know, uh, Lagos is congested, I was like... Of Lagos. Yeah, I, I, there was a time when you said, uh, you know, when you, that seaport area, because of the congestion you see in that area, I was like, oh, yeah, that needs to be fixed. But, you know, recently when I saw what the Chinese were able to do with cities, I was like, okay, all is possible. You can always find a way to transport it over, flyovers. And if you build the right infrastructure, you can almost do anything. That's what I've, I've come to find. Yeah, but, but and, you know, um, Papa, we don't have enough roads. So, you know, for instance, Apapa Osho, the expressway, mm -hmm. is heavily stretched. The amount mm. of importation activities going on that road, import, you know, when you're pulling all those uh, heavy duty items, they don't allow the road to last. I agree with your argument. See, my own argument even goes further than even what your argument is that the south, south, the, from the south, because the rivers that runs through to the river Niger is coming, it goes to the ocean. They should have dredged it because Nigeria has a natural highway through the middle of Nigeria. To almost Abuja and further further up, we could yeah. have we could have freights coming through there, but the Nigerian state, because of all this divisiveness and uh, the sellout nature of our leaders, we've not tapped into we've not even tapped into the potential of our people at all. What what is possible yeah. in that country? Um, yeah, Paul, I can see your finger. I, I don't know this finger. Yeah. Very powerful. Uh, well, yeah, it looked like Prophet. I, I discovered yesterday that the finger you give very, very good attention to the finger. So I said, let me give you the strategy. You got me with that one. <laughs> yeah. So please, go to bed, guys. Can you please help me with five minutes so that um, wow. I will not also become a barbarian so that I can dissect this thing a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I I work in the maritime sector when I was struggling to get to uni life. I couldn't do it, and due to my father worked 31 years, seven months in Nigerian Post Authority. So I'm a maritime boy. My mother sells food inside the port. So I'm a wharf boy. And I live in the wharf houses. So, and I travel. So not a wharf rat. Hmm. If, if you want to be that, uh, Well, I'm not, a, I'm not a wharf rat, but I may be aiding and abating because people bring things <laughs> to my mother's store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so... My first visit to Calabar, it is because I work in the maritime sector. My first visit to Port Harcourt, it is because I work in the maritime sector. I'm from Delta State. My first visit to Delta State, it is because I work in the maritime sector. And all this time, I never traveled by road nor air to Port Harcourt, Calabar, and Delta State. 
I travel by ship. It's called Baco Liner. And when Baco Liner was working, my Eastern brothers never had a problem because Baco is a German ship. It's called Express Ship. This ship was working. It's an Express Ship. This ship bats in midstream water. Then they use the flat barge to pull out everything. So these are these are ships that can walk in places like Ogi, can even go far more because you can use what we call dry dock. You know, once you go closer, you offload everything. Then the, the you use the flat barge, then the tugboat to pull everything and everything. So my Igbo brothers is enjoying it. Port Harcourt have two seaports. Yeah, the Port two. Port Harcourt have two seaports. Delta State have two seaports. We have Calabar port. What happened is that this port keep messing up by the day. These are just purely negligent by God. Negligence. Simple. It's not about anything. But what we happened know. is that when Hebrew invest in Lagos, when they start opening those oil depots, those tank farms, all the way from Tink and all the way to Kirikiri Lighters Farm, all the way down to Kirikiri, why government is trying to micromanage Lagos? Lagos is cheaper for government to manage. The sheep are just there in the outside bar, what we call outside bar. When you stand in Babi, you see sheep. For some of us who go to Lagos back in the days, we see sheep from Lagos, from Lagos Island. You see those sheep. Those sheep are outside bar, waiting for them to call. So this is where government fail. It's not like the Yoruba people are enjoying. Oh, the the time that government want to try to invest a little bit in the seaports, the, due to the anger with Obasanjo and Atiku, when Obasanjo sold all these things through this today RFI, through the BPE and BPE. everything, Atiku bought Portacot. Atiku buy war report called Intex. Oh, Atiku also to, bought worry. I, I thought it was only Portacot. He, he bought worry. You understand? So to frustrate Atiku is to let those places just go coma side. Just like what happened in today, the new airport terminal in Lagos. Every time government fail us, we would we would trickle it down to individuals say Yoruba is doing me, Aousa is doing me. When you look at the seaport very well, my brother, who run that seaport? It's more of the North Anand. You see, than any other tribe you can think of. If assuming you see a lot of Yoruba there, you say Yoruba is doing it for his own interest, but it's more of the northern arm. Hey, so today, as question. we are talking, Portaco Port is still working. Okay, that's but okay. Portaco Port is still working till today, but it's bringing more of the oil installations, all the heavy duty installations right. in Portaco. They are bringing it there, and when they bring it, you and Ibo man. If you try your container there, you don't die because the custom there, their mouths don't tear. You can still ship a container to Port Harcourt. Make a container yeah. now that you are shipping it to Port Harcourt. Jim, you are in Canada. Put your final destination, Canada. If shipping company will allow you to go and your container will land in Port Harcourt, but custom will finish you because their mouths don't tear. <laughs> it's like the way KLM will land in Abuja, not Lagos, and fly to Port Harcourt. Completely wrong. Never happened in any, so, any so part when, of the world. When you say and the it, amount, and when you say the amount don't tear, do you mean they are expensive to expensive. settle? These guys are wicked. These guys they, they live in bribe, they don't live in anything. So duty, they just say go bring this money. You understand? And remember the wow. oil companies too, just just bribe, they don't clear because you don't want to waste your time. So if you ship a container now, put if cheap, if you have ever shipped. Call your shipping company, say final destination for Taco. You are talking as an evil <laughs> man and you are doing, doing that business. No, just no. make an inquiry. Call a shipping company and say final destination for Taco. If they say we don't we don't run that route. Mm. It goes that route. Yeah, See, but why don't they, why don't they fire all these people that are costing all these problems? So, government institution. So when, government when we say government fail us, it is not Yoruba fail us. I agree with when you. When we say government fail us, it is not robo fail us. But I agree After Delta you. State, we have two airports. We have two seaports. I'm supposed to cry more. The two seaports just die. Cocoa Port, Worry Port, it just die. The ports are still there. They even dredge it all the way to Alaja due to the Delta Steel Company, Alaja. You understand? So that because it carries those heavy iron beams and the lights. But the water is just not deep enough. 
this thing that I'm telling you, if they bring a better dredger today, say you find a better dredger from Russia, from anywhere today, mm. within one month, those ports will work. Nothing is wrong with those seaports. Yeah. Other than you so, just import oh, claims oh, 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 that oh, will take these things oh, down. Oh, oh, under, whose jurisdiction, under whose jurisdiction and control are So now, when you talk under whose jurisdiction now, if a man has been Minister of Transport, not no, no, enough. No, no, no. Yoruba man has been minister. No, no. So when we want to, because oh, no, this topic, when this is the federal government's responsibility, and it is completely federal government. Now. It has nothing to do with yes, states. It's and completely yes, federal yes, government. Yes, That's why I said. So when you talk about marginalization, like uh, forefather keep asking this question. When you talk about marginalization, uh, or, or sorry, local, then we the South as you complain more because if Portacos yes. is active, if Calaba is active. And if Wally is active, we are cashing out. You understand? So I think we are supposed to even cry more. But what I'm telling you is that the system failures. I was talking to my in-law. He's a big time journalist. I asked him, I said, I saw you when you run documentary of almost one hour in Dangote refinery. What is going on? The man laughed. He tried to micromanage. Then later he told me, he said, the refinery is as good as 100%. But guess what? They are still negotiating how to run pipe from the Niger Delta. So just like you bought generator, you don't have money for fuel. They never envisage how you run pipe now, like they run pipe from Wari to Kaduna refinery. So these are the problem. You understand? So remember Dangote bought Portacot refinery, I think uh, Yaradua revoked it, and somewhere along the line, tried to negotiate to come back to Portacot or Wari. Later, Lagos gave him land and everything. So, okay, now where do you want to connect your pipe from? What, what houses you want to connect your pipe now to Lagos? Because Lagos initially claimed they launched, they say, oh, we discover oil in Lagos. Oh, yeah, take the oil in Lagos mm -hmm. and refine in Lagos. Let's now, pipe really, want to find its way now. From so, 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 all these things. But what I'm asking is that is it that Dangote have invested that money? Federal government invested 20% in Dangote refinery and they've not made all these proper arrangements. So mm -hmm. our problem is that we have too much big man in institution. Look the nonsense Kiamo is doing. Look the nonsense our ministers are doing today. You understand? All I'm saying is that, my brother, let's not trickle it down to individual that, oh, they de punish Kibo man. They de punish. These guys just fail all of us. They just failed all of us. It is okay, back so online. And when guys, back online think, think, go think, um, under, that's where the problem comes. An issue and left, and everybody is pointing at me. I, I, clearly, I'm no, Tim. Tim, I point at you because you said this is what the Igbo man, individual investors, is going yes, through. Yes, exactly. So you bring it back to yourself. You back him on. You back him. Tim, Tim, you bring it back. I was I'll trying to stop you, joke. but you continued. Tim, <laughs> let me talk one funny joke so that my Igbo people will cost me very well. I, but I'm ready to take the cost. An Igbo man, an Igbo girl is getting married to a white person in Nigerian contest. And the sister said, no, we don't want, we don't want. They don't understand why we a white person want to marry. You don't want, you don't want. Eventually, the marriage took place. They had a baby. And they lost the baby. Now, the elder sister started crying, crying, crying. Now, she's born more than the bereaved. They started thinking, this one that you are crying more than the person who lost a child. It looked like you have hand in it. And they complained. And do you know what the girl said? The girl said, Will be a bar, will be fake. I tell my sister, no marry Lebanese. Lebanese self na fake. <laughs> <laughs> fake. Marry fake. I will go take it original. Uh, These are the problem. Our leaders is creating problem for us, my brother. Please, let's not, let's, let's not even think in anything. It's I messing businesses in Lagos. That a papa grid that you are seeing is messing businesses in Lagos. But Everything is messing it. Can I ask my question? Go ahead, I'm done. Uh, uh, um, the Nigerian problem, is this spiritual? Because mm, I no. can't imagine. No. Wow. Oh, hold on, hold on. This is where I'm asking the question. Evil. Hold, on, hold on. We have the best brain in the black world. And one of the best brains in the whole world. But... We can't agree. We can't solve our problem. So, is this spiritual? Is this something beyond? Righteous man. Righteous then, man. Let, let me try. Let me answer this question quick. I don't want to take over this program. Nigerians, we are not as smart as we call ourselves. 
if Nigerians are so smart, where are Nigerians' investment in Canada? Where are Nigerian businesses in US? Where are Nigerian businesses in the UK? Don't tell me African stuff <laughs> because it's meant for only Africa. Not Where so. are Nigerian businesses? Nigeria can be assistant general manager to manage your business. We don't know how to manage ourselves. That's why we don't have businesses. So when you so say Nigerians are good, words, they employ you to manage another man's business. You might do in it very well. Words, just so, because just somebody so. has pain behind you, say they will sack you if you fuck up. Let him come back. Let him come back. In Hold other on. words, your submission Hold is that we are academically good, but when it comes to theory, we are flat. Is that what you're saying? That is the bitter truth. Go. We can manage that another person's business. We don't want them to sack us. That but when it comes to our, our, pro our, our big problem man is in, drama, right? we will lose the business. Our big man is in, will make us lose our business. This our problem, problem. Our problem, I'm, I'm afraid. Hang on, hang on. Guys, go oh, ahead. You said, you said business. Business is a, is a broad-based word. What do you mean by business? He, he so broke it down I'm, now. I'm, it is not I'm, your I'm, African so store. I just broke it down. I just broke it down. Nigeria broke, this, own let's keep up, this man. business. Nigeria own this company. The way you see the Jewish people take over the whole New York, take over New Jersey. The whole New York, they the whole world. Business. They own this of, company. They own business. this. You need, you, need, you need to define because here in the no, UK, no, I, no. I we have to cross, cross, cross. You're you're looking for too much of this nick nick picking. You, I think you made broad statements for the thinking person. We are all thinking people here. We, we, there are in in the UK, as you well know, there are side businesses on the street that black people have. All these small, small Jamaican, Nigerian restaurants scattered all about the place. These, as much as they may be employing people locally and and are good for small businesses, they're not industry. They don't put us into into um, that's world. A, that's a world. I'm, that's a world I'm looking for. That's yes, what I was looking they don't. For. They don't put us into world recognition. You know, in the UK, yeah. The, the the amount of Indian and Pakistani millionaires and billion no not millionaires billionaires are eighty one. The amount of black billionaires are four, but none of them are billionaires. They're like on that um, uh, 200, 200 million pound set. That's their level. But there's only four. There's only four. This really underlines Paul's point. That realistically, we talk a lot, mate, but we do little. And we have to realize that. And we do little based on our the level of ignorance. In that. We, all we so want is for ourselves. Is, 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 not no, people uh, that work with each other. Let me explain. Okay, let me explain something here. Yeah. The average um, Nigerian person, yeah, you ask to come here to study medicine, some, if you're very brilliant, but a whole lot are as uh, 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 students. How many of us actually get into engineering to make something? It's, it's, it's a traditional thing. Somebody mentioned uh, years ago that the, is it the Chinese? Was it you that mentioned or, or, or Pansa? That the Chinese sent a whole lot of people to come into the US to train and they had to it's go me. back. It's me. Yeah. Oh, no, okay, Chinese always do that, too. They always yeah, do Yeah, to go that. back. And even in my uni, during my uni days, all of them are into one technical uh, course or the other. Here, when you talk about uh, pharmacy and medicine, it's the Indians and Pakistanis. You don't beat them. You don't beat them. So it's it's all about, it's how, uh, see, listen, the, the way our country has been uh, created, okay, when I when I when I when I left when I left the military and uh, had to come back here to because my mo my mom used to live here when she was alive I had to come back here and I was thinking what do I go do myself okay had to go back to uni went to uni read read uh, what um, what um, I was uh, influenced by my mom to read finished. Okay, that was in the height of um, IT. I know that. I go into IT. When I got into invest um, the, um, IT, I worked for I worked as a contractor for an investment bank. The guys that are traders, they are analysts. I know that most of them, ninety percent of I found that ninety percent of them do not have any degree at all. 
and that was when I started looking because I read economics and finance as my as my as as my degree. And major. But yeah, but I had to do IT. That, that was when you know uh, internet working was was um um uh, was in vogue and all that. So I said, hang on a minute. I saw the kind of so I I started I started. I, I, I started being interested and all that. But today, I don't work for anybody. The kind of money I would I would um, slave to work for six months is what I'm making in a month. So that's part of the industry. So if you do not know, if you're not, if you're not, um, um, if you don't have that nurturing as a situ, um, uh, um, environment to get into business, to get into industry, you, 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 you can't just get it. It's not just magic. You know, and talking about those African stores, I'll, it will interest you. Um, most of the food that we eat as black people, especially Nigerians here in the UK, are sold to us by uh, by Pakistani people. Anyone else it, but us? Yeah, the, the, it's not just Pakistan. Historically, in the UK, Chinese to Africa food in US. Well, exactly. Historically, in the UK, it was mm -hmm. the Indians. Then the Indians made their money. You see what happens here in the UK and what's mm -hmm. been happening is that everybody who comes into town engages in the black community to get their, get their feet on the ground and then they <clears throat> lift off from there. Firstly, it was the Indians, then the Pakistanis, then it was uh, the Kosov Kosovo. And, and they were from a war-torn element. They came into this country and started to sell us our meat, our fish, our dry products, and all the rest of it. Right now, yeah. it's, the Afghan, it's the Afghans. The Afghans are in London, owning all of the, the, the shops and butchers, and all, all our African and, and Black people are, are, are going there to patronize. Is, 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 is it not that? And you see the average, you see the average uh, Nigerian auntie. She's holding two free jobs and all that. You know, running after the. Uh, That's because we don't think. If I can, if I can, you see what Paul has said. Uh, we we mm -hmm. need to be diligent in how we listen, because what Paul has said has undermined the whole episode of our lives and the pity of our existence on this planet. Uh, it, it came from clearing up Pansat's rubbish. That's why uh, Paul came and explained everything graphically to us, even though we already know what Paul said is not new. It's no, it should be known to us. But the fact of the matter is that we are still steeped in this idiotic tribalism that is keeping us going backwards. It's, it's astounding. We, we don't have to break down all our personal stories about how we are doing this and that. You know, we're all in some business or we're doing something. The, the fact of the matter is where our minds are not together. Our, if, the way, if, the, if you see the way the Jews, the Chinese, uh, every other race that has made it in the UK, they work together. The, in, in, in the Indian subcontinent, they are enemies of each other there all. But when they come to England, they're best of friends and they're making sure they're getting on with it. They know, they know who they know who the public enemy is. Whereas for us, we'll be stabbing ourselves in the street and, and then complaining about racism. It doesn't make sense. All these levels that we have just simply don't make sense. So just to add to what you were saying, um, and you hit the nail on the head. I didn't even know you were going to go there. So when we talk about the success of the Jews... The success of the Jews, and I alluded to that earlier on in our conversation when I used that, uh, I passed my neighbor generator cons, uh, illustration. The Jews, when a Jew walks into a society, if a new Jew is landing, let's say in Calgary where I live, if he is living from San Francisco, his rabbi in San Francisco will give him an introductory letter to the rabbi here in Calgary and will tell the rabbi that this guy is into timber. So every property developer that is of Jewish descent, building houses in Calgary, needs to patronize this young man who is into timber. Because of course you know the role timber plays in building houses. You will suddenly realize that if you, as a black man, were into timber and those Jewish builders were buying from you, right now that their brother has landed in Calgary, the worst you're going to get is they may still give you a portion of their business. They will switch to that guy. Or if you're unlucky, they will automatically switch to him and you lose that business. 
and that has have consistently said this that amongst our so-called african store owners there is an unhealthy competition amongst them some of them go to the customs in this country to sabotage the importation that their sister company is bringing in but there is a there is a mall a new concept mall here in calgary it's asian i'm trying to tnt that's what it's called tnt tnt if you go into tnt it's all the asians predominantly the chinese you see the koreans then you start seeing the pakistanis and you know the uh, filipinos they all own their different stores within t and t at the till of t and t everybody collecting your money and giving you a receipt is asian there is no single black person in tnt and tnt has several outlets across the city so i said this to one somebody one time i said is it a bad thing if all the african stores come together approach the city council and ask for it go there and build and go there and build something and have a commonality somewhere where everybody yeah. goes to rather than spreading african stores oh, across yeah. the whole city the place. Yeah. and all those mm -hmm. things so mm -hmm. our problem is, and you, you, thank you, it's coming from you. We don't cooperate. We don't support each other's business. No. We you know why? Chim, it's tribalism. Let's just call it. Even in the comment section, you can see, I, I don't understand some, why some fools will come for about seven hours. Don't, don't, don't go there. Forget no, no, about that. No, 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 don't, yeah, don't go. That's a way you're wasting out. It's a waste of your effort. It's a waste of your energy. No, 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 no. Listen, guys. I don't understand why somebody will come for eight hours you stay on the comment section. All you're doing is either chatting up a woman or just throwing, hurling insults. Tone, what kind of tone, we all came into this world. There's people have wrong with your brain. There are There's people who are looking for us. Tone, Tone, allow them. She's about Nigeria. Tone, you remember the song called Enigma? You remember Enigma or Lagbaja? You don't know those people. These people are invisible. They are enigma. They are like apart from that. Apart from that, you know, when when I look at the when I look oh, at the yeah, comments, yeah. Say, just just to give you an understanding tone. So hopefully it will help you not going. You you know, I read your comments on the on the on the on the comment section yourself, and some of them are are, are not. That's why when I I had to speak to you, that are you the same tone? Because it didn't seem like you were the same person. When you write on there, it doesn't seem like it's you. The thing I is, went there for the, on there, I went there's the invisibility. Wait, wait, bros, wait, bros, wait now. Yeah, oh, that day, let me, let, me let me just say something. That day... No, 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 we don't have to go because, you know, no, no, we've no, no, spoken no, about no, that. No, it's not no, a problem. No, no, it's not no, a problem. No, 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 wait, let me land. Let me just land. No, no, bro. I I'm not gaslighting you. Let me just land. Let me just land. You're now gaslighting me, yeah? I see. What How? I, well, I mean, that word, that term, I don't even understand. Okay. Okay. Gaslighting. That's a bullshit All term. Hold, hold on, bro. Bro, hold on. I respect people. I heard you. All evening, AY has been receiving uncalled abuses, uncalled abuses from Chioma. AY ignored her totally until he responded. So, will you say then when you read AY's response and all that, then AY becomes a troublemaker? No, no, right? no. I'm, 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 I, I. No, I, 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 I no, 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 it's okay. No, bros, 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 listen, listen. I was out of order, and I told you, bro, you are out of order, and now I become a, a bad person. No, 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 no. I, I don't, I don't agree with where you're going. You see, I'm not trying to personalize this thing. All I'm trying to say is that the end, the 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 uh, comment section is for f the you can't you can't be on here for eight hours listening and not being on the panel expressing yourself. And you're not taking entertainment. It's just beer entertainment. And it's a lot of rubbish being spoken. Horrible rubbish at times, but it's just entertainment. Yeah, just the way it is. Listen, maybe, maybe we are coming from different schools of... Um, uh, uh, Definitely of, we are. Of, I'm a very responsible person. And at the same time, I take jokes. But when somebody starts poking... Listen, there's a thin line between personal insult. And that's why I, I keep saying to forefathers, three weeks ago... Yeah, Doctor Damages himself had to remove somebody. Do you know that person? He, uh, he, he had to apologize today. He apologized to me today because the person he thought was was, was just getting too much. It's, it's listen. If if listen, if you abuse me and say your head is big or your glasses, you're you're not looking fine. Look at the way he's talking. 
Listen, Tom, it's just a Tom, to me, it's Tom, a reflection of where you are. It's a reflection of how you hate yourself. You know, to be frank, guys, no, guys, you see, really, truly, do you see this this area? Do you see this area where they where they chim? If you mean, I won't engage him. Yeah, chim. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is, you see, what we're speaking about now, it is detracting from the community that our conversation is very boring, to be frank, boring, and it speaks of a thin skin. We're supposed to be, you see, if you're a politician or you're a big man, you're a leader in our community, right? You're going to get eggs thrown on you every single day of your life. If you can't handle it, then Brad, you're going to suffer under it. It's simple. It's very simple. You have to grow up. You can't be I'm complaining about the comment section. I'm, I'm honestly, um, honestly, to me, when you, people are you're insulting telling me, boring, you're man. telling me someone insulting my dad, listen, I don't know these people from Adam. I don't. I don't even know this. The only thing. insult that I, the only insult that really affects me, is if somebody no, is on the. See, when you start, uh, when you start holding personal insult at people, listen, we shouldn't condone rubbish. Tone, We're condoning tone. rubbish. Tony, if I may, Tony, if I may, Tony, if I may. Sorry, Jagon, hold on, please. Listen, I'm not asking you. This is my view, and it's up to you to take it. I I come here to make constructive um, inputs, and I would rather banter and argue with those of you here who have decided yep. to put up your faces and have yes, a conversation. Sir. Yes, so I'm dealing with the scarface. There's nothing but else, today, bro. I went, that, I went to that side comment today just to let the people there know I'm human enough, but I went there and I joked around and I left. I didn't Absolutely. Abuse anybody. I didn't go and engage anybody. I laughed Absolutely. with people there. Yes, so. So, so every so yeah. often, every so often, I look at I look at the comment section and I go through, and I'm just laughing. It's just laughable. Yeah, it's laughable. Let me quickly say something before because uh, I think we really distract this. Uh, um, so uh, I want to follow up with something uh, Tone said before I forget, please. So uh, there's something about uh, the way I used to think when I first uh, moved to the U.S. And I later realized from listening, there's this guy called uh, Roland Martin, who some of us may know. Uh, he has a very yeah. strong uh, uh, mm -hmm. channel now. Yeah. He has an app for it and all that. He has you know, he's on YouTube. He used to be with CNN. He's Black American, basically. Now, yeah. Yeah. just to let you know that there seems to be something that Black people all over the world, this is not even a Nigerian thing. It's a Black people thing. Yep. And, um... He, th there's this lady it's called that, collective she, ignorance yeah, that's she, what it's called she had a TEDx uh, she's actually like an activist her name is Maggie Anderson so there was a time she did some kind of like uh, mini kind of experiment she called it empowerment experiment and a lot of people might actually have heard of this before and this came from her as well she realized that when you try to she looked at how uh, how long it takes for a dollar for example to circulate within the black community so she said that basically it's, it doesn't even take up to a day she said it takes an every or six hours i've done the same study the actual right. i me personally i've done that same study right. and it's true all over the world where we are right. located. Right. So, I, I had a i had a business director called uk black links in 1992 so, i beg your pardon i'm sorry, sorry. I, in fact go I, on I I beg your pardon. i'm sorry sorry to... sorry go on please please Thank you, sir. so and then she said compared with the number of days it takes within the jewish community which is about, about 20 and then when you now go to the asian community not surprisingly she takes it takes about 30 days for it to circulate within before it leaves however you'll be surprised that the blacks, and this is not even about being uh, ethnic, uh, racial or whatever, it's just the fact of why blacks generally seem to differentiate themselves with their help other groups to differentiate themselves. Now, she you now said that blacks have an, she said uh, blacks have an estimated uh 1.3 trillion gross national income, but 2.7 now, 2.7 two, two, 2. today in, yeah, in America it's within the black. And it's ironic that blacks actually account for the reason why you have a lot of rich um, others, 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 you will. Asian <laughs> and the Jewish. Yeah, we're not exactly Asian and the Jewish. But we're not come down to our own Nigerian level. I think it was Paul or even Jago, both of you, you've said it all. 
I told one of my friends we organized a couple of boot camps in con in conjunction with some of our partners in Nigeria. Femi, I need one in Lagos. I have some kids that I want to send to <laughs> Tesco. Please, before I forget, yeah, we're getting please. This. But you see where my dilemma is now. So one of my friends now told me, you know, we like shortcuts. Because if you don't tell us, <laughs> you apparently it's not just Nigeria. So, <laughs> so you will know what I'm talking about very soon. So, you know, told me, one day the guy looked at me. He said, Femi, see, I have one problem with our people. When the guy was making it free, what we were trying to do was, let's not even just complain like forefathers would say. Let's do what we can within our niche. We try to build critical mass of Nigerians, that pull more Nigerians into IT. Let's do it the right way. But you know what a lot of our people were doing? And this was at the time it was actually, we were making it free. What they were now doing is they'll come to us. They'll tell us, sometimes the book camps could be like two months, three months, but intense teaching. We follow up with people. Like you think that our lives depend on it as if we don't have other things to do. But what was that happening is that you would have Nigeria, a lot of our people, this is not even Yoruba, Igbo. You know, that's why I said this is not even, forget ethnicity or religion now. They'll come behind to us and tell us, uh, you know this thing they call Dagbo? You must have heard of it. Dagbo? Yeah. yeah. No, no, Dagbo, you know. Uh, you know, uh, hey, you know how it is now. They'll come to us and tell us, uh, can't you just help us? Just help us do the interview, do the exam, and if we have issues, we... But the thing is, we, we, my friend, very principled guy, he will tell them no. Now, we now... The reason why I'm bringing these things up, we're trying to build a critical cow mass because we studied how the Indians, the Pakistanis, the Vietnamese, among other people, are, are we able to get to where they got to? It wasn't to overcome. Well, yes, we don't want to do that. We just we don't. Apple. We need a mindset shift, a shift in the yeah, mindset. I keep saying it. Heavy lifting is a problem. Is Four a father. Four father. father. If oh, you're about, if you're around, psychological, psychological problems. My hand psychological. has been up. Oh, yeah. My hand has been up. Yeah. It really has been. Go brought. ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Very good, very good submission. This night is very interesting. Yeah. Um, I want to ask a question. Hi, what you better? You did the ask question on your submission. Are you? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. So, so <laughs> my question is this Do we agree or do we? submit to the to 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 the fact that the spiritual the concept of spirituality this is where it was or, the, I don't... or, or spirit your, do we believe in the concept of spirituality if okay, we do do we wait oh, let, let me finish your, hold let, on, finish, hold on. <laughs> let me finish if we believe the existence of the concept of spirituality do we believe that spirituality Superimposes the activities upon men, and thereby decide how human being acts. Do we, if we believe that, then that was why I asked the question: Could it be that the problem of a black man, not Nigeria now per se, black man generally, is spiritual? Because if spiritual control the physical. And we're having these problems with schools, with grammar, with professorship, PhD. We are still shamble. We are still looking like a, I don't know. So I can understand. If I could, if I could. Pastor Ed, over to you. I, could, um, I hear you. <laughs> Pastor Ed, now, over to you. <laughs> sorry. That's true. You. You're right. I hear you. Ah, you're wrong. There, is, there is a place right. of the spiritual. I believe so. However, while the spiritual might be above the physical, <laughs> so the spiritual works according to your free will and free choice. So it is, a, it is spiritually wrong to steal people's property because there are implications for stealing. So when something is stolen, you have set in motion spiritual consequences that you cannot avoid. And I, I'm intentionally going to use the election as an example. Nobody forced our professors who are electoral officers from fraudulently manipulating election. It was their free choice. But when they chose to do that, there will be spiritual implications for their action. So my point is this. Whatever happens in the spiritual is a function of your choice. These are laws. The law, the law of, we call it spiritual, but the law of whatever goes up, 
Well, calm, calm down. down. It's a law. If you jump from a story building and you think your father is a native doctor, forget it. You are going to splatter on the bare floor and your bones will come and pick up your bones. But spiritual events true. have happened at true. the splatter. True. True. So true. That is my true. own submission. True. If what you're analyzing is true, then how come my grandfather was disappearing and appearing? I don't uh, know. Bro, that's a, that's a deeper question. You don't go somewhere with that. It is your grandfather that told you that. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> it, it can <laughs> only be. You, you, you gave an example. You said if somebody falls from one story building, he gets yes. his bones broken. You understand? Oh, yes. Uh, there is no amount of spirituality that will save that person. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. The one I saw, the one I saw as I was growing up, okay, there is this palm tree that is more than three-story building in my area. My, my uncle climbs that palm tree and jumped from there and nothing happens to him. So okay, what so do you don't you think that can be right, training? Right, man. Don't you think that oh. can be training too? So right, no. That can be training. So, right, right, us, man. Guys, if I can, Jim, 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 very quickly, Jim, allow me this to enter. This building and it didn't get any injury. That, that's not easy. Jim, Jim. But Jim, 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 we all remember we all remember the Ejibo air crash, the Hercules mm -hmm. C one one seven, is it? Yeah. Yes. Whatever one it is. Right. One all right, so, okay, so recently somebody posted an exposition of how that thing happened. The pilot that flew that aircraft was adjudged to be one of the best pilots that the Nigerian Air Force has ever produced. In yeah. fact, there's a record that says that the owners, the people who designed that aircraft, because of that guy had flown that aircraft several times, even when he had problems, and safely landed it, that even the guys who designed the aircraft were like, how did you do this? And we're planning on luring him away from the Nigerian Air Force to come and work for them. Now, that aircraft had, a report had been written that that aircraft needed to be serviced. And they were planning to service it at the end of the month before that air crash happened. But on this fateful day, that air crash has four engines. All four engines failed one after the other. To the extent that with the expertise of this pilot, who was known to be a fantastic pilot, the air crash, the plane, or the whatever it is, landed and crashed, and everybody died. So that's negligence. Someone will say spiritual, oh, their village people were chasing them. There was no village person no, chasing no, them. Hold on, Chief. Hey, before on, you, before um, you come um, back, hold righteous on, man. Hold on, hold on. Um, hold Let on, me hold speak, on. please. I haven't spoken for a while. I've, I've interjected, but I've not spoken yes, my please. piece. If I may. <laughs> okay. If I okay. may, thank you. The, 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 I really don't want us necessarily to go too deep into the spiritual, but I understand why righteous man is asking the question. And he asked the question specifically to the black man and, and, and our, our level. You see, I've always, from a young man, I used to call this world a serve you right world. It serves you right if you win. It serves you right if you fail. Based on what you do. This is a spiritual law. Now, as far as we as black people are concerned, the, the, our horror is our own doing largely when when people come up and start speaking about uh, the Igbo biafra something my brother now now the now you now you now you're doing if, if not to speak the yoruba malays now the yoruba doing if not to speak about the northern uh uh difference between the majority and the elite it's their doing it's them all these are spiritual matters where we can feel ourselves as spiritually astute, spiritually aware, or spiritually strong. Now, these things are what will take us forward. Unfortunately, something within our psyche, which is what I'm always discussing on this channel, because our psyche is highly damaged. 
Something to do with our psyche is not allowing us to love each other or to understand our surroundings and how to win this game on the planet Earth. I don't know what it is that we've forgotten about ourselves, but there's, there is something missing from our being. It's obvious that there is something missing. And to me, that thing that is missing is self-love and, and, and communal love. Change that is the mind. statement. Change there is no mind. point in, being, in thinking about all these, sorry, all these things that are, you know, juju and all. Yes, we can go into that conversation and speak about, you know, the ifa and speak about all these spiritual systems. However, it, you know, things are quite basic. We in Nigeria, we all know, no matter what ethnicity we are, we all know we've got one of the greatest countries in the world. We all know this. We now spread around the world. The world knows of our individual power. They know of our individual power. But they also know that we can't get on with each other. So we are easily attacked. And we are not thinking about how to love each other and understand what it is mm -hmm. to what it is to be a family. I mean, in a country like Nigeria, I'm only on I'm I as a Yoruba man, I'm only honored to have Igbo people as my countrymen. I'm only honored to have people from Tiv, Ijo, all these people. With their, their 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 uniqueness, their differences. I mean, goodness gracious! I'm not going to pull these things out of my own spirit, but it's there with my brother. He has it. So how am I going to so, join? So, Jeb, 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 please let me ask. Right you. off, man. Right off, man. Hold this, on. This let problem Ed, that is facing the let black Ed, man Ed, now, Ed is a pastor. Let us contribute. Let him contribute. It's affecting us in this platform. This problem that is affecting the black race. Can we say it's affecting us also in this platform? I can answer that. I used to have a company called UK Black Links. It was a black business directory. Based on the spend power of the black pound, we were spending in 1989, 10 billion pounds a year. In the UK at that time, there were only 1.2 million black people actually here, African and Caribbean in the UK. 1.2 million in the whole country. I was surprised that that number was so small because I thought that we were bigger in number than that. But only 1.2 million black people were spending 10 billion a year. What simple maths tells us that from that 10 billion, each and every single one of us, man, woman, and child, could actually be a millionaire. But we were not. We were always suffering and complaining about racism and all the nonsense that we complain about generally. So now, uh, I, we, we, um, four of us or three of us came together initially and we added the fourth as directors. We built a company called UK Black Links and we we're trying to galvanize the black pound. In our beginnings, we were, f we were the fastest building company, small, small company in the UK at the time. You understand? We, we, I, I met Tony Blair. I, we went to, to the States to meet the people in the States. We were given awards all over the place. But within three years, this company was finished. And it was finished not because we were in the black community, but it was, it was largely finished because we, within the company itself, tore ourselves down. With all the power that we had, with all we tore ourselves down. So, it, it, you know, the spirit that you're speaking about that is damaging it, it, on this platform or any other business that we do, unless we are really mature in ourselves as human beings, unless we are, unless we are aesthetic, uh, uh, emotionally balanced and emo emotionally mature, but we ain't making enough. We ain't make it, We're not gonna make it nowhere. Oh, we yeah, are, let, me, let me add oh, one thing are, to it, it, what Righteous Man asked about this platform. So, Righteous Man, what I will tell you about this platform, I want to put a question back to you. Do you have multiple bank accounts in Nigeria? And is those multiple bank accounts domiciled in just one bank? Just answer that question real quick. Ask him why he's asking first. <laughs> right. So, Righteous Man, do you have multiple bank accounts in Nigeria? And is those multiple bank accounts Domicile in one bank. What's his He slept off. Or... Man is gone. Oh, okay, he's gone. Oh, so, he's awake. So, 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 <laughs> I'm so here, I'm here. He's so, here. He's here. Do you hear the question that I asked? I do. The, okay, so if you have multiple bank accounts, is those yeah. multiple bank accounts domiciled in just one bank or different bank? Just a question. My choice. It's just a question. It's a question. 
It depends so, right. on my interest. No, it's just a question. If, if you have three bank accounts, is it just those three bank accounts at GTD, Zenit, and Access Bank? Or the three accounts are just in only First Bank? Are you a spiritualist? Why, how did you mention the three banks I'm using? Okay, now good. You already answered my question. <laughs> okay, now good. You already wow. answered my question. So, righteous man, sometimes one mistake that we make, we might think that we have not been corporate, corporate food to some extent. It is a lie. It is a myth. Why? What do I mean by that? Where I'm coming from, I have like seven bank accounts in different banks because GT Bank is very good with current accounts because. Stambic IBTC is very good with my dollar accounts. My first bank account is just there for me with my peace of mind. You understand? If I make any mistake, I must reach inside the bank to correct it. So that is where my savings account is. You understand? I know that I can't just call, Ron K, I'm having a problem with my bank account. Say, one minute, sir. They press, 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 press. Sir, done. Now I don't send money, go give one, I don't want to give money. First bank, <laughs> I'm going to reach Nigeria. <laughs> Go correct the account. So sometimes when you think that we are here arguing, we are not just here no, arguing. No, no, no. You, you understand? Wrong. That's not. No, I that's think right. I think you got I'm it completely wrong. No, this is where I'm going. I'm telling you that don't think that we we are not being corporate corporateful as you think. No, we just have our different idea. Like I said, one bank is good with one type of policy. Another bank is good with another type of policies. People do something. Look at Chin. Oh. I have a friend who know Chin. And this friend oh, called oh, me all the, the time. Talk about team. Is, is, is of talk me. about team, but we never come to the platform. We blame you. Ah, why you attack team like that? I will sometimes blame team, <laughs> but he said, "No, let team know." You see the monetary spirit that we're now talking you don't about. Know, you don't, I don't know now. I'm gonna follow you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, people with the heart just have this monetary spirit that they will follow you anywhere you go. But they are scarfists. They are enigma. They are lagwaja. <laughs> Do you, you believe understand. there is a monitoring spirit? Do you believe yes. there is a monitoring spirit? Let me comment section now. Monitoring spirit now. <laughs> yes. Let me comment section. I went to Anambra Day in my city. Guess what? Like 30 people keep attacking me that we never come to this platform. For you, you didn't do any You didn't fuck up. You, you didn't do any help. I like that way you talk. You like them so much, you did not come online to come and support me with what you like. Or you did not come online to come and attack me with what I said. You understand? Even well, in the well, Paul, how does that... I, how, I don't know how... Here. Paul, I don't know how what you're saying. And, so and it, from where you began for, to where you are now, I haven't understood how you've answered or entered so into the it, question. Let me ask a question on that. That's so long-winded, bro. That's long -winded. In this platform. In this We're platform. all around the planet and you are ain't land nowhere. Spiritual, are we having spiritual issues? Are we being cooperative and everything? The answer is yes. We are selling our different ideas and we are bringing our problem. Sometimes when we vet our problem, another person will bring solution to our problem. Another person will make us understand that why I think that my father was very perfect. No, the information my father gave to me was just not that so perfect. Yeah. That's it. No, That's my I, 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 again, I, I, you know, as I said, if the, the righteous man asked a, a valid question that could have gone anywhere, to be frank. However, he was asking it specifically to our people all over the world, no matter where we are. What uh, um, uh, Femi was saying about the spend power that we have, which is so much, the, 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 the spend power, the, the black spend power in the States would make it the 16th richest country in the world, just by itself. Yes. yes. Richer than Spain, richer than yes. a lot of countries in Europe. Now, this is, a, this is a matter, because we have a power that is just being decimated, not by anyone else, by ourselves, because we don't know how to spend money, we don't know how to encourage each other, we don't know how to build. Now, these things are fundamental things, because they are spiritual. You see, in, in building a business, or in building any entity, it starts from within. It's invisible. Nobody knows it. In fact, when you when you make utterances of it, there are many people that will put you down for thinking such a thing. But all of a sudden, because you have determination, you are able to bring something that is invisible to the visible. This is a spiritual thing. It's spiritual law that these things happen. It's the power of the tongue and the power of thought.
when they say that this world was spoken into existence you have to give it a lot of understanding because these these, these things aren't small but because we we our thinking is so uh i don't know how to describe it it's so not deep it's full of fear it's full of oh i'm being hurt uh, i want to cry uh but bro if you know the pain that people in this world have been through we will try and grow up man we're weaklings we're children and when we make some of our utterances i'm thinking you're just a, you're a picnic you're you be picking you're, you're not a, a full man you're not behaving like a man you are to be you are to be put aside you are to be kept quiet in a in a nursery somewhere the the, the 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 nagasaki and hiroshima happened nuclear war happened on japan you know what japan said after the nuclear war they said okay we dis we accept our defeat they said within the next 30 years we are going to be, we are going to be number one in five things these are things that we as a people don't utter we don't speak about the fact that yeah you you cut me and I, i'm i'm going i'm going to cut you back without any violence I'm going to cut you back differently. I'm going to cut you back because I know who I am and I know what's in my head. These are the things, these are the elements that we need to be bringing to the fore. All these kind of um um if, 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 if these things that give us laughter and these things that give us guile and these things that that um uh, assist us in belittling ourselves. Bro, it's in our, it's in our tongue. It's in our tongue. You know we're saying it we're, we're 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 bringing ourselves backwards all of the time and then we're asking ourselves why what do you mean why why because you did it you did it to yourself you damn fool. which is where i come across because i can't yeah i i in this country we since i've landed here in this country i told all those black people out there I me mean, i don't deal with any racism or i don't i understand that racism is there but it doesn't affect me if anybody comes in front of me and deals with any racism i deal with them straight away and then i move on you understand away from that i don't i don't i'm not looking for racism anywhere all black people are doing in this country looking to see how to march what march we done all the marching we wanted to do in the 60s we, we see where it got us marching is useless at this time for our people because what it is all we need to do is come the ras clark together and stop fuck i can you know these things are quite impassionate because we waste a lot of time and energy on bullshit and we want bullshit to bring us to nevada it's never going to happen never so yeah, i yeah. be there yeah so jago um, um sorry uh, for for this so mm. jago i'll take it for where you stopped <laughs> and i'll align with something paul has always spoken about you see if i had the powers eh, i will ask that we cancel religion or maybe <laughs> it congests i think it's time to decongest our churches and mosques what would you mean by religion do you, do you I mean, mean religion? Wait, wait. Sorry, let me put the question. No, no, do you, let me put the question. Okay. Do you mean religion in terms of orthodox uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. religion, or right. do you mean do you mean that the the word in the Bible is to be thrown in the bin? No, 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 no. no. Okay. So I'm only. I'm saying. Uh, don't take it literally. What I'm about. I'm saying. Um, I think uh, one of our bains, in my opinion, is that we've become so. We think we're Christians and Muslims. In in fact, in my in my own opinion, what we practice is religion, not the actual spirituality that comes with Christianity, for example, or Islam. And yeah, I'll let you. You, you said. Yeah. He wants to speak well, after. said he when you finish. Oh, okay, you. okay, okay, finish. okay. Go ahead, Femi. Okay. Granted, I'm a Christian, but I get so annoyed by the fact that uh for every single thing and i mean i don't have a problem with it again it's just my opinion and i know that maybe because of the level to which uh we've sunk uh people are left clutching to straws to the point where they're left with any other thing but church and must because country the the white people that brought christianity the arabs that brought islam to africa they're not just shouting God, God, God to the point where in the words of, I think it was uh, most recently the current president of Uganda who has his own uh, problem and the expert Mugabe in, back in the days was like, we make it look as if God doesn't have other things to do. Um, <laughs> for me, yeah. <laughs> if I, I was surprised when I, again, I, I, I use only examples I know. 
and I'm sure you probably is the same in other places. When I go to the US, I don't think they care about, I'm not saying that they don't, but I don't think they care about religion. The same Christianity, for example, the way we put this matter. <laughs> it's not, it's, I don't think it's religion. It's not like it's the fact that we've now relegated things that we should be doing. <laughs> we want to kill the if man if God was man, the guy would be tired of Nigeria, right? for example. <laughs> and I just look to the point, I don't know if it covers what righteous man is saying, but that's what just rings him. Sometimes it just irritates me because maybe just to learn. Uh, there was a time myself and my sister who spent time in England, we have a conversation again about Nigeria because we all have these table conversations, whether we like it or not. And one of the thing, the original refrain, just like the same thing that happened to my mother past. Ah, alone, alone, sha, sha, no, may God help us. My, my nothing. If I was a she, you know, she got so mad at me, she actually said, Ah, uh -uh, have I become evil? I said, No, it's just something about when you've experienced other countries. And of course, I've been to UAE, she lived in UAE. Dubai that we see today is not like they're not religious now, but God did not come down. They, they don't spend all their time going to mosque or churches or whatever. You know, so that, I, I don't know, to the point of uh, war, right? It's just the thing that came to my mind, Jagun. I mean, that thing just irritates me. I'm, I'm sorry. I just had to say that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to let you know, don't be okay, only God tired believe, for us. I'm Devil said, don't tire to, for us. I'm going <laughs> to not be fed up with us. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, and then follow. You'll be praised by the Lord. Let me speak out of faith. That's my question. Hello, um, <laughs> I, I let me just add this thing to what Jagun said, you know, why he was, you know, a little bit oh, frustrated. I was gonna speak after Femi. Yeah, every time I want to say something, every time I want to say something, somebody wants to say something. Go easy, oh, for a very long time. I know this is his father, father, I, want to go to father. I know you want good to sleep. Good Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Never supply me Tom Tom. Man. Righteous man. One love. Yeah. I hope you are Where is Uzo? now. Where is Uzo? Uzo is probably here. chilling out somewhere. Uh, right. Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul, you need your Tom Tom, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, just mm -hmm. just give me your details. I tell you that I said uh, send your contact to Dr. Damages. Oh, I did, I did. in the private chat. I did. I put my number there. I put okay, my... then I will tell Dr. Damages to give you my contact. I will inform okay. him. Let me just do that now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good night. God bless all good of night. you. Yeah, good night. Well, lovely. Yeah. Um, lovely. Yeah. From about what uh, Jago was saying, why he was. That's how I was um, at at a point. I think that was about he gave me maybe a year or so, where I was like I used to call our men. To be fair, it's still a, it's fact, isn't it? We are the least performing um, men in the world in terms of uh, yeah, um, as of all as the great group. races in the world. Yeah, as of all the great races in the world, we are the least performing. And um, but after that, I went on to realize the reasons why. I wouldn't say I realized, but it's just my observation. The reasons why is because um, of things that have not happened to us. It's almost like, you know when they say baptism? Uh, you have to be baptized by certain things to for certain other things to happen. And we've not experienced that. And I feel almost, I'm beginning to think now it's deliberate. That all these um, Western not powers... Extra, sorry, if you could be a bit clearer. Not experienced what? The baptism of fire, like other people did. In terms uh, of what? What do, you mean? Um, what do you mean? Downright, um, uh, something that unites all of us. Let, let me not, ask you real it. quick mm. and allow you to continue because I, I, I know it. Me, I did mine the other way, the other way around, mm. where I saw all of the deficiencies within us and how the white man, so to speak, has been the person to mash, mash our desires up. Now, after reaching that point of blaming the white man, I had to take a seat and think. And I thought, bruh, the, the, mm. the fault is not the white man, it's ours. Ours. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's, it's ours. But it, I, I will, if I ask you now, give me one flaw you say that we have, and I'll give you the same flaw you see in every other group.
Oh, yeah, so yeah, this, this, this is it. This is it. Mm. This is why I say it's the love factor. When I when I I, I was six years old and I travelled back to Nigeria, and the travel this time where uh, reggae music was really penetrating my soul, and I was understanding from the Rastafarian all the stories of ill, going from Lagos to Ondo State, entering in my village, bruh, the the wall of trees on both sides of the road, thick. You couldn't see into the, the, the forest. And I thought to myself, there is no way Oyimbo can come through here without the assistance of our people. No way. There's just no way. So you have to understand that even in the very, very beginning, now we are the people that led the Oyimbo to destroy our very kingdomship and our people. So, bruh, it's not that we haven't tasted baptism of fire. We've tasted it more than anybody else. The only thing is we want to run away from who we are. It doesn't matter where I, we're I, going I, in the world. I, okay. You can't yourself. I, I'm not... I, 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 this is why I'm not know, so I to that. I think I know where you're going to. You're looking at spaces like, like, like war that affects us. As hey, 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 the audio is a little bit bad. It's coming so fast. Uh. Okay, okay, can you, can you hear me now? We hear you, but it's like jumping in and out. Uh, okay. Say okay, something. Let me just, let me just, so I, I'm thinking you're looking at scenarios where we have some sort of collective calamity before us as a group. So maybe... Mm, our like collective glory. Or, yeah, something like that unites or, us. Yeah. yeah collective but, but ignorance is I, what I unites us. <laughs> Yeah, I thought about it. I mean, you've given examples in previous um, discussions about places like Japan, um, how that's, mm. you know, how they suffered during the World War. and um, But I also thought about places like Ethiopia that has to fight external forces like Italy. But today, mm. Ethiopia is not doing as well as mm. it should really be doing. There's still a lot of fights going on in, as in in inter mm. interethnic fights going on in Ethiopia. So yeah. does it not tell you that there's more than just having that um moment of you know calamity before us? Does it not tell you that um that is not the only scenario. If you had looked at Ethiopia more closely, they were defeated in the end. That is the truth. I don't know oh. why you use that example. They were yeah, defeated they actually. Yeah. They were they oh. God, please, <laughs> just these people just go and do the hard work. I'm, I can't it's always no easier. drag everybody. You have to okay. do the hard work and find out. No, what do you say? The, the, the British, the British, right? yeah, it depends on how you look at it. They were not necessarily colonized, like make them uh, speak their own it, language or it, stuff it, like that. But they, them, they, 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 they speak Italian, they eat the pasta. <laughs> The British controlled the territory uh, for a while and handed mm -hmm. over to them. And if you look at Ethiopia, they carved up Ethiopia, removed um, uh, this in uh, mm -hmm. Eritrea yeah. uh, from Ethiopia and landlocked Ethiopia, basically jailing Ethiopia in, yeah. in inland. So, so some of the events that has occurred, if you look at it closely, even when I was speaking to Ethiopians, I was like, man, how did you guys manage to lock yourself in indoors? How did you let that happen? It's like our people, we don't think deep. We don't think in time these people they they knew they needed they were building the swiss canal maybe 50 years ahead and they got the utopians and they, all their people to be divided and separated them and before you know it they went ahead and built the swiss canal and now they were using it and landlock utopia Ethiopia is the most par par powerful country in that region 100 million all the countries surrounding Ethiopia, Ethiopia outnumber all of them million. together Yes, yeah, is it up to 120 million now? So yeah, yeah. they outnumber all the countries <laughs> surrounding them put together and they landlock that country to reduce their power. And as, when I look at it, it says, if when I looked at the map, you you just think that the enemy literally drew that map for them so that they, they will keep the most powerful country landlocked so they don't mm. they are not able to do anything. And that's exactly what happened. And they, then they got them fighting each other too. Again, they, they were fighting each other. So they were okay, Eritrea yeah. because of it is one of the strongest military in, the, in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Eritrea is highly militarized to make sure they keep Ethiopia where Ethiopia is. That, they, did that, that, they did that. They did that to China too. They did that to China, right? Mm -hmm. What do China you mean? Has, China has mainland mm -hmm. China, and it also has Hong Kong. It also has Taiwan, 
and these people yes are, I, I, I think they are China right so how do you China, mean I mean Taiwan and Hong Kong those mm -hmm. are disputed territories they refuse to be part of mainland China but that was they can't refuse but, uh, but, they can't refuse. Windows will lose. I don't know what they kind were, of correlation you're talking about. Hong Kong is not Hong Kong. Taiwan is its own country. No, Taiwan let, is, let me do. Let me do. Sorry, mm. Jeremy. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually, as in Hong Kong, Taiwan, they all have common Chinese roots. But the British came and annexed Hong Kong, separated it from China. The same thing to an extent with Taiwan. And these are not, as in, these are not. A, a, a unit as a country today. But we see that mainland China today is doing well. So is it, as in, because your point is that because they divided Ethiopia into different groups, like the, even the Eritreans, they would not tell you that they have common heritage with the Ethiopians, if you realize them. I have an Eritrean, 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 um, Eritrean friend. I, so, I don't know how that is a galvanizing Thing, all this stuff you talked about the people the what i'm talking about is events that unite people what happened to them is dividing them mm. that is the difference here so the chinese you what the experience as a matter of fact a chinese official thanked the japanese official that he says thank you for doing what you did to us because of that you're waking us up now mm. and they never mm. looked back since then and uh, the same thing, the Japanese that were bombed and all the rest, look at how they are organized today. South Koreans, they were destroyed. It's North Koreans, they were destroyed. Look at how they are all building. So what that does is that what that does is that it makes you set your differences aside and you work together to build. Yes. It concentrates the mind beyond anything else. In other words, it increases the collective intelligence. So why is leadership, leadership that does that? Because mm. I, I, you, the point you are making, very valid, is that every time certain nations have had these kind of problems, you go into a closed-door situation. Even the South Africans, even though it might not be exactly 100%, you find that most nations that have shut their door at some stages, the Chinese, whatever, whoever you want to call it, always come back when they're coming back with an, a collective mindset. Because at that point, the leadership helps everybody to come together and have this common you know mm. focus that's where nigeria severally has lost it we've had opportunities where we will have a leader that will come and galvanize us see mm. i know when people get angry that jonathan was removed people were hoping that the buhari would have come said okay let's, yes we have played the politics that we need to play but guys we need to come together i want to build a, a nation of common people whether you voted for me or not but the man started on the wrong front First event he made international, he started talking about 95% and 5%. 5%. So those things don't help us to build the collective mindset forefather that you're talking about. It's all about leadership. It's all about the day we get uh, a leader. Uh, that uh, is well, repeat what you just said again, that it doesn't help build uh, this thing. Repeat what you just said, sorry. I said, yeah, well, that thing doesn't help us build a, a collective mindset. You understand? Where we are working all in tandem towards an objective. Don't get me wrong, guys. Even in the midst of our 200 and something million, there will be one or two saboteurs. Even in China, there are people who are still pulling separate. Even in India, anywhere, mm. even in Israel. But that leader will help get the larger pool of the population to say, we are working together. I have an Indian colleague in the office. And this guy is Punjabi. If you know what the Punjabi is, who we are in India. And if you were following the Canada... I, I really would like to get back to the point before we... I don't want to go... You know, so, so, I, what, I agree with you. What I'm trying to say is this. Mm. That even in India, right now, the majority of Indians are behind uh, uh, what's it, Modi's government. They are backing him and supporting him strongly. And that's why you see the whatever successes the man is making. You understand? Mm. So we've not had that opportunity or maybe we've had it and the people it was trust in their hands to manage it filtered away that uh, political political capital. And that's why we are not making that collectivity. That's the point I was It's talking. interesting we use the term political capital, isn't it? And then while, while you said that, I never thought about it from that point of view. And the idea behind um, why leaders emerge when the conditions are right um, is because the people themselves are ready. If you are not ready for certain kind of leaders, if you see them, Generally, the system will destroy them. You will not want them to exist. So you bring another. You see, 
Churchill. Right. Churchill, in, mm -hmm. Churchill, that was the hero in uh, the UK, uh, World War II hero. The moment the election ended, they voted him out because yeah. he's not needed anymore. The, when the, the, because the environment Expedient. creates the leader, and and that's what I I tend to find. And this is why when you tell Nigerians, you are the ones creating these our leaders, because it's not necessarily okay. The you people are helping, but we are also aiding them. We are also yeah. creating these our leaders ourselves. So yeah. what you tend to find when nations are united like that, it will create leaders that will take that unity that they have and use it to build something. But if so, you the, what the about people have not experienced those things, who get the power by force, like you know, like in a mm. let's say uh, a Sterling mm. or in our own case military rule that we didn't vote mm. for, what did they do with it? How how did they? I mean, I'm I'm juxtaposing those people and mm. comparing what you said with someone like Kaigama in in mm. Rwanda. You understand? Rwanda. So you get into office and you are thinking about your people. You are thinking about mm. what suits your people best. We've had those opportunities. Mm. Let's forget but, about the election. But the, now, let me give you the scenario now. But what forged you, yourself? If the people that took power, what forged them? Did they come through the um, the kind of PLA war that happened in China or North Korean or Russian Second World War? Didn't no, what forged them was fighting civil war, hating each tribalism, or whatever, Nigerian games. And then they came into office. So their vision is different. The vision that they have is different. If you come from a, a pool that is united, that, that you want to set your difference aside because you see a bigger picture that you want to work for, when you emerge, that is what your eye, your eyes on that horizon. That's all you see. You want so to build. It's just not only one way now. So what yeah. makes, I, I'm trying what to find makes, other ways of doing makes, it. Believe you me, I've no, not found them. Kofara is not just only that way. I understand. I know then what you said. Give so. me an example because I'm like trying Sing to find it. Or Singapore. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened to the Singaporean leader? What the, happened to the Singaporean leader? The guy was hmm? due to be executed. He didn't even know. By the Japanese, they were there. He didn't even know. He said he just left by mistake and the people that were with him got executed. So what we are so saying is that so you are taking that things. one, but Singapore rose that country not because of they were passing through pain like external mm -hmm. forces. It like they use it all the time. They, they didn't go through external forces. But but these guys, school in the US, understand the way things work. You understand and bring it. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, try to whip these people to stand still. They call him names. Mm -hmm. They call him everything. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because change is difficult. People that are trying to help, when I tell them, go do this. Are, are you saying they, Singapore didn't go to, Singapore didn't go through anything? They went through. They were one of the poorest. That's the reason why they even yeah, let them the have poorest, independence. But the, all I'm telling you is that the, the UK take over. Did they uh, throw Hiroshima? Did they throw like they, they throw weapons? Uh, like they throw Hiroshima they throw or, or Nagasaki? Now. It's did not they everybody they what throw Germany went through? No, because no. When you use all those things, you talk about the Korean, so the Koreans. Is, you talk about the Germans. You talk about so that, this. They didn't so go what did through Singapore that. Singapore go through that galvanized them for fathers? They, 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 I just told you that simply, told you they went through, you, what they went through was, was rejection. They were captured by they Japanese went through rejection. soldiers. Because that's Singapore is, a, is just a small that piece of correct. territory. That's mm. correct. So they were that's what they went through. Words, and through that rejection, and also they came... And also multi-ethnic group. Mm. Yeah. And multi-religious too. By, by an external aggressor. So Ed, actually, Ed, Ed, actually, what helped uh, Singapore uh, mm. was when they were rejected from the Malaysian... Union. That's correct. They were part of yep. Malaysia. Mm. And this the Malaysians it. said that the Singaporeans were dirty, were Simple. unproductive, were not bringing anything to the table, mm. and expelled them from the Union. And One the man yeah. called these people together so, and said, okay, these Malaysians are not wrong. Mm. We mm. are actually dirty people. We are unproductive, <laughs> but we need to prove them wrong as we move forward. And Chim, yeah. Ch 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 there, there, there's something that surprised me when I later realized mm. that <laughs> That's the one time when, um, unlike what we have right now, which understandably, um, the Igbos majority, a lot of Igbos would rather leave Nigeria. For example, not correct. I mean, not correct. Also, but, not let, correct. Let me say some Igbo, Let me just okay. Let me. <laughs> it's just relative. I'm just looking for an analogy. There's okay. People, but in the case of Singapore, that's the one situation where they they were they actually cried leaving Malaysia. Yes. So, yes. You know, I'm, I, I imagine know. is that not the galvanizing factor? Like I said, but, but, but not necessarily. Thing, but father, but what yeah. I was saying, it make, it goes into my narrative. They pulled them out. The man now said, "Okay," because he was well educated. 
which mm. is what um, Paul was saying. He now said, okay, you know what? I need to change the mindset of my people. Truly, my people mm. are, are poor people. They are dirty. He started sending them mm. abroad to go and study. I've repeated mm. it here several times because I've read the man's book. Singapore has one of the most educated civil service, not Britain, not America. Their civil service is world class. It's proper. The best brains work in their civil service. I was at school with Singaporeans. They're not. They're not jokers. They're simply not jokers, bro. Uh, one they're, of the they're, they're kind of, when, when, they, when the, the Singaporean people I went to school with, when they were in our school, Chinese people don't speak English, and all these were Chinese Singaporeans. The clipped English that they were speaking it's, uh, isn't playtime English. They were a class above, a class above. The, 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 we have to realize that w what we need, what we need to happen for us, isn't going to be isn't going to happen by some hocus pocus, higgledy piggledy. I'm it's sharing gonna be, something now. Sorry, it's, gonna I'm, be I'm now. Sharing something. it's now. So it, that's going to take us where we're going. I do see he was present in World War II. See, 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 Li was among the Chinese men around that. Was he a Chinese man? I didn't even know. They're Chinese, uh, Chinese now. Chinese yeah, Korean. I didn't know they were Chinese. Uh, but they're the, the Chinese so Singaporeans. They are multi ethnic groups and multi religions. Multi ethnic yeah. and religion. Mm. So you see, rounded up by Chinese and look at that, executed. So that was the story I was telling you. And these are the kind of stuff that forges people. That's what I mean. And then they went and got rejected again. And you can see how that kind of stuff can govern it. What I mean by it's not necessarily war. Something that unites the people, something big that unites the people is what, because it says, okay, is, eh, is that what you are calling us? Okay, we'll teach you. Yeah, we will show you. Okay, yeah, that is, you, that's what governance is. Let me ask you, you, what, ask you one question. Wait, wait, can, can I say something? Mm. The idea of it uniting people is actually mm. a function of the response of the people. Because if the people decide mm. to still be fighting inter-ethnic wars, it will still mm. be that case. So that's where the culture also comes in and, and leadership. Somebody like Yi Kuan Chu, somebody like Yi Kuan Chu, the infrastructure that he put in, the laws that he put in, they, were, they weren't easy laws. At all. You, yeah, you have to follow. So, well, he doesn't he, he didn't care about what, what you were thinking about. But he had a mind to take them out of their malaise. That was his mind. And somebody and, has to and people were willing to obey his orders. People were willing to carry out his orders because they believe everything is easy. People were not willing to obey his orders. This man, no, 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 people, no, he didn't come on, man. A dictator is one man. He people enable him. He's not a heavy lifter. He's a thin guy. People had to obey his orders. Okay, to do all those crazy things that he did. My question to yeah, people who work with him, they are committed. Wait, hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. My question for everyone, for Father, especially you, from what you are saying, right? I would rather think like um our civil war supposed to unite Nigeria. But fortunately, mm. no way. Today, what do you think I unite the country really? What what is that? That's, that's a deep think? question, bro. That's deep. We're, we're all looking exactly. at the that's why that's the question. We're, it's what, what, what can the of the way we react to these things. We've had multiple times. Multiple exactly. Times that should have united exactly. us. Multiple times. So, so it's, 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 no, it's no, no civil wars shouldn't I, unite I, I us. I, I, I don't know why I we are know, mixing is, that one up. This is also why also, civil, civil wars. Is somebody's the talking. Somebody's talking. Uh, Ed, Ed, hold on. Ed, hold on. Civil uh, war should not reunite <laughs> us. It should actually divide us. It's when you have a common what? enemy from the external enemy that's when it unites you, not the other way around. Okay, so forefather, here's my view. Why civil war should have united us? No. When, after we fought that war, there was a <laughs> there was a reason why we fought that war. There was a mistrust that led us to fight each other. It's like when two siblings fight over their father's property when the man dies. Remember what they say, that when two siblings fight, a stranger comes in and, and pillages what they are fighting over. We fought a war that the leader of that union at that time, go on, said, no victor, no, no victor. victor. That was a pedestal for him to begin to show that no victor, no vanquished, and begin to say to, let's take, take one example and I drop it up here. The what sustained Biafra for three and a half years? A small part of the country held the bigger part of Nigeria for three and a half years. He should have asked that question. Those engineers that were building those weapons that were destroying federal troops, he should have called them and said, guys, how did you guys do this thing? 
I want you to come and start replicating this thing for the larger good of Nigeria. How did you build all your tankers? That's when the engineering ingenuity of the opposing side that resisted him would have been brought into mainstream to build Correct. for Nigeria. But that's Green, not what Gowan we did. Was, that's Gowan not what we did. Was, he just answered Kane, his question. Kane, because was it, it was an igniting factor. Hold on, he wasn't so stupid. He will not apologize. He's, he how, was how are you guys so? Stupid. How are you so in a Just hurry to condemn your people us. so quickly? You no, are. I'm you are so. Let, let, let me finish what I'm. Let me finish what I'm saying, please. How are we so much in a hurry to condemn our people when, in reality, you are describing the wrong thing? What What you just described is what I said will happen, because we had it was a war against ourselves. You are gonna you are gonna find that they will not want to tap into those people to build. But if it was external forces, no, no. So say, you, where is that thing that you built? Come on, come on. We need to fight together and defeat those people. Build let it, me, let's go and fight them. Let me disagree with you. How, why would you want to fight them for you? Yeah. 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 So you want to build this thing to attack Nigeria again? Let me disagree with you. It's coming from West Germany. After they unite. It doesn't really matter. No, no, no. The no, 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 no that is not, today that comes is from West Germany. Come on now. Come on now. No, Jesus it's Christ. Christ. Why do we compare it to... Okay, fine. Too, I give up. Okay, too, I don't have the, you, I don't have the you energy. Are just I don't have the energy. You have been too monolistic. That's all I'm saying. No, no, I don't have the energy. You are understanding it the wrong way. I said it already. If you fight against yourself, it weakens you. If you don't fight against yourself, it's null and void. But if you fight it, I understand it, it unite you. What what they they didn't didn't fight fight you are making it look like they fought each other. They didn't fight each other. It doesn't divide them. Please they don't, don't have any reason to be divided. It was, it was, 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 break? What are you talking? No, no it was not like East Germany and West Germany. They divide. It was the superpowers that divided them. They didn't divide each other. It was the superpowers that divided them. So when they came back, who developed East Germany today? Oh, calm down. Is it not the coming from West Germany? Oh, calm down. But they don't fight each other. They didn't fight each other. They Paul, always let, to be together. Let me let me try and be a little bit accurate. The the conversation was about what would unite us. We spoke about Singapore being rejected as a group of people within a country. This mm -hmm. united them. We spoke about so many other issues that were calamitous that united people. Where the where the opportunities, the various and many opportunities that we've had in Nigeria in order to unite, we have avoided them. So, therefore, after the Biafra War, we should have become a seriously united country. The end statements to say that we are uh, there is no victor, no vanquished, is is a powerful statement if taken seriously. Unfortunately, again, it was just words. It wasn't the three meant, the three it wasn't meant spiritually, it wasn't meant with any dignity, it was just clap English. Yes, it was. Let me finish, please. Now, the opportunity, if given to embrace the Igbos again in real terms, that you are you are our brothers. We do not want you to depart. We see you as important people to this nation. What you have been able to achieve by yourselves and the example that you have shown in holding the whole country for three and a half years, how the bloody hell did you do it? We'll like that to be a part of our nation. That opportunity was missed. It wasn't given. Let's be accurate when we're speaking, please. Otherwise, we just go into all kind of inflammatory speech. That means nothing. We, yeah, we need to listen. <laughs> Honestly, we, we really need to listen to each other. So we, See, we don't, this is not about words. If it was about no, words, I agree with you. Know, no, it's 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 beyond no, words. No. You can agree with him what you want. See, it's not no, what I was saying. Can we please let speak? You can hug him all you want. You can hug him all you want. Please, we overshadow her too much. Can we let her speak? You know you are all in agreement. Let me just say something. See, you can run from the truth all you want. You sooner or later, you guys will circle back and find out because I did the hard work of checking these things out. The the stuff, the way it works is that it's not about words. What I found out is that human beings will talk, talk, talk. It means nothing. 
there are certain things that are subliminal that is out of your control. That, that's the only way you can set your differences aside and operate as an entity. If you say, oh, Victor, no Victor, no Van, it means nothing. Uh, because it's not, it's, it's not yeah, yeah that's what i mean i'm talking about in the context of go on it means nothing in reality what is going to happen is that they're going to remember the evil people for them and they're going to do everything to try to that, that is, that is, you're and correct, you're correct. You're correct. no 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 forefathers is correct but even if he is, meant it it's not going to matter no even no no if no it, father, it's not going to matter your pre, your oh, premise oh. is right in that it, it it tells us the level of immaturity we have. That's, That's all. Culture. That's it, culture. It's not immaturity. It is immaturity. It is same. immaturity because we no, had an okay, opportunity. Please, let her speak not a now, please. Ru Rwanda let's did let's not speak. do that. It's just human Rwanda, nature. Rwanda did not do that. Rwanda went the opposite way. They saw that as an opportunity, mm. and we can see the dividends of it today. And Correct. if we're going to, if we're going to Correct. on the global mm. basis. We saw what happens to the um, the Axis forces in the in the Second World War. We saw mm. Germany. We saw all of that. Do you know that the origin of the World Bank? You know, Rwanda is not why that you, civilized. Why you? Oh, that was. No, the, no I need to add because uh, no, we can't, can't. You can't just be saying stuff as but if it's, it's Rwanda is Japan. Let it no, but it, was, it went on. <laughs> it went on. I just see for her today. No, I just, I just have to correct certain facts now. I just have to correct certain facts. No, 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 no. It's pretty pretty. Let the guy land. Go ahead. Go ahead. If we go on the global on the global um context. What we note there as the World Bank, its its formal name is actually the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Mm -hmm. It was not created for the African countries, really, that benefit from it today. It was created to reconstruct Germany and those other Axis forces, right? How did the West, as a collective, respond to that, 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 that sort of inter-country crisis, if we're going to take the West as a collective? They saw that okay, these people we've done, we've, we've really beat them, we've crushed them, but let's bring them back into the fold. Let's create a, 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 the, the, the Bretton Woods institution to see how they can get back to their feet. On and one condition. Say that again. Just on one condition. They give them just one condition. Okay, yeah, That's ask okay. that. I mean, I, I don't know that condition, but you can add it. Oh, they just said that they won't uh, build no nuclear weapon, no nothing. So they frustrate exactly. them on that. But they couldn't have a standing army. No military, no right? military evil. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 even at the, you see, we could have done that in Nigeria because really the, the, the defeated Biafra, for example, did not even need to create a military if they were going to be absorbed into Nigeria. So it would have been easier for us. So this is where the leadership and even the culture, because we have a culture of suspicion amongst ourselves. We don't we as it's, it's, which is the, that, which is the immaturity I speak of. Exactly. Mm. Biafra to, to is today, within the country. Today, with the way that the East has gone through, as in the old night, and, and I'm not trying to like particularize it to, to the East, but with what the Eastern part of Nigeria has gone through, you still see in the last elections, you see people from some part of the country saying they will not vote for, and it's not just that they will not vote for an Igbo man. That would have been... That would have been maybe fair enough. Not, 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 not right, but maybe I could say that was fair enough. They asked to go back to the, 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 the words with which Igbo people were mocked in a war that took place over, that's like about 50 years now. They went back yeah, to almost, those words. You know, yeah. you know, you know that, that word that, that refers to, oh, um, give me water. They had to that's use that yummy. word to, yeah, to categorize or to characterize Igbo people today. You don't see that in Germany. You don't see that, I mean, you don't see that in the West re uh, relationship with Germany today. Oh, so these geez. are the cultural okay. issues. See, no, let, 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 let me, let me, let me do a lot, another correction again, please, before you add another one that I have to correct. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just exhausted. See, is this is exhausting. When a nation fights other people, I'll repeat that again not yourself that's one um rwanda's gdp per capita is below half of what nigeria is and if you think nigeria is bad let that gdp per capita goes to the level of rwanda then you understand and secondly in the case of uh, this in germany that what they did with germany they learned their lessons from the first world war that the second world war is what they are trying to correct the error of the first world war 
they tried it, they tried to treat Germany terribly after the First World War. It didn't go so well. It created Hitler. It united the people against them. So now what they did was we have to do it differently this time. We have to treat them better, integrate them within the system. And that that's seems what, to have worked. That's at this what Nigeria them. should have done with Biafra. And, Is that and, what the point we're making? Yeah, yeah, but they, but the, the Nigeria land, and remember, they have the luxury of being the superpower to call the shots. They, they well, divided the, the this in Germany in half. They didn't keep Germany together. They one side went to uh, this thing, the Soviets, and the other side, uh, this thing, uh, remained uh, this thing with the West. And then, if you look at the Japanese and the this thing, the Singaporeans, you that one is interesting because you can argue that maybe they could have decided that they don't care. But they cared because China was there. So they worked with those ones, developed them as a counterweight to China. And that's what they represent today. Well, who developed, who that developed is, who? Who developed Oh, the, 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 the West uh, enabled them to develop. If the West didn't want them to develop like us, they would have underdeveloped them too. But they saw that they needed to counter China's uh, rise too, and maybe, or probably the Soviet Union too. They had to support those ones to make sure that they develop, oh, Father, just like they did with Ge this just in Germany. Fail. We just blame the West too much. We no, just no, no, no. I'm not saying. Hold on, I'm people not blaming fail. them. I'm just saying that they treat both different sides differently. We are not useful to them in terms of strategically. We are not useful Father, to them. The Irish and the Italians were punished. Mm -hmm. Even coming to America, they were punished. Somewhere along the line, mm -hmm. they gave them leverage and they used it. They sent them, okay, go to the fire service, go to this and that, and everything. And they bounced back. The Jewish are hated by Caucasians. Not, not today like they want to tell you. But these people bounce back. There's a way you put yourself. You will be forced to reckon with. You understand? Like I tell you today, Fourth Father, the font that is growing the world today is called Capital Flight. Whenever, whenever place that font find opportunity, the funds go there. When Bigget understand to develop the software in America, costing two thousand dollars, and to develop that same software, we cost him twelve dollars in India. He moved to India and he moved that font to India. That was what bring these people today. But, but so but certain is, things, is, when this, we this, have all these opportunities, we cannot make use of these opportun opportunities very well. This still we meets my criteria, West. though. It still means, Why do we keep talking about blaming the West? This thing, before you start making me call you an apologist for the West, because that is, if that's what you want to be saying, nobody's blaming the West. I just said that if another so force you, you, fights you another talking, force... You keep talking... So when you talk about Singapore now, that's why I use the word. You talk about Singapore... You made it sound like the West developed Singapore so that they can go close to North no, China. No, I, I, I said they enabled it. The I didn't say they, they, they developed it. Hard for themselves to be forced to reckon with. <laughs> I said they they didn't block them. They didn't have any interest in blocking their development. Okay, so because it works for them too. For, for what I just want to say for us, they have an interest in blocking us. But what, what I want to say in the light of your mm. theory is that it is not a one size fits all. You know, you say that, that, mm. that it has to always be as if it is that when there is a, an external aggression against you, it forces you to unite. No, I'm saying there are multiple fronts and opportunities that you can leverage to unite and accomplish a goal. And we've mentioned this. I, I did agree to that. And that's what I was saying. And that it, I, the first the definition I gave it was that a uniting factor. I didn't specify whether it's conflict or anything. Something that unites the people. Uh, since everybody was heard, could I interject? Um, no, no, you are, you are free to interject. This will be a How that? An easier time. Is I can to bomb up yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Are you uh, so on uh, understand Jamaican language every day, brother? Because me understand pigeon, you <laughs> feel me? <laughs> How you did now? So, so watch you know, me, I talk it in a Jamaican because sometimes we, we have to talk, make them don't understand, you feel me? <laughs> but Nigerian problem or African problem is. You are very hard to get angry. You feel me? And that's a problem. The problem is Africans that 
all what you'd call moral. You see me like the Africans want to be the epitome of morality. But only to white people and Chinese and Arabs. Never to the black man. You feel me? And that's the African problem. He doesn't get mad with the other races. And if you, if you don't get mad at the other races, you cannot be a Singapore. You feel me? Because Singapore got upset because Malaysia treated them bad. Who are you upset with? We're not upset. We're not upset. We see France destroying the Fran Francophone countries. We're not mad. The Francophone people not mad. And that one is telling me that I'm blaming Westerners. It, this kind of especially, especially the Senegalese, you know, they the last ones to get mad. You see me? Because they're French. And and we we are Ghana people, right? You think they mad at America? I mean, their country is being proclaimed as bankrupt. <laughs> I mean, these people not mad at America. What, why are you not mad at America? Uh, you you mad at Nana or Koko Adu? No, 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 no. That's not the man. That's not the man to be mad at. You need to be mad. Yeah, they need to be mad at that army base that has confiscated their airport and their country. Ikafaya, are, you know? are you referring to Nigeria or Africa? I'm, I'm referring to all Africa, including Nigeria. And the thing is, none of you are different. You just act like you're different. But none of you are different. All of us is crazy in the same way, bro. So it can we just fire. not do it. It can fire. It can fire. Yeah. Um, are you including the Caribbeans also? Of course. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Of course, I said it. All of us as black people, we kind of crazy the same way. Like, the way we do bad things is the same way all of us do the bad thing. That's why I see, like, why are we being hypocrites all saying or the tribes are different, the this are different, but we do wickedness the same way. First of all, why we all love the white man? How come we all different and so different, but we love the white man the same? You feel me? Oh, oh, oh. isn't that hypocr hypocrisy? If you love the white man the same, then that means you need to prove to, your, to us that you love black people more. And if Africans can prove to themselves that they love black people more than white people, that's the answer. That's the answer for Nigeria, Cameroon, and the rest of other um, my Negroes. You see me? You're not going to get anywhere until you give privilege, until black privilege control Africa. No, you, we need to take away privilege from Europeans in Africa. We need to take away privilege from all of the other races. Nobody should get rich in your country if your people stay poor. Let me say to you, I can, brother, real quick. Yeah. You see, whilst I fully agree with your premise, we have to appreciate the sickness that we've all been through. So whilst your answer is correct, how to get there is another issue. And I will put to you that how to get there, the first thing we have to do is to take out the enemy within. Because it's the enemy within that is standing right in our way in defense of the outsider, whoever they may be. So that's the, 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 so that, that the pastor. Then uh, what about people that are busy saying that we are blaming foreigners? Are there enemies within? Uh, where do you start I, I, from? I no, no, no. You see, my brother, the example has been made. The, the, it's only because we're not paying attention. Hold on, hold on, hold, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. It's only because we're not paying attention that we're not learning any lessons. We, we, yeah. we, going, we going on like the, the, the lessons are out there. There's been a recent example in Niger. It was clear to everybody that the first person that they took out was their prime minister. 
he was standing in their way. This is before. It's not to say that they didn't understand okay. that it was the French that was oppressing. But they took out the person, they stole the stool pigeon that was in the way. They took him out first. That's the enemy yeah. with him. And then they went for the French. No, 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 no. Hold on. All right, wait. All right, one second. One second. I know what you're saying, Pime. I know what you're saying. The thing is, the thing is with when, when you say tricky stuff like that is you 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 try to that skimming off the top. It's like you skim off the, the you blow off the frog off the beer. You feel me? But what what what's what's our problem is we are enemies too. This is what I'm saying. Like everyday people. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Everyday people. The thing is like if you get rid of Tinubu, almost anybody you get to replace him is just like him or worse. Yep. If he makes so, so what we gotta do is stop people from being like, from being sellouts. We need to go after the white loving people. That's why we have to pay attention to our women, because our women, we as men, are notice how many women comes up on this program or want to come up to come speak social um um cleanliness you, you see them where are they it, which women did you have how much women did you have to refuse reject off the panel none you know why because they love the white man more than you you see me and they are instructing their children to love the white man so we most it's mostly men fighting this war and 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 colonization is so tricky that it is it, it is affecting our women and we don't we don't notice how powerful it is against our women so we actually fight in a tug of war if we don't control our women you feel me because it's like she's there teaching the five-year-old that europe is nice europe is good you gotta go there look at that shoes look at that thing look at that hair she loved the hair she loved the europe here the european hair you feel me and our system promotes that stuff we need to get rid of those things we need to get rid of white loving we need to get rid of white hair wearing we need to um make the woman comfortable in her skin and her hair we actually have to give her confidence and 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 compliments about herself her hair and we got to be strict with her in terms of giving affection to these other races you see me we need to be very strict you can't have your woman just up and go marry to a european and go live in goddamn scotland or greenland you cannot do that we should stop these things we control our woman. No, she don't. She don't. She do, don't. I, I can't follow her, but yeah, he appears wait, that wait, 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 Jagos wait, wait. Jagos said the same thing. Sorry, I just, wanted, I just wanted to add to what you are saying. It appears Jagos said the same thing, but in a reverse way. Instead of um, uh, um, not loving Europeans, Jagon said loving ourselves, isn't it? Is that what you said, Jagon? That we Absolutely. should love ourselves more. So it's like the same thing. We should prioritize ourselves, isn't it? And yes, now. Isn't that what you mean? I can fire. We should prioritize no, ourselves. No, definitely. We should we should bow to each other. We should bow to each other. Our, our, we should we should respect our woman. And if she doesn't respect us, we make her respect us. You see me? This is not a ask question like, oh, are you loyal to blackness? No, 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 no. You do not ask black people if they're loyal to blackness. You have to. It's a must. There's no. We need to stop giving people choices as to whether they like blackness or not. You don't have no choice. Or get out of the race. Go somewhere else. If you get out of the race, now if you can't get out of the race, you have to love it or get out of Earth. You feel me? I think that's what is our issues. Like we going around acting.
acting like we have choices whether we love Nigerian people or not. And you, Nigerian. We, we go around acting like we have choice whether we love Africa and African people or not. Like this, you don't have no choice. And if you think you have choice, we need to dispose of you. <laughs> if we want to be holding up, we holding up time. <laughs> and we need, to, we need to win. We need to win. And all the white loving behavior from our people and Arab loving behavior from our people is keeping us poor. If you make one set of people praise European white men and one set of people praise this dirty Arab. We need to get rid of these things. And I know it's hard, but let's go slow and try to um, um, what you call manipulate our education system and see if we can get some black consciousness being taught in school. You see me? Can I, can I just can I just ask you for yes, five? You, you promised me yesterday that you'll play today, even though it was apt yesterday. But at this present juncture, it is very apt. I sent a a minute video yesterday and I've sent it again today. Please open it and just have a quick look. We'll well the, the discussion will continue from there. Okay, the video, okay, yeah, that's the last one there. Let me see. I only sent one video, it's a YouTube okay. video. It won't last okay, long. I'm, I'm going to get it down. Let me just put it Thank on. You. Yeah, I saw it yesterday. I think um, conversation just overtook it yesterday, I think. Let me put it up now. Uh, a reggae group up. In this is a reggae group in Jamaica, Black Uhu. Okay. Black Uhu. Black, Black Uhu. Uhuru, you mean? Yeah, yeah. That was a nice... Black uh, no, so, uh, you want me to play it, um, Jack? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, hopefully, there's volume where you are. Yeah, yeah I hope so, too. We need this book. Can, can, can you hold on? I can, hold on I, can, I can fire. Hold on for a second. Um, can you hear it, Jack? On when I play this? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Pure water. That's it. That's, that's it. Hopefully, you guys heard it. I would like to know what you guys perceive. No, they're making our kids dummy, dummy, stupid well, people. Well, let me let me just say, when I saw this, and you can see the laughter on it, it was it was a comedy. It's a joke to 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 the TikTok watchers or whoever was looking at that. This, when I saw that, I thought, what a horror! This is the kind of mental uh, mental shrinking that we are our education is about they were saying if you do well doctor lawyer engineer or whatever if you do poorly then all of the kind of menial jobs like the menial are not important now when you see this kind of thing this is how we are in nigeria we, we our artisanry the, the way we use our hands has been divorced it's, it's stupidity. What we want is high intelligence for a white man to wherever they're going. Now, I, I don't mean it in, in any rude terms because uh, we are all of a, a slightly middle class background. But because of that kind of education, you can see how it squeezes the, 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 the infant minds from creativity and from, from thinking. They've just shrunk their thinking from base. You see it? Base. You see it? So I, I just what? wanted to add that. All under better. I just wanted to add that for yeah. our understanding that from babes, from youths, we are just producing more, more, uh, abs more ignorant people Terrible. into into adulthood. And we 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 growing terrorists. They 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 becoming terrorists. They See, becoming easy easy to, to be transformed into into hostile people. You, you see, mean, they, these are the books we need to be need to be famous in Africa. 
This what, need what to I, be so I, I, I can't fire. I can't fire. Let me just add something. I think what I find a little bit peculiar is that even till now, and I'm not so surprised to be fair because I catch myself doing it sometimes. Hmm. The conditioning is deep. Yes, sir. And that's why I find it a little bit forgiving when some people say I'm blaming the white man. Um, see, I'm beyond racism. I don't have to. I keep saying it. I don't care whether you are racist towards me. I know that we created this problem for ourselves. Maybe our forefathers messed up. Yes, you are racist towards me. You are a douchebag. But yeah, I had it coming. That's how I look at it. Weakness. People treat people that are weak. If people that are weak, they will treat you badly. That's what happens. It's just if it was even written in the Bible that the the they would what the poor man has will be taken from the poor man and given to the rich. It's just what it is. That's the nature of the world. I don't cry for that one. And but sometimes when you hear it, you just feel like, why are people still thinking like this? You th we thought we have moved past this stuff, and suddenly we ended up talking about I'm blaming the white man. It, it's a common sense thing. If you, so that's why, that's if, if you sorry, let, let me give this analogy again, and because I anybody that hears this analogy, I don't want to have to repeat it again to that same person. Because if you have a house, you don't lock your door and your window. Somebody comes and steals from inside the house. It's your fault that you left the door open, but it doesn't mean the thief is a is a innocent. No, it's just no. as simple. I'm that is the point. Whenever I'm called white people, white people are like the thief, and we are like the uh, careless ones. So we are ultimately responsible to protect ourselves. Yes, sir. It's just that simple. As a matter of fact, in the true world that I see. I don't even blame I don't even blame the white people that in the context I just gave just and the, at least the thief is a thief. Mm. But in the real world, the white man is doing what he's supposed to do. Careful, yeah, he's, he's actually he's, he's actually honorable. Doing what he's yeah, supposed to do on. for his people. Look at what's happening today, right? Why is ECOWAS fighting for friends? Uh, how you do something? What about the Africans? Who who, who does ECOWAS fight for? And then then you, then you hold on. Then, then when 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 Niger gets defeated and France install a, a, another president that gives them zero point eight percent of the uranium deposit um, um, revenue, right? And and Niger stays poor. And become a, 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 a torment to Nigerians because they they rob they go rob you all that. Who do you blame for this type of behavior? After you 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 secretly are you outrightly support people from overseas to damage your own people? Oh, what what's the sense of that? We need to get rid of these people even by force, man, because these people. Are she and that's what that's what um Namni um was talking about like he was getting annoyed and be like man that's why we have to pick up arms <laughs> the the um the guy from South South you feel me he, he, yeah he that's what make him upset and be losing his 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 um his faculties for him to go over, over state like that because the, the the things we are doing is only benefiting Europeans. I can let me ask you a question. What what we in there London last year? Repeat that. Are you in London? Or are you in the uh, are you in the uh, states? I hardly like to tell my location because I'm a, I'm a I'm a um black black identity extremist and I love to vive But we in the we in the belly of the beast. Sorry, let me just show you what the what the document that they found that the, what they said about Echo was. Um, this in that they are being moved. Yeah. I'm not Sorry. in London. I didn't see it. To black revolution revolution. It says the Regional Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. Good one, Niger. 
and norms that align with GFA principles and could serve as a forceful diplomatic partner for the United States. We were not wrong when we were drawing connections with the chairperson of ECOWAS, current president of Nigeria, Tanubu, Mr. Tanubu, and other forces. Now I understand the current president of Ghana is Mr. Akufu Ado. We know that Mr. Um, William Ruto is the current president of Kenya. Three fellows. That the people are made aware of what has happened in their country. I would imagine they are very likely to know that it was U.S. meddling that was involved in their previous governments. And this is a bit of a smoking gun, I believe. And it is my prayer and my hope that they will continue to stand for their people. And perhaps they might be on some level trying to weed out some of the remnants of some of the previous administration and thinking. And who knows what other There's no need for me to go on. I think the idea was just for ECOWAS, really. I don't know why I bothered even going for that. But the idea was that the, the West see ECOWAS as a tool that they use and they've been saying these things regularly and and equa seems to be formed like that that's why when i asked uh, prince adewale about that uh, this thing he was like they couldn't form a defense pact but they just had to form a force whenever they need to use it what kind of force is that you, normally when you have a force that is international it's based on a defense alliance that's how it's supposed to be but equa seems to have a, an international force but it's not defense alliance i want to tell you something too it's crazy you know it's, hey, it's management hey. it's, it's, it's what it is it's, it's people management that's how you Give manage the whole location yeah. of people yeah Give me a second. they're sat where they're sat which is why nigeria at this particular time being the head of ECOWAS, and whether they have the chairmanship of ECOWAS or not nigeria as we all know is still the head of ECOWAS. Nigeria yeah. is such a terrible stool pigeon as a country for the west and not yeah. this yeah. Is the i want to say something i want to say something right Nigeria and the rest of the country should have never allowed ECOWAS to arrange ECOMOC. You see me? It's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's like, so, so that means ECOWAS does, doesn't go by its name anymore. It should be named, it should be called Waka, WAKAWAS. It should be called WAKAWAS. The war, the war, um, the war organization of Western West African states, if you may, instead of the economic um, organization of ECO, you understand? Why, why are, why isn't ECOWAS, that is the economic organization of West African states, why isn't it in economics? Why, why is ECHO not in economics? Because it isn't. It's not it, in economics. It, 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 does, it does have economic uh, in dimensions. They do trade amongst themselves. So um, how, can you give, how can you want to give away a profit such as a uranium, um, a, a, the, the, a, the uranium, um, what you call, I would say, the uranium location of, of West Africa? Where, where, where economically the uranium would make Nigeria rich and um, Niger rich, including the rest of ECOWAS countries. And not only that, not only that, if, if ECOWAS is, is, is using its brain for the people, then that would, they would see a, a electric, a electricity source for all ECOWAS countries Simple. in Niger simple so it really so, is it really is simple yeah so what's going on i mean like how is who, who what is shouldn't echo us be dealing with economics in terms of what they can get for the betterment of west african people 
That's not that should be what what Echo was supposed to be. Not, not formulating an army to take over Niger to give back France in the name of democracy. It, what economic what I don't mind them going in Sierra Leone because nobody nobody was trying to take Sierra Leone. But the France is France is trying to take Niger. The, but the thing is, uh, the thing I, I've observed is that I, I think that what that Prince Adewale said keeps coming back in my head over and over again. He said that the reason why ECOWAS couldn't form a kind of solid block of, let's say, defense uh, alliance. Do you know how powerful that would have been? Like, I don't think coups would be happening if you have a defense alliance. They won't. They won't. Because if you if you remove a government, the other governments will come and remove you. No, that's, you know, that's the defense know. alliance. You know, hold, hold on. Let me finish my point. I can fire. Let me finish my point now, because the what Prince uh, the Prince said was that that Francophone countries have defense pact with the French. That was what was preventing it. But look at what has just happened now. Three Francophone countries have broken out of the control of the French. And what is Nigeria doing? Instead of taking advantage of that and say, you know what, let's form a defense pact with all these nations bring them under our sphere of influence okay now you're talking you see what i mean now that's an talking. opportunity there that because they have that, that the French have lost control of them yeah yeah i was right. thinking that you were because let me tell you something too Nigel. you feel me the only reason why i support the coups is because the countries was in the hands of foreigners I support coups that oust foreigners out of their country and out of their um, political um, affairs. I support any coup that does that. You see me? Um, 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 right now, to, um, Niger, um, Nigeria is under duress. And listen, Nigeria is under duress. Mm. They got they got a four year they got a four year prisoner as president and and not to mention what they know about him. So the man is handcuffed. That that man is handcuffed. So when when we look at things, it's like, aren't we captured? You feel me? It's like Niger and, and Mali and Guinea is the only is maybe the only free ones. Uh, um, what's his name? What's his name? Um, Gambia. They all, all of them want to be all of them want to be friends with the United States. The United States is, and and you poor. United States have never done anything about any increase in anybody's wealth. Why you want to be this? These, these set of vultures friends. What are you achieving? Oh, biscuits? The little, um, what they call it, um, what they call the food, what they call it, um, this, 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 this thing they give um, um, aid. It's a bunch of biscuits. You feel me? And, 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 and they make your people suffer in order to give them biscuits and we not mad. Sometimes we don't even think they they the ones who did it. I, I think we are, we are. I think even when we know it, we, I don't think it's not like we are not mad. I Il think this is. I think I, see, 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 I can fire. Let me just say this. I think this is where we need to be reappraising the way we look at things. I'm beginning to think that too. It, like it, there, there was this social experiment that was done where. If somebody is getting attacked or hurt, and one person is walking by or so, they will help that person. But if many people are walking past, nobody will help the person that needs help. So what that says to you is that human, the way we respond to things is not as clear cut as we think. It's not, no matter how much you like to think about it, that like we are going to respond in a certain way. Why are we not mad? We are not going to be mad because we are not in that space. That's not how societies respond. Societies respond to certain stimuli. 
they have to have something that unites them before they behave in a certain way. And, and Nigeria right now doesn't have anything that unites it. Neither does almost all West African countries or all African countries. Tell me one thing, one nation in Africa that has one uniting factor. Sub-Saharan African country. Not one thing, no, no mission. They don't have anything they are driving to. They're not saying, oh, our mission is to build strong trade ties. This is the drive, and this is the, the, the thing, and all nations are working at it. You don't, there's nothing. No mission at all. And that is what you are seeing. You have to have a uniting factor. And maybe we can wish that our leaders are doing it right now. But history has, and psychology has taught me that when you're looking at things at a macro level, just wishing it is not going to make it happen. Something needs to give. So that's how things happen. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good, uh, good, good point, forefather. Um, Ika Fire. One of the points you made was um, you support coup in our, in those countries because um, if 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 it's to get rid of the um, the 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 West. Of the foreigners in general, I also support that. I also share that idea. But however, over time, what you find in these Africa countries, these dictators will come in. They themselves, they don't have plans for the people. They just want to have jack power. It's just so about what? So power. what? So yeah, what? Because you, they, okay. What I'm saying is. You, you you drive the foreigners away, you grab power. My Our expectation is work for the people of the country. But they don't do that. That is where my, 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 my well, worry is. Well, you know, no, first of all, which, which time in Africa, which time have <laughs> ever, have anybody ever had a coup and exit um, any foreigners and have the country for themselves. Which one? Uganda. Okay. So, so you need to look. It's it's more complicated. What mean, no, what I'm trying to say is you don't have no experience of that. You you, you you're talking about things that is foreign to us. What Niger? What what Niger, What what Burkina Faso did is what Thomas Sankara did. You see me? So. I am with them. It, to me, to me, we all must suffer because of us. But we're not supposed to suffer because of them. You yeah, see I, me? Yes, of course, I can. I so can. if we are suffering, let us suffer. And if we are growing, let us grow. But not because of them we suffer and not because of them we grow we should I, not owe nobody for our great growth growth i can i understand yes, i understand and agree with that fundamental view but you see we have to also understand that all we are are human beings and we feel yeah. pain we feel joy and all these other elements yes, yes, yes. now when the francophone countries first had their independence, which was a really false independence, all of these yeah. countries saw the wickedness of France. There, there were a lot of deaths, a lot of puts into deaths. They took all of their their para, 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 the, all yeah, their bits and pieces out of the country. The they destroyed. The all on there, all on. They destroyed what was there before. Now, in, in them leaving, they've had governments and, and coups, and they've had dissatisfaction. Yeah. Now, even now, at this point of, of time, in a country like Niger, if those Africans don't get it right in that country, you see the French reappear. You France the, will destroy, yeah. You understand? And it's going to yeah. reappear because the people want different, the people want better. It, it yes, is, right. We have to understand that it's high time we get it right. We, we, there's hardly any more time for mistakes and errors. We, no, we, what we need... We have we 400 need, years of mistakes and need, errors. Let me tell you, big man. What we need, we need 
to capture our media. We need to capture our air. We need to capture all of that. So that means if our people is suffering, it's our business. You see me? And no one can come and, and tell say things in our people's ears. We need to be like the United States and and, and um Russia. Security uh -huh. as, as as what um Nigeria said. Security, security, security. But it means information security also. Yeah. That means only you disseminate information to your people. Cut off the dissemination of information from from Europe to your people. Let them stop listening to anything Europe. Let them own. We have to control these things and make Africans only hear Africans at least for for fifty years. I say a hundred years. Seriously, that's a bit long now. Uh -uh. If Chinese people were listening to themselves right now, who is going to build all this stuff that they have? Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I can't find you. Yeah, well, to... at least 50 years. What I mean is like, yes, yeah, we, we should steal, no, what I'm saying is we should steal um, um, technology. We should, we should not be scared of stealing technology. If you mean, no, right, now, they, they Benny, right now, Benny, we're just not showing our people interest, especially in Nigeria. Nigeria don't even have huge research centers where as soon as a dude makes a goddamn bicycle, they grab him and install him in there. You feel me? Nigeria, don't, we don't care about each other. We don't have no, no African love, no black love. If you mean to know that we're going to put money into these individuals. But I believe we do, though. I, I, I seriously believe we do. At least we have just as much as well, any other so group. When, when, did, when did Nigerian government um, um, grant money to in, in innocent car company? When did Nigerian government do that? You ever heard of that? See, see, when, okay, I understand what you mean. When is but my point is that the reasons why Nigerian government is not doing that is the same reason why the country is poor. It's That's not because lot. they don't no, love no, no, each no. other. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's because they don't like each other. Let me tell you something. Tell you something. Like, like, let me tell you something. Like me and you two, Niger, and my other brother, half Jamaican right here, we too ugly for the government to be giving money for us to be living in luxury. Didn't you know that? Didn't you know that? You didn't know only white people deserve luxury? Oh, you didn't know? Go ask um, the other Nigerians. <laughs> That's how they think. They don't think you deserve no luxury. Until we get this type of behavior out of our people, we done for. Now, mm. I think that the half Jamaican brother right here in the glasses, I think he deserved millions. You feel me? I think he deserved a, 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 a section in the bank full of gold and all that shit where he can where he can live in luxury and his family live in luxury and we all look good that's what i'm thinking about my people right here i want all of you to be rich that i can come check you for some stuff but our people not thinking like that you know how much of our people nigerian have the way of success for other Nigerians, but you know what? They withhold that because they own, they think that only the French crackers deserve money, only um Switzerland deserve money. Oh That's why they carry their bank money to the Swiss bank because they don't think that that type of money belongs in Nigeria. No, I don't, I don't think. I don't think so. I just look. Let's just put it in a proper perspective. Go ask your little Christian cousin that, bro. Go ask your little Christian cousin that. I can't find a one thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let let, hold on. let uh, other people add yeah, to the conversation. What I, what I what I what I mean by that, if you want to put it in a proper perspective, even even here in the West, if you steal money, you're gonna hide the money. You just steal money and go keep it in the bank. Like in your bank account, when you know you cannot defend it, you're going to hide money. So those money that you see in Swiss bank, you see in other places, these are stolen wealth. These guys just don't know anything. The problem we are having is that the monarchy system of government, before we buy this so-called Western part of government called democracy and leadership, our monarchy system of government is catching up with us. You understand? Like a king in Africa is not questionable at all. 
And remember, when we started practicing this so-called governorship, president, and everything, the president now is even more powerful than the king. Nobody has the question. The highest you can do is to gossip from afar. That is what is affecting us. The money Nigeria is making today only happen, make more money than Nigeria as a country. The country is broke. Nigeria is just a shifter. That's so many things pass. But guess what? Because it's shifter, it's just going to shift everything down. As a country, we are poor country. We don't make money. No, so when you not. talk about it, when you talk about the innocent and everything, all oh I'm saying God. is that sorry, the sorry, money sorry. is going, I, 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 the money I, I, is Paul, not, Paul, the money I apologize. Is not. I apologize. Okay. These chat people are getting out of control. Um, <laughs> yes. the, money, the money is not with the government. The money is with the individual in government. It's not like government have money and government say we will not help. Government is broke. And government themselves, they are not being creative enough to look for every loopholes to generate money. I'll tell you one funny thing. I've been to White House twice. So why you want to govern? Why, why these, why these small-minded people want to govern them? If you do not have the capacity to think about things, why are you there? Why you even oh, want to be there? No, uh, they have the capacity to think about things. I want to think about is working for them. They think <laughs> as an individual. When they hold power, whatever they think about is working for them. Their kids is going to high league schools. They are doing well. People around them is celebrating them. People who talk so, down so, about so them today is ready. celebrating them. So this so is the mindset. Ready. So the, the concept of the government, the concept of being a servant leadership. We don't really have it in Africa. When we go there, we become Lord. We don't answer to nobody. So this is the problem. So when we talk about the West, like Forefather keeps saying, they leave their comfort zone and come to the place where malaria will kill them. They do everything to go give back to their people. You know, like we said, the biggest drone that the U.S. is building today, they build it in Niger. What I tell people, I say, look, that is a lie. That place is called military zone. Who knows what they are taking from that place? I don't think mm -hmm. they are building anything there. I believe they are taking something from there. Mm -hmm. You understand? So of when course. those soldiers go back, they tell them, thank you for serving my country. Because truly, they serve their country. They go scout for things and bring back to make their country a better place. But yeah, in our uh, own case, we uh, have uh, people uh, who uh, are lord over the people. Uh, 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 so uh, until we change that uh, mindset, uh, there's uh, nothing uh, really much we can do. Are you actually saying what I am saying? And you can't say there's nothing that we can do. We're talking, we're doing something about it. But what yeah, I'm saying is, something you actually, is, yeah, you're actually saying what I'm saying is like, you're saying that people are individual. So that's what I'm trying to say to you, that we have been taught not to like anything black. You feel me? Like me looking like this and shit. They don't want me to be rich. Yeah, yeah, but the, the way you look is not very helping now. You can't, that's not how black people are supposed to look. You don't bother to trim your hair a little bit. Are you are saying uh, they, they don't want hey, you to do this? Nice, but if hey, it nice, was like Paul hey, now, nice. or like Jago, or like Ewa, you get what I mean now. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, well, is, hold on. So, so, so what, what's the rich look? Your look? You, you huh? people, that's, that's the look. Oh, no, no, no. No, but no, if no, you, no, no. you can't wait, use yourself as a no, good example. See, Two nights, let me talk, man. See, that's why <laughs> what you, 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 you um, Nigerians got wrong. Y'all think okay. if you if you um carry yourself like a Christian, <laughs> finance is gonna come to you. See, you look rich, but you still broke. <laughs> it's not about that. It's your women no, no, are not no, gonna no, want to look no, like want to come at you anyway. Hold on, trimming and shaving is a rich look. Come on, no, we, we, okay, 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 okay. So, but you are supposed to look trim now. Is that that is not a white man thing, is it? Yeah, but no, why, why are you supposed to look trim? Who? Hold on. who yeah. says that? Who says hey. that? <laughs> who says that? <laughs> yeah. Jack, I'll, Jack, I'll, 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 say, I'll also say this to you, though. <laughs> oh my god, no, I'll Jack, say this to you, though. Both of you, both uh, even I can. I can. Mm -hmm. whilst, whilst you may be saying all these things about Christianity or Islam mm -hmm. and it is, is it, if you read the book, you'll get different different 
understanding from the understanding that you're given overall. It says in the book that you, uh, uh, um, a man is not to, supposed to trim his beard or hair. And yeah. was it, wait there, there's a difference between the Egyptian and the Hebrew. If you look at all the G Egyptian paraphernalia, they're crisp. Everything crisp up. You understand? Cut clean. Like they just come out from the barber. However, the Hebrew is completely different. You understand? And it's there in the book. So it's, you know, when, when you see, I'll tell you this, I can. Well, whose, whose book are you talking about? Their book let's, again? Let's, bro, bro, let's, not, let's not get there because we, we can go round and round. I don't want to no, go round and round. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I want to defend no, no, wait, wait, wait. Hold on there. Hold on there. I want this to be part of your understanding. Yeah, because yeah, these, things, these things are deep. You see the Caribbean and the upbringing, the upbringing of the Caribbean youth for, for the last 400 years or so, it is it is made a lot of Caribbeans angry to anything European. And whilst I, I understand we, 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 wait yeah. the, West, the West African or the, or the African in general, they have sort of a different trait of the white man. The white man that was in, the, in, in, the, in West Africa, Nigeria particularly, they were the, of high class. They weren't, they weren't your normal run of, the, run of the mill white man. They were high class and middle class white people that came into Nigeria over the year, as opposed to in the Caribbean, where there were all kind of structure of white people. There were white people who were the overseers, if you like. These were coming from the working class people. There were white people who owned the land. These were coming from a higher class. So your understanding of the white people is more total than ours. And you understand the white, you, you understand the white man as a hate figure. Whereas we understand a white man differently. We've had to learn the, about the different levels of white man that there are. The white man throws a rock. When you turn your back, your head is bust. But when you turn around, you don't know who did it. That's what the white man do to the African. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think I understand what you're saying. Fair point. <laughs> Fair point. That the, technically that's what's going on with us. And let I think me, that me, that, that, that turn around. Okay, Hold go on ahead. Let, let me talk about something, man. Let me talk about something. You see, sometimes we go too much with the status quo, and it makes us actually stupid. No, because sometimes you're not, right. because you're not doing things off your own accord, and that's why we we are Rasta because. Part of being Rasta is not being ashamed of your hair. Your hair that the Almighty created you with. That means you are beautiful in whatever form your hair grows into because the Almighty said so. And if you don't respect your hair, then you do not respect the Almighty. So, so I want to say this. Stop your little girl. Stop cutting your little girls here, you mm. Nigerian people. It is colonization, and it's a sign that you're shaming. Yeah, yeah. Cutting, cutting of the head yeah. thing is a big. I think it's because yeah. of lice. Hold on, let me, let me no, talk. it's not because of lice. Come Hold on, on. Let me talk. Because, um, I'm just suggesting why. Hold on. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let me talk. It's control. You two, Niger, you two Niger is a bit. Um, what you tame. You you have been tamed. I know, I know, I know. I'm not the one. They they tamed they tamed you. They tamed you to think that they tamed you to think sure. that having your hair in a position where white people like, that's the way. But let me tell fire. you. I can fire. Yeah. I can fire. Are you Rasta man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so totally. you might take it off your do you want to take it off your hat? Let me see your hair. What's going on, man? Please, no, no, I'm, I'm, no. Okay, cool. Real Why real. you born that way? Why you born with, why you born with locks? Uh, what? Why yeah. Born? Well, well, I no, wasn't born. born. Hey, hey, hey. Why you born with locks? Huh? But I wasn't born with the scissors. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you, you have locks. You have a, 
what, you, what, did you have um, a, a lock a look like a Rastafarian in your hair? Yeah, but it, yeah, but it was never cut. No, I'm just asking. Were you born that way, or you you just cut? A no, no, you, no everybody knows you wasn't born that way. No, I tell you, there's some people that are born that way. Ah, yeah, yeah, I see. That's why he's ah. trying to research because ah. he, he says it's one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, yeah. De let me decipher it. it. Tony is one let of me, them. No, 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 wait. Let I'm going somewhere. I'm, wait, 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 wait. Calm down. Calm, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Mm. The real Rasta parents, the real Rasta parents are the people that are born that way. And we call them Dada. In who said, who, who, get, who, who made that order? <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at what? You, you just, you just, you want to start you're another fight here. <laughs> so you, you, you read that. Hold on. Oh. Oh. You read that in a book, or you heard that? That's an order. You're from at one. I'm looking at one. There's another brother that comes on here. Uh, Dan, you may have seen him. He was born that way as well. Tone, oh, tone. Yeah. You, are, you, are, you, are, you are walking into two areas. Rastafarian is a yeah. different thing from yeah. the can hair type. Can I ask you? Can I ask you? It's not the same thing. It's not, it's not the same hey, thing. Can I ask you? Rastafarian is a religion. Hold on. Can I ask you? Rastafarian is a religion. To Niger. Don't explain yeah. Rastafari because you're not Rasta and you don't know nothing about Rasta. Don't explain <laughs> it. No, no, I'm trying to correct you. I wrong vibe that Rasta. It, it because we can't. Oh, you need let, me, let me speak. Let me speak. You okay. feel me? I must say, I can. I can. I'm telling you, I can. Hold on. Let me speak. Let me speak. A Rasta man, uh -huh. whether, he, whether he is new or a long time Rasta man, a Rasta man fights for the upliftment of black people. He is a warrior for Africa. Any man that is not that is not Rasta. If you have unlocked, and you're not fighting for black people. You're not fighting for Africa. You're not Rasta. You feel me? That's but fair. Rasta, no, no, Rasta, no, no. Bro, Rasta, no. love okay. Africa. Rasta no. preach love towards blackness. Rasta no. preach respect. Rasta pre um 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 understand that they love their locks. They love blackness. They love their people. That's it. If that's all it takes to be a Rasta. Jagu love his people. Jagu, are you Rasta? It's a spiritual thing. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to explain to you. What are you it's a spiritual thing. What, what spirit? It's, it's, it's not, you can it's say not about that. you having some odd spleef or growing your hair. No, that's not that's not Rastafarian. Or, 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 you, some or you are deciding it's that? It's a spiritual thing. <laughs> are you deciding that? Oh my God, Tone, Tone, see, that. see, see, I think there's a breakdown in communication here. Tone, there is, there really, really, really is. There really is. They really, really, really don't I understand us. No, hold on there, hold on there, I can't bring us. Like, Tone, just understand, at the, at the end of the day, there should be also a cultural thing to it. And maybe yeah. his own culture may be oh, different oh, from that. Not, oh, oh, listen, listen. I can't, mm. I can't, are you in this state? My mom is half. Why are you country? asking where he is? People I stop understand. asking where his location. That culture. My mom is half Caribbean, so I understand a bit of that culture. So it's just that it just play a word. We call it Dada uh, um, in in Nigeria. That's what Nigeria. we call it. But yeah, but he, that's that's what I'm trying to let him understand that it's a is Dada the same thing as Rasta? No, it's not the same yeah, thing as Rasta. It's not the same thing. Oh it's God. not the same thing. It's like calling Why Dada Christianity. It's not the same thing. You it's see, Dada, thing. Dada is uh, tone, tone, it? tone. That Dada, Dada, I have Dada, I have Dada in my family. Dada is a Yoruba something, where the, there's a way that the hair grows that they will not cut the hair. There's a certain way that the hair grows in. They won't cut the hair, and then as it grows, it is it locks. That's Dada. You understand? It's a wow. natural yeah. phenomenon. So that, that's a long time. Yeah. Tradition. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Is it a long time tradition? It's, it's been it with us forever. It's been with us forever. Wow. It's been with us forever. It's not about not combing your head. Jack. Yeah. It, See, it's now he's beginning to understand what you're talking about. No, no, no. Thank no. you, Jack. You, you, you have to understand, know. please. You see, uh, you when, uh, when you began speaking to him, I thought that you should present 
more than through fish around asking questions that would lead to miscommunication. Yeah. If you're going to speak yeah. about Dada, speak about Dada and let a man understand yeah. where you're coming from. Don't yeah, do this. He should have told me. Because he, he, should have told he just came into this argument, this unnecessary. Yeah, he, he should have told me that yeah. there are people in Nigeria. That's right. That's that, how you that, communicate. That called, you can't that, communicate by speculation. You put to him that. Oh, well, in, 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 locks. Locks. But, pardon? They are naturally born that way. It's not because. No, I, not I'm saying to you that hair. when these when Dada is born, there is so a way. My man is. My man is Tone, 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 Tone. You have to understand. Tone. Also in Yoruba, there are some tribe in Yoruba. The child may not even be Dada. There's a way they see the child. They leave the child. The hair will. That's lock. right. That child will stay for long. There's a like something you, about you that child that will so, say Tone, that you, I, you mustn't. Tone, you mustn't cut one, this hair. So I have one of my younger brother. I live with these Yoruba people. One of my younger brother, Godwin. You know, my mother cry and cry and cry. He has that dada that you were talking about. My father has just yeah, Googled yeah. Jesus and said, he's going to take that thing down. My mother was scared that this boy would die. My mother no, ran to no, all no, you, the old pastors. Him, Listen to him. You know no, Listen to him now. You don't understand why, something. why are you listening? Not so told my mother so, wrote to all the old pastors, and I'll tell you one funny thing for him to you're not interested because this so, is very so, serious so, issue for Tone. So, so, I think I you guys don't from, understand. You were so, not here when you had Paul. So, hold on, that 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 you that 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 you see now. That I, I think I need to call that that you're about to call that that. My father, hold on now, please hold on. Oh, you are hearing me, eh? So, you are hearing me, please ask me. What is for you? So when it happened to my younger brother, my I father don't to help believe, you so my father okay. to my dad is completely nonsense. So my father wants to take the air down. My mother ran to everywhere. And after that time, my mom, not so long, my mom lost her own dad. And my father respects his father-in-law very well because his father-in-law is his boss. So that makes my mother have that control in the marriage. My mother did suffer that African thing where the man has so much power over the woman because mm -hmm. his, own, his own boss, <laughs> he married his boss' daughter, but he just lost his, he just, he, my mom just lost his dad. My mom literally run to everywhere, run and do everything. My father said, he is not spending one cent. He's going to take this head down. And my father did the way he won. I guess that's where my father started fight, finding his way back. Because my father is Jehovah Witness, and my mom never entered the kingdom hall one day. My mom have that power. My father didn't did have that control. I guess my father used my own brother to, to gain his power back. My father said he's not doing any ritual, he's not doing anything, and he's going to take this header. And my father take the header. That's my brother. Well, I, I want to say this for you. four years old today, as I'm telling you. I, 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 I can't I, 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 Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to get so to so be on the same from page. From Yoruba, let, let me ask let you the hair grow, grow you like the Jamaican people. Mm -hmm. But there are tribes that the, the, the child were born with it. Like my brother is like you told. He was mm -hmm. born with it. But from Yoruba tribe, they leave the hair to grow. And the hair will stay for ages. Even then, like the celestial people. They are happy, they leave the hair. They say those child are strong child, a powerful child. And never that they grow the child, they start teaching the child spirituality. They start finding the child path, what the child will be in future. And never before we even go to Jamaica. Go ahead. Yeah, I think let me let me yeah, that will let you ask. I would I just want to highlight something 30 seconds. Tone we've had this discussion before about this data and there was a bit of a big debate about it Very whether it, it, it is natural or whether it is um, this in nurtured but it appears both are done I think this is something that I, I can find is learning that you know wearing data is not new for Africans it's something that they have been doing it's a cultural thing and uh, so I can find you yeah. get where where tone is coming from now no so, I, I'm uh, saying that that's where we got it from then it's like yeah. it may be a, a culture in us ever from ever since yeah. wanted to come out. You feel me? But I, I tell you that, is, that is what is catching up with you. You have a lot of responsibility with that hair uh, in Africa. When mm. you carry that hair, uh, it comes with a lot of responsibility. You see the way you are fighting for all your people, 
It is the tax that you choose for yourself. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Listen, that's why I be telling y'all people. Y'all maybe see me, but I'm not no simple dude. I've been, I've been um into black consciousness since like '93. You see me? Wow. I've been, I've been like this for '93, from like '93. You see wow. me? So, so that's a long I've time. Been, I've been fighting for Africa. Like I've never changed. This is how I am all through the years. You feel me? I, I don't even keep friends too much because um, people are not genuine in terms of um, wanting to see Africa rise, wanting to see better for black people. And I'm enemies with them people, including black people. And I have to say something about you too, Niger. You're doing yourself a disservice, a disservice by combining your channel with Kaiser. He don't right. like Pan Africanism. He don't like Africans. He don't like black people. He's a he's a um a, um LGBT um dude. If he may no no so I don't think so. My advice, my advice to you is your your channel is not growing because of that little per person. If he may. Their channel cannot go past when it's, 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 it's not fair to come out for us to be bad mouthing him when he's not here. So uh, I, I think I we, we as men we have to, no, no, no. We, we okay. have to do it I when he's there, isn't it? So that's I don't buy market. Too uh, late. Too late. Uh, I'm not a hypocrite. I, I know no, I know you will say it in front of him. I know you will do that. And why I'm saying this is because he keep cutting me off because he don't like my straight point of view does it cut you, you off all the time you see mm -hmm. me I didn't notice that. Yeah. and that's why i know that they don't they're not they fighting against pan-africanism you see me and you because you are kind of borderline you see me you may be <laughs> you you kind of accepting anything and me anything don't go and and in the conscious world anything shouldn't go with people we need to fight against those who fight against Pan-Africanism. You feel me? Anybody who is ob objective, objecting Pan-Africanism, objecting black consciousness, these people are our enemies. It's you true. I, I, I wouldn't call them out. Remember, they, everybody's in a different journey. You started in 1993, isn't it? I barely, I barely was anywhere around during that time. So people are in different parts. You are, sometimes you give them time. Like in my yeah, case, there are cases I've made that people didn't believe until Two later nine. on. I will tell you, oh, yeah, I discovered this, I discovered that. Two yeah. nine. There are people who will wipe you off the map with arrogance, using arrogance and ignorance. Take you out. Mm. Like, you, you, you ever heard of Blaise Campari? What did he benefit know. Why did he benefit from selling out his country? But he was willing to do it real quick. Mm. Uh uh. Uh uh. Ever hear about it? Hold on. Mobutu Sisekedi? Huh? Becoming the god of, of, of um, DRC? When, when, when uh, he's only giving up. Yeah, he's giving up all of, all of Central Africa to, to, to the Europeans? after he killed our freedom fighter, are we going to sit there and have our people running wild without saying nothing to them about their type of behavior? Is, are we not willing to die too to, 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 um, to get rid of our our um, our fellows? Good night, our, guys. Our this yeah. is getting tougher. I don't want to. Be, I don't want to go work late tomorrow. <laughs> thank you, thank you for coming in there, Paul. Yeah, yeah. you got the best place. Thank you for coming. Yeah, in. I, can, I can fire before oh, before, oh, I before I oh, leave. Oh, I can fire before I leave. Please, I already took off my shirt. Let me you put it on, please. <laughs> no, that's my shirt. <laughs> Man, we don't I see just need to respect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can fire before I leave. Yesterday you came into the show. You came a little bit late into the show, and you were saying something before you came, and um, you take it out of context when I talk about weed. 
and you felt because of your Jamaican and um, I'm talking oh, about yeah. Yeah, yeah, so somebody yeah. so somebody yeah. asked no, a question. I just, said, I just said it was a it was a, a slight because I reminded you of that um um economic um um part of 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 the world. If you mean no, I was I, I, I talk first, you don't even talk it when I talk, and um, the show is already on for almost like two hours before you came in and they asked the question. So when I talk about that weed, if you listen to me very well, I even went that far to a presidential candidate in the last election who said Nigeria is losing a three billion dollars for us to. Yeah, but it was me. I who reminded so you. Have you to know, so I just want to let you know there's another what, part again. Like we talk the about I, the. Wasn't it I the, who? Hold on, wasn't it I who reminded you to um about that per, that parliamentarian? No, like, you were not, see, you were not here see, then. See, I can like, fire him. I can fire him. He is saying that. I can fire him. He is saying no, that. Hold on. Hold on to Niger. I respect him. Hold on to Niger. I respect the man. I can fire you. You don't even listen let me, to me. You didn't even let me land. You I don't want to let him speak. Let him speak. You don't want to listen. Nobody is just listening. I am listening. I can fire. The conversation is on before you jump in. And when you jump in, you came in last. I finished my conversation mm. and I left. I even begged to make that assertion before I leave. Before Did you, you bring up so already before? Left. I apologize. Yeah. If you... Oh, I apologize then. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just want to also let you know that in Nigeria, three states, we have a lot of very good weed that we can make very good money of. But what we are state? just letting Ooh. those things lie follow. Which state is it? It's called Delta State, Edo State, <laughs> and Undo State. <laughs> hey, why not? We have the real shit, the wheel, like very, the very belt. good. <laughs> very, <laughs> very good. <laughs> very, <laughs> if you, if, if you send a snake into that farm, the snake going to sleep. The snake, the snake going to sleep for days. Just throw a snake <laughs> in the farm. Like the <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so I'm, we I'm have that thing. So I'm not throwing shit to you. I'm just saying that. My country can use it to generate a three billion dollar revenue. You understand? Know, so I didn't throw shade on you the way you throw me. Hold on, hold on. We um there weed can make ropes for ship. It can make ropes. That was the weed original can, There is hemp. hemp. It can hemp. make clothing. Mm. It's hemp. You can make clothing. It's stronger it's than rope. rope. So it's more, it's, it's, it's more, it's more worthy when you use it as weed, isn't it, for medication and all the so rest. No, yeah. So what I'm to do you know they are burning it in Nigeria? There are many thousands of people to burn that thing in Nigeria. Mm. I'm trying to say, don't be smart well, no enforcement. because weed has a lot of properties that you can make money on. Mm. You know? And then you're all on the same page now. You're all on the same page. So okay. let's uh, this thing. And I can yeah, fire. Try, I try to be man, I was just, from time. See, I can I was fire. Just I, I, let, let me finish oh, what I'm saying. I can fire. fire. Okay. This kind have, of stuff, man. have a good evening. <laughs> you know, see what I'm saying. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Paul. Thank you. I appreciate okay, hello. it. Mm. So I think um, uh, I, I, I have to say I noticed something. I have to say I noticed something. And it's a little bit, I wouldn't say downbeat i don't know when i can fire came on i noticed that some of us had some kind of attitude towards him because he's rastafarian i don't know why that is because it's almost as if we are looking at him like expecting some today or yesterday today, today and maybe yesterday too some of them i i i, I don't think it's it, it's in it it's like because we look at um uh, rastafarian hair we see it as negative somehow, I think. And um, that, that, that aspect. I want to tell Hold you. on, I can't fire. Let me finish what I'm saying before you make me finish. Hold on, Fred. I want to know. Uh -huh. back. Don't mind him. Uh, <laughs> let me finish. So, and the, I will say this about Astafarians. Eh? Their loyalty to the continent is beyond what most continentals have for their own land. And they are not even on the continent. That's crazy, isn't it? You can and, see that uh, in Akafaya, to be honest. Yeah, it, it, they've always been like that. They can sometimes you can see them in Lagos. They don't have anything. They just be walking around from one town to another, going around the whole uh, this continent because 
they cherish the continent. They are one of those people that, even from outside, they cherish the continent more than we on the continent. So if I was to go, I was going to a battle, and you want people that are hundred percent loyal. These you are understand? Some people, these yes, are the people. Definitely. These are the people, and you have to respect that to an extent. And we shouldn't be looking at them and looking at them like because when I what I saw, I didn't think about it like that. But from the conversation we are having over time, over time, it just occurred to me that these guys they are not even on the continent. Look at how loyal they are. Yeah. Let me tell you something, if I may, uh, guys. You know, growing up in the UK, my, when I when I land here, my fight was with Jamaicans all day long, mate. We used mm. to fight hard until they understood who I was. However, friendship value, as I, I as I uh, rose in age, college, university, work, my my I, I had friends at ev every level. But what I find, what I found when it comes to my best and most loving and most loyal and most real friends, they were the people that I began this life with in terms of friendship. And my primary school and secondary school, there were a lot of Caribbean people. At, at um, private school, as we, we went up, Nigerians became more my friends. As I began to work, and um, uh, grow into different levels. Um, I had a lot of Nigerian friends. Um, in business now, now Nigerians, uh, apart from other international people, Nigerians gone gone. So with this, whilst as I was going up, the friendships became more complex and complicated. And as I looked to it, my truest friends were the people I began with. My, my the people who really love me if you understand now i don't know if it's because he's jamaican or if it's because where i began but there is something that has been much more simple with my my, my niger friends we, me and them we're close or but it's complicated we have a complicated friendship the, my jamaican and uh, caribbean friends mm. there's just no complication in it it's just straightforward friendship. No mucking around with all these antics and deaths, deaths, nothing. And, and there's a lot to be said about simplicity. Now, a, lo a lot of, you know, we, we like to call ourselves sophisticated and we're always using all these terms. And they mean very little in, in, in our growth. There's, there's something, you, you, sometimes we need simplicity in our lives, you know, because taxing our brain all the time over personalities, it's a tough ask. It's hard work. I don't like working too hard over a friendship, for goodness sake. It should mm. become more natural and more, more easygoing and more beneficial to each other. I think there's something to be said about the Caribbean and the way of life. You know, we're all complex because we're human beings. But mm. down to a simple, I don't know how to really speak it. Look at simple, Akamba making friends. Um, I sorry, Jargon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can buy making friends. I don't see. I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed by Nigerians to an extent, or maybe this is your doctor damages. Um, the way they are also quite accepting, and I wish you guys accept each other a little bit more. And I can find I like the way you talk sometimes. I think maybe you talk so clear. Um, that's why people admire you because some of them are not happy that I'm saying that they were like not receiving you very well. That clearly did it. Yeah, I, I saw that they received you very well yesterday but i felt like sometimes the, the questioning you it came across as if what is that all about it does the, i just felt a little bit weird so that's just i should mention that anyway it's not a big deal yeah to be to be mm. to be honest yeah akafaya like he deserves some a lot of credit mm. because the way mm. he's focusing on the whole that's why i asked him a question today i said are you referring to nigeria or africa the way he mm. focus on all the blacks, he doesn't discriminate. Yeah. Like, look at mm. us. Even we in Nigeria, we come here and discriminate ourselves. Like uh -huh. what, what Mr. Jago said now, part of the problem mm. is we think we are better than the other people. Mm. My tribe is more superior. My tribe is better. I'm more educated. I'm more this. I'm more this. I'm, mm. I have more money. It doesn't matter. They you know that. Do you know that you, you didn't do that on your own? You, you know that you know that 
white people is causing us to be <laughs> A lot of times we think we acting off our own will, and that's not the case. White people spend 500 years on you Nigerians. You feel me? From 1492, they land on your 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 um your shores, Lagos. They sent missionaries to conquer you spiritually. So you are a spiritually conquered people. Even the Buddha man, even the Buddha man in Benin, he's spiritually conquered. He just don't know because he don't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He don't use voodoo on white people. He use voodoo on black people. Christians, Christians in Nigeria, they only love whiteness because God is white. <laughs> in their mind, God is white. You see, you see how AY is laughing. Don't worry, when he comes from Muslims, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, hold on. This, this Jesus boy, this Jesus boy, he's white. You see how he damaged Kenya? The last time um a white boy come that looked like look like their their brothers. See, Jesus is their their family. So when 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 we are when we are praising Jesus. We actually praising the white man, and then when the white man actually comes, well, he's the closest man to Jesus on earth. So, so in a sense, two hundred million people is giving homage to white people. No good, no bueno. Well, yeah, two hundred okay. million. Hold on, hold on. The Islam people, the, the Muslim people, they worship in an Arab. They they're worshiping an Arab and you a Negro. You feel me? Now, now look, look, look. I I respect my people loving God and all that stuff. But why does God only work for the Arab? And why does God only work for the Europeans? Because it's their God. Our God is our God is raw, is the sun that we live under, the equator. That's where we live. And that's what we that's where we survive on. That's why we have large noses. You feel me? All that black skin to absorb um um ultraviolet rays. So we are the people of the sun. We should have, we should have, we it's better we should have just bow down to the sun every morning. We'd be a better people. Instead of bowing down. Forefather is chief priest. Forefather, is that correct? Bowing down to the sun. Yeah. No, no, I think what he's basically saying is that um, we are of a different people, isn't it? And I've argued that case too, that if you have to have those religions, you have to Africanize it, take control of it. Because they did. And I, we read that passage where even, um, I, you know, how do you say respect to the Quran? When the, when the this is, God was saying it to um, uh, Muhammad, he was like, "Move the this thing, uh, the 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 prayer site you you pray to to Becca, and I know I, I you will be pleased by it." You know, yeah. God knew that that strategic move. Eh? <laughs> no, 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 Yes. I was a day you were discussing that, right? The person mm -hmm. that was asking the question, I think I was driving that day. He was not giving you the correct answer. I okay, you are not here. Me. You are not here. No, I Who wanted was to come in to, to give you the correct answer, actually. Don't worry that. Okay, this some, is what this day, hey, 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 I want to ask. Okay, I, I, I can fire. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, You were alluding some few minutes ago. Um, or rather about 20 minutes ago, you were talking about um, how we need to change our ways, how the women need to dress, dress in a certain way, are behaving in a certain we, way. We need, to, we need to correct our women. Go yeah, ahead. exactly. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But you know that statement, someone is taking it out of context, or some people are taking it out of context, saying, okay. and that is why thinking, saying you've got, you don't have respect for women, Blah 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 blah. 
So I just need you because you know sometimes yeah, you know, when you put things out, when people do not understand, because a lot of people I tell people, and what and that's the problem with a lot of women, a lot of black women, you know, they have yeah. they don't understand the concept of, of respect, and so and some men don't even know their place with women mm -hmm. and all that. They become she men. They have been dumbed yes. down to be feminine. Mm. Do you, mm. Let me explain that. That's, that's, why, that's, why, that's why I say, I say with, with no, um, without apologizing, I'm I'm an alpha male. male. Any day, yeah. any time. I'm an Red alpha here. male. Yeah. No woman will talk down on me and all that, but I will protect her when she behaves herself in a certain, in a certain way. Well, so let me you... explain for the ladies. Yes. Well, Thank you. Well, you are... Okay, go well, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Let me explain to the ladies. It is love I have for my people, male and female, why I want to protect the woman and give them extra attention in terms of your whereabouts, in terms of if you want to go anywhere in terms of who speaks to you in terms of who you listen to we need to be in control of that you know why because we don't want them to kidnap you and have you in the bushes and because awesome. you were always on because you was always on your own nobody don't know nowhere about you I like the fact that in Nigeria, some places in Nigeria, women are not allowed to have a hotel room. I like that because it could be a lot of damage to her. I, I think that the, uh, the black woman's character has been demolished since slavery. Because, okay, we of the West, when the slave woman come over here, the white man is the white man is the beginning of the baby mama that's how the baby mama stuff began because the white man turned her into a baby mama you see me the white man took away our power as males and made her independent of our power so so she is left in she was left in the open open to white people to do as they like you feel me and 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 we the men had to just um get with it so so what's going on what's going on is the the um reactions of those actions you feel me where it's even in africa but maybe on a smaller scale but we know what you're coming to you. We know what's coming to you. We, the, the people over here, know what's coming to you. And if you don't listen, you're going to feel it. Because we experience these things. I, I, I think when we want to, I, I, I'm beginning to think that, like, when we say the white man did something or took the power of the black man away, or something like that, the way I try to I try to flip it on his head that we gave it away. And I think there's something to be said for that, that because we gave it away, it puts us in the position of being able to take it back. And it's because the idea of them taking it, you are, in a way, you're giving them power. That's, so that's why, in I'm my mind. To, so that's what I'm trying to say to Niger. We, since we gave the power, we have the power to take it back. So that means that means part of it is getting back control of our women. Part you of it, yeah. mm. huh? But I'm also saying you're coming across as uh, like Saudi Arabia men or something like that. That's this how you're is coming it. This is it. This is what this is what it is. You maybe see, communication. Maybe, maybe, hey, wait, 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 wait. Let me just say something like quick. That. You see, I always take my time before I speak. You know, so just give me a, a moment. You see the way we communicate. I don't know if it's because we're doing it in English at times that we are heavy on our connotation. The connotations that we give out, if we're not explaining, if we're not using English correctly, um, we we would not 
communicate well. We won't get our mm. message across in the way we want to get it across. Now, I, I saw that that what you spoke about, uh, Tom. It was G Gioma said, uh, "I can't fire needs to give women more respect." Now, looking at that just off, you can just think, you can look at it and think, you know what? That sounds very uh, um, misogynistic. Very no, no. It sounds very feminist coming from a female point of view. And when you look at it, feminism, it's not an African ideology. But we, we as black people have taken on all these stupid ideologies and are using it and not really understanding how we're speaking. So when we're speaking to ourselves, we've got to use a lot of caution to be accurate. This, this is just a, 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 something I, I, I take my time with, is accuracy. If we're, if we're not going to be accurate, we, it's almost like we're just miscommunicating. Which yeah. is why when you're speaking about that, that when you were speaking about that at home, I knew that you just you you weren't you you, you weren't coming up, you weren't speaking it in the way that lent authority to what you know. You know, you have to be authoritative about what it is that you know. So you didn't have to query, you didn't have to query. Uh, if you understand Rastafarianism, you didn't have to query um, I can about 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 if he's Rastafarian. Show me your hair. That was that, that was nonsense. It wasn't necessary. All you needed to say was like, look, in Africa, we in Nigeria particularly, we have this tradition of that. And this is how it is. It's a spiritual thing. And when we see it, then you you are lending real information. You're you're educating somebody as to what you already know about this hair so type. Manzi, Manzi, um, Manzi Ovi, Ovi, Manzi Ovi, here, here, our um, data. Manzi, oh, boy, oh, boy, yeah. Manzi, 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 it's the way that the child comes through. You know, we have in Yoruba land, in Yoruba, we have different connotations. We give different names to the way children are born. If it like there's Ojo and there's Oke, if Ojo is when you have the um, umbilical cord tied around your neck when you are born, Oke right. is when you are born with the bag. You are, you are born with the whole bag. Dada. It when you come out in a certain way, of, and then your hair is in a certain way, they'll call that child like that. You understand? So th there are all these natural ways that we have in Yoruba land as to yeah. the birth of a child and what gifts that child comes with. You see, I, I, you, you, we have to be able to really get yeah. to the nub of things. And yeah, all this, yeah, some, all this fishing around yeah. when we don't know, we should leave it alone. If we yeah, don't know, we can leave it alone. Some kids born with a lot of hair. It's not locks, but it's a lot of hair. Mm. You mean some kids don't born with no hair on their head. So Correct. Is that, I understand what you are saying. You feel me? Mm. All right. So we need to be rounding up because this is Monday um, of the week. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is I, I can fire. I can fire. I really appreciate you coming in, and um, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate you here. But I the way he, he, your, come your, more, man. Come your, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's gonna come. He's gonna come. He, I can fire. He has been steady, and given how long he has been doing this, he's one of the most loyal people that you can find, and he speaks his mind. They, believe in me. You're gonna hear some controversial stuff, like invading <laughs> Africa. Sure. <laughs> invading North Africa, North Africa, and all the rest of it. So, <laughs> so yeah. that, that kind of stuff. But he's a very, very nice guy. I think that Nigeria. Dada, is, um, dada. I think that Nigeria. Oh, look at your dada brother here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I want to say this: something controversial. Something controversial. I think that Nigeria. Um. We need to be, we need to, we need to get Nigeria out of United States hands and France hands. This is the reason you are 200 million strong, the most populated country in Africa. It is not to be played with. You can be either a big um, development or a big mess. You feel me? 
And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking that if you stay with America and you are a big mess for the rest of the continent, you feel me? Mm. Nigeria needs to control the continent. Yeah. Niger Nigerian people need to be 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 um somebody so he needs a strong president to, to, to guide the people, to teach the people about their their real stuff because we need to um depopulate to um Nigeria in terms of we need two million or three million to own Morocco. We need two or three what? million to he, own. He, he, he want to start now. He no, no, start, you see, want to take over Morocco. No, no. You see, what what I, I you see, my brother, the thought that you have is my thought, actually. You see. The amounts that we have in Niger, we have enough for at least one million oh, country. country. That's 53 million, 53 million people. If oh, we have cool. if we have one million Nigers in each African country, we don't control the whole continent with that. We control the mm. whole Oh, that's what you're have, saying there. Eh? We oh, don't have the country space for it. No, so what I'm saying is Nigerian people. Um, someone need to be preparing Nigerian people to take over our North Africa. I hear what you're saying. We don't have to no more, no, okay? No, it's very, no, it's controversial. North it's Africans are already worried about it now. Was it not the Tunisian president that was complaining that? And why, why, why wouldn't he be worried? Why would, mm. you, know, you know, before yeah. before the Omar had before the Omar had took over North Africa. They were pushing yeah. Africans down into into yeah. all kinds of e e e e yes. e all this all this has happened before, but but because mm -hmm. we don't know history, we just miss it out. We think that they belong there. There was an argument. There was an argument with the one Egyptian girl, um, one white Egyptian girl saying that the the first time I've heard the word black because my parents didn't teach me the word black or white. You know, it, it was from mm -hmm. was from a, a certain aspect, um, and really? talking about these people from West Africa and the Americans thinking that they were the ones who owned Egypt. They said, "No, I reject that. I, we are Egyptians. It's our history mm -hmm. that we're playing with." Yeah. And she did what what she didn't know. She doesn't know uh, uh, her own Arabic history because oh, the oh, world. Oh. Now, that world. brings me to something. I, I will let you carry on. Sorry. That brings me to something about that Egypt, so I will don't get past it. I think uh, we need to do one show, just one show, with definitive evidence of whom the true Egyptians were. We need to establish if it's uh, Arabs, we need to give it to them. It can't be, it's it's Arabs black, at the beginning. Black, okay. Is, uh, we have to do that one. So it settles it in the mind of our look Nigerian at, look at crowd. Look at Mali, Timbuktu. Um, um, Morocco destroyed it. Do we forgive that? Is that um, forgiven in Africa? See, my priority is our survival right now, and that I think maybe that should be our priority, not worrying about enemies that we want I mean, to go and do revenge. Those on. countries are rich. If you go take that shit over your people, um, good people that's more money, more life, more gold. What are you talking about? You know how money comes? How you think you take you do it? You might have to take it. I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. But first, we Talk need to be that. strong here. But to take it, you need to be strong. And I'm not looking at taking it right now. We need to survive. No, to mm -hmm. we need to survive. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about teaching our people to have an African consciousness. African yes. black consciousness. So, 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 it, um, willpower can take over people's country, not not just guns. Willpower. Yeah, it does. If you have a, this is it, that's what I was saying. This is not a black white man thing. It's just about belief. And if you believe in yourself, you can do all kinds of things. That that video I put on my on my channel was about how I want to hear about. I want to hear from the Bingy man though, the the Rasta man. Ah, uh, uh, Loco, he wants your, <laughs> your <laughs> input. Loco, Loco has got to chill out. Loco has got to chill out. Don't worry. When he when he troubles you, you will know. Loco is a troublemaker, you know. When that he troubles you twice, you will know, you will know that. He say, oh, no, he's here. 
I thought he wasn't here. He was he wasn't around. Look at the castle bottle. You know Loco, your you fellow dada is looking for you. <laughs> your fellow has to wants to hear from you. <laughs> what do you want to know? What does he want to know? I don't were you listening to what was happening before when we were discussing these things? He said, Egyptian, Are you a Rasta man? Egyptian stuff or what? No, no Rasta about man. Dada Rasta and man? Missing pieces. Yeah, okay. I can I wasn't because I was you know trying to do some office work anyway before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. But like the, the little thing I think about that, that right? If uh, do you know about Rasta? Rasta is um is um it's a culture that was developed, not like it's, it's not original. It's a culture that was developed, you know, and um, sure, uh, they, 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 the people have a certain lifestyle that they want to live, and they just have to give it a name, you know, like religion. You know, Christians want to live your way, and they call it Christianity. Islam want to live your way, they call it Islam. So oh, you're right. You're you right. They right. call it Rastafarian. Mm. No, you're yeah. right. Mm -hmm. he, he understands you. He understands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mm -hmm. will find that a little bit this year. Yeah, Rastafari. Having having it. Um, Are you saying Rastafari is, is a religion? Is not, not naturally. Well, it can Rastafari, be. It can be seen as such. Rastafari is a concept of liberation developed out of out of um because of oppression. It's an anti-oppression movement. It's an anti-white movement, an anti-European movement, anti-queen, anti-anti-pope-pole, anti-queen, anti-pope-pole, pro-African. We're going to give it a historical context, which is between Marcus Garvey, Bogle, and uh, uh, Emperor Haile Selassie. Yeah, these things have been come because Emperor Haile Selassie was ras. Ethiopian orthodoxy within Christianity. Don't, don't get it twisted. You get me? That this thing stems from. But the Rastafarianism is a lineage in terms of Ethi the Ethiopian Rastafarianism. It's a lineage of, oh. king, of kingship. But the, the speech, if you let it, for me, is the greatest speech ever given. And Bob Marley put it to record. Until um, philosophy that holds one that, way. That, 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 that speech is so deep. And and for me, for a speech like this to be given, I think it was the 1920s, for this speech to be to have been given so long ago, and for it to be so powerful. What yeah, speech for, was that again? What song was it that? It was at the UN. It was at the UN that he gave his speech. When, yeah, when, the uh, League of Nations, you mean? The League of Nations at that time. Thank you. And, uh, uh, okay, then which of the song did Bob Marley? Which was who song in Bob Marley? Did, did, did he? Uh, 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 it's uh, just say it again. It's uh, until until a man until a man. I, it says until the philosophy that hold one race inferior inferior. That's right, and the other superior, superior. and another inferior. She is permanently and and discredited and abundant and until. The, the color of a man's skin is of no more significance than the color of his eyes. There be war. But until... Everything is ignoble, war! I am yeah. He said, until the ignoble and unhappy regime that holds our brothers in Angola and in Mozambique, it, 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 you feel me, in subhuman bondage, um, shall be utterly destroyed. Mm -hmm. Everywhere will be war. Will you see, my, my you see my concern. I don't. You see, I'm I'm one of those people that are a little bit skeptical um, of of what of, of some of the things that has happened since then, um, because their presence in the League of Nations alone tells you something, and um, they are. What, what uh, does it tell us? Um, what, let me explain now. Then you go on in history to find um, some of the things that has happened on the continent. Like you, I know that African Americans, which were technically Niger Congo branch, went to Ethiopia to fight with them against Absolutely. The invaders. Back then, they, yes, they, yeah, they did all those things. But on the continent itself, the Ethiopians don't support most things on the continent itself. 
That's that 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 is complex. That that is that is it's complex. But you can ask how many things have you seen them support? Oh, brother, they've done a lot. Of, Ethiopia, Ethiopia. I would like to know. I would like oh, to know. They, 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 you just have to look into the history. We have to understand that um, the African Union is in Ethiopia and it's there. For yeah, Ethiopia. but it seems like Nigeria has actually done physically more than they have. What have they Ethiopia, done for African countries? Listen, Ethiopia done Ethiopia um is part of the liberation of South Africa, in case you didn't know. Um, yes. um hold on, hold on. More. Michael um what's his name? Um Mark Michael, what's his name? Um Mandela. Mandela yeah. got Mandela went to visit Ethiopia. You feel me? And mm. they sent him, they 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 sent him back with some guns. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. yeah. So but the same goes for this in Nigeria. The reason why I say this is because it, since then, if you look at their part, they are what they've done on the continent. I don't see them treating like Nigerians are dying in Ethiopian prisons right now. Yeah. And um, sure, when, yeah. when look at when Nigerians uh, this in uh, try to escape from Sudan, why they, they oh, let me explain now. Uh, when Nigerians tried to escape from Sudan because of the war, they didn't let Nigerians cross the border. I was surprised, yeah. I was they didn't let, so and surprised. just last year, just last year, our former president of Basenjo helped them strike a peace deal between their warring uh, groups in their country in South Africa. Our Basenjo was the one that led the team to do that in nigerian but this year they blocked nigerians from crossing the border and you know what that triggered in me i, I started asking myself what kind of treatment is this these are this is the headquarter of uh, the africa union why would they be doing this then i asked myself what have they actually done what have they done for us ever no, they're they're like, they're I, they're I, I do understand like, what you're saying oh, forefather i really really com commiserate with your position but I, mm. because me, I don't, you know, Somalians, they will, they will say we're not Africans, we're, we're closer to North Africans, we're Asiatic. Ethiopians do it too. They, yeah, they no, they, 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 all, they all do it. On the Horn of Africa, they mm. do it. But the thing is, whilst, whilst their personalities suggest certain things, mm. at so many levels, they have supported heavily the, Af the African condition. But we just have to understand that we're all extremely complex and we're all of our minds are muddled in such a way that we've got a job to fix it. We've got a job to fix it. And it's, you know, to again, to be mature, not to just find the thing, because I'm, I'm just a human being as well. And I, I knew we, you know, if anyone's coming against you, uh, our position is to react against that. Mm. Um, but sometimes we have to stay back. And this yeah, is why, hey, why, just before you go. To, Niger, to be fair, to be fair, I mean, um, Nigeria is no better. Right. So we have to be, we have to be, we have to be fair, bro. Yeah, but we, 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 we no, hold see. on, man, hold mm -hmm. on, man. I have to finish. Now you expect <laughs> Ethiopia to be casual and all that, but you chased out Ghana people. Ghana people. Ours, yeah. is because, uh, ours is due to Stop retaliation. Explaining. Stop explaining stuff, bro. Let me speak. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> trying to explain motivation behind it. Yeah, Don't okay. explain away nothing. Just fair let point, me fair speak. point. Go ahead. What I'm, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is, all right, look at look at John. Look at um, not yet tone. Not yet. You, you have God to hang around, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ghana had the year of return. Well, 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 how come, um, um, Nigeria Nigeria didn't. Invited nobody? let me tell you this, let me tell you this, I can, there are more, I can, make I, you. make I tell yeah, you, make I tell you something, make I tell you something, brother, you see Nigeria, Nigeria, we don't pander, you know, we're not pandering people, we're quite different from Ghanaians, there are more Jamaicans, uh, Americans, Blacks in Nigeria, you see, if you come to Nigeria, come, and when you come, you know what it is. But we're not inviting no one. If you don't know where you belong, you can stay outside. It's, it's, it's Ghana is on Jamaican. that thing. You're not on that thing there. You understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jamaicans in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Nuff. Yeah. Nuff. <laughs> I've seen them. 
So Not nobody brother. is a Debbie. I've seen them. You know what I mean? And this is, this is, they've been there way before the year of return. Yeah, way, way, way before. before. Way before. Like, they've been around. The, like, so, yeah, all, they, all it is, where Nigeria is concerned, yeah, Nigeria, we don't advertise. We, we don't do that. Mm. And whether it's good or bad, I don't know. But we don't do it. But if you land in Nigeria, you're going to see enough depth as to how you as an individual can become more of yourself. You know, I can, I don't know if you've ever seen a African think tank. You know that brother there? There's one brother oh, called African think tank. Yeah. He's in yeah, equity yeah. state. He's not in Lagos. He's not in any of these uh, big cities. He went, he went to the village and that's where he's living his life naturally. Nobody invited him. He came. And not only did he come, he's welcome. Of you course. understand? So we different. We different, brother. You know what I mean? Mm. Nigerians welcome you. I think they are very, very welcoming. Of, uh, yeah, this very thing. welcoming. Yeah, and and I think that episode with Ghana is a disgrace. But um, you know, Nigerians liked it for that, so they had to give them back what they gave to us. Uh, so well, but that that is a different thing altogether. But that said, it's a pertinent question I ask. If somebody knows what Ethiopia did for Africans, they should let us know because uh, how, do, how do people treat that? They treat him normal, normal like any other Nigerian. Who say sorry? Can you say the question again? How do how do Nigerian people treat Dada? Ah, uh, they know they yeah. understand what Dada is now. We under, they understand. Uh, they, they understand it. it. They, I don't. I don't think they always associate it with the um, smoking weed, though. Uh, is that not true? Nigeria. Well, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, they, they, uh, uh, that, when you see Dada, they from Rastafarian. Firstly, that that largely would either be Yoruba or Bini. I don't think I don't know if they have Dada in Igbo land. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely they do. They do definitely. Oh really? They're everywhere. They're everywhere. I mean uh -huh. Dada gone gone. I mean Dada yeah. way. Yeah. Uh -uh. Yeah. Because you don't yeah. know Dada is a Yoruba word. You understand? Oh, yeah, yeah, they have it everywhere. They have it everywhere. I can okay. assure you. Even in River State, everywhere they have them. You can't escape it. I don't even know why it must be present in the north, except they removed. Yeah, it. I, I would say I would, I would not say they would have it in rivers. I know say they would have it in Edo and mm. every Yoruba state. I know they would have it there, but yeah. I, I wasn't sure about. First oh, definitely they have it in. Uh, ah, Tony is Yoruba. I was uh, this in uh, Ibo now, and uh, his dada, his original dada, he removed his own. Ah, yeah, Tony is original dada now. Uh, oh, no. yeah, this oh, original. Oh, oh, now you know. Now you know that you are looking at the original. <laughs> so, why you took it down, man? Put it back up, so. Put, <laughs> put it back up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah, man. You know. So, so what we are lead to, right? The dada, if you remove one of their hair, they will not tell you. They usually say, oh, you got to buy something for him, something yes, like so. that. It's not easy to just be removing the yeah, hair anyhow. If, if 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 they want to cut the hair, they need to key some fowl. Or yes, now it's a ceremony. To cut yeah. the hair is a ceremony, man. I I've don't seen... know if that is still going on now, but they used yeah. to do that. Yeah, say, oh, when I was born, people, blah, so blah, blah, blah. when I was when I was born, obviously, um, the white people didn't understand what was going on because my mom was saying that they, there's this um because my mom had to stay in the hospital and I was there. So the fifth day, they said seeing this thing. They didn't understand what was going on. They thought it was like some some, some uh, messed up stuff going on in the baby's hair. So they had to oh, run some so tests. they know at that early age? Yeah, it's from birth. Country, they were confused. That, no, in this country, they, 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 ah. they didn't know what it is. They didn't know what it was, you know? Wow, that's and, interesting. Uh, it was yeah, my dad came yeah. and said, "Yeah, it's okay. It's something." Was was trying to explain to them what he was, you know, that it's it's normal that he knows. Hmm. He, he runs in a family, actually. Oh wow! So so before you cut it, did you do anything, anything like celebration? Yeah, my my hair was cut after two two years. Obviously, I can't recall, but um, yeah, there was sort of kind of sacrifice. You know, 
yeah. Other than you call it sacrifice, you are a chief priest, man. I don't know why you know. Now, so when you hear me, GP, because you see the image behind me, I'm a lot here. What are you talking about? I didn't find that trouble. Well, <laughs> hey, well, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to explain. No, there's not, well, but there's some people that are gifted spiritually. Like my, my junior brother, too, is that as well. In fact, he's it's he's a man of God right now. I mean, the thing is that everybody's got their spiritual gifts. If you don't do some certain things, you don't drink. For instance, 